Finally, the video you've all been waiting for. So far, you have learned how to design this beautiful website completely from scratch in Figma. But today we're going to be converting this beautiful design into a full stack production ready build. So let's go ahead and see what you're going to learn in this one single video. We are going to be using Next.js 13 with React, Drizzle ORM, ShadCN UI, Superbase, Tailwind, Socket.io, Stripe, Superbase Presence, and Superbase Realtime to build this application. First, we will convert our design into a fully working landing page. Our entire application will also give the user the option to choose between dark mode and light mode. We will create a full authentication system with login, sign up, two-factor email confirmation with a custom email template, all with Superbase. When the user first signs up, they are prompted to create a workspace to get started. Our application will have restricted features for pro and free plan members. Only pro plan members can have custom logos, have more than two collaborators for a workspace, and have more than three folders for a workspace. On the top of the sidebar, free plan members can see how much of their free plan they have consumed. Our application is going to be a combination of workspaces, folders, and files. And workspaces can be private, shared, or collaborating. Creating folders or files instantly gives the user feedback by adding them to the sidebar with no delay. As we know, free plan members can only have three folders, so once they exceed the limit of their free plan, they are prompted to upgrade to Access Pro features. Even though we are using server-side data, we can make changes across the entire application client-side in real time. For example, if I change this title here, it changes everywhere. Yes, I know, amazing. The user can also change the icon for the directory from multiple places in the application to any emoji that they feel best resembles it. Again, it happens in real time across the entire application. You can add banners to each directory by simply uploading an image like this and the banner instantly shows up on the page. You can also update and remove the banner as you like. Deleting a folder or a file first moves it to the trash instead of deleting it permanently. This way, users collapse collaborating in the directory can still work on it even if someone has deleted it. Users can then restore this file or even delete it permanently if they wish to. Users can change their workspace settings, add and remove collaborators, change their profile information, and update billing settings by clicking on the settings icon. Collaborating users on a specific directory are shown at the top right corner with their profile picture, and this is made possible with Superbase Presence. Making changes to a document will debounce the changes and save them to the database to improve performance, indicated in the saving status bag at the top right corner. However, real-time changes are broadcasted to all users almost instantly. And here is something that has never been done on YouTube before. We have implemented real-time cursors to show what collaborators are doing within a document. Even cooler, if a collaborator makes a selection, the selection also reflects on all collaborators working on this document. The cursor also has name tags that pop up if you hover over it with a random color to uniquely identify each collaborator. Creating folders and files are also in real-time, which means all collaborators will have data that is perfectly in sync. Collaborators are also notified when directories are moved to trash, but can continue to work on them like we spoke and can restore and delete them for each other. Our application can also accept monthly subscription payments from users. This is done through a portal where they can enter their credit card information. Users can cancel their subscription and also update their credit card information in a customized portal that is synced with Stripe and Superbase with the products and services you sell. Even better, our application is completely responsive, including mobile and desktop, to provide a seamless experience to all users. We believe in action-driven content, so we have placed challenges in this project for you to solve. If for some reason you choose not to do these challenges, the answers are in the Discord in the description below. That's right, we believe that taking action is the only way for you to actually learn, watch, and develop at the same time. And that's why we built this whole series, which is action-driven content. With that in mind, this is a beginner-friendly video. So if you have no idea what is web development or what a production-ready build would look like, this is the opportunity 
for you to learn. I hope you're excited because there's a lot of new value that you're gonna learn in this one single video. So let's jump straight right into it. Before we start guys, I want you to get your laptop and do this with me because we are going to start developing this whole application together, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is let's create a folder for our project and let's call it web prodigies dash Cypress, just like this, okay? And once you're done with that, you wanna drag it and drop it into your Visual Studio code, and that's just gonna open up your folder for you. Next, open up your terminal by hitting Command J and type in npx create-next-app at latest space period, okay? And just go ahead and hit enter, and that's gonna give you some prompts here, so hit yes for TypeScript, for ESLint, hit yes, for Tailwind CSS, hit yes, for source directory, hit yes, for app router, yes, um, no for this one, and that's gonna um, go ahead and spin that up. Now we're going to install Drizzle ORM. Drizzle ORM is a tool that allows you to communicate with your database, uh, create schemas, and do a bunch of stuff. It's kind of like Prisma uh, or Mongoose, if you've worked with these tools before, okay? So let's go ahead and type npm i uh, drizzle dash orm, and we also need Postgres for this. We also need dot env. Okay, so go ahead and hit enter and let those packages install. Next, type npm i drizzle dash kit and save this as a dev dependency. Create a dot env file in here, just like this. And let's go into our dot git ignore and also ignore that file so we can just put it anywhere in here. Env just like this, okay? And uh, guys, I really recommend you have my repository open when you're developing too, just so that you can copy paste some things, okay? Because we're gonna use this dot env example file to copy our environment variables and um, we're gonna populate these with the database links and you know so on so forth. So go ahead and copy that and paste it in here. So if you haven't already, go ahead and create an account with Superbase and head over to the dashboard. And all you have to do here is just click on new project and rename this to web prodigies dash Cypress, just like this, and go ahead and generate a password and copy this password, guys. Don't, don't like forget about this because once this page goes away, you're not gonna be able to see this password again, okay? You can reset it later and I'll show you how to do that, but just copy it, come in here and just paste it right in here. Okay. And then click on create new project. Now this page will show you the Anon key and a bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and copy that Anon key and paste it right here. The service role, you wanna reveal it, copy that as well and paste it right here. This is your uh, public Superbase URL, okay? So copy this and paste that URL right here. Guys, sometimes this page kind of disappears and if it disappears, all you have to do is go to project settings, click on database and you'll find all the values in there, okay? Now to set up Drizzle ORM, let's create a file here call drizzle.config.typescript. This is basically gonna hold the configuration for Drizzle, okay? We're gonna tell it where to find the schemas, where to find um, the migration folder, and so on. So I'm just gonna type in import from Drizzle kit, just like this, and we wanna import type config, just like this, and uh, we also want the .env, package that we just installed. So do this dot env like this. And then we're going to config our dot env right here. So we're going to say config and we're going to pass in path and set it to dot env just like this. If um, there's no process dot env dot um, database URL. And if it's not there, we're just going to console dot log cannot find database um, URL. Right after that, we're going to export default, create an object here and say schema dot slash src slash lib slash superbase slash schema dot typescript. We're going to create this in a second, guys. Okay. So just to solve this typescript problem, let's just say satisfies config just like this. So now you can get that typescript stuff. And then let's say output and we're going to set this to dot slash migrations, we're going to build this folder to driver to use, which is going to be PG in our case. And we want the DB credentials, which is going to be an object with the connection string set to process.env.database 
underscore URL, or we're just going to set an empty string right here. Make sure you also verify guys, please verify if the variable names are correct. Okay, so make sure you verify this, um, because this is going to cause a lot of unnecessary issues. Head over to your root directory and create a new folder migrations. Just a quick heads up in the next video, we will be building the best application on YouTube. Yep, that's right. Because the next application is going to be built by you. We are going to be using the comment section to determine what features to have in the next project. So go ahead and comment below what feature do you want to have on your project and we will make it happen. So don't forget to subscribe to get notified when that awesome video comes out. And please drop a like on this video to support your boy so that I can provide more free value just like this. This and inside that you want to create a schema.typescript file. This is where you're going to have your migrated schema files stored in here. You want to also say export and just do an object for now. I'll tell you why later. And um, inside our source directory, we want to create a lib folder just like this, and then create a superbase folder right inside that. Inside the superbase, we want to say db.typescript and then create another file in here, schema.typescript. And in this schema.typescript, you can export this as well for now. Okay. And in our database, what you want to do is first you want to import drizzle from drizzle orm slash postgres js just like this, postgres from Postgres like this, import star as dot env from dot env, and then import star as schema from, and here I'm actually going to use the migrations folder, migrations slash schema, just like this. And now let's config our dot env file. So dot env dot config like this, say path, set it to dot env. Awesome. Let's say process.env dot database underscore URL. Once again, just confirm that there is no there are no spelling mistakes here. And if that's the case, we're just going to console dot log no database URL to create our client here. So we're going to say clients equal Postgres invoke it and pass in process. Let's take this right here. Copy paste right in here. And um, we're going to set this as string so we don't get that TypeScript error. And then we want to put um, a, an object as a second parameter and set it to max set to one. Create this drizzle client right here. So say drizzle and pass in your client and pass in the schema. Okay. And let's also export default. Um, this uh, db file. So this allows us to query our database and things like that. But we also want to migrate this stuff right after this, we want to say const migrate db is equal to async function. First, we want to say console dot log migrating client await migrate, which comes from drizzle ORM Postgres JS migrator. Okay, so invoke that and pass in your new database. A client that you just created and pass in an object here and say migration folders and you want a migration folder migrations folder and then set that to migrations so we're going to wrap this in a try catch bring it up here and then we're going to actually let's change this to an orange color successfully migrated awesome and in here we're just going to console.log where we can we can just paste this in here and put a red emoji and just say um, error migrating client. And now we need to invoke our migrate DB. So basically what's going to happen here, guys, is every time our DB is being uh, used, it's also going to fire this migrate, which is going to keep our schemas up to date with the database. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of custom scripts. Okay, that's going to basically help us run our migration files. So go to the GitHub repository, click on the repo and you want to go to package.json which is right here. And you just want to copy this, these scripts right here. The pull command will basically pull all the new changes 
from the database and update our local schema files. The generate command will generate the migrations. The drop command is used to drop any of the migrations that we don't want to push. And uh, the check basically helps us to, you know, keep everything up to date with our local schema files. Okay. And since we put the migration file inside our database itself, we actually don't need this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this migration script right here. And now we're just going to create our, um, our tables for our projects. Go to the schema file inside the Superbase folder. And what you want to do is say export const workspaces equal to PG table, just like this. And that comes from PG core. And then you want to say workspaces and then create an object here. So everything in here is going to be the column for our database. Okay. Uh, for our table. Sorry. So we want to say UUID. This also comes from PG core inside this. You want to put the name of the column in the database. Okay. This is what we're going to use locally in our file. And this is what we're going to use in the database. Okay. And you want to set this to default, um, default random invoke that. And you want to set the primary key invoke that too. And you want to say not null. So this is very similar to just SQL syntax, a uh, created at and uh, set it to timestamp, which comes from PG core guys, not my SQL core, invoke it and say created underscore at just like this with time zone, we're going to set it to true. And we're going to set the mode to string just like this workspace owner, which is going to be UUID workspace owner to not null. This will reference something guys we will come to the references in just a second, just title, which is going to be text. And this comes from the same PG core invoke it. And we're going to call this title in here and set it to not null just like this. Awesome. And then we're going to have an icon ID and we're going to set this to a text icon underscore ID not null to just like this. And then we want data, which is going to be text set to data. And this can be null, so that's fine. And then in trash, this is going to be set to text again. And this is going to have um, in underscore trash as a name in our um, in our table logo, which is going to be text logo banner URL banner underscore URL just like this. Okay, so make sure you have done this. Do all of this with me, guys. This is the best way for you to learn. If none of this makes sense, it's okay. You're going to eventually understand because this is called pattern recognition. So um, go ahead and do this. So let's see if everything is working perfectly. It may not. If it does, we will find um, the bug and we will we will solve the problem. Go into our source, into our app file, go into our layout.js and you want to just import DB. So just type DB and hit enter. OK, that should bring it from Superbase DB. There looks like there is some sort of an error that took place. Let's go ahead and see what is the problem and let's fix that problem. All right, guys. So the error, basically, all I did was I just console.logged the database here. And um, it says that it cannot find the meta journal JSON file. And the reason is because we did not actually um, create a migration script. So let's run NPM run generate. So I see a bunch of errors here. What is this error? It says transform failed. Um, let's see. OK, ES5. So this is another thing we need to change. So head over to your TypeScript config and change this to ES6 here. And let's run that command one more time. Awesome, guys. So now if you go to your migrations folder, you're going to see a SQL file right here with the migrated script. If you do npm run dev, if everything went well, you should not see any errors in here. There we go. So we just refreshed it and it says successfully migrated. Now, if you go to your database, and if you click on tables, you will see your table right in here. If you come into any sort of errors, just head over to the discord in the description and everyone in the community is going to help each other out. So the next one we want to create is called folders. So let's say export const folders equal to PG table, just like this and set it to folders like this and give it all the columns. Actually, we don't even have to type this. We can copy this exactly from here, paste it in here. We just don't need the workspace owner. And then we need the workspace. Um, so workspace ID, which is going to be a UU ID like this. And we're going to call it workspace underscore ID in the database. And this one is going to be set to references. And this takes a callback which is workspaces dot ID. 
And we also want to mention on delete cascade so that we don't have any data just floating in there. So const export files equal to PG table and set it to this. And now we want to copy everything in here, paste it in here. But we also need another relationship, which is the folder ID, which is a UUID just like this set to folder underscore ID, which references folders dot ID. OK, awesome. And also we need to set the on delete. So on delete to cascade just like this. Go ahead and close this by hitting control C, right? Just close this command or you can even shut it down. And what we want to do is run NPM run generate to generate our migration script, run NPM run dev, go to the browser, make sure it's also refreshed like this and give it a second successfully migrated. Awesome. So now to create our profiles for our users, we're going to call it a user's table. But I want to show you guys something really cool that Superbase gives you straight out of the box. OK, if you head over to SQL editor and you click on quick starts, you will see a bunch of templates you can literally just copy from. So we're going to go ahead and click on the Stripe subscriptions, which also gives us access to the users table right here. Don't worry, guys, I'm going to explain everything in detail. What the this does and everything about it. Uh, but let's go ahead and just um, create this just going to make a couple changes to this right here, guys. So just go ahead and follow up with me. You'll be fine. OK, so the first thing we want to do is say email in here and you want to set that to a text. OK, and um, in our role level policies, we see that only the user can view their own data, but we want to use this um, as like a user management system so that everyone can see each other's data. So we're going to change this to true for update. So only the user can update their own information. So we want that to be here. So we're going to say everyone can view um, user data like this on users. OK, and um, let's make sure we also have the other stuff in here. Um, updated at um, we could probably have that maybe um, we can set that to updated underscore at um, which is going to be a timestamp with time zone right here guys we are basically creating a function trigger okay what this trigger does is when a new user is signed up with our application this trigger gets invoked we're going to add um, a new property so that we can also add the email to um, the user. OK, so all you want to do here is at the end, you want to say comma email. Oh, I keep saving it. I'm so used to it, guys. Um, email right here. And after this uh, avatar URL, you want to say new dot email just like this. We're going to focus on all the role level security stuff later. That's not super important right now. OK, we just got to get the application set up and make sure we get all the logic um, correct. And then you can set all the row level security stuff. And what this row level security means just for someone who doesn't know what it means is basically it's sort of like restricting who can access, who can view, delete and update data in that specific table. So that's why it's called row level security. That way, if our front end forgot to do some logic, the back end will restrict the uh, user action because of that role level security. So you see how powerful this is, guys. Superbase just went ahead and built everything related to um, our subscriptions for Stripe and all that kind of stuff. So we don't even have to do anything. I'm just going to show you what's happening here. Basically, we're creating some products here with some properties, right? So it's a table called products. And uh, we have some role level security on that, too. And then we also have some um, some enums here, one time and reoccurring payments and the payment interval right here. And then we're creating another table called prices in here, which can hold the prices of our products. And um, we're creating, again, some row level security. This is just basically um, some columns right in the table. And then we're creating um, a subscription type, which is active trailing. We're just going to use active, but this is already done for them by them. So we'll just keep it. And then we have another table called subscriptions, which is going to keep track of who is subscribed and, um, you know, are they actually subscribed when we can get that through the status subscription status? OK, and then we also have some real level security on it. Extend this right here and go ahead and hit run. So it says we detected some potential destructive operation. I think it should be fine. You can go ahead and just hit execute query. OK, so it says invalid. Let's see what is the issue. So I think I found the issue. It's because we didn't put a comma right here. So let's go ahead and run this one more time and execute the query. 
Awesome, guys. So it went ahead and built out our table. So let's go to our tables now and you will see everything in here. And we also see the files, the folders and the the workspaces in here. So the next step is how do you sync changes that are made from Superbase into your local schema file? Well, that's pretty easy. All you have to do is run npm run pull. This is why we have those custom scripts. So let's hit npm run pull. And there you go. It pulled everything for us. So now when we go into our schema file, um, you can see right here that all the new tables, the files, the folders, um, the customers, everything has been populated. So you're going to see an error here um, that comes from time zone. And we're actually going to fix that just in a second. So we're going to change this entire default time zone thing. So let's highlight this right here and highlight it everywhere else. So you can do that by hitting command D. So what you're going to replace that is uh, that with is basically dot default, invoke it and say SQL now. That's it. I tried to import the timestamp guys, but um, for some reason it just wouldn't work. I don't know the time zone. I mean, it just wouldn't work with drizzle, but this is how you can kind of solve this problem. And the issue is every time you pull now, you're going to have this problem, but Hey, you just got to change it. All right. That's just how it is. But anyway, all right. So we got to do a couple more things. Okay. The first thing we need to do is uh, copy the subscriptions from the migrations folder, the migration schema go into your own schema file and paste it in here. And the reason is because that subscription, um, it's going to keep, you know, updating every time you pull from your database and that's going to cause some problems. So um, let's just copy this and paste it in here so that we can change it every single time that error happens. Okay. So make sure you import these from the right tables um, and the, the right uh, module. So let's see here. We have only PG core. Okay. Awesome. And the next thing guys, I made a very stupid mistake here. I really, really apologize for this, but it's good that we came across this error because now I can show you how to fix something if you make a spelling error. Okay. So we're going to select icon ID everywhere in our application, and we're going to change it to icon ID just like this. Okay. I haven't noticed any more spelling errors, but if I have made anything else, I really suggest you go into the, um, the GitHub repository and copy and paste these things because you're not going to, you know, it doesn't really matter. All this stuff doesn't really matter. Now that we did that, all we have to do is say NPM run generate and hit enter. And that's going to create another migration file for us right here. And now if we close this and do NPM run dev, refresh the browser, um, hopefully we see a success. Awesome. A successful message. If we go into the browser now, let's expand this refresh it. And if we go into, let's just say workspaces and search for icon ID. Okay. Awesome. It's updated here. If we do NPM run pull, it's going to pull the new data. And if we go into our schema, of course, we're going to have that error. And that's why we copied that. And now you can see in our workspaces or folders, um, icon ID it's updated. Awesome guys. So let's go into our schema. I know this is a little annoying. It is really annoying for me too. I don't know why. Um, why they don't have that in there, but I'm just going to copy this, go in here and I'm going to replace the subscriptions table with this new data right in here. Now let's move on to building our application. So I'm just going to shrink all these folders here. I'm going to open the source and the app directory. And um, in this page file, I'm going to delete all the code after main also remove the class names right here. Let's go ahead and remove that. And we're just going to say, home page just like this. Okay. And now the next thing you want to do is go into your app directory and then go into your globals dot um, CSS and you see this body tag, remove this and we want to go to the top of our file and we're going to say HTML comma body and say height and we're going to set it to hundred percent just like this. Okay. And now if you set background color to black, for example, you will see it's 100% of the height. Now you want to go to your app directory and we're going to create a folder called um, auth like this. Okay. Auth. And then we're going to create another folder in here and we're going to call this main. And then we're going to create one more. And this is going to be called 
the site. This will not be included in the routes. This is just sugar-coated syntax. It's just easier to uh, group everything with similar logic. We're going to use ShadCN UI, and ShadCN UI allows you to build beautiful components, and it uses Radix UI behind the scenes. So we're going to use this library to help build our application. So I'm going to open my terminal and I'm going to come to ShadCN UI and I'm going to copy this right here and just paste it um, in here and we're going to hit enter and that's going to go ahead and spin up ShadCN UI for our project. So it says, would you like to use TypeScript? We're going to say yes and we're going to use default guys. You can use New York if you want to, but I suggest you use default and uh, we're going to use the slate right here. Where is your globals.css file? SRC slash app slash globals dot CSS. Okay. And hit enter. Would you like to use CSS variables for colors? Yes. And um, where is your tailwind config file? It's in the root. So we're just going to leave this as is. And then config import, we're just going to hit enter, enter again. Are you using React server components? Yes, we are. For this write configuration to components.json, we're just going to hit Y, and that's going to go ahead and build all our dependencies out. Let's take a look and make sure that everything was done correctly. So we see the components file inside our source directory. We see a lib folder. It has a utils folder, and this utils is basically um, part of ShadCN UI. All right, guys, I just want to point out an error that took place. So when we were creating our ShadCN global uh, CSS file, basically, I think I put a space before that, and as a result, it actually created a different file for us. So what we're going to do in here is there was some stuff at the bottom here. So we're gonna just gonna copy that stuff that comes from um, this global CSS. We're just gonna delete this folder right here. We're going to go into our global CSS and at the bottom, we're just gonna paste that. If you guys are here from the previous video, you know that we built the entire design for this beautiful application in Figma. So we're going to now copy our colors into our application so that you can use them if you'd like to go into your UI system right here and you want to go to the plugins and there is a plugin called Figma Tailwind CSS. You want to run that plugin. So let's give it a second. Awesome. And now it's going to show you all the colors in your application. Okay, you can rename these to whatever you'd like. I just want to show you how to use this so that you can convert your colors. But um, we are actually going to use ShadCN UI's library itself because they already have a theme that is very similar to us. So why not use their theme, right? So all you all you got to do if you want to use these colors is scroll to the bottom and hit next right here. And this will give you um, your font base size, I want you to select 16 pixels. And now you want to hit next again. And um, this you can just leave it as is and then hit next one more time. And that's it, guys, it's going to give you all the colors that you need. All right, to create themes, we're going to go to Shatsi and UI's documentation. And you want to click on theming, I'm uh, sorry, dark mode right here, and then click on next JS. And now you want to copy this one, okay, the install next themes, and you want to open your terminal and paste that right in there and hit enter. Okay, this is going to go ahead and spin up themes for us. So now when you head over to your tailwind config file, you're going to see a bunch of uh, colors put in here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to also use the colors from our Figma just in a second, go to your Figma file and copy the colors from here, like this. And scroll to the bottom right after the card, and you can just simply paste it in here. Now you have your theme set up with the colors that work for dark mode and light mode, and also your custom colors from Figma. Now we need to create our theme provider so that we can use this next themes that we just installed. So head over to your library folder, uh, your lib folder, and you want to hit um, command M to create a new folder. And we're going to call this providers. Oops, it's all capital providers, just like this. And in here, we're going to create another file called next theme uh, provider. Okay, dot TSX, just like this, use client. So let's import star as react from react. And then let's import theme provider like this from next themes, but we're going to call this um, as next themes provider, just like this. And then we're going to import the type theme provider props from Next.js themes um, dist types, and then we're going to export function 
theme provider and in here we're going to have the children and we're going to have all the props sorry props like this now let's provide the types for this so we're going to say theme provider props just like this and now we're going to return the next theme provider just like this and we're going to put all the children in here and we also need to pass in our props right so let's say props like this um, right into this component awesome now all we need to do is go to our app directory layout.tsx and in here we're basically going to wrap all our children in this new theme provider okay so go in here and just say theme uh, provider from lib libs like this and invoke this and bring the children right up here so we also need to pass in some properties in here so we're going to say attribute is set to class um, default theme is going to be set to dark because we want to work with dark mode as default and then we're going to say enable um, system okay so it uses this the system color as well now to get the shad cn theme itself you want to click on the themes here and we are actually going to use this violet theme so click that and you want to click on copy code it's going to give you this stuff right here so go ahead and copy everything from here and replace all the code that you have here um, with this new stuff so we're going to update a couple of these colors i'm going to do that and you don't have to do this guys you can just go to the github repo and just go ahead and copy everything from here you don't have to build it okay um, but we'll go across it in depth don't worry about it but just go ahead and copy this one from here and just paste it right in here and that's about it guys that's how we set up themes for our application all right so now we're going to go ahead and build our landing page so the first thing is we don't need this page anymore so we're actually just going to go ahead and delete this from here awesome so that should go away we're going to see an error but that's okay guys i'll show you how to fix that in just a second we need to go into this site folder right in here and we need to create the following so first go ahead and create a layout.tsx and you want to also create a page.tsx r-a-f-c-e and you just say uh, maybe home page like this yeah so the layout also you want to say r-a-f-c-e and let's change this to uh let's just call this layout okay home page layout like this the home page layout is rendered when we go to the root file and that's where we're going to build our website here so we're going to say section we're going to create a div like this and we're going to set this to class name overflow hidden padding x is four we're going to say on from small devices the padding x is going to be six margin top is going to be ten from small devices we're going to set it to flex and then we're going to say from small devices we're going to set it to flex dash column like this and then we're going to say gap dash four and then we're going to say md justify center like this md items center like this okay and inside this guys we're going to create another component and this is basically going to be our title section so if you see in our figma file we have this section right here so we're going to just build out this title section so that we can reuse it for all the um, other sections in our landing page as well so go to your components right in here which is under components we're going to create a folder in here and we're going to call this a uh, landing page okay like this and inside that we're going to create a title section dot tsx i'm going to say title section just like this let's also create the props for this so interface um title section props sorry guys props like this and we're going to say title is going to be a string sub heading is optional which is also going to be a string and we're going to have a pill right here which is also going to be a string and let's use that here react.functional component title section props and let's extract it from here title like this then we need the subheading which is right here and then we need the pill from here and what we're going to do in here let me just close this so you guys can see clearly turn a uh, react.fragment okay just like this and inside this we're going to create a section class name of flex flex dash call gap of four so justify dash center 
then items start md which is from the medium devices items center just like this okay awesome and inside this section we're going to have an article like this set it to class and this is going to be um, rounded okay of full like this let's save this let's go back here again we're going to say padding is going to be like one pixel and then text sm dark bg dash gradient dash to write dark from dash brand dash primary blue like this see this is how we can use our custom colors to dark um, to dash brand and we're going to use primary purple from here awesome and now let's go into this article and we're going to create a div right here sorry guys a div like this we're going to set class name and we're going to set this to rounded of full px dash three by to one we're going to say dark bg dash black and inside this we're going to pass in the pill right after this article guys right below it we're going to say subheading so if any subheading was provided then we're going to return something else we're going to return something else so in this block we can just use a react fragment like this and we can say we can say h2 like this and we can give this a class name of text dash left text dash 3xl from small devices we want it to be text dash 5xl and then from uh, small devices again we want the max width to be 750 pixels md so from medium devices we want it to be text center and font dash semi bold and now inside the h2 we're going to put the subheading i'm um, sorry inside the h2 we're going to put the title and then we're going to create a uh, our subheading right in here which is going to be a paragraph tag dark text dash washed dash purple and we're going to set it to 700 and then we're going to say sm max dash width dash 450 pixels text dash center and let's put our subheading in here and if there is no subheading provided then we're going to return something else which is h1 like this class name set to text dash left text dash 4xl sm so from small devices the text is going to be 6xl sm uh, from small devices again the max width will be 850 pixels and then we're going to say md text dash center we're going to say font dash semi bolt you can just provide the title like this awesome and now we can actually use this component to um, show what we need it to okay so in here let's say title section like this and in here we want to say the pill should be equal to let's put an emoji there maybe we'll use a star emoji and we'll say your workspace perfected which the title prop which is going to be platform just like this okay right in here so our layout.tsx is not actually giving us the children components so we need to do that we'll set this to children are going to be react dot react node like this um, actually we're not going to return this anymore we're going to return a main and we're going to say um, children just like this so now when this grows you see our title section can be reused for every single device so back in our page.tsx let's do the following so let's create a div and i'm also going to hide this so you guys can see and i'm going to say class name we're going to say bg dash white padding is going to be two pixels and then margin top is going to be six rounded is going to be dash xl bg dash gradient to r from dash primary to dash brand dash primary blue like this and um, we're also going to say from small devices we want this to have a width 300 pixels button like this variant btn secondary class name is going to be width dash full and now we want to say rounded dash 10 pixels padding dash sick text dash 2xl and bg dash, dash uh, background okay so you see that right there awesome so we're going to say get cypress 
free. Okay, so the rounded here didn't work because of this error. So let's go ahead and say rounded dash Excel. Let's say margin top of six. I think this is this is better. After this div, so right after the button, guys, there's the div here. So hit enter from there and create another div. And we're going to say class name from medium devices. Margin top is going to be negative uh, 90 pixels. Okay, we're going to hit enter here. Oh, I'm sorry about this. This is MD, not MG. And then we need to say from small devices, we want the width to be full. We want the width by default to be 7 50 pixels and then we want flex justify center items center and then margin top is going to be negative 40 pixels relative sm ml so margin left of zero pixels and we're going to say margin left of um negative 50 pixels like this inside this we're going to create an image which comes from next image just like this and we're going to say src we're going to provide a source for it and we're going to say alt and this is going to be called application banner so you want to go to the github repo go to public and you want to get the app banner right here so click on the app banner and just right click and download this drag this app banner in here import banner from um, this is public slash app banner dot png just like this and now we can take this banner and we can put the banner in here and now let's refresh the page and now you can see this banner right here next we want to create this fading effect on the image so if you look in here you see we have this fading um kind of um you know look to the image so let's go ahead and do that so to do that all we're going to do is say div right here and say class name equal to bottom dash zero top dash 50 percent bg dash gradient dash two dash two dash t sorry dark from dash background left dash zero then we're going to say right dash zero here absolute and then we're going to say z 10. And now you see we have that beautiful gradient right at the bottom it's kind of like a fading effect so i'm just going to go ahead and shrink this div here so we can create more and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create another div like this and we're going to give it a class name of relative okay and this is going to be the second part what we're going to have here is basically these client logos so go ahead and download all of these and move it into your public folder so what we can do right here is i want to change some stuff right here because this is actually not a section this is the main tag so our layout is actually wrapped with the main tag so what we're going to do is we're going to select this section right here and now we're going to just return a react fragment i don't want to pollute the um the jsx in any way and now instead of these being divs these can be sections and this one can be a section as well now this makes uh this has more semantic meaning than what we had before go into this section and we want to create a div here and say class name and say overflow hidden hit enter and uh, i'm just gonna do flex here and after we're going to set this to content like this with an empty string after we want to say dark from dash brand dash let's see do we have dark yep we have brand dash dark and uh, then we want to say after is to dash transparent after dash from dash background ck background like this and then we want to say after bg dash gradient dash two left after right dash zero after bottom dash zero after width dash 20. after is going to be z dash 10. just copy this right here and we could just paste it in here so change all these afters to before and then before bg gradient to instead of left to right um so bottom zero like this and we can do the same here change this to after and then after this bottom instead of right here we want to have left actually let's do this absolute and we want to do the same for this one so after 
Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go to the GitHub repository, going to go into Cypress. I really recommend you do this too because it's going to save you so much time. And you're going to copy this clients right here. And we're going to create a file in our libs. And we're going to call this constants.typescript. Okay, and just paste that in here. And you want to do the same thing for this too, which is a users. This is basically our, our uh, testimonial card, guys. Copy the import statements from here, go to the top, and just paste that right in here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say dot, 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 array of two elements. And we're going to say dot map, invoke this, and then we're going to get a callback function here. So instead of returning this, we're going to just return a div for now, key, We'll, we'll give it something in a second. Not going to work, but we'll give it in a second. And what we want to do here is this is going to be the array, right? So the key, we're just going to say array like this. This one, we're going to give it some class name. Flex, flex, no wrap, animate, slide, which we will create in just a second. Right in between this, we're going to get the clients, C-L-I-E-N, clients from our li library constants dot map want to return a div in here again key equal to client dot alt the class name relative width is going to be 200 pixels margin is going to be 20 shrink to uh, zero flex items to center and inside this div we're just going to return an image like this and put source equal to client dot logo and the alt is going to be client dot alt and the width is going to be 200 and the class name is going to be object dash contain a max width of none all right also one more thing we made a tiny error here what we did is we put the entire array in here yep so we want to take that out and put it right before this one we'll fix this in a second just remove that comma from there Awesome. There we go. But you can see this gradient effect in the side, right? This is what we just created with um, all of this stuff right here. So head over to your globals.css file. We're going to create an animate slide right here. So we're going to say animate dash slide and we're going to say animation 15 seconds slide linear infinite. We also have to create those keyframes here. So we'll just say keyframes like this and we'll give it the name which is slide um, and in here we're going to say from transform translate x zero and two like this we're going to say transform translate x to negative 100 percent so if we refresh the page and you look at the logos they're going to just keep scrolling like this and when they come to the end it will loop around so now right after this section guys right here we're going to say we're going to create another section and let's give it some styling so we're going to say a uh, px so padding x4 let's do that and we'll, from the small devices, we want the padding to become uh, six pixels or I mean six flex justify center items center flex dash column. Let's go ahead and create a div and give it some styling in here too. So the width is going to be 30% blur of 120 pixels rounded full h-32 absolute bg um, background is going to be brand let's see what colors we have here um, we actually want primary purple but we're going to say uh, by 50 and then we're going to set the z to a negative 10 if you don't know what this is guys i'm going to show you in just a second okay so it's this purple gradient which is basically this thing right here uh, right outside this the title section just like this and provide the title which is going to say um, the following so i'm just going to copy paste this you can of your meetings all in one place so we're going to say pill is equal to features just like this so we have to type div here and set the class name to margin top of 10 max width is going to be 450 pixels justify center 
items center relative and then from small devices the margin left is going to be zero rounded sorry guys let me do that one more time rounded dash 2xl and then border dash 8 border dash washed actually 300 not 800 border opacity set to 10. we're going to say image in here like this the source we're going to get in a second the alt is going to be another banner and um, class name is going to be rounded dash to excel so go to our public folder right here so it's this calendar right here okay go ahead and just download this calendar we're actually just this is just for looks guys it just to make just to make it look um, a little better and let's import this calendar so from banner we're going to change this to cal and we're going to import Cal just like this. And now you can copy this, go to the bottom here. And in your image tag, you can source, you can just paste this calendar right here. And if you refresh it, there you go. How amazing is that, guys? So after this section, go ahead, create another one and say class name relative like this. OK, I think this is the one. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to replace this, but I'm going to change the width to full like this so now we have one more right there um, let, okay let's change this to 56. so this div is just going to be open and inside this we're going to create our title section like this with the title which i'm going to copy from uh here the following you can go ahead and just copy this guys don't go don't don't start typing it out it's going to take a lot of time so i see something wrong with this and i'm going to fix this i think because it's on top of it oh okay my bad so this is actually supposed to be after this div so we have it like this okay and we need to create sort of a container so let's also replace this with a closed tag and um, this container is going to have the following classes, okay? Which is margin top of 20, just like this. Padding X is going to be four. From small devices, padding X is going to be six. We're going to have flex, flex dash column, overflow X hidden, overflow visible, okay? Just like this. And now inside this one, we're going to pass our title section just like this. And let's delete that. Awesome. There you go. And now we need to create those cards, these cards right here. But before that, go back to the public folder and you want to download this avatar folder right here and drag them into your public folder under a folder um, called avatars. So let's go ahead and render out this section, which is basically going to be um, an array of uh, two because we need to have two sections of these so array dot um, array at two just create like this and we're not going to do the same mistake we did before so we're going to do dot map after that return a callback function here and uh, we're going to say array index we're going to get access to both of these and for now we're just going to return a div the key and i'm just going to use random uuid for now um, right here awesome and this is also going to have a class name. And here, guys, we're going to use Tailwind Merge. So we're going to say Tailwind Merge like this. And in here, we're also going to use CLSX. And we're going to invoke that. And in here, we're going to provide margin top of 10, flex, flex, no wrap, gap of 6. And then let's create an object here. And we want to say flex row reverse and we're going to say index equal to one animate like this animate dash slide underscore 250 seconds linear underscore infinity and then we want to set this to true so let's copy this paste it here but here it's going to be underscore reverse and it's only going to be reversed if the index is equal to margin left 100 view width, ones where index is equal to one. And right after this, put a comma here and you wanna say hover paused, okay? So let's say users, which is gonna come from libconstants dot map like this. We're gonna have, we're gonna pass in a, we get access to this callback right here. We're gonna say testimonial and the index we're going to create another component 
call custom card. And this is not here right now, so we're gonna go ahead and build that components into your landing page components and just say custom card.tsx, R-A-F-C-E, custom card component. And let's come back here and let's import this. So we're gonna say key testimonial dot name. In our custom card, we're going to use ShadCN to create a, a card for us. So the card, and we want this, so let's copy this NPM. Let's open this, let's exit out of this. Let's paste this in here. You can use type here for now. Card props equal to react.component um, props like this. And um, this is going to be a type of for the card. So card is going to come from here, say, type custom card props equal to card props and the following card header react dot react node and then we're going to have a bunch right here so i'm going to call this content footer and let's go ahead and say react dot functional component and we're going to pass in our custom card props in here and let's go ahead and extract class name, card header, the card content, card footer, like this. And then everything else, we're just gonna do dot, 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 props like this. And in here, we're going to remove this and we're gonna say card this. And in here, we're going to say class name equal to CN and we can import that as well. And in here, we're gonna say width is going to be 380 pixels, pass in our class name like this, pass in the props into this card components. Here we want to also bring in our card header like this from UI card, make sure it is UI card and not something else, pass in the card header and then let's import card content and then footer like this, gap four like this, run npm run dev. Awesome, there you go. You can already see something is happening. Our cards are showing up, but of course it looks absolutely horrifying right now, but don't worry about it. We're gonna fix it in just a second. Go back to your component right here. We're going to pass these props into this guys, and we're getting that from users, okay? So if you don't know what users are, it's basically this array of obje objects that has a name and the message, okay, for each of the card. Class name, width is going to be 500 pixels, shrink zero rounded XL dark BG dash gradient uh, but this is going to be to top then we also want to have dark from dash border dark to background there you go you see it's creating that cool effect and now let's go ahead and pass in the other properties which is the card header which is going to be a div like this we'll pass in class we'll say flex items center gap four and inside this div guys we're going to use the avatar so first we need an avatar and a bunch of stuff so go to shadsan ui scroll to the bottom where till you find avatar and we're going to click on this avatar and open this and we want to paste right here and hit enter so let's go ahead and do npm run dev and just run that and let's bring that back so in here we're going to have a div and we just did that right there so we need to provide the avatar now which make sure you don't select radix guys this is why i kept looking at that so components okay components slash ui that one and then you want to say avatar image and this is going to have a source and this source is actually going to be a dynamic string so slash um avatars slash dollar sign index plus one and um, at the end we just want to put dot png okay and then we want to have avatar fallback from components ui and in here all we're going to do is we're, we're just going to pass an av or something like this okay so we see some errors here guys um i'll go ahead and fix this just give me one second okay so you see i made an the same issue that i told you guys not to do which is to not import anything from radix ui and from shad cn only so go ahead remove that and just paste it in here so once this avatar is done we want to create another div here. And inside this, you want to say card title like this, put something in here. So what we're gonna say is testimonial.name, and we're going to give this a class name with text foreground. Then we want to say card description, and this class name is going to be dark text dash washed purple 800. Inside this card description, we're going to pass our testimonial 
dot name dot to lowercase. After that, we want to go to this card. So right here we we had card header. So I'm just going to shrink this, and now we want to have card content, a paragraph with a class name set to dark text dash washed purple. 800 inside this paragraph we're just going to say testimonial dot message like this there you have it guys look how beautiful that looks so right after this section go ahead and create another one for our pricing cards give it a class name of mt-20 px dash 4 sm px is going to be six and inside this one we want to say title section so i'm just going to copy this title section right here into the bottom right here and the text for this guys is just going to be this so you can go ahead and just copy this from the github repo uh, just save yourself some time we're going to say div create a class name and we're going to say flex flex dash column reverse from small devices we want it to be flex row we want the gap to be four justify to be center on small devices we want items to be centered oh sorry items to be stretch items to be center and margin top to be 10 just like this and inside this div go ahead and open this and say pricing cards and we're going to import this from um, our github repositories so what this basically has guys is just an array of objects okay and the array has um, the plan type, the pricing, description, whatever, and the features, which is an array, which we're just going to render across. Pricing cards dot map. And in this function, we get access to the card. And we're just going to return a custom card like this. And we're going to say class name equal to the CLSX and invoke this like this. And here we're going to say width is going to be 300 pixels rounded to Excel dark BG dash black slash 95 backdrop blur dash three Excel relative. And after this inside um, this part right here, we're going to put an object like this. And also this needs a key. So let's let's just do that right now. Card um, dot plan type like this. And now in here we want to say border dash brand dash primary purple primary purple uh, 70 so this is going to be true when the card dot plan type is equal to this is going to be pricing plans like this okay you can go ahead go back into our constant file and we can just copy the rest of these might as well right so copy this Go to our constants file right here and all the way at the bottom, just paste that right there. Port it. So we're going to say dot um, pro plan. Awesome. So when it's a pro plan, it's going to be of that type. Cool. Now we have our card set up. Let's set the properties for it as well. Card header equal to, and we need to say card title like this. Okay. And this is going to basically have the following. Um, styling on it so text 3xl font dash semi bold and inside this title we want to pass in a bunch of stuff so card dot plan type equal to we're going to say pricing plans dot pro plan and what we're going to return is basically a react fragment and inside this react fragment we're going to have a div so it's going to have hidden by default dark set to block the width is going to be full blur of 120 pixels this is very similar to what we created before guys if you remember a full height of 32 actually let's do this so you can see more here and then um absolute like this and then we're going to set the bg to be brand primary purple we're going to take 80 of that negative z of negative 10 and then we're going to say top zero right here and just close this tag here and let's say image like this and say source is equal to a diamond which we're going to get in just a second and the alt is going to be pro plan icon like that okay and the class name is going to be absolute top dash six right dash six so let's go ahead and get this image so the diamond again comes from 
our Cypress public folder. So let's go ahead and grab that real quick. All right, guys, so I just created, I just dragged those two check and diamond inside an icons folder inside the app, inside the public. And uh, let's go ahead and use that, okay? So let's go back to our code. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this in public. We're gonna say slash icons like this slash diamond.svg and we're gonna call this diamond just like this. Right after this, you wanna say card dot plan type so it says pro plan and free plan looks amazing right <laughs> cool and now after this part right here you want to say a uh, card footer is equal to an unordered list and this is going to have small tag inside it and this is going to have the following styling so font is going to be normal and then we're going to set this to flex and then margin bottom of two flex dash call gap dash four just like this okay awesome and then inside the small tag card dot highlight features let's just see what that does okay so it just shows the highlighted feature right there right below this sorry we want to say card dot features dot map so we get access to the feature here and what we're going to return is actually a list item right here key and that key is going to be equal to feature just like this class name flex items center gap dash two awesome and inside this list item go ahead and just create an image so we don't need this actually we'll just say image like this and set it to source equal to and we're going to get the check icon which i also copied from the file uh, from the github repository set this one to check icon right here we'll change this to check icon and let's get the check.svg right from here after this guys inside the list okay after the image just say feature like this this is actually the card footer so let's say card content say card content like this and then we'll say class name is p0 and in here we're going to have span tag class name equal to font dash normal and then we want to say text dash dash to excel and inside this span you want to say card dot price after the span you want to basically say plus card dot price greater than zero if so then we want to do something if not we want to do something else well we're going to return another span in here just like this with a class name sorry this is price guys right here and the class name set to dark text dash washed dash purple dash 800 like this and then um, we will also give it a margin left of one okay and inside this we want to have some text here so we're just going to say slash mo like this so there you go it says that price with that with that right there after this just say p and say class name dark text dash washed dash purple and we want 800 from this and in here we're going to say card dot description yeah let's put a dollar sign right here okay looks so much better because of that row reverse we show the pro plan first and then we show the free plan and finally we also need to put a button right after this so that you know they can click on that button class name white space no wrap width is full and margin top is four just like this okay and inside this guys we're going to say card dot plan type if it's equal to pricing plans dot pro plan well we're going to say go pro like this and in here we're going to say get started just like that um, we also need to provide a variant so the variant here is going to be button primary awesome guys so it looks sort of similar to this right <laughs> it looks great maybe you can maybe we can change the background of this card so let's see what's wrong with that so maybe we can change this to 60 40 yep this looks better guys so you can set it to 40 and that kind of has a better glow effect behind it so the next thing we're going to do is set up authentication for our application from scratch so what we need to do is we want to copy this uh, command and we're going to execute this command right in here okay so we're going to open our terminal and um, i'm going to go ahead and also shut down the server like this and say npm i at superbase 
slash auth dash helpers dash next js and then add superbase slash superbase i think it's uh, dot js yeah superbase dash js actually all right and go ahead and hit enter and let that install all right everything looks great so let's go into our auth folder under the app directory so source app and auth and we want to create a login route right here login and inside that a page.tsx and in here i'm using rafce which is basically uh, react snippets um, so we're going to say login page just like this and now we're going to create the entire um, system or the entire page for this login route okay so how we're going to do this first is by saying const router equal to use router and this has to come from next navigation guys and this is going to be a client component okay use clients up top just like this and um, now the next thing is we need to say const submit error and set submit error equal to use state import that and it's going to be an empty string in the beginning so to create our form we're going to need some helpers from uh, from the chat ui library so you're going to scroll here in chat ui under components you're going to go to form right here and um, where is that right here and then you're going to scroll down to where it has the npm command copy that and paste that in here now if you go to your package.json you will also see um, a couple um, new packages that are added to our project which is react hook forms and also i think um yeah hook forms right here and now we're going to import star as z from zod const form equal to use form we're going to invoke this and we're going to say z dot infer like this type of form schema uh, which we're going to create in just a second okay but uh, right before that we're going to come in here and we're going to say mode we're going to set this to on change and now we want to import zod resolver resolver from hook forms slash zod just like this Awesome. So it's saying something here. Oh, Zon resolver. Okay. And we want to go down here and say resolver equal to um, Zod resolver, invoke it. And then we're going to say form schema. Again, we're going to come to this. Just give me one second. And then we're going to say default values is going to be set to email, which is going to be an empty string and password to an empty string as well, okay? So this form schema, where are we going to create? Well, we're going to actually create some types here. So let's shrink this, open our source file, and in our uh, libs file, we can have um, inside this, we can basically create a new file and say types.typescript. So we're going to say export const form schema equal to z, that comes from zod, dot object, invoke that, and we want to say email z dot string you need to invoke that and we're going to say describe set that to email with a capital maybe we can say oh yeah it already has an email on it and then we'll put a message here which is invalid email and the next one is password which is going to be z dot string again and we're going to describe this as password uh, with a capital P and then we're going to say minimum of one password is required and we can import this form schema from our file there you go so that's the power of this form schema okay and now we're also going to need some is loading states so uh, is loading actually comes from the form itself so we're going to say form dot form state dot is submitting so we're going to say um, on submit is submit handler which comes from react hook forms z dot infer just like this and this is going to be type of form schema set this equal to function just like this and that's going to have the form data as a parameter and we're going to get back to this in a second let's go ahead and build this form right here npm run dev let's refresh this we go to the login page like this we will see the login page right here awesome this is exactly what we want form which comes from uh, the form which comes from components ui form okay so let's use this 
And um, in here, we want to pass in everything from the new form that we just created. So let's create another form here. In this, we're going to have an on submit and we're going to set that to form dot handle submit and put in our on submit function right in here. We're also going to give this a class name of with full justify center from small devices. We want the width to be 400 pixels space dash y dash six flex flex dash column like this. And in here we're going to say on change and we're going to say if submit error, then we're just going to say set submit error to an empty string. OK, and um, in here we're going to now create the link which comes from next link like this. And we're going to set its href to be equal to um, just a backslash like this. And we're going to say class name with full flex justify left items center, just like this image, which comes from next image. We're going to say source, which will come to any second. The alt is going to be the Cypress logo with a width of 50 and a height of 50 just like this. OK, and what you want to do is click on the Cypress logo SVG, download this image right here. Logo. OK, from dot dot slash dot dot slash. And um, you want to go into the public directory slash Cypress logo SVG. Put the logo in there and let's go and see what that looks like. Awesome. So you see when you click it, it goes back to the home page. OK, cool. And now you want to basically create a span in here and say um, Cypress just like this font semi bold dark text white and then text for Excel ML. So margin left of two. OK, so it's like this. So let's go to our layout.tsx file and we're going to basically import a new uh, font from here, guys. And that's what we're going to use throughout our entire application. So we're going to import from next font slash Google like this. And the font we use in our Figma file is DM Sans. So let's get DM Sans right here. You want to say DM underscore Sans like this. And this can stay as is awesome. And just go ahead and refresh it, guys, and that will update the font to the newer font. Now come to the class name here and we want to uh, we want to use Tailwind Merge and we're going to basically say BG background and we're going to set the inter class name right in here. Now let's go back to our um, to our file. Now after the link down here, I'm going to say form description and I'm going to basically give this a class name of text dash foreground slash 60 and all platform. You can also copy paste this stuff, guys. We're just doing it right here, but uh, no problem. You can copy paste it. OK, and then we're going to use the form field form item form control inputs. And this is not here right now, so we're going to see an error. So let's go to Shad UI and install that input field. Okay. Awesome, guys, that's done. And now let's go back to our code. And let's import this input from components UI inputs. And now we need to provide these props for this one. OK, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say disabled is equal to um, equal to is loading. So the loading that we got from the form itself so that when we are setting the API request, we block the form right form dot control like this. And then we want to say name. This name is going to be the email field. Render something in here, um, a callback function that gives us access to this field like this. Now, whatever we put in here, guys, you want to just go ahead and copy this and replace this and paste it in here. For the form inputs, we need to also provide its properties. So let's say type equal email like this. Placeholder is equal to email. OK. And finally, we need to do dot 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 field. So we need to use a spread operator and put everything in here. Also, this is not needed, so we can just close this right here. And then let's refresh our browser. Awesome. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a template file that we can use for our authentication system. OK, so let's go in here to the auth 
right here, this auth directory, and we're going to create a file, and this file is going to be called template.tsx, okay? And we, we can use RAFCE, and, and we're going to change this to template, okay? Just like this. Awesome. Say interface template props, and we're going to say children is react.react .react node. Here we're going to say react.fc, and we're going to pass in our template props in here. And now we can extract children from here. Awesome. And what we're going to return here is basically, um, we can return this div, but it's going to have a class name. And the class name is height is going to be screen. The uh, P is going to, so padding is going to be six. Flex justify center. In here, we want to remove this template and we want to have the children in here. So now you see this template will be used everywhere for our login page and our uh, sign up page as well. So after this form control right here, guys, right before this form item and in between this, we want to have the form message and let's create the other form field right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this form field paste it down here. I'm going to change the email to password like this and change this one to password right here. Form item like this here to the placeholder is going to be password. And you can also see that in the browser. Awesome. So it says password and it changes. Cool. So right after this form field right below it, you want to basically have a submit error, which will come to in a second form message. Okay. Like this and we're going to pass in the submit error in here. Okay. And this submit error is actually um, for when after we submit it and if we get any response from the database. Okay. So let's go down here and we're going to use the button guys and type equal submit class name with full and padding six. And inside this, we're also going to have a loading spinner or some text. Okay. So let's set the size equal to large set disabled is equal to is loading like this. Okay. Now you want to go into your components folder. We're going to create this and say loader.tsx and then you can do RAFCE. This is just an SVG file that I found online that makes it really easy to use loading uh, to create a loading spinner. I didn't want to download a whole install a whole library for it, but you can just go into the components file and you can copy and paste that. So right here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the return from here and just paste that right in here. If is loading, so if it's not set to true, then we want to return login or if not, we want to return the loader that we just created. After this button, guys, you want to create a span right here and say class name self contained. So we're going to say don't have an account, a link like this href set to slash sign up, which we'll also build in a second. And then we want to have the class name set to text dash primary. And inside this link, we're going to say sign up. So the next thing we're going to do is some sort of setup, uh, some modifications to our global buttons. So for our default button, let's go ahead and remove whatever's in here. And let's just set that to um, white space. It's not going to give us any intelligence. That's really bad, but uh, white space, no wrap like this, and then BG dash primary, and then text dash LG text dash primary dash foreground, say shadow dash two XL. And this shadow is actually going to be a color shadow. Okay. So it's going to be shadow dash indigo dash 600 divided by 50. And then we're going to say border dash two, hover, we're going to set that to border dash foreground rounded is going to be set to LG. So I actually don't like this border here. So I'm just going to remove that border. So yeah, that looks so much better. Also guys, if you don't want to type all this stuff, you can go ahead and just copy it from the GitHub repo. But uh, I just want to show you so you know what's actually happening in the code. Okay. So right after this one, we're going to create two more variants. And the first one is called BTN primary. This is slightly different from our original primary, and it's going to basically have um, the following properties. Okay. So white space is going to be no wrap. Hover is going to be set to text primary foreground, just like this. And then we need um, dark is going to be set to um, BG gradient to top 
and for dark we're gonna have it from dash and you can put this uh, in here which is dollar sign two sorry hashtag two four two three two C like this and then we want to have dark which is going to be two dash like this and we're going to say hashtag um, we're going to create this hex code right here which is hef uh, hetch I'm sorry f18 just like this and then finally dark text dash primary dash foreground like this border and then hover border sorry border is going to be primary dark and we're going to set this one to border dash another hex code four six four five five three like this and then we're going to say um, dark hover bg dash accent and then hover bg dash primary like this and then dark hover like this we're going to say border dash muted dash foreground like this okay and then text will be large and uh, we're going to also make the font normal i think yeah this is good let's create one more and this one is going to be called btn dash btn dash secondary like this and this is going to come in handy when we're creating a landing page okay but for now just follow through with me and i'll show you what it looks like later so white space will be set to no wrap dark is text dash primary um dash foreground i forgot a k there and then text will be lg and then font will be normal okay just like this awesome the next step is you want to go in here into your uh, folder right here and inside the lib folder you want to create another folder in here called server actions inside that we're going to create um auth actions just like this dot typescript okay first we have to say use server up top and then we need to export async function called action login user this is basically going to give us the email and password just like this this is going to infer something so we're going to say z dot so first let's import z from zod dot infer type of form schema from our types and now this will resolve itself so we're going to import create route handler client from superbase auth helpers nextjs and now we're going to say con superbase equal to create route handler client and we need cookies in here guys then we need to say const response is equal to await superbase dot auth dot sign in with password invoke that and you want to pass in the email and the password just like this turn response uh return the response just like this so now in our um, login page right our page.tsx we're going to do the following so we're going to first uh, extract this error that comes from await login user invoke that and we're going to pass in the form data like this and we're going to await this if error exists form dot reset set submit um submit oh set oh i made a mistake here that su yep i made <laughs> made a mistake here so let's go in here and let's change all instances of this to submit error like this awesome so set that to error dot message and finally if there is no error we're going to say router dot replace and replace it with dashboard just like this which we're going to come to in just a second so once we're done creating this you will see this error and the reason is because this server action is still in beta all you have to do is scroll to your next config and you want to provide experimental which is an object here and you want to say server actions and set it to true and let's say npm run dev and let's spin this up and this should actually fix our problem awesome guys now you can see everything works as expected 
All right, guys, next we're going to build the navigation for our landing page. So let's go ahead, open this right here. I'm just going to shrink this real quick, open source, go to components. And in here we have the landing page. We're going to create header.tsx and we're going to use RAFCE and change header just like this. Okay. And in this header right up top here, so const routes equal to an array. And then this is going to be an array of objects with the title prop set to something. And then um, the next property is the href, which is going to be set to another string. Okay. So in the title for the first one, we're going to have features. And this href is going to be hashtag features just like this. Okay. And all we're going to do is copy this right here. And we're going to paste it as a second element. And we're going to do that a bunch of times. Okay. The second one is going to be resources like this and go ahead and change this to resource resources like this. And then this is going to be pricing and this is going to be pricing as well and testimonials testimonials like this. Okay, this is extra. So we'll just go ahead and delete that. So we're also going to create a const here called components equal to an object with the title set to string, the href set to a string to and then sorry, this is not going to be equal. This is going to be like this. And this is going to be an array of this right here. And let's go ahead and update this. And now we want to have description set to a, an array of these values right here. Okay. And so let's create the array here. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this guys. You can copy this from um, the GitHub repository. I'm just going to paste it here to save you a lot of time. Awesome. And now for the header in here, what we're going to do is first say const path set path equal to use state like this. And this is going to be string. So what we're going to set this to is hashtag products just like this. And in here, we're going to return the entire header. So let's change this here to header like this and give it a class name of P4 flex justify center items center. And in here, we're going to have an image tag right here, which comes from next image. We're going to put that right inside this. Okay. And going to have a container, which is the link tag, which again comes from the next link like this. And we're going to say href is going to be this backslash right here. And now we can move this image inside this link. Okay. And SRC equal to logo, which we're going to get in a second like this. Alt is going to say um, Cypress logo. We're going to have the width set to 25 and the height set to 25. Awesome. And then finally, we're going to create a span with the class name of font set to semi bold. And then dark is going to be text dash white. And in here, we're going to say Cypress dot. Okay, so we're creating this, but we also need to render this out, right? So we need to see what we're doing. So first, let's go ahead and import this logo right at right up top just like this public Cypress logo, we need to go ahead and render this header component. So let's go into app layout.tsx, sorry, the layout.tsx under the site. And in here, we're basically going to create header from components landing just like this. Awesome. Cool. So let's go ahead and see what's the issue. So this needs to be a client component because we used state in there. So let's say use clients up top and that should fix our problem. Um, okay, it also says that it cannot find this logo here. So we're going to do this manually, which is dot dot slash public slash Cypress logo just like this. Now you can see it up here. So let's go ahead and fix all these the styling now. Okay. So on this link tag, you want to give it a class name and set the width to full justify left items center. And now that will be on the left side. Also, let's give this flex right here. Okay, so that goes side by side. And maybe we'll give it a gap of two. Okay, perfect. All right, now let's move to the next section. So now we're going to create navigation menu right here. Okay, and this actually comes from a uh, chat UI. So let's go ahead and install these components. 
So head over to Shad CN UI, scroll to the bottom and click on navigation menu, and then click on this NPM command right here. And we're going to close this and paste this right here. Okay, so let that go ahead and install the components for us. Awesome. Now we're going to go here and copy this from here. And we're just going to paste it up top. Okay, just like that. So we're importing all the elements that we need. And now we can go ahead and build our header. So the navigation menu is going to have a class name of hidden MD set to block just like this. And then um, inside this navigation menu, we're going to have navigation menu list just like this. This is going to have a class name of gap set to six like this navigation menu item. OK, like this. And this menu item is going to have a navigation menu trigger inside this like this and this is going to have an on click put it right in here we're just going to say set path to hashtag um, resources like this okay basically guys this we're kind of setting it to the id of the element okay and that way you can navigate to if you want to after the on click we want to have class name and we're going to set that equal to cn import that invoke it and we're going to pass an object right in here and we're going to say dark text dash white and this is going to be just like this we're going to say path equal to resources like this okay and the next one is dark text dash white um, 40 and this is when the path is not equal to the ID resources just like this. Okay. Font here is going to be normal like this. Set this to true. And then text is going to be extra large and set this to true as well. Okay. Awesome. And right at the bottom here, guys, in between the trigger, we're going to put resources just like this. So let's see what this looks like. For that, we have to run npm run dev and re uh, refresh the browser. So now, guys, when you extend the screen, you will see the nav bar show up. And then when you shrink this, it disappears. OK, so let's go ahead and build the other sections as well. So right after this trigger, you want to say navigation menu content like this. And this is going to have an unordered list and it's going to have a class name of grid and then it's going to have gap three padding six medium devices the width is going to be set to 400 pixels uh, on large devices the width is going to be set to 500 pixels on large devices the grid is going to be call dash uh, sorry calls grid calls dash like this and we're going to say dot 75 fr underscore one fr okay just like this. And now we want to create a list item in here and give it the class name of row dash span dash three, create a span, for example, and just give it a class name of flex height, full width, full select none like this. And then we're going to give it some additional styling right here, which is flex dash call justify and rounded dash MB BG dash gradient dash two dash B from dash muted slash 50. This is going to be two dash muted P dash six no dash underline like this. And then we're going to have outline dash none focus is going to be shadow dash MD. Okay. And inside this, we're just going to say welcome or something. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. When you click on this, you see it kind of shows um, this section right here. Okay. Awesome. So let's shrink this and continue. And after this, we're going to create a custom component called list item right here. It's not here, but we're going to create it in just a second. So you want to scroll to the bottom and you want to say const list item equal to react dot dot forward ref like this react dot element ref and you want to pass a in here you want to put a comma react dot component props without ref like this and pass an a again right inside this one and then after this you want to invoke this and pass in a callback function 
and this callback function will give you access to class name, title, children, and everything else is going to be inside props. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do in here is we're also going to say ref right after this. So let's return a list item like this. Let's go to the bottom here and say list item dot display name equal to we're going to say list item just like this. Okay, so this should solve um, this weird TypeScript error. And inside this list item, we basically want to say navigation menu link just like this. And we're going to set as child um, as the prop here. And this is going to be an A tag um, that's going to have a ref set to the ref that's being passed in class name equal to CN and then put a string and say group block select none space dash y dash one font dash medium leading dash none. Okay. And right after this, we're also going to expand on the props into this component. Okay. And in here inside this a tag, we're going to have a div and give this a class name of text dash white text dash dash sm font dash medium leading dash none in here okay and in here we're basically going to pass in the title and after this div we're going to create a p a paragraph tag and say class name group dash hover text dash white dash 70 and then line dash clamp two dash two, sorry, and then text dash SM leading dash snug. And finally, text dash white slash 40. Okay. And inside this paragraph, we're just going to go ahead and render out the children that we get in. Great. Now let's go back and let's reuse this component up top. So inside this list item, we want to pass the href and we're going to set that to hashtag for now. And then title will be equal to introduction like this and um, this list item inside inside this list item we're going to have reusable components or just copy some string guys okay and i'm just going to go ahead and copy this three times and paste this below each other and they're just going to have some different text in here and some different href okay awesome and let's go back to the ul so the ul ends here we have the content the item. So after this item, you want to go ahead and create a navigation trigger like this. And inside this, you want to say on click like this and set that to another callback function. And this callback function is going to set the path to um, the ID pricing. Okay. And inside this, we also have, want to have the class name. And this class name is going to be very similar to what we had before, guys. Exactly the same thing, but except for one thing, we're just going to change the IDs to pricing. Okay, awesome. Let's go back to this trigger. And inside the trigger, we want to say pricing just like this. All right, guys, we want to create a navigation menu item. So sorry, this was an error here. And you want to drag this trigger inside this just like this. Awesome. Cool. So now when we expand this, we can see the pricing right there. So now when we expand the screen, we can see the, the resources and the pricing. So let's go ahead and complete this component too. So after this trigger, guys, go ahead and say navigation menu content like this. And inside this, we're going to have an unordered list like this with a class name of grid width of dash 400 pixels gap dash three p dash four on medium we want grid dash row dash two like this and let's um, go ahead and um, expand this and inside this we want to have a list item again and we're going to say title like this equal to a string after this guys so what i did was i just uh, pasted this again right below this and we're going to change this we don't need a key right here. Um, so let's remove this key from here. So after this item, guys, go ahead and create a navigation menu item again. And inside this, we want a, um, a navi, a navigation menu 
content. We're going to create we're going to create navigation menu content inside this with a UL and we're going to set the class name to grid width is going to be dash 400 pixels. The gap is going to be three P is going to be four MDW is going to be 500 pixels. MD um, is going to be set grid dash calls dash two. LG is going to be set to width of um, sorry, not like this, like like this. LG is going to be set to width of 600 pixels, just like this. And what we're going to do inside this unordered list is we're going to say components dot map. We're going to map over this and we're going to basically uh, provide a callback function here that gives us the component. And this is going to return a list item again. OK, and this list item now will have the key in here. So we'll say component component dot title just like this. And um, the title here is going to be the component dot title. And we're going to say href is equal to um, component dot href just like this. Awesome. And um, inside this list item, we're going to say component dot um, description guys right here. Great job so far. So let's move on to creating the final part of this, which is the testimonials. Now, after this menu item, you want to go ahead and create um, navigation menu item just like this. And this is going to um, actually no class for this. We're just going to have a link right here. And this link is going to have href set to an ID. So just put a hashtag right here for now. And inside this list item, we're going to create a navigation um, menu uh, link just like this. And this is going to have a class name. And we're going to set this to CN like this, invoke it. And we're going to say um, navigation menu trigger style just like this. OK, we're going to invoke this too. We're going to put this here and an object right in here. And we're going to say dark text dash white like this path equal to equal to hashtag testimonials. OK, and then the next one is going to be dark text dash white slash 40 path is not equal to testimonials. OK. And then we're going to say font dash normal and set it to true and then text dash extra large set that to true as well. Awesome. And inside here, we're going to say testimonials just like this. So now we have three um, navigation items right here. OK, that's more than enough, actually. So let's move on to creating our login button and our sign up buttons. So right here under navigation menu, you want to create a side like this class name, set it to flex. And we want to give this a width of full gap of two and justify end just like this. And inside this aside, you want to have a link component. So link just like this with an href set to slash um, login, which we will come to just in a second. And inside this, we're going to basically set a button. And then we want to say variant equal to button secondary, just like this. And we want to set the class name to p dash one hidden and sm block like this. And inside this, let's say login. OK, so now when you go ahead and expand this, you will see the login button right there. Looks amazing. So um, right after this link, guys, we're going to create another link in here. And this link is going to have an href of backslash sign up like this. Again, we'll come to this in a second. And we're going to use a button here that says sign up just like this. Variant is going to be BTN primary like this. And a class name is and we're going to set the class name to white space dash no wrap. OK. 
And now you can see here, guys, we have our beautiful buttons and our navigation all set and ready to go. Now, when you click on this, obviously, it's not going to work because you're going to get an error because these pages, um, of course, the login has been created, but the sign up has not been created. So let's go ahead and do that right away. Uh, that error is coming up because we have a link inside another link. Okay, so let's just go ahead and remove this from here and that should solve our hydration problem. Awesome, guys. Let's move on to the next step now. Next, we're going to create the sign up route right here. So go into your auth and say sign up and inside that say page.tsx and RAFCE and we'll say sign up just like this. Okay, so first we're just going to create our form schema so we can just do it right up here. No problem. So we're going to say const um, sign up form schema equal to Z from Zod dot object. And we're going to invoke this and we're going to say email should be set to Z dot string like this invoke that dot describes is just a string email dot email like this and the message is going to be invalid email okay let me shrink this so that you guys can see much more clear and the next one is going to be password which is going to be z dot string like this dot describe which is going to be a password right here like this and this is also going to have a minimum of six characters and password must be minimum six characters just like this okay awesome and right after this we also want to have the confirm password which is going to be z dot string like this dot describe in here which is going to be confirm password and dot minimum is going to be six password must be let's just copy this right here must be six characters long just like this and now we're going to pass an additional uh, refine method right here and this is going to help us do a uh, much more advanced validation so let's say data here data dot password should be equal to data dot confirm password okay and if not we're going to basically say message and we're going to say passwords don't don't match just like this okay and after this we're going to we also need to provide this path here so the path here is actually going to be um, the confirm password so it know, knows where to get that from awesome and now let's move on to this sign up component right here so in here first we're going to have const router equal to use router that comes from next navigation and um, then we're going to say const search params equal to use search params and i'll show you why we need this here guys um, the reason is because superbase will basically reroute us to this page and we can use the help of the params to determine if there is any sort of error okay so let's just do that right here const code exchange error is equal to use memo which comes from react and we're just going to give this callback function with an empty dependency for now. And in here, we're going to say, if there is no search params, just return a string, okay? Um, let's do that one more time. Let's return a string right here. And then we're going to return search params dot get. We're gonna say error underscore B-T-I-O-N. And inside this dependency array, we're going to pass in the search params so that it can do it every single time this changes. Okay. And then after this, we're also going to create some other states. So let's um, go up here and say const submit error and set submit error. Okay. Equal to use state just like this. And this is going to be an empty string for now. And then we're going to say const confirmation and set confirmation is equal to use state like this which is also going to be a boolean so we're just going to set this to false for now 
Okay, and um, let's go down here. Right after this code exchange, we're going to create some uh, confirmation styling, some special styling. Okay, so const confirmation and error styles equal to use use memo, and this is again going to give us this right here, and we're going to we're going to return clsx right here, and we're going to say bg dash primary like this and we're going to create an object here and this object is going to have bg dash red dash 500 divided by 10 and this is going to be set to code exchange um, exchange error so this one right here okay let's copy that and paste that right in here awesome and then we have a couple more so we're going to have border dash red dash 500 dash 50 and we're going to set this to um, this, I'm sorry, not dash 50 divided by 50 like this and same thing code exchange error and then text red 700 and this is the same thing here. Okay, so now if we go here, let's see if we see our sign up page. Okay, so of course this needs to be changed to use clients because we're using all these um, use states. All right, perfect. So I see it right in here. And um, next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and create our form. So we want to say const form equal to use form just like this. Let's invoke this for now. And in here, we're going to first import this from React hook forms. And then we're going to say Z dot infer type of sign up form schema just like this. And inside this, we're going to pass an object and say mode is going to be on change and resolver is going to actually come from um, Zod resolver like this from hook forms resolver. We're going to invoke this and pass in the sign up form schema. OK, and after this, the default values is going to be set to email, which is an empty string password, which is also an empty string and the confirm password, which is also going to be an empty string. And um, let's go right below this. And then we're going to create a function here, which is the on submit. So we're just going to say const on submit for now. And we'll come to this in a second. OK, so let's go to the bottom. Let's also create the sign up handler. So we're going to say const sign up handler. And we're going to uh, basically just set this to an empty arrow function for now. OK, so now let's go ahead and change these right here. So first form, which comes from opponents UI form is going to basically be everything inside the form. And in here, we're going to have the form right here like this. And we're going to say on change equal to an error function that basically checks if if submit error, then we're going to set submit error to an empty string just like this. OK, and then on submit is going to be this new function that we created here, which is going to be form dot handle submit. We're going to invoke that and say on submit right here. OK, and right after this, we're going to have some class names for this, which is with full SM justify dash center SM dash W is going to be set to 400 pixels. Just uh, we also have to add an extra dash there. And then we want to say space dash y dash six flex flex call like this. Awesome. And now, guys, if you re if you remember, this is basically the same thing um, as our previous one. Right. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. And we're just going to do a slight bit of variation. OK, so let's go to our login form, which is right here. Let's go ahead and copy everything inside our form just like this. Let's go back to our sign up and let's paste it inside our form. OK, we're also going to need to in, uh, import some stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So link comes from next link image comes from next image. And then, of course, we don't have logo for now, but we'll come to that in just a second. And then we need form description form field and then we need the form item which also comes from um, the component slash ui and just go ahead and import all of this guys and make sure you're importing it from at components 
um, UI. Okay, and the form message as well. Um, yeah, we'll come to this submit error stuff in just a second. And let's go ahead and also import our button from here. And this is loading state. Let's go ahead and pull it right from the form right up here. Okay, so after we say form, let's say const is loading is equal to form dot form state dot is submitting like this. Okay. Now we have that variable, so that should solve one of the problems. And let's go ahead and get this logo. And this logo, you know where to get it from. So let's go up top right here. I'm going to say import something like this from dot dot slash public slash Cypress logo. And we're just going to call this logo like this. So one of our errors are solved. And the other one is this loader component. So let's import that one just like that. Great job, guys. And now we need to just change up some stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So right after this form description, guys, we're going to have something in here. So we're going to say if no confirmation and and no code exchange error, just like this. Um, why is this not showing? I'm just going to copy it from here. Maybe then it would show. Oh, we said const exchange error. That's the reason. So code code exchange error, just like this. Okay. So no code exchange error. Then we're going to return something. So I'm just going to say div for now. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to return a React fragment. And inside this right here, we're going to return a button like this. We're going to give it a type equal to submit class name, which is with full P dash six. And we also want to set the disabled prop to is loading just like this. And in here, we want to again, see if is loading is not true, then we want to do something else. We want to do something else. So if it's, if this is uh, true, we're going to say create account. If not, all right, and right here, we're going to render the loading spinner right here like this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to copy these form fields right here, and we're going to paste it right above this button. So there you go. We have that. And we can also remove our login button because we already created our own button right up here. And it's, this is going to say something else, of course, but let's move to our form fields first, then we'll come to this part. Okay. So for the first form field, we have email and then we have password. And then we also want to have one more, which is for a confirm password. So right here, we're going to set the name here to confirm password, just like this. And this one type password. And this one is going to be confirm password just like this. Okay. Awesome. Great job. And now we have our button at the bottom renders out these, um, the loader or the text. And if there is a submit error, we're going to go ahead and show our error on the page. And here we're going to change this to, um, already have, have an account like this, and we can send the user back to the login page. Okay. And we can say, sign or sorry, log login, just like this. So the user can go back to the login page if they want to, and they can come back to the sign up page. So right above this form, we're also going to do one more thing here. So we're going to say con confirmation or code exchange error. If this exists, then we're going to basically return the following. Okay. So we're going to return a fragment and we're going to have an alert inside this guys. And we can get this alert from um, Shatsy and UI. So let's go ahead and do that. So head over to Shatsy and UI and go to the alert component and copy this component, um, this NPM script right here. We're going to close this and we're going to paste this add alert right in here. Awesome. And once that is done inside this fragment, we're going to say alert, which comes from our components. And we're going to give it a class name, 
And these these class names are basically going to come from the confirmation and error styling. And now inside this alert, go ahead and say if no code exchange error and 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 so we're going to render something we're going to render mail check which comes from a uh, lucid react just like this and let's give it a class name of h-4 with dash 4 okay and after this alert uh, after this icon we're going to have the alert title actually i want to make sure i imported that all right from the right place great and in here we're simply going to have code exchange error I'll put a question mark here and say invalid link or we're going to say something else here which is check your email like this okay after this title go ahead and type alert description like this and in here we're going to remove this and now in our alert description we're going to again say code exchange error or an email confirmation has been sent okay so awesome guys let's go ahead and complete our uh, form sign up okay so our on submit function right here is going to have a bunch of stuff so the first thing we want to do is set this to an async function and uh, we also want to provide email and password that come from these parameters and this guy's right here, this is going to be z.infer like this type of only need the form scheme of uh, stuff, which is the email and password, right? Uh, because the React hook forms will not fire this on submit function if the conditions don't match. So we don't really care about that. We're just going to use this right here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say const and um, in here, we're basically going to make our API request. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. So let's go into our server actions file, which is in here into server actions. And we're going to go ahead and create our action uh, sign up. Okay, so we're going to say export async function equal to this. Sorry. Let's redo this whole part. So export an async function action sign up sign up user. And this is going to be email and the password. OK, and um, this is basically going to be um, Z dot infer type of form schema just like this and now that typescript error is going to be resolved and we're going to say cons super base equal to create route uh, handler client pass in the cookies before we sign up the user guys we can just do this real quick we can say um, const data is equal to await um, super base dot from profiles to select star dot equal and we're going to say email equal email okay so i know this is uh, we're not using db here which is from drizzle i just wanted to show you guys how you can also make queries with superbase okay and don't worry from um the next couple um of the queries we will start using the drizzle okay so next we're going to say if the data dot length exists so if data dot length exists we're going to say return here like this and we're going to return error and we're going to set this to message user already exists and then we're going to pass in the data just like this okay if not we're going to say const response equal to await superbase dot auth dot sign up sign up just like this invoke this and in here we're going to pass in the email and password like this and then we also need to pass in this options which will come um right here so options options like this and this is going to be an object with email redirect to guys so what this link is is basically superbase it needs a link to send the um, the user from the email to so that it can exchange a code and this code is basically going to be done uh, with the help of some logic we're going to get to that right after this so 
let's set the email redirect link to HTTP um, slash. And of course, we need to change this later on. So I'll change that in a second. So localhost um, like this localhost 3000 slash API slash auth slash callback. All right, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and change this link too so that it can be dynamic. So just give me one second. So head over to your .env file and you see this public site URL. We're going to change that and just put our localhost um, in here. Okay. So now we can use this in our file right here. So let's change this to this. And we want to go in here, remove everything that is right here. And we'll say dollar sign process dot env dot next public site URL, just like this. And finally, we also have to return this um, response guys right here. Awesome. Great job so far. Let's move on to completing this email redirect to link now. All right, so go ahead and open this right here, go into app, and we're going to create a folder called API. Okay. And inside this API, we're going to create another folder called auth, just like this. And inside this auth, we're going to create a callback. So which is another route here. So callback and inside that route.ts. Okay. And inside this guys, we're going to basically import a couple of stuff. So let's just say create um, route handler client. We'll import that. And we also want next request from next server. And we also want next response from next server, just like this. And we're going to export async just like this a function get like this. And this request is going to come from uh, is going to be of type next request just like this. And in here, we're going to say const request URL equal to new URL. And we're going to pass in the request dot URL right in here. And then const code equal request URL dot search params. Why is that not showing up? Oh, there we go. Search params dot get code just like this. Okay. And then if code exists, we're going to say const super base equal to sorry, create route handler client, and we want to pass in cookies guys, which we need to import from here. So let's go ahead and say import cookies from next slash headers like this. And um, now this should resolve this problem here. And we're going to say await superbase dot auth dot exchange code for session. And we need to pass in the code in here. And finally, at the bottom, we have to return the next response um, dot redirect. And we want to redirect the user to um, we're going to create a string literal right here. And we're going to say request URL dot origin and say slash dash board just like this. Awesome, guys. Now we kind of have this set up. Let's see what's happening. OK, so I see a problem here. So let's go ahead and fix this. All right. So the first thing, let's go ahead and change this to SM dash with 400. OK, and OK, there we go. That fixed our whole problem. So um, sorry about that, guys. I kind of uh, made a small spelling error. I hope I didn't make anything else anywhere else. But feel free to just put it in the comments section if my typing is absolutely trash. OK, um, all right, let's move on now. All right, guys, so we're also going to use this email template to send to our users whenever they sign up on our application. So to do that, all you have to do is go into authentications and you want to go into email templates. And in here, um, during sign up, you see right in here, confirm sign up, you can enter any sort of HTML you like in here to create that design. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy paste the one that I have that you can use. Um, so just go ahead and copy paste this. And this will also be in the GitHub repository. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste this template that I have here. And don't worry, guys, I'm also going to put this inside the um, the GitHub repository so you can copy and paste that as well. OK, so go ahead and hit save once you're done. And this is going to save your template. So whenever a user signs up, they're going to get this email sent out to them. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. 
and let's go ahead and sign in a user. So first, I just want to hit create account. And as we expected, we see a bunch of emails here. And the cool thing is, since we did on change, this is going to change as we type. OK, so you see at gmail.com. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change this to prodigies testing at gmail.com. All right, guys, so also let's go ahead and remove this sign up handler right here. OK, it's not needed anymore. Let's go ahead and do the steps that we need to um, basically create a user. OK, so in the inside this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to say const error and data equal to await actions sign up user. And we're going to pass in the email and the password. We can just remove this right now. We don't need it right now. OK, so if there is an error, we're going to basically set the submit error just like this and say error in here. And then uh, we're going to set this right here. So error dot message. And then we want to say form dot reset because there was an error. And then we want to just return out of this. If not, we want to set confirmation to true. OK, so that way our confirmation component will show up on the screen. So let's go ahead and reset this and we're going to put prodigies testing something like this testing. And let's go ahead and create the account. So I'm seeing some sort of weird errors here. So I'm just going to go ahead and debug this problem. OK, all right, guys. So I accidentally used this form field incorrectly. So what you want to do here is this is going to be um, a callback function. We're going to do this, but this is going to ex we're going to extract this value field from here. OK, go ahead and copy this here. And we want to do this here. And we also have to do this for our login uh, form, too. OK, so let's go ahead and put that right there and let's refresh. And if we hit enter now, it makes sense. But if we change, awesome, it works perfectly. OK, so let's also go ahead and do that for our login page. So let's go here and change this field to this field here and change this one to anything else. Nope, I think that's about it. Let's go back now and let's refresh this page. And let's uh, basically just say prodigies testing at gmail.com and create the account. Awesome. It did that. And there we go, guys. It sent me an email confirmation. So now when I go to my email and when I click this, I see this beautiful template right here. And when I click this click to confirm email, it takes me to this redirect link, which will then send me to the dashboard page. Awesome. This is exactly what we wanted, guys. But of course, this page does not exist. So you're going to see this error. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what you want to do is inside this folder, you want to go into your app directory and inside the main folder, you want to create the following folders. OK, so first create dashboard. So this is going to be a dashboard page layout.tsx page.tsx just like this. OK, and in here we want to create another a folder, but this is going to be a dynamic ID and we're going to say workspace ID just like this. OK, and inside this workspace, we're going to have a bunch of stuff. But for now, let's just have this like this right here. And we want to have RAFCE inside our layout component. And let's change that to layout. And inside here, we're going to say interface It's just going to be layout props like this with children and params are going to be any layout is going to be react dot functional component like this. And we're going to pass in our props. We're going to extract the children. I'm going to extract the children and we're going to extract the params. So first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to say main and then we're going to say class name equal to and we're going to say flex overflow hidden and height is going to be screen just like this. OK, awesome. And inside this, we're going to render children just like this. And now if we refresh this page, um, we also need to have an uh, something in the page.tsx. So let's say RAFCE and let's change this to page export default page like this and same thing in our layout. One problem here, guys, is when I say login, 
you can see that I'm actually able to access the login page even though I am logged in. The reason is because we haven't done that logic yet, okay? But let's first go ahead and complete um, testing the login page itself, and then we'll move on to the next steps, okay? And in here, we're going to go to the login page, and we're going to put some credentials and just hit login. Awesome. So it logged me in successfully and redirected me through to the dashboard page. Now we can go ahead and build out our middleware file, okay? So head over to your root directory and create a file here and call it middleware.typescript. And inside this, we're going to basically do a couple of things. So first, let's do create middleware client like this. We need next um, request. And then we also need to export an async function call middleware next request like this. OK, and this is a function. So let's invoke that. Uh, and let's pass this curly bracket right here. We want to say const response equal to next response dot next. And after this, we want to say const superbase is equal to create middleware clients. And we need to pass in the request and the response both in here. OK, and the request comes from here. My bad. So awesome. And let's say equal to right here. And then we want to say const data session equal to await superbase dot auth dot get session like this okay and then we're going to check here we're going to say if request dot next url dot path name dot starts with the slash dashboard so if they're requesting this page we're going to check if they are actually authenticated to access this page so we're going to say if there's no session then we're going to return the user to a different page. So we're going to say next response dot redirect them to a new URL like this. And we're going to redirect them to the login page. And we're going to say request dot URL. OK. And um, right after this, we're also going to do some email redirection search param right here. So we're going to say const email link error equal to email link is invalid or has expired. OK, so let's go ahead and copy this to if request dot next URL dot search params dot get error underscore description. So we're if we have this in the search param and we want to say is equal to email link error link error just like this. Um, if it's equal to this and we want to also check if the request dot next URL dot path name is not equal to sign up. OK, then we're going to return next response dot redirect the user to a new URL URL right here. I'm going to invoke that and say slash sign up question mark error underscore description like this equal to and we're going to say so we're going to use a string um literal like the string template right here and we're going to say dollar sign request dot next url dot search params dot get okay and inside this get we're going to pass in the error error description and then the next one we have to pass in here is request dot url like this. And finally, I want to do one more thing right here. If um, login sign up dot includes request dot URL like this dot path name right here, then we're going to do the following guys. So we're going to check if they try to if the request URL was login or sign up like this, then we're going to check if the session exists. OK, and if the session already exists, then we're simply just going to return them to next response. We're going to do dot redirect here and then we're going to say new URL and pass in slash dashboard 
and request.url like this. So if they are trying to access these pages, but they're already logged in and we have a session, we're just going to send them to the dashboard page. Awesome. So let's actually return our res response here um, like this. And now let's see if we can test this. All right, guys. So just to show you what this looks like in action, if I paste this link here and try to go to the sign up page, but the error description exists in the URL, then it's going to say email link is invalid or has expired. Okay, awesome. So now we know this works. All right, let's do a quick challenge, kind of like an exercise to see how to debug your application when you come across such bugs. Okay, so right here we have our middleware.typescript file and we have um, a condition here where we're basically checking accessible link or the next URL path name is of type login or sign up. We're going to check if the user has already logged in and if they have, then we're going to redirect them to the dashboard page, right? But for some reason, if you do npm run dev, and if you refresh the browser here, you're going to notice that these console.log messages are not going to be printed out in the console. This clearly means that our file is not being run. Am I right? So can you guess what is happening? Hopefully you were able to get the answer, but if not, this is what's happening. So basically we have our middleware.typescript file outside our entire project in the root folder, right? And when you're using the source directory, Unfortunately, you can't do that. You have to move the middleware.typescript file into the source folder. So when I do this and hit move, you'll notice that I see the console.log and it redirected me to a different page. So I just wanted to give you guys a different, uh, like kind of like an exercise to think because this whole video is going to be with a bunch of challenges where you actually think and take action. Okay. Awesome. All right, everyone. The first thing we want to work on is the dashboard page. So what we're going to use this dashboard route for is basically when the user tries to access this or they're being redirected from the login page uh, or the sign up page, basically we're going to check if they already have a workspace. And if they do have a workspace, we're going to route them to that first workspace that we find, right? If they don't have a workspace, then we're going to allow them to create a workspace right in here. So you can do that by opening your folder folders right here. Um, go into app and inside your main inside dashboard, you have page.tsx. And, and in here, we're going to do the following. So first, let's change all of this and call it um, dashboard like this dashboard uh, page like this. First, we're going to say const superbase superbase is equal to create server component clients and this needs access to cookies. So I'm just going to put um, these up top here. And I'm going to say import cookies from next slash header, next slash headers, just like this. Awesome. And let's pass in the cookies right in here. Now, um, also, guys, just to give you a quick idea, if you go to the GitHub repository, everything is written out for you. And we also have comments that explain why we're doing the following stuff. So if you ever have any confusion, the GitHub repository is going to be your best friend. OK, if you need further explanation, the discord is going to be in the description. Go ahead and access that and help each other out. If you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to help you. OK, awesome. So let's go back to what we were doing here. So after we create the super base, uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to fetch for the user. We're going to get the user here. So we're going to say const um, data and this will return a user like this is equal to await super base dot dot get um, get user like this. Let's invoke that. And this has to be an async function right here. And this will give us access to the user. OK, and we're going to check if there's no user, then we simply want to return. OK, and also our middleware is going to handle this stuff so we don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to return here and then we're going to say const workspace equal to await db uh, db dot query dot. Uh, we want to query the workspaces. And we want to find first like this, where, which will take a callback function like this. And in here we get access to the workspace itself. And um, this will return equal right here. Okay. So this has to return a Boolean basically. So we're going to say equal workspace dot um, ID is equal to the user dot ID. 
Okay, workspace.ownerid. So this is workspace.workspaceowner is equal to uh, user.id. Okay, awesome. And now we're going to check here if there is no workspace then we're going to return the following. Okay, and we'll get to this in a second. For now, I'm just going to put uh, return here just like this. And if none of these cases are satisfied, then we're just going to redirect which comes from next navigation to slash dashboard slash so this is going to be a string literal. So let's change this right here. And when we say dollar sign brackets like this and say workspace dot ID. So what we're doing here is we're redirecting to the user to a new page. Uh, with the current workspace that they have if they already have built one. If not, we're going to send them to create this workspace setup. Okay, so what we're going to say here is we're going to return a div for now, just like this. And uh, inside this div, we're basically going to put the following. So let's give it a class name of BG dash background class name of BG dash background like this height of screen width of screen flex justify center items center and inside this div we're going to create a new component in here we haven't created this so we'll just get to it in a second but it's basically um dashboard setup just like this okay and uh, let's go ahead and build this component so you want to go in here into your components right in here create a folder in here because we're going to have multiple things in here we can just call this something like dashboard dash setup like this and inside that we can oh sorry guys i put this in the lib folder so this should be inside the components folder like this awesome and in here we want to create a dash board dot uh, dash setup tsx like this okay awesome and then we're just going to say rafce and we're, let's change all of this to dashboard setup just like this. Okay, now let's go in here and let's import import this dashboard setup. Let's refresh everything. Awesome. Everything looks absolutely amazing. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is we want to go back into our dashboard setup. So let's go in here. And we're going to do the following stuff. Okay, so first, let's create an interface like this dashboard setup props. And in here, we're going to say user is going to be of type auth user like this, we're going to say subscription is basically of a type. Okay, and for now, we're just going to create an object um, and say or null. we'll get to this in just a second, guys. All right, let's first build this component out. And then we'll set up the subscriptions uh, right here. Okay. And in here, what we're going to say is react dot functional component dashboard setup props and let's go ahead and get these from here which is a subscription and the user just like this awesome guys uh, we're going to create a card so we're going to show some sort of a card on the display screen so that um, the user can create this workspace okay so let's go ahead and do that so first thing we need is the card component from shadzi and ui so let's scroll to where we find the card which should be this one and let's copy this npm and let's quit this and let's run um, this command right in here. So since we already have the Shad UI card component, let's go ahead and build that card component. So we're going to say card, which comes from UI card like this. Give it the following class names of width is going to be 800 pixels, just like this. The height is going to be screen. SM is going to be H dash auto like this. And inside this card, we're going to create the card header like this. And we're going to say card title inside this. And in after this card title, we're going to say card description like this. And for this title, we're, we're just going to say create a workspace just like this. And inside the description, I'm just going to copy something in here and paste it. And you can copy that from the GitHub or you can just type whatever you want. OK, and after the header, guys, we're going to have the card content just like this. And this is going to have a form in here. OK, and this is going to be a different type of form because we're going to be using Superbase storage. So we're not using the chat and UI forms. OK, on submit um, on submit like this is going to be equal to we'll just provide a function for now, but we're going to get that from use form in a second. OK, and um, after that in here, we're going to create a div like this. And this div is basically going to say um, the following. So it's going to have a class name 
of flex, flex dash call and gap dash four. Okay, awesome. So first thing is I want to sort of render this component out. So I'm going to go back to our dashboard and um, let's pass in some of the information. So it needs subscription and it needs that user. So because I want to see what's happening here, right? So let's go to our um, super base. I'm going to show you guys something right here. What you want to do is you want to click on the on any table. You want to click on API and scroll to the bottom and you're going to see this generate and download types. Okay, you can also do this through the through the CLI. I also have a command um, inside the script, which you can run in package.json. But I'm just going to go ahead and generate and download this, these types right here. And now I can shrink this and I can open this file, superbase file. But I'm going to show you what to do with it. And we're going to copy this, guys. And we're going to go into superbase and we're going to create superbase.types.typescript. And we're just simply going to paste it in here. OK, and we're going to set up some types for this to basically get the infer for a select, for example. OK, so this is what you got to do, guys. Scroll to the bottom all the way to the bottom right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to export um, export a type called workspace equal to infer select model. And we're going to pass in type of workspaces. OK, so this workspaces is nowhere to be found, of course, but uh, this workspace has to be imported from our schema file. So make sure you import the one from migration schema, not your local schema. OK, import this just like this. And now you'll see this is going to be of this type. Awesome. Right after this, we're going to create uh, another one for the profile. OK, which is user. Uh, we'll just say user is equal to infer select model like this type of. And this is going to be users like this, okay, which is coming from the migration schema again. And then we're going to do export type folder equal to infer select model do type of and you want to do folders just like this. So go ahead and take this up as a challenge and build out for files and for uh, products and customers and subscriptions. OK, um, there might be a slight change for the subscription, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. But go ahead and take it up as a challenge and build the types for that as well. All right, guys. Awesome. Hopefully you got it right. If not, this is exactly what you need to do. So we're going to create an export type file and say a type of files and same for products type of products. But for the price, we have to do something a little different. OK, if you got this wrong, it's OK, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but basically, we're going to extend this infer uh, select from here and we're going to say and products and we're going to put a product in here. OK, so if you see here, it has something in here and then the customer is going to be type of customers, uh, type of customers. And then the subscription is going to be subscriptions. But we want to extend it with the prices in it. OK, we're also going to create an extra uh, special type in here, which is going to be called product with price equal to product and prices like this. And this is optional, which is going to be price. All right. Awesome, guys. And that's all we need. Now we have uh, some of the types already set up. So let's go ahead and start using these. So let's go back to our page.tsx under the dashboard and we're going to pass in these props right here. So the first thing is the user. So we're going to say user equal to user just like this. But then we also need the subscription and the subscription is going to come from a different call. So let's go up here and we're going to create this in in, in our queries. So let's say const like this data subscription. Then we're going to say error. And we'll just say subscription error like this is equal to await. And we're going to put a call in here, which is called get user subscription status like this. We're going to create this query in just a second. And in here we have to also pass in the user dot ID because that's how we can get the subscription for that user. OK, awesome. So what you want to do now is shrink your folders um, because we're going to create this right here and head over to your lib folder and under your super base, create another file here called queries.typescript. OK, and inside your queries.typescript, we're going to write the following. So you want to say export const and paste that. Um, oh, I didn't copy it. All right. Uh, and say get user subscription status like this equal to an async function. So we're going to name this as async 
and let me shrink this so you guys can see clear and in here we're going to say user id is going to be a string and in here we're going to try and catch this right here so we're going to catch an error if any error exists and we're going to say const data equal to await db so first let's import this db and we're going to say dot query dot subscriptions dot subscriptions dot find first and in here we're going to say where it takes a function in here and this function is basically going to give us s this is a subscription itself and um equal to equal to s dot user id equal user id like this okay and guys for this to work you have to say use server up top just like our other server actions but these are queries so that's why we're putting in a different file okay and after this you want to check if data exists so if data exists you want to return a data with the data but as subscription like this which is under our super base types so i'm just going to use this one also we want to return error like this with null okay all right so the error we were seeing here is basically we imported subscription from the wrong place so let's go ahead and do that one more time so it comes from super base types not from the super base um, library if the data does not exist then we're just going to return um, an empty object like this with null in here and the error is also going to be null and we're going to copy this paste it in this error here and say error and also put our error right in here and we can also console.log the error so that we can actually see this now let's go back and let's import this from our actions so if you hover over this um, you'll see it's subscription or null right after the subscription we're going to check if there is a subscription error then we want to return as well okay but if not then we're going to go down here and pass in our subscription and we see this error because our component is actually a server component in here so this of course needs to be turned into a client component just like this and if you refresh this everything looks absolutely amazing so as you can see here guys when we shrink this it's the full screen height and now it's just in the center this is exactly what we want so let's go down now right here to our card component you want to create another div like this and give it the following class names and we're going to say class name flex item center we're going to say gap dash four and then inside this div we're going to create another div in here and say class name text dash five excel just like this and inside this one we're going to use an emoji picker which we're going to uh, import in just a second this emoji picker is going to allow our user to select the emoji for their workspace so go ahead and open your terminal quit this right here just refresh that and say npm i emoji picker react just like this and hit enter and what we're going to do is we're going to go into our components and this is going to be a global component so we're going to create a new folder called global and we're going to move this loader also in here and we're going to update all the paths everywhere in our file and in here we're going to say emoji dash picker dot tsx and in here we're going to basically say rafce and we're going to call this emoji picker just like this and we're going to also create some props for all this stuff let's go up here and say interface emoji picker props children is going to be react dot react node and then we also want to have a get value function which is optional so if we want to get the emoji that was picked uh, from here so we're going to return void not coid it's <laughs> void right here and in here we're going to say emoji is going to be a string say react dot functional component like this emoji picker props and let's extract the children from here and the get value from here and inside here we're going to say route equal use router right here and again this is going to be a client component because we're using on clicks so use clients right here and we're going to say const picker equal to dynamic import so we have to dynamically import this guys so we're going to say dynamic like this from next dynamic invoke this and this takes in a callback function um, and this ha this needs import and we're going to say emoji picker react just like this and after this we're going to say const 
on click to basically handle the click when we change this emoji. We're going to say selected emoji like this is going to be, let's just say any because I don't know what it is right now. And we're going to say if get value exists, we're going to say get value, invoke it and pass in the selected emoji dot emoji just like this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say class name flex items dash center. And in here, we're going to use a popover. Now the popover comes from chat and UI. So let's go ahead and just build it out for now. And then we'll import it in a second. Okay. So pop over, and then we want to say pop over trigger. After this, we're going to say pop over content, go to chat and UI, go to popover. So let's search for popover and you want to click on this, copy this, and you want to paste it in your terminal and that will install your popover component for you. And we're also going to go ahead and copy this import statement right here. Let's shrink this and let's import this right here and let's pass in the children and things like that. So inside the trigger, we're going to say children like this. And after, um, and we're also going to give this some styling. So we're going to say class name. So let's say cursor pointer like this. And for the content, we're going to say class name P dash zero border dash none. And inside this component, the popover content, we're going to say picker. And this picker is um, the one we imported right here. Okay. Dynamically imported. And this picker is going to actually, we just use it as a closing tag. And we're going to say on emoji click is equal to on click that we just created up here. So now let's go ahead and render out this uh, emoji clicker component dashboard page.tsx. And inside this dashboard setup, okay, right in here, we're going to have the emoji picker right in here. So first let's import our emoji picker. And in here, we're going to basically say get value is going to be, let's just set a function for now. And we'll come to this in a second. And then um, right after this, we want to say selected emoji, which we're going to create in just a second. So this is going to be a state here that's going to hold the selected emoji. So let's go up here and we're going to say const selected emoji set selected emoji just like this. And this is going to say use state. So we'll just set it to empty for now. And in this emoji picker, we're going to pass this selected stuff once we get the value. So what we're going to do in here now at the bottom in your emoji picker get value, we're going to set the state to set selected emoji to the emoji that comes from right here. So after this part right here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to create another div and we're going to give it a class name uh, width to full. And in here, let's create a label that comes from UI label. And inside this, we're going to say HTML four, and we're going to say workspace name and inside uh, and also give this some class name of text dash SM text dash muted dash foreground. And in here, we're going to say name. So these are basically the forms that we're going to create right now. That's why we built this form up here. So let's go to this part right here. And what we want to do is we want to create an input. And what we want to do is we want to create an input right here. So we're going to say input that comes from UI input. And this input is going to have an ID set to workspace name the type set to um, text, not string. Um, and then we want to have placeholder set to workspace name, the disabled we're going to come to in just a second. So uh, let's actually create our use form hook so that we can get access to all these variables. All right. So let's go up here, up top and say const use form that comes from react hook forms. Here, we're going to pass in an object that has mode set to on change default values set to an object. And this object has to have logo, which is going to be a string, which we're going to do right now. Uh, but we also want to have workspace name right here set to an empty string too. And this logo is actually only for pro members. So we're going to have that restriction where only pro members can um, upload a custom logo for the workspace. All right, guys, so I made a small error here. This is actually spelt as flex column. So that should, all right, that should fix that. Awesome, cool. And in this input field, we're basically going to set in another class name called BG transparent. Okay, I would actually want to take this 
and I would want to probably go into the component itself and change that. Let me see if I can do that. So right here, we're saying the following. So BG background right here. Let's remove this and set it to okay, transparent just like that. And let's make sure that is applied successfully. And we need the is loading, guys. So we're going to get register. We're going to get handle submit and reset. And also let's get the form. Yeah, let's get the form state and this will give us is submitting, but we're going to set that to is loading and then we want errors also for this input field. We're going to set the disabled to is loading just like this. Next, you also want to use the spread operator here for register and you want to invoke it and you want to pass in the name for this, which is workspace name just like this. So basically this ID guys copy this paste it in here after this pass in an object and say required is set to workspace name is required below this input. You want to say small and say class name text dash red dash 600. And for this one, we're going to say errors dot workspace name dot message and a dot two string. So this is going to basically render out our um, our error message. OK, so we see something here. Remaining connection slots are reserved for non replication super user connection. So what is this? So let's just go ahead and refresh it and see if that fixed our problem. Uh, refreshed. All right. Awesome. So uh, if you see that error, guys, just refresh and you should be good to go. Come down after this small right here, this div, this div and right after this one, you want to create another div. OK, and in here, guys, we're just going to copy this entire thing. So copy this all the way to the small, right? Just like this. And inside this div, just go ahead and paste that and you should see that right here. OK, so this issue right here is because we don't have an emoji. So let's just put um, like a workspace emoji, like a briefcase um, just like this in here. And that should render. All right. Awesome. That's what we wanted. So now when you click on this, guys, you see this. It basically shows, um, you know, this stuff. OK, so that's it. And what we want to do now is we want to scroll down here. And right after this, when, where we created this logo, we're going to change this one to workspace logo just like this. And you want to uh, you can also have the same thing here. This is fine. We want to change this to workspace logo like this. And this disabled is actually going to be is loading or subscription dot um, subscription like this dot status is not equal to active. OK, so right here we have it set as an empty object. So now we can say subscription right here and this should not throw an error anymore. And what we're going to do here is we're going to change this one to workspace logo like this. So copy paste that this is going to be called a file. And we're going to say accept equal to image slash star. And um, now we need to change this right here. So this will be workspace logo. Um, actually, it's going to be called logo. So what we can do is let's change this ID to this and this to logo two, and register logo just like this. Awesome, guys. All right, guys, so I just took a look at this and I found out some of the places where we made an error. So the first thing is the way we're using field values here is incorrect. This is not the type we need to use. We actually have to create a form type. And um, that is the first problem here. The second thing is the title was actually undefined because value dot this spelling error does not exist. OK, we're going to scroll up top right up here and we're going to just create a type. OK, so if you remember, we had a type file right in here under types. So we're going to say export const create workspace form schema equal to Z dot object. We're going to invoke it like this and inside here workspace name, which is going to be Z dot string like this describe. This is going to be the workspace name like this dot minimum. So we have to have minimum of one and we're going to say workspace name must be minimum of one character. OK, just like this. And then right after that, we're just going to set a file which is going to be equal to Z dot any. So Z dot any just like this. 
and you can hover over this and you can see this stuff okay um the reason why we're setting this to any guys is because if you use this on the server side file is going to cause some issues so now let's go back to our types and let's import this type right here so instead of field values we need to use our schema and let me just import the schema all right so let's go up top and let's import the create workspace form schema which comes from lib types and then we want to go in here and we want to say z dot infer like this and we want to say type of like this and we want to say the new schema which is create workspace form schema just like this and this logo is showing an error because in our types we actually have it named as file so we're going to turn this into logo and let's go back into our file and see what happens here awesome and now we're going to copy this right here and we're going to paste it even for our submit handler and now we're going to see some errors here and this is what we had wrong which is workspace name so let's go back to our application let's just refresh and we're going to um, just type in some stuff here so we're just going to say fake test and we're just going to test out this file for now. I'm just going to upload something here. We're just going to say create workspace. Awesome. It did that and it successfully sent us to the page that we need to land on. But of course, the page does not exist. So we're seeing this error. But let's first make sure our file was uploaded successfully. There we go. Right here, we have the new entry being made. And if we go into our storage and let's look at the workspace logos. All right, there was a quick error, guys. All right, guys, so I just looked at this error and it turns out uh, we did a couple things here too. So apart from these errors, we basically needed to set up some sort of policies to accept in here. So what I did was um, go ahead and just click on new policy and hit full for and hit for full customization. And you want to scroll here to the bottom and just click on select insert update and delete. So select all of them. And I'm just going to unselect these because I already did it. And then you want to just give this a name so you can say allow all access. Just for now, guys, we'll change all this stuff later. It's not very important. OK, so go ahead and do that and then just hit review. And it's going to take you to um, this. So I'm just going to select all this for now so I can show you guys what to do. I'm going to also select the authenticated role and just hit review. And it's going to give you this. Just go ahead and hit save policy. All right, guys. Cool. So I'm just going to cancel this get out of this and then you will see these policies right here okay and if you don't know how to access this you want to go into your storage and then click on policies right here and then you can see all your policies for your buckets okay so that was the problem that we were facing and um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that it actually works so let's go ahead and delete this file from here and you can see the logo workspace logo and it says dot there and now if you go into the database right here under files under workspaces you'll also see everything in here including the workspace logo and the item itself so let's go ahead and delete this row so i can show you that it actually works and let's go to the browser let's go one page behind let's just click on submit right now we're going to create a workspace name so we're just going to say test workspace and then we're going to change this just upload a file so scroll to the bottom click on this file just hit open and then we're going to create the workspace it's going to upload it and send us to another page which we're just going to set up of course the page does not exist right now um, but if you go to our database and you click on workspace logos now you will see our workspace logo has been uploaded here successfully before we move forward i just want to show you something so you need to add this images inside your next config.js Go to your next config.js and you want to add images here and the domains is basically basically going to be equal to uh, the following. So you see you have this right here, right? You want to select this part and superbase.co and just paste it inside an array. Um, just like this right here okay an array of strings just paste that in there that's the only way you're going to be able to uh, access these domains to get the images okay don't forget to do this or else your images are not going to show up there we go it also has the dot here so you can split by the dot and you can take this element and you can do whatever you want to do um, with it okay and if you also go into the database entry um, the workspace table entry you will also see the data in here
Awesome, guys. Let's move on now. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this too. So open your folders. I'm just going to shrink this and you want to go into your app directory right in here and you want to open your main folder and here you have your workspace folder, right? So this um, uses a dynamic param. You're going to use this ID to capture what the user is trying to access. OK, so inside this, go ahead and create a page dot TSX just like this. And inside this, we also want to create a layout dot TSX. So say layout dot TSX just like this. And you can just copy this from here. If you'd like, go to layout, paste it. And in here, just remove this stuff. We don't need this anymore. And we're going to put some stuff in here. OK, so just replace this to a div for now. All right. Awesome. So layout props, children and params. And we're going to get to this in just a second. And in your in your page, you want to return RAFCE. And let's just return the workspace page just like this. And you're going to see the workspace page here because now we have that page rendering. OK, awesome. So in this page, guys, we're going to basically render out a quill editor and so in this page, guys, we're going to render out our editor, but um, let's first work on the layout page because we're going to work on the sidebar first. OK, so in the layout page, what you want to do in here is you want to basically edit this stuff. So let's change this back to a main actually. And in here you want to first say flex overflow hidden height is screen width is screen width is screen just like this and inside this we're going to create a component so the first component we're going to create is called um, the sidebar okay so we're going to say sidebar don't import this by mistake okay just type in sidebar component and this sidebar component is going to take in some params and the params are basically this id that comes in guys the dynamic id that comes in there okay so params equal to and we're just going to say params like this awesome and for this children we're actually going to render it slightly different so here first we will eventually have the mobile sidebar right here so we're just going to skip this here and we're going to return a div with a class name to dark border neutrals dash 12 slash 70 border dash left dash one pixel like this and then we want to have width dash full relative overflow scroll and um, that's about it okay and what we're going to do here is inside this we're going to render our children OK, and these children components here are basically the editor itself. So it's going to be wrapped with the sidebar component. So let's go ahead and create the sidebar component. So you want to go ahead and open your components and create a folder here called sidebar, just like this, because you're going to have a bunch of stuff for the sidebar. OK, and inside this, you want to create a sidebar.tsx file. And um, let's also say RAFCE and say sidebar just like this. OK, and let's also create our interface right up here interface sidebar props is going to be params which is going to have workspace id which is set to a string like this and um, we also want to have the class name set to a string so this can be dynamic okay because we might want to pass in some uh, styling for this sidebar and in here we're basically going to say react dot functional component and we're going to do this and say sidebar props, sorry. And let's pull the params from here and the class name from here. Awesome. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to say const super base equal to create server component client like this. And we need to pass in the cookies. So we're going to get the cookies from up here. So import cookies from next slash headers next slash headers just like this and pass in the cookies right in here so this is going to create our um, our instance and first thing we want to do is we want to check if there is a user after that we want to check their subscription status okay subscription status and then we also want to check um, the um, folders we want to get access to the folders because if the user directly accesses this page we want to generate the folders for the sidebar 
and then we're going to check if there's any error. And if there's an error, we're going to redirect them back to the dashboard page. OK, and uh, finally, we're also going to get all the uh, different workspaces, which is the private, the collaborating and the shared workspaces. And then we're going to go ahead and render this out. OK, so let's go back to our layout.tsx and let's import the sidebar. So it needs the params right here. OK, let's just refresh this. It accidentally imported sidebar from a different component. So we're going to do components sidebar just like this. And there you go. Now you can see we have something on the left side. OK, and it says sidebar right in there. Awesome. Now let's go back into our sidebar component and let's build out our logic for the sidebar. So first let's get our users. So we're going to say const data like this, and this is going to return user like this. And this is equal to await superbase dot auth dot get user. And this needs to be an async function right up, right up top. And um, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, if no user, we're going to return. OK, then we're going to say const data is workspace folders. So we're going to basically get the folders here. Let's first get the subscription status. Yeah. So const data and error equal to await get user subscription status just like this. And this needs access to the user dot ID like this. Awesome. And um, right after this, we want to also get the folder. So now we need to create a query for that. So first, let's write this here. So we're going to say const data and error is equal to await get folders. And this will take in the ID for the workspace, right? So we can just say params workspace ID like this. And right here, this error is going to collide with this. So we're going to call this subscription error like this subscription error and this one is going to be folders error okay like this and this data is going to be called subscription and this one is going to be called the workspace folder the workspace folder data just like this okay so subscription data let's give this a better name awesome and now what we're going to do here is we're going to check for the error. So if error um, exists, then we're going to redirect from next navigation. OK, and say dashboard. So we want to send the user back to the dashboard. And this error right here is going to be um, subscription error. So we're going to say subscription error or the folders error, just like this. So here now we need to create this get folder action. So let's go ahead and do that in our queries file. So open up your folders, go into Superbase, and then go into queries. And right here, we're going to basically get our folder. So we're going to say export const get folders equal to async function like this. And this is going to get the workspace ID, which is going to be a string. And in here, we're going to say is valid. OK, is valid and equal to validate, which comes from UUID. And we're going to pass in the workspace ID just like this. And we want to make sure that this is actually a valid UUID, right? So if it's not valid, then we want to return the following, which is a data with null and error set to an error like this. And if this is true, uh, I mean, if this is OK, then we're just going to do a catch right here. And we're going to get the error here. And we're going to say const results equal await db dot dot select invoke it dot from like this. And in from you want to pass in the folders, which comes from migration schema. And you want to say um, dot order by folders dot folders dot created at like this. And then after this, you want to say where and now we're going to say where equal like this. And you can import equal from drizzle ORM like this. And this needs to be folders dot workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID that we passed in. OK, we're going to say folder or empty array just like just like this. 
and let's import that from super base types. So now you can see the return data type. Okay, awesome. And after this, we're going to basically say return data is going to be results and error is going to be null like this. Copy this. And here we're going to say error is error like a string right here. And here is going to uh, data data is going to be null. Awesome, guys. So now let's go ahead and see um, if we can import this. So to get folders right here and let's refresh the page. And also we need to refresh this real quick. So let's just do this here and refresh this. So our nav bar is basically going to have the workspaces on top. It's sort of like a drop down where the user can click on the workspace and select the workspace they want to go to, right? So before that, we will need to fetch these workspaces from here so that we can pass it down into those components. So let's go ahead and do that too. So we're going to say const private workspace. Actually, let's first create the, um, um, the queries. Okay. So let's go into our queries file, which is inside Superbase, right in here, scroll to the bottom. And we're going to say, get private workspaces. So const is, uh, get private workspaces is equal to this. I'm going to set this to this and also export this function here. And now we want to basically get the user ID here. So user ID is going to be a string just like this. So we're going to say, if there is no user ID, just return from here. And we want to return data. Uh, actually, we'll just return an, um, an array here. So the return type is going to be slightly different. And here we're going to say const private workspaces is equal to await db dot select invoke this. And you want to pass in this object because we um, want the following, which is these. Okay which is workspace ID. So ID is workspaces.id, created at is workspaces.created at, workspace owner is the workspace owner, title, title, icon ID, icon ID, data for data and in trash is gonna be this, and the logo is going to be the logo right here, okay? And after this right here, you want to do dot from, just like this, and you want to say workspaces, like this, where, and not exists db dot select like this dot from collaborators which we haven't created yet so let's go ahead and build that collaborators right here so what this collaborators table is it's a table that has information about collaborating users along with their workspaces that way we can tell when a user is a collaborator of another workspace so let's go up here and let's go into our schemas and let's go ahead and create that collaborators table right here all right, so let's go up here and say export const. So so make sure you're inside your schema file under Superbase, and you want to say export const collaborators equal to pg table. Set this to collaborators like this, and this is going to be an object like this. And inside this object, we're going to have the column fields, which is workspace ID which is going to be a UUID like this. And we're going to set this to workspace underscore ID. And this is going to be not null like this. And this is going to reference something else, guys. So what it's going to reference is basically it's going to reference the workspaces dot ID just like this. And we also want to provide the on delete cascade. So on delete cascade for this just like this. Awesome. And after workspace ID, we want to say created at is going to be a timestamp. Copy this from uh, maybe the files table. Scroll down here and just say created at like this. Created at with time zone and mode set to string. And the next one we want to have right after this is default now. Invoke it and you want to also pass in not null like this. Okay. And then after this, we want to say user ID is going to be UUID, which is user underscore ID, just like this. And here we need to say dot not null dot references users migration schemas dot dot ID like this. And we also want to set the on delete to cascade 
just like this. Awesome, guys. So don't forget, we need to also commit this. So I'm just going to um, refresh everything, quit the server as well. So I went ahead and closed the server and um, I opened my terminal and we're going to say npm run generate just like this. And that's going to generate our SQL file for us with the three columns that we just wanted right in here. And now we can do npm run dev and refresh our browser. And if everything worked well, we should see no issues in here, but I do see some problems in here. It's saying um, duplicate key violates unique Con constraint. Okay, I'm not sure what happened here, guys, but I saw the error and I also saw migrating clients and successfully migrated and also pushed the migration. So let's go ahead and see if that actually, okay. <laughs> so it looked like it worked. I'm not sure what happened there, guys, but that might just be some sort of a hiccup. That's fine. Um, let's just go ahead and shrink this and let's go back and start working on our code. So let's go back to our queries and now we can bring in the collaborators that we, we that we wanted initially um, right in here. OK, and what we're going to say here is we're basically guys, we're trying to see if there is a collaborator. OK, but you don't want it because private workspaces cannot have a collaborator. OK, so we're going to say from collaborators dot where like this, invoke this and pass an equal to like this and say collaborators dot workspace ID workspace ID. We had this one, which is not exist. And then we want to have the equal right here where workspaces dot workspace owner is um, equal to the user ID right in here. So we only want the workspaces that are for this specific workspace um, owner, right? And we can just do something like this. We can just say workspace. Um, let's just say workspace like this. So this will have some data type right in here. It's just going to be an array of that one. Okay. Array of uh, workspaces, or we can just say, yep, just like this. Awesome. So private workspace is just going to be an array of these objects right here. Okay. Uh, right after this, make sure to return the private workspaces like this. Okay. And uh, now let's also go ahead and do the same for the collaborating workspaces. So we're going to say export const get collaborating workspaces right up here. This is equal to a function. And this is going to be async right here. And this is going to take in the user ID, which is a string. So user ID like this, which is a string. And in here, we're going to check if there is no user ID. And if so, we're just going to return an empty array. Okay. And then we need to say collaborated workspaces like this is equal to await db dot select. And we want to put in the following. It's basically the same thing as we had up here, guys. Okay. So we're going to put these in here and then we're going to say dot from like this. And we want to say users and then we're going to do an inner join. Um, let's import this inner join right here. And this needs collaborators and then the equal to. So on what, which is users dot ID. And that should be equal to the collaborators uh, dot user ID like this. And after this, we want to say dot another inner join like this um, with the workspaces on basically collaborators dot workspace ID is equal to the workspaces dot ID like this. Okay. And then after this, we want to also give a where condition right here. So we're going to say where invoke this. And inside this, we're going to say equal users dot ID equal to um, like this in here, users ID is equal to user ID, just like this. Okay. So for the only for the same user. And again, we can just return this as um, workspace, so an array of all the workspaces. Awesome. There we go. And let's go ahead and also return the collaborated workspaces just like this. And let's do the same thing for shared workspaces too. So export const get shared workspaces equal to, and this is going to be a function here too. And let's set this to async. And we need the user ID in here, which is going to be a string. 
and we're going to check if there is no user ID. If there is not, we're going to return. And basically, we're doing the same things, guys, just a, a slight bit different. And I'll show you what you, what needs to be uh, done differently. OK, copy this and paste it so we can save some time right here. We're going to get the shared workspaces. We're going to select distinct. OK, select distinct. So we want to do we want to get these things right here from the workspaces order by workspaces dot created at inner join collaborators where the uh, on the workspaces ID and the collaborators dot workspace ID. OK, and then we want to check where the workspaces, um, the owner is the same and we're just going to return that. So we're going to return this as workspace just like this. OK. Now let's go back to our sidebar component. And after this, guys, we're just going to say const um, like this private workspaces and then collaborating workspaces right in here. And then finally, shared workspaces like this is going to be equal to uh, we're going to do await promise dot all um, like this promise dot all. And we need to invoke it and we need to pass in all the promises. And what we're going to pass in first is get private workspaces, invoke that and pass the user dot ID, um, user dot ID like this. And then we also need to get the others. So we're going to say get collaborating workspaces and pass in the user dot ID like this. And after this, we need the get shared workspaces and pass in the user ID in here too, just like this. Awesome. So let's look at this. OK, cool. So now we have access to all these workspaces. OK, we don't have any errors there. Looks good. And what we're going to do here is we're going to return a sidebar. OK, so this sidebar is basically going to have a side like this a side and it's going to have a class name of hidden SM set to flex like this. And then we want to say from small from SM devices flex dash call. Then we want to have width set to 280 pixels. And then we want to do shrink and then we want to do shrink dash zero padding dash four MD dash gap is going to be four. Then we're going to say um, exclamation justify between. So we want this to always be important. And now since we're using class names, we uh, from the props, we want to copy this and we want to pass this into tailwind merge uh, right here, guys. So say TW merge like this and pass a string in here. And after this um, string here, we're going to also pass in our class name from the props. OK, and inside this aside, we're going to create a div in here and uh, we're going to pass in some information in here. OK, so the first thing we're going to have is the workspace drop down, guys. It's sort of like a component up here. So let's go ahead and build that component out. All right, guys, so go ahead and expand the sidebar. And now you can see it right here. The component we're going to have is workspace drop down just like this. Let's go ahead and create this component right in here. Go into your components folder, open your sidebar. And in here you want to create workspace drop down dot TSX. And you can do RAFCE and change this to workspace drop down. What this component is going to do is basically it's going to allow the user to select between the different available workspaces. So let's first go ahead and create the interface workspace drop down props. It's going to take in the private workspaces workspace, but an array of these workspaces, or it's just going to be empty like this. And then here we're going to say shared workspaces is going to be of workspace type array like this and also empty like this. Collaborating workspaces is also going to be the same thing, guys, just like this. And then the default value is going to be workspace or undefined. Go ahead and say react.fc and say workspace drop down props. And now we can extract those from here. So we're going to say private workspaces, collaborating workspaces and shared workspaces. We see a, an issue here and I think there's just a spelling error. 
Okay, cool. We're going to create some states here. So we're going to say const selected option and set selected option. Use state. So again, if we're using use state in here, we need to go ahead and set this as use client. So use client up top. And this is going to have the default value, guys. So the default value comes in from here, which we need to extract. And we're going to simply put that right in here. And right after this, create const is open is going to be and also set is open just like this is going to be equal to use state, which is going to be false by default. OK, we also want um, the dispatch from here because we're going to set all the workspaces once this component is invoked. OK, so um, that's why we need this. So we're going to say dispatch and state is equal to use app state invoke that and now we have access to that okay so first let's create a use effect and what this use effect is going to do is it's basically going to check if our state has any workspaces okay if it doesn't have any workspaces then it's going to go ahead and set it to um, whatever we get from the these props right here let's copy these and pass these as dependencies so collaborating workspaces and shared workspaces just like this. And in here, we're going to say if state dot workspaces length like this. So if there's nothing in here, guys, then we just want to call dispatch. We want to send the type set to set workspaces, which we'll create in just a second. Set workspaces. This is also going to have a payload. So go ahead and create this type. Go into your uh, file, which uh, your libs file, go into providers state provider and let's scroll all the way above and let's create a set workspaces type right here create an object and save that and let's go ahead and just actually uh, just copy this right here so that's going to be easier and we're going to say set workspaces is going to have a payload and this payload right here is going to basically be an object with the workspaces set to an array of app so app workspace type like this or this can also be an empty array in here we're going to create the reducer for it case where we have set workspaces we're going to return an object with everything in state and the workspaces action dot payload dot workspaces and here we did a small problem so let's just go ahead and fix that so instead of workspace, it's going to be called workspaces. So now let's come back here and pass in the payload. And this payload is basically going to be an array like this. And this array is going to have everything in private workspaces, everything in shared workspaces and everything in collaborating workspaces. But the issue here is we don't have the folders for it. And each folder also has to have a file, right? So we have to provide these um, options right here. After this, where we have this array, we're going to say dot map. And this gives us access to the workspace itself. And we're going to uh, we're going to basically return a new object with everything in workspace. But we're going to set folders to be an empty array. OK, so it seems like there is some sort of a type error. So I'm going to go ahead and look at what's causing this. All right. So the problem here is we need to say workspaces and then we have to provide that value. Go ahead and just remove that. And this has to have workspaces like this. And then we can provide this and this should be perfectly OK. And now let's go back into our sidebar component and let's go ahead and import this right here. So there's another error there. So I'm just going to go in here and workspace drop down. This has got to change. So um, what we're going to say here is drop down like this and drop down like this right here. And this needs the private workspaces, which is going to be equal to private workspaces, shared workspaces, finally collaborating workspaces. So the issue here is our action our server action for the get shared workspaces is not returning anything here by default. So we want to put an empty array just like how we did for our collaborating workspaces. OK, and that should actually solve that problem. And the default value here is going to be slightly different. So Let's go and say default value is equal to. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to create an array and we're going to just use the spread operator for all for all of these private collaborating and shared workspaces. And then we're going to find one of them where the 
workspace is of workspace.id is equal to params dot I, uh, dot workspace ID, just like this. Okay. So this way we don't have to make an unnecessary uh, API call just like that. Cool. Awesome guys. Now back inside our workspace dropdown, right after our use effect hook right here, we want to go ahead and create a handle select. Okay. And this handle select is basically when we select that component, uh, right? When we are changing our selection option, we're just going to use this. So we're going to say handle select equal to a function like this. And we're going to say option, which is going to be of type workspace. And here we're going to set selected option to be the option in here and set is open to be false. Okay. So if this doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. I'm going to uh, get to that in just a second. So let's go ahead and remove whatever's being returned here. And let's return a new div. And we want to give it the following styles relative inline block text dash left. And inside this, we want to create another div. And in this, we want to say span on click. And this is going to be a function that is just going to set is open to the opposite of is open. So we don't even need this. So we can shrink this one more line here. Okay. And inside this span, we're going to say selected option. If something exists here, we're going to do something here. If not, we're going to do something here. So if this is true, what we're going to return is selected workspace. And this is a, another component that we're going to go ahead and create. So let's go into our files back into our sidebar and let's create selected workspace .tsx like this and say RAFCE and change this to selected workspace um, just like this. Create the interface selected workspace props a workspace which is going to be of type workspace on click. And this is going to be a function that returns void. We're going to first say const superbase equal to create client component client. And we're going to just invoke that like that. And after this, we want to say const workspace logo and set workspace logo equal to use state like this. And in here, we're going to just have um, slash Cypress logo dot SVG. This needs to be a client component. So let's go up here and say use clients like this. Let's also refresh this. We're having this error again here npm run dev and let's uh, reboot that one more time. Okay. And yeah, we're going to get this selected workspace is not defined. So let's quickly finish this. So we want to say use effect pass in the workspace right here. So we need to use this interface. So let's say react dot functional component pass the selected workspace in here. And you want to extract the workspace from here. And also we have an on click and in here we basically want to see uh, we want to say if workspace dot logo, if this exists, const path equal to superbase dot storage superbase like this, we want to say superbase storage dot from we're going to do this real quick. And we're going to say workspace dash logos like this. And then we're going to say get public URL. And um, we're going to pass in the workspace dot logo like this in here. Okay. This is the way to get a public URL for the workspace. And then we're going to say data dot public URL just like this. I have to say set workspace logo to path. Now let's go in here and let's make some quick changes right in here to return our component basically. Okay. It's a really small component, nothing crazy in here. So we're just going to have a link component like this, which comes from next link href set to dashboard slash and this is going to be a string literal right here and we want to say dollar sign workspace id so this is workspace dot id like this so when we click on this link guys it's going to take us to that specific workspace okay and um, the other thing is on click not on <laughs> on click like this and that's going to be an error function like this. And that's going to basically check if the on click exists um, right here. So if on click exists, then right after this, we're just going to say on click and we're just going to fire this um, right here. Then we're going to have a class name here. And first we're going to say flex rounded MD uh, hover uh, background dash muted transition all flex row P2 gap four justify center the cursor pointer 
items center and the uh, margin Y of two. Inside this, we're going to have an image tag and the SRC is going to be set to workspace logo. Alt tag going to be the workspace logo, just like this. Width is going to be 26 and the height is height is going to be 26 as well. And finally, we want to say object fit just like this. Okay. And of course we have to send, set this to cover right here. So let's create a div here and say class name is equal to flex and flex dash column. And in here we want to have a paragraph with the class name set to text LG with 170 pixels overflow hidden overflow ellipses and white space no wrap. Okay. And inside that we're just going to render out the workspace dot title. Let's close this quickly and let's go ahead and import this component right here. Right now we need to also pass in those new values that we just uh, those the props for it, right? So the works the selected workspace is going to have the workspace and that's going to be the selected option. So whichever one we selected. So the on click has to be actually optional because yeah, so let's go up here and just say optional like this. And that should actually fix our problem. Yep. Okay. Let's come back here. After this, we're going to render this. But if this does not um, exist, we're going to say select a workspace like this. So right after this one, say is open. So if it is open, we have opened the div, then we're going to render out the following a div again. And let's give it the following class name origin top right absolute w dash full. So with full rounded MD shadow dash MD Z 50 height is going to be 190 pixels. BG is going to be black, uh, but only 10 back drop dash blur. And this blur is going to be LG. We're going to say group. We're going to say overflow dash scroll border dash one pixels border dash muted just like this. Okay. And um, as you can see, we already have the workspace logo because this logo was actually uploaded to Superbase storage. Right. But of course, for everyone else, uh, for uh, for, you know, the um, the regular users, they're not going to have a custom logo if they don't have the plan. So let's go ahead and create another div in here. And we're going to give this a class name of rounded dash MD flex flex dash call. And then we want to create another div. And this one is actually going to have um, just one styling. It's an important one right here so that this one shows. So it's just exclamation padding two. And inside this, we're simply going to say private workspaces dot length. So we're going to convert it to a Boolean right there. And we're going to return a react fragment like this. And inside this react fragment, we're going to have a paragraph tag. And this paragraph tag is going to have text dash muted dash foreground just like this. And inside here, we're going to say private. Okay, so it's going to be the titles for our workspaces. We want to also just, you know, we can just uh, render out a horizontal rule just like this. And then we want to say private workspaces dot uh, map for each of these, we're going to return something. So we're going to get the this option here. And then we're going to return a selected workspace again, right here. And this time, actually, let's just make this a closing tag. So it looks better here. And then we're going to say key equal to option dot ID like this. And then we want the workspace to be equal to the option itself. Finally, we want the on click handler. And this on click handler is going to be our handle select that we just created. Um, okay, we also need to pass in this here. So go back to your selected workspace component. And in the on click, you want to just select option like this. And it's just going to be a, a string. Oh, actually, it's going to be a workspace. So let's go in here and just say workspace like this. And then let's go back to our drop down component. And this should actually fix the problem. The issue here is that this on click is not getting access to this. So we're going to select this and pass in our workspace right in here. And then right after this, now we're going to check uh, the shared workspaces. So go ahead and take this up as a challenge and build the same for your shared workspaces. If you can't do it, no problem. Come back to this video and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it.
All right, hopefully you got this correct. If not, don't worry about it, guys. I'm going to show you what you need to do. So it's literally the same thing. You can you can literally copy this and paste it right below, but you just have to change shared workspaces and then do dot length like this and change this one to shared. And um, everything else is going to be the same, but make sure you're rendering out the shared workspaces and the same thing for the collaborating workspaces as well. Inside this one, we're also going to have a create a workspace at the bottom. So let's go ahead and build that. After this div, we're going to create a custom dialogue uh, trigger component, which uh, which we are yet to create. Go into your components. So let's open this here. Go to your to your global folder, and you want to create a custom dash dialogue dot tsx like this, and do rafce and say custom dialogue trigger component just like this. This component is kind of like a wrapper, guys. So we're going to use Shatsy and UI's um, uh, dialogue component, and we're going to sort of create our own custom dialogue trigger so that we can have different children instead of just, you know, writing in the whole component in one section. Go ahead and open up Shadsy and UI. And in here, you want to look for the dialogue component, okay? Not the alert dialogue. Go to dialogue right here, copy this, npm copy the npm and then hit enter and just paste it in here copy these right here and we're going to go to the top of the file and we're just going to paste it right here so this interface is going to be a little more so it's custom dialogue trigger props a header the content which is a react.react .react node the children react.react .react node description for this custom dialogue trigger and the footer and the class names. Okay. And these are optional too. So make sure you have these question marks right here. So go ahead and type this out if you need some time. And then here, we're just going to say react.functional component, and we're going to pass in the custom dialogue trigger props. And let's go ahead and extract all of these values from here. And when you come to this return statement, remove this div and return the dialogue like this. Okay. And this dialogue again is coming from components UI dialogue. And in here, we're going to have the dialogue trigger right here like this. And after this, we're going to have the dialogue content like this. And inside the content, we're actually going to have a, uh, our dialogue header. And inside the header, we're going to have dialogue title after that dialogue description like this. And now let's go ahead and fill these in. So for this one, we're going to say class name equal to CLSX, import that and invoke it. And then you want to just pass in an empty string for now. And you just want to say class name like this. Okay. And inside the dialogue trigger, we're going to pass the children guys right in here. So what this is saying is basically we can wrap our children in that. So when we click on that, on the children itself, the whole children element is going to be a trigger. So it's going to bring up the dialogue on the screen. So now let's go in here and say class name, height, screen, block, SM, height, dash, um, dash 400, 40 pixels overflow dash scroll with dash full. And we're going to pass in the header like this. And our description is going to be description. And the footer right here is actually going to be in, uh, sorry, the content is going to be right in here. Okay. The footer is actually optional. So uh, you can pass that if you want to. Uh, but since we're not going to use it, actually, let's just go ahead and remove that for now. And now let's go ahead and run NPM run dev if you haven't already. And let's uh, restart our server and let's import this custom dialogue trigger right here. So we're going to say header equal to and the header is going to be create a workspace like this. And then we're going to have content equal to the workspace creator, which we don't have right now. So we're going to create that component as well. And uh, let's go ahead and first pass in the description. So the description is just going to be a bunch of strings, right? So it's going to be workspaces give you the power to collaborate with others. You can change your workspace privacy settings after creating the workspace too. So, so let's go ahead and build out this um, workspace creator components. So before that, guys, I just want to prevent this error from happening right here. Maybe just create a react fragment, go into our components, which is um, actually under the global components, create a new file, call it workspace dash creator. You can say RAFCE in here and let's change everything to workspace creator just like this. So what we're going to say here is const permission and set 
permission. So what this permission is, guys, so let's change this to permissions and set permission. So what this permission is, is that you can set the permission of a workspace to be shared or it can be a private workspace. OK, so we're going to say use state and we're going to set the default value to private. OK, and then um, since this is, again, using states here, we want to make this use client right up top. And then we we'll say uh, we want to say const title like this and set title right here equal to use state and this is going to be an empty string as well collaborators and set collaborators and this is going to be um, users like a user like this from our super base types okay so it's going to be an ar array of users for the collaborators const user set user like this equal to uh, use state actually uh, what i'm going to do guys is i might actually create a global um, yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So yeah, let's just go ahead and create another uh, provider in here. And we're going to call this superbase user provider. Okay, dot TSX, set this to a use client component. And then you want to uh, create the context. So this is going to be type super base user context type is equal to uh, we're going to have the user, which is going to be of type auth user like this from Superbase, or it's going to be null. And then we're also going to say subscription here because we can get some subscription data. And we're going to use the uh, subscription type that we created, which is right here in Superbase type. So it's going to be subscription type or we're just going to say null. And um, this is where we're just basically going to get access to the user based uh, data. And then let's go ahead and create the context. So this is going to be super base user context is going to be equal to create context. And um, inside this, we're going to basically pass in the super base user context type. And in here, we need to pass in an object. And we're just going to say, um, uh, what is that user? is going to be null for now and the uh, subscription is going to be null again right like uh, just like this okay and after this we're going to say export const use superbase user is equal to we'll just create this right here and this is just going to simply return us use context like this from react and it's going to return the super base con uh, user context just like this so we're going to create the super base user provider here um, let's just create some interface here we're just going to say interface super base user uh, provider props is going to be um, children children like this which is going to be react dot react node and then we're just going to say react dot functional component and we're going to say super user uh, provider props and let's go ahead and extract children from here okay return like a fragment like this and that's going to solve that problem okay and what we're going to do in here first is we got to fetch the user details we also need to fetch the subscription details right so we can get to the subscription in a bit but um, let's first basically get to the user part. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a use effect. And this use effect is going to have an error function um, and a dependency array right here. Const super base is create client like this components client. Uh, we're going to pass in super base as a dependency in here. Const get user is equal to a function like this. It's going to be async function and we're just going to invoke this get user right here and inside this we're going to say const data and this is going to return the user is equal to um, await superbase dot auth dot get user like this let's go ahead and invoke that and in here guys we just want to check if user exists and if user exists we're just going to set the user which um, we haven't created yet so let's just say const user and set user equal to use state and this is going to be of type auth user or null right so the default value is going to be null in here so we're going to set the user to the user right here and then we're going to say const data and error equal to await get 
uh, user subscription status. And um, this is, is going to need the user ID. Okay, so let's just say user dot ID like this. If the data exists, set subscription, uh, which we also need to create up here. So that's just going to be uh, very very similar to this. It's just a state with subscription, set subscription, and that use state is going to be of type subscription or null. Okay, so let's get that subscription from here. So we're going to say set subscription like this, and we're going to set data in here. Okay, and if error, so if error exists in here, then we're going to return a toast, toast from a chat UI. So let's use that. Okay, so we're going to say toast equal use toast like this. And in here, we're basically just going to invoke toast and pass in the title, we're going to pass this uh, right here. So we're going to invoke toast and we're going to say title unexpected error. Oops, an unexpected error happens and whatever, whatever. It, they're already going to get rerouted, so we don't have to start rerouting the user unnecessarily, okay? And like, we also might need this toast. I'm not sure if it's needed, but we're just going to pass it in here. And here we're just going to return the uh, superbase context dot provider. And in here we're going to pass in the children just like this. And for this, we need to pass in value. And this value is going to be the user and subscription just like this. Awesome stuff, guys. So now this is going to be very helpful because we can get the user data and the subscription data at any time in our application. So go to your app directory, go into layout.tsx, and you want to wrap all of this uh, with the state uh, provider inside. this. So you want to say um, superbase user provider like this, and you want to just pass this in here just like this, okay? Awesome. So now let's just see if this is actually working. So when we get the user, we're just going to uh, console.log the user. So we're just going to say console.log user in here. Let's open the terminal, the console, I mean, and let's just uh, save this, refresh this page. And there you go. You see the user's information. Great stuff, guys. All right. Now we can reuse this within our components. So let's go back to where we stopped. So going back to our workspace creator, which is under our global components. Now we can use that information that we have. So we're going to say const user and we're going to say subscribe. Actually, we don't need the subscriptions yet. So we're going to say equal to use superbase user and invoke this just like this. So another thing I do want to point out is this user is actually of type auth user. And the problem is it's not going to have the um, the updated URL for the avatar and all that kind of stuff. OK, but that's OK. We can do that when we need to at that time. For now, let's just go ahead and um, just create this component right here. Next, you want to go right below this and say const router is equal to use router like this from next navigation. And then we're going to create the following functions. So const add collaborator like this is going to be an arrow function with the user set to user that comes from superbase types we're going to set the collaborators to be an array with everything inside collaborators. But we're going to have the new user right in here. And then const remove collaborator right here is basically going to be another function like this. And this function is going to get access to the user as well. And in here, we're basically going to set the collaborators to be collaborators dot filter because we're removing it, right? We just call it C. And then we want to say C dot ID is equal is not equal to um, user dot ID. OK, so we're just going to filter our current currently existing collaborators. OK, and right here you want to return a div and we're going to give it the following styles. So flex gap for flex dash call just like this. And inside this, we're going to return another div. And inside this, we're going to return a label like this from UI label, not Radix UI. And this is going to have HTML4 set to name. And in here, we want to have the class name too for this. So class name just like this. And this one can be text dash SM. And we want to say text dash muted dash foreground. And inside this one, we're going to just say name like this. So this is basically like 
a, a workspace creator form guys it's kind of like a form that's going to allow you to create a new workspace okay so now let's go to our workspace drop down and let's simply import this component so we can look at what we're doing right here just like this let's go ahead and do this uh, render out that stuff here so we're going to say class name and we're going to set it to flex we're going to say transition all we're going to say hover background muted justify center item center gap two padding two and the width full and inside this div we're going to create an article like this and this is going to have the following class names so we're going to set it to text slate 500 rounded full bg slate 800 width 4 height 4 flex item center justify center and inside this guys we're just going to return a plus icon just like a plus like this and after this we're going to say create workspace okay so now when you open this you see this button here and now when you click on it it shows the form all right, guys, for some reason, I'm not able to set this to default open true. I think it's because we have a trigger, but that's OK. What we're going to do here is we're just going to click on this and we're going to try to work with this right here. So let's go into our workspace creator. Now we can sort of see what we're doing. So after this label, go ahead and say div and give it a class name flex justify center items center and gap two right here. And inside this div, we're going to return an inputs element, which comes from UI input, just like this. And in here, we're going to set the name to be name, the value to be title. Let's also open this so we can see what we're doing. Awesome. And let's change this to a closing tag. Actually, I don't want it there. And we're going to say placeholder equal to workspace name like this. On change is going to have a function in here and it's going to be e okay and then we're going to set the title to um, e dot target dot value and after these two divs guys right here hit enter and create a react fragment and we're going to say label and inside this label we're going to have HTML for set to the uh, permissions like this SSIONS, right? Permissions. And um, inside this, we're going to have the class name, which is going to be set to text SM and uh, text muted foreground, like this. Okay. And the label is going to say permissions, like this. So in here, we should be able to see permissions. Awesome. So the select component comes from ShadCN UI. So let's go to ShadCN and let's search for select. Where is that right here? So click on select, scroll to the bottom, click on this one again, and go ahead, quit this and paste and hit enter. Awesome. Now we can copy this, these import statements and we can uh, just paste it right up here. And after this label guys right here, we're going to use this select component. So the select is going to have an an on value change, which is going to be a, um, a callback function that was going to give us the value. And in here, we're basically going to set permissions like this to our value. And we're also going to have the default value to be set to the permissions. And inside the select guys, we're going to have the select trigger like this, which is going to basically have a class name of width, full height, 26 and negative margin top of negative three and inside this trigger we're going to say select value just like this okay and we're just going to make a use it as a closed tag and after this trigger we're going to say select content inside this a select group and inside the group we're going to have the item and this item has to have the value and this first one is going to be private like this and um, inside this, we're going to basically kind of create that item. OK, so it's going to have a div with the class name of padding two flex gap four justify center items center. And inside this div, guys, we're going to have the lock icon, which comes from Lucid React right here. So just put that in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and run NPM run dev so we can see the new changes. And now when we click on that, we should see this right here. Awesome. Check that out. So after this lock, we want to create another article like this with the following class names, text, 
dash left flex and flex dash call okay and inside this we're going to have two spans one span right here and another span right here okay actually this one can be a paragraph um, let me see maybe we can just use this paragraph this should be fine and inside this we're just going to say private and I'm just going to paste some um, some text in here feel free to do whatever you like um, there we go like that so your workspace is private to you just like that guys awesome okay so you can hit the drop down and you can select another option too. go ahead and try to take it up as challenge and build another one for share and the icon you're going to use is share from lucid react and if you don't know i'm going to show you exactly how to do it so hopefully you got it right if not i'm just going to show you what to do you want to do the same thing we just did which is have a select item with the value set to shared you want to have a div with the same styling that we had as before right here and inside that we're just going to put the share icon and the article with the exact same styling but we're just going to change the text okay and now you can see we can just change this so this is going to allow us to change between a shared and a private workspace and also guys this is completely responsive as you can see on mobile it takes the full height and on desktop it takes half of it now after the select say uh, permissions like this and um, this is actually going to be after this react fragment right here we're going to say permissions so let's also expand this so we can actually see what it looks like all right so we're going to say permissions equal to equal to shared and we're going to return a div like this okay we're actually going to hold on to this because we're going to need another component but uh, what we're going to do here is after everything guys right after this the, uh, this permission right here what we're going to do is we're going to return a button like this from UI button and we're going to say create in here just like that looks great and we're going to set the type to be button like this and disabled if there's no title or the permission so basically if the permission is shared we want to make sure that there are actually collaborators in there or else there's, there's no point okay if it's a shared workspace there has to be collaborators so we're going to say permissions equal to shared shared and collaborators dot length is equal to zero okay so if that is true we're going to set it to disabled right there and after this we're going to say variant is equal to secondary right after this is say on click and this on click is going to be create item which we haven't built so we're going to build that uh, build that function in uh, just a second so let's just say create item let's go up here and we're going to create const create item equal to a function and this is going to be an async function right here and this is basically going to say const unique or, or like id all right or uuid is equal to uuid and this is basically v4 so i'm just going to say v4 here invoke that and we're going to say if the user dot id exists then we're going to say const new workspace is going to uh is going to be workspace and we're going to say data set to so this is basically all the properties guys okay so i'm just going to copy paste this to save you guys a lot of time and basically the data is going to be null this uuid is going to be right here um and uh, we're going to have logo null workspace is going workspace owner is going to be this id uh, in trash is going to be empty title right here um the id icon and so on and so forth okay so next thing we're going to do is what is this error okay the banner url is missing so let's set the banner url equal to just an empty string for now if the permission is equal to private then we're going to basically await create workspace okay and this comes from queries we're going to create the workspace and we're going to say new workspace just like this and then we're going to say router dot refresh just like this but if it is a shared workspace we're going to say permissions equal to shared then we're going to return the following we're going to return await create workspace invoke this and pass in the new workspace and then we're going to say await add collaborator which we um, have right here we're going to pass in the collaborators and the unique ID which is the UUID that we have right here 
and then we're going to say um, router dot refresh. So this collaborator right here, guys, is actually from our queries. It's not this add collaborators right here. So this is going to be add collaborators. So let's go to our queries, which is inside Superbase queries, and let's create that right here. Go to the bottom and you want to say export const add collaborator uh, collaborators equal to async function. We're going to invoke this and we're basically going to get the user, which is set to user like this. And we also need the workspace ID, which is a string. OK, and in here we're going to say const response equal to users dot for uh, sorry, um, this is actually not going to be users user guys. It's going to be users because we might want multiple collaborators, right? So you want to say users dot for each and then we're going to have async function like this. OK, and this is basically going to give us the user. Give this a type user in here. We're basically going to say const user exists. OK, so we're going to check if the user exists uh, already in this. If not, there's no point in adding. I mean, if they are already there, you can't add them again as a uh, workspace uh, collaborator, right? So we're going to say await db dot query dot collaborators, which we actually did. We even create that. Let me see. So let's go to this and let's actually close this right here and let's do npm run pull. We might need to make a quick change here because we're going to see some errors. Um, OK, in migrations, we see some errors. So let's go to our super base right here. And let's go ahead and um, copy this one right here. Subscriptions and you want to go back into our migrations and we have to update our subscriptions uh, table right here. OK, this one, just go ahead and replace that with this and you should be good to go. So now in our query, if we say query dot collaborators, it's going to be there. OK, so query dot collaborators dot find first. So we're going to search for just one and we're going to check where we're going to say P or U, for example, we're going to say EQ and we're going to set this to equal. So this is a condition, guys, right here. OK, we're going to say equal. Um, before that, we also need and so let's actually wrap this in and like this. OK, and we want to say equal u dot user ID is equal to the user dot ID. OK, and also it should be equal to two things. So we're going to say one more equal to u dot workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID we just received. OK, so if we find that user, we know the user exists. So if no user exists, only then are we going to do await db dot insert collaborators dot values. And in here we're going to say uh, create an object and say workspace ID and the user uh, ID is going to be set to the user dot ID. OK, just like this. Awesome. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and say NPM run dev like this. Let's close that and let me refresh this page. And here we're going to now import the add collaborators action like this. So now let's see what this looks like. Awesome. So if it's private, it needs the title. If there's no title, it's not going to work. OK, so that's why we did this. And you see, this is what it looks like on mobile device. It looks amazing. So um, awesome. And if it's shared, the title is not going to work either because we need to have our collaborator. So let's go ahead and set that up. OK, so inside these this permission where we're saying shared, we need to return something else. So he, right here, guys, we're going to show all the collaborators right here. OK, we're going to need another component, too. But um, let's first go ahead and um, actually let's go ahead and build out that component. OK, the component is called right in here. We're going to call this collaborator. OK, collaborator like this uh, search. So you want to go into your globals and you want to create a new file called collaborator dash search. OK, and um, this is basically going to be RAFCE. OK, sorry, we need to say dot TSX here and then just say RAFCE collaborator 
search like this. Have an interface right here. So we're going to say collaborator search props, and we're going to set it to the following. So existing collaborator, um, actually, this is going to be user. This is also going to be a user. And this is going to be react dot react node, just like this. Use this right in here. So we're going to say um, react dot functional component, and we're going to say collaborator search props. And then we're going to also extract it from here. So we're going to get children and then existing collaborators and get collaborators. OK, just like this. And after this, guys, we're going to say const and we're going to create a search for the uh, state for the search results. So when we search for a collaborator, we want to sort of keep track of the results that come. Right. So um, let's go ahead and say search results and set search results. OK, just like this. Now you know what to do. This is a, a client component. So go up here and we want to say use client. Do you want to say use state just like this user, an array of users, or it's just going to be an empty array. So for now, we're just going to pass in an empty array. OK, then we're going to create a timer ref, guys. And what this timer ref is needed for is basically we want to sort of like debounce the results, right? We don't want to immediately on every single on change fire a request that's going to be super expensive. So we're going to say use ref like this. And in here, we're going to create a type called uh, return type. And this one is going to be type of uh, set timeout. And this one can just be left like this for now. And we're going to say const super base. Um, actually, we don't need this because now we have a new hook that we created user equal to super base uh, user like this. And we can get access to the user right here. So I'm just going to create a use effects in here, removing this timer here just to do a cleanup function. Oh, sorry, I put this inside a dependency array. Just put it in here. And if the current exists, then we're simply just going to clear the timeout. OK, that's it. And then we want to say const on change uh, handler is equal to a function. We'll get to this in a second. And finally, we want a const add collaborator. All right. So this is going to be a function too, guys. So what we're doing here uh, when a search shows up on the screen, when we look up some collaborators or some profiles, we're going to get a bunch of users. And then when we click add on one of those users, we want to send this to the parent component that's uh, using this collaborator search. That way we can add that in the form right in here. OK, so when we click shared and then, OK, it's going to show an error, but uh, I'm just trying to show you what we're trying to do. Right. When we add the collaborator, that collaborator is going to come up into this component and then uh, we're going to set it locally. And that's how we can create the workspace. So I'm just going to leave this blank for now and let's go ahead and create our uh, search component. So this search component is going to need the help of sheet component from chat CNUI. So I'm going to cancel this, go in here, copy this, the NPM command, paste it in here and let's just give it a second. Awesome guys. So let's also copy this to kind of speed up our process and paste the import statements right up top here. And let's change this to sheet. OK, and inside this, we want to have the sheet trigger, which is right here. And the sheet trigger is going to have a class name of W dash full. And we're going to get the children and put the children in here. OK, then we want to have the sheet content, guys. And the sheet content is going to have a class name of width of 400 pixels. And from small devices, we're going to set the width to 540 pixels. OK. And in here, we want to have the sheet header like this set. Actually, no class names for this. And then the sheet title like this. And in this title, we're just going to say search collaborator just like this. And in here, we want to have the sheet description as well. So this is going to be a paragraph tag. And we're going to give this a class name text dash small text dash muted dash foreground. And inside this, guys, I'm just going to paste some string. And all that's going to say is you can also remove collaborators after adding them from the settings tab. So we're going to have more options later. After the sheet header, we want to create another div and set class name flex justify center items center gap dash two empty dash two. And then in here, we're going to have the search component from Lucid React. And then we're going to have the input 
from UI input right here. This is going to be a closing tag, actually. So we don't have that yet, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay. And in here, we want to have the name equal to name like this. So let's go to Shadzi and UI and let's get the scroll area from here and go ahead and just install that. All right. So um, I kind of want to see what we're doing too. So let's go in here and uh, get access to this collaborator search. And in here, we need to pass in the existing collaborators, which is equal um, to the following. OK, so this we're going to set existing collaborators to collaborators like this. And we also need the get collaborator, which is going to be a function, which is going to give us the user or the collaborator, basically. And we're going to set add collaborate. We're going to invoke this add collaborator and pass in the user. This also needs children. So in here, we're going to add a button like this and give this a type of button class name of text dash small empty dash four. And then in this button, we're going to have a plus like this, which comes from lucid react. And then we also need add collaborators. Let's actually see what this looks like. So if you do search, there you go. If you click that, Awesome, guys. It shows our search collaborator. OK, so there's a small problem here. We'll go ahead and fix that. Yep, we don't want this height to anymore in here. So it's just automatic height. OK, awesome. And also on mobile devices, it kind of shrinks like this. Looks great, guys. After this background color, we want to set the placeholder equal to email and we want an on change. So an on change and we're going to set that to on change handler, the one we created up top right here, right there. And we're going to do some stuff in there too. Okay. So before that, let's um, create the scroll area with from, from the UI scroll area guys. And inside this first, we're going to give this a class name of empty dash six overflow Y scroll W dash full rounded dash MD. And inside the scroll area we're going to go through the search results dot filter. Let's say if the user already added a collaborator, we don't want that collaborator to show up and we don't want themselves to also show up. OK, so we're going to say filter um, like this. The result not existing collaborators dot sum. And in here, we're going to say existing existing dot ID is equal to equal to result dot ID. After this blue um, bracket right here, we're going to do another filter and we're going to say result and we're going to set this to results dot ID not equal to equal to user question mark dot ID. We want to do a dot map. So we want to go across all of those. And we're going to get the uh, user like this because that's a collaborator return a div. And this div is going to have a class name of P dash four flex justify sent uh, justify between and items center. Awesome. And then we also need a key right here. So let's go ahead and say key equal to user dot ID. And inside this, guys, we're going to basically create another div and set the class name to be equal to flex gap dash four items dash center. OK, and then now we need the avatar class name width of eight height of eight. And in here, avatar image and set the source to be equal to avatars like this seven dot PNG avatar fallback. And inside this, we are just going to say Cypress. After this avatar, we want to have a div here, have a class name text SM gap two overflow hidden overflow ellipses with 180 and text muted foreground. And inside that we're going to say user dot email. OK, so we're going to show the email of the user after the second div, create a button here. And this is going to have a variant set to secondary. OK, yeah, we're not going to see that yet. But uh, what we can do, we can just pass in some uh, fake values. So we have an array and we need the email something at gmail.com. And then what else do we need? So this is a user. So we have a bunch of stuff to do. We're just going to set this to partial for now like this. So we kind of see something here. This is kind of messed up. So we'll go ahead and fix that in a second. All right, guys. OK, so the reason why this is messed up is because this is flex right here. And that, yep, that should fix it. Awesome. And in this button to return, um, just add in here. So when we click this button, we want to say on click 
like this is equal to add collaborator and pass in the user. Oh, sorry, actually this has to be uh, like this. Remove this data and we're going to remove this partial. So let's go up to this add collaborator and what we need to do in here, user, which is going to be of type user. And in here, we're going to say get collaborator and we're going to send in that user that we just created. Okay, this is how we can pass the UI to the other component as well. So our on change handler is going to do the following. Okay, so this is going to be E. So we're going to get an event here, which is react dot change event um, like this. And this is going to be an HTML input element. And in here, we're going to have if timer ref, then we're going to clear timeout. Okay, and we're going to say timer ref dot current like this. And if not, then we're just going to say timer ref dot current is equal to set timeout, invoke that. And this is going to take in a callback function with, uh, we're just going to put 450 milliseconds like this. Async const res equal to await. Head over to our queries file. We create export const get users from search like this is going to be equal to async function email which is going to be a string and we're going to check if there's no email we're just going to return an empty array const accounts equal to db dot select like this dot from users dot where i like okay like this from drizzle orm and this is basically um, checking where the text is like so the email is like something and this is going to be users dot email like this and in here, we're going to use a string literal and say email and put a percentage symbol right at the end, guys. Finally, we just need to return the account uh, accounts, actually, just like this. Go back to our components and let's import that. So we want to say get users from search e dot target dot value. And then we're going to say set search results to whatever we get, whatever we get from this response. And let's go ahead and quit this because we're making too many migration requests. It's actually causing an error. All right, guys, so let's head back to our workspace creator file. And after this collaborator search, you want to create a div like this and give it the following style margin top of four. And um, OK, let's close this div here. And inside this, you want to create another span and you want to give it some class names, text dash SM text dash muted uh, dash foreground. And what we're creating here, guys, is basically we're just going to display the collaborators that have been selected. OK, so when you click this uh, from the sheet and you search up some collaborators, we're going to basically populate that right here. Just say this right here, which is collaborators right like this and collaborators dot length or we're just going to return an empty string. And then after the span, we're going to use the scroll area that we just installed and let's give it the following styles height of 120 pixels overflow dash y dash scroll with dash full rounded dash MD border border dash muted foreground and um yeah you want to set it to 20. we're going to put all the collaborators in here collaborators dot length if this is true then we're going to return something and then if not we're going to return something else so if it is true we want to do collaborators dot map like this and we're going to invoke this and we're going to get access to the collaborator so i'm just going to call it c like this and inside here I'm basically going to return a div just like this. So first P dash four flex, then justify between items center P equal to C dot ID. And inside this, we're going to create another div flex gap dash four items dash center. OK, and inside this, go ahead and use the avatar. And inside that one, we need avatar image and avatar fallback, say SRC equal to slash avatars slash seven um, dot PNG. So we'll do some test data real quick. So um, and the avatar fallback is just going to be I'm just going to put some strings right here. And after this avatar right here, go ahead and uh, create another div and set the class name to text dash SM gap dash two text dash muted dash foreground overflow 
dash hidden overflow dash ellipses from the small devices we want the width to be set to uh, about 300 pixels width to 140 pixels inside this div put the collaborator so c dot email so when we click this right here and have shared uh, we should see the email with the uh, collaborator as well so let's quickly fix this button too and then we'll see what it looks like okay so let's go ahead and say button like this and inside this we're going to say remove then let's set the variance on this to secondary on click is going to be remove collaborator the c right here so let's go ahead and see what this looks like all right guys so you can do this too just go to chat gpt okay Awesome. So it went ahead and created that for us. Paste this in here. And there you go, guys. You can scroll through all your collaborators. So if I remove this, if I if I click on James Smith, is removed from the uh, workspace just like that. So right now we have this here when there are collaborators, but when, when there are no collaborators, we want to return something else, right? So we want to create a div and give it the following class name. So we're going to say absolute right dash zero left dash zero top dash zero bottom dash zero flex justify center items center so let's just create a span here give it um, the following class names text dash muted dash foreground and then text dash sm and inside this we're just going to say you have no collaborators let's basically reset this so if we remove all the collaborators in here and just like that you see we have you have no collaborator so i see something wrong here so it's right here in the absolute like this and that's going to send it to the center so let's go ahead and see whether all this stuff works perfectly okay so i went ahead and just created some mock users in my authentications tab and you can do that by clicking on authentication and then this table will show up and uh, for some reason, if it doesn't show up, make sure you have all users right here. And then you can hit add user and then you can create a new user. So don't send them the invitation because these are just uh, mock users and go ahead and put the email and the password and make sure this is checked. So just to make sure our trigger function is actually working. If you go to users, you see every time we create a new user or they sign up with our application, we're also populating this table. Change it to a shared workspace and then go ahead and hit add collaborators. And then here we can look up like testing, for example, and there you go. The two users that start with this text, which is test, showed up. Now, if I type in a lot of things back to back, it's not going to send the API request because it's debounced. That way it's performant. Let's try to add Joe as a workspace collaborator. We're going to add him and he shows up right here inside the collaborators tab. And now we can also remove this collaborator from here. So let's go ahead and hit remove and that's it. And also the number showed here just to make sure this create button works. If we don't have this name here, we cannot hit create. I just try to click it. And now if we just set uh, some sort of work space here now we can go ahead and create this workspace call this shared workspace okay just to test it out and make sure everything works all right so i want to also maintain some loading state so i'm going to say const um is loading and set is loading equal to use state and we're just going to say false in the beginning and uh, we're going to set this um the set loading right here so we're going to set is loading to true because we started uh, loading this right here the bottom after this is done so after the private workspace is completed um, and this is also completed after these two things right in here we're going to uh, set this to uh, set is loading to false we can just come in here and just say um, this one or is loading and let's go ahead and hit create all right, guys, so it looked like it did create it, but I had some sort of issue here. So we're going to test this one more time. Just going to delete this and uh, primary keys. Uh, please add a primary key column to uh, delete this. OK, so we need to create a primary key column here. Go into this schema right here and let's shrink this. Let's go into our collaborators table and we want to have an ID. So we're just going to copy an ID from here just like this ID like this. Let's go to the bottom, paste this ID in here, default random primary. Okay, this looks good. 
Let's refresh this and run npm run generate and then run npm run dev. All right, guys, so something seems to be wrong here. I'm not sure why this primary key is not being updated. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to show you guys how to edit this from here. OK, click this drop down here on collaborators, hit edit table. Go ahead and click this primary key right here and hit save. We're going to go into our code and we're going to close this and say npm run pull. So let's select all of these and let's go ahead and delete these two rows. Awesome. After this, we're going to use the toast const toast equal to use toast just like this. After we create the workspace, we're going to just invoke toast like here and then just say title success. And we're just give it a quick description and just say and we can do that after this as well saying something here. So, oh, OK, guys. So the issue is when we made the pull uh, when we pulled, we got this weird error again. This is unfortunate. We have to go back to our schema. So let's uh, replace that and that should solve our problem. We are going to create first the private workspace. So we're just going to say a private workspace and let's go ahead and create it. Awesome. And let's just take a look at that. Awesome. It shows up under the private workspace. So let's say a shared workspace like this. And let's just add some collaborators because I cannot create it. So we're going to do this and we're going to say Joe at gmail.com. And we're just going to have this person create the router dot. Oh, router dot refresh has to be invoked right here. So let's say if we refresh this page, we're going to see a shared workspace. OK, and you can click on this workspace and you see the ID up top is also going to change um, just like this. Go back into your sidebar.tsx file. And what we're going to do is first just change this to a closing tag. And we're going to create another component called plan usage. And this component is just going to show the user how much have they consumed from um, the current plan, uh, which is folders.length. And we're going to say this is equal to the workspace folders data dot length. After that, we also want to pass in the subscription, OK, because we want to show uh, what the user has. So we're going to pass in the subscription. Awesome. There we go. So let's go ahead and open your sidebar and inside that create a file called plan dash usage dot TSX. And we can do RAFCE plan usage. So interface plan usage props. So folders length is going to be a number just like this. And we need subscription is going to be the following, which is subscription or null. So let's go ahead and import this from our super base types. Now let's uh, use it here. So react.functional component plan usage props. And then let's extract these values from here, which is uh, folders length and the subscription just like this. So use clients and let's go back to our sidebar. And now let's just import this just like this. So what we can do here, guys, is instead of passing this, we can just say um, or length like this, maybe zero. There you go. It's showing the plan usage component. So let's go back to our component and let's create it right here. So first thing we need is this is ha this has to be a use client component because we're going to set some states, but we're also going to set some default values from the server. OK, um, so first thing we're going to get here is the workspace ID and the state. And this actually comes from remember our app state right here. So use app state just like this. After this, we're going to say usage percentage, and that's going to be a use state. So let's import it from react and we want to pass in some formula right here. This is going to be the folders length divided by the max folders for the free plan. Import that and we want to divide this I'm uh, sorry, multiply this by 100. Let's create a use effect. It's going to set the plan usage based on our local state as well, because that can also update right inside this use effect. I'm going to say const state folders length is equal to state dot workspaces dot find workspace where the workspace dot ID is equal to the current workspace ID that we're on. And then we need to find the folder. So we're going to do question mark folders dot length just like this. OK, and then in here we're going to say if state folders length is uh, equal to undefined, we're just going to return. And if not, then we're going to set the usage, say state folders length divided by max folders free plan and um, star 100. So the max folder free plan is 
I think about three, right? All right, three right there. Let's replace this with an article tag. So we're going to say article like this, give it the following class names, which is margin bottom dash four. And inside this, we're going to set the following. So we're going to say subscription question mark dot status. Okay. So if it's not equal to active, then we're going to return something right here. So only if the user is on a free plan, we want to show this. Okay, let's give this the following class names So go ahead and do this with me. You want to say flex justify between with full items center. And inside this, we want to put another div and we're just going to say free plan. And then we can create a small tag we can say usage percentage dot two fixed and we'll say zero in here and we'll just add the percentage sign right at the end by 100% to show how much we have used after this tag here, you want to say subscription dot status and that's going to do the question mark. Okay, is not equal to active, then we want to send uh, we want to return something else. So we're going to return a progress component. And this component comes from chat and UI. And let's copy this and paste this uh, command right in here and let that install. Let's first do npm run dev come into this component and you want to say progress from UI progress guys, not radix. The value is going to be the usage percentage and the class name h1. If this number was, uh, for example, 30, you see it populates. All right, guys, so what we're going to do here, actually, I want to change this a little bit. I want to basically create another div and give it the following class names flex. We need to put all of this inside this gap dash two text dash muted dash foreground margin bottom of two items center. So now it kind of looks a little better right before this class name right here. You want to create another div and give this the following class name height of four and width of four. And what this is going to have is custom icon that we're going to set. Go to the GitHub and you can copy all the icons. Don't go ahead and start building these out. OK, just go ahead and copy them and paste them um, in the folder. I'm going to tell you right now, go to source, go to components and create one right here called icons to paste all the icons right in here, guys. OK, so go ahead, pause the video, do that and come back to the video. Hopefully you managed to paste these and it's basically just an SVG. These are from our Figma file, guys, if you remember, and we just changed a couple things. So if you did, if you did copy the SVG file from the Figma file into this, make sure you change the fill rule. So by default, it's the fill rule is going to be like this. You want to change it to uh, something like this. And the same thing for the clip rule as well. Go back to our file and inside this div where we created this height and width for Cypress diamond icon just like this. And let's head back into our sidebar, which is right here. And we're going to have another component in here. And this component is going to be called the native navigation component. Before that, I just want to pass in something like this. My workspace ID equal to params dot workspace ID. So let's copy this native navigations, go into the sidebar and you can say native dash navigation dot, uh, dot TSX and say RAFCE. I paste that right in there. Awesome. And the interface is basically this right here, which is um, my workspace ID is a string class name is a string and it's optional and get selected item, which is a string, uh, which is a function that returns void and takes one parameter with the selection. And this is optional as well. Go ahead and use this. So I'm going to say react dot functional component navigation props like this. And we're going to extract these values from here, actually. So we might not even need this guy. So let's go ahead and remove this. Um, yeah, but you can have that in there if you ever wanted to pull the value out of this component. OK, so we're going to return a nav element like this with the class name of Tailwind Merge. And you want to pass in margin Y2 and then the class name that we just got in as a prop. Inside this, you want to pass in a unordered list. And you want to have a bunch of list items inside this UL. We'll give it a class name of flex flex column. And our list item is going to have a link which comes from next link class name set to group slash navigation uh, navigation. Actually, go ahead and change this to not navigation, but native flex text dash neutrals dash seven like this transition dash all href to slash dashboard slash dollar sign my workspace ID. Okay, 
So if you click on the first link, it's going to take you to your workspace homepage. Go back into the sidebar and let's import this component. We need to open this and inside here we need to show our link, right? So right now let's open this link and inside this link, we're going to create home icon like this, have a span my workspace in here. Awesome. So now when you hover over this, you see it does that, that thing right there. And in this link, guys, you can just say gap dash two. Awesome. That looks so much better. Okay. So this is why we use those custom SVG so that we can use this hover animation. All right. We'll come to the uh, rest of them in a second, uh, which is the settings and the trash. But let's first go ahead and build out this part. Um, right. And then we'll come to that. But for now, what you can do is you can just duplicate this three times right here. So we have a flex on this flex column. I'm just going to set gap of two in here as well to give it some spacing. And we're going to change this one to settings. This is going to be Cypress settings icon just like this. And this one is going to be trash. And we're going to change this to Cypress trash icon. Let's go back to our sidebar after our native navigation. Let's create a scroll area like this class name overflow dash scroll relative height 450 pixels open this like this and i'm going to say div just like this we're going to give it the following class names pointer events none with full absolute bottom zero height 20 bg gradient to top uh, from background to transparent z 40. so what this is is basically like a gradient that sort of fades into our navigations. So the next component is going to be a drop down list. So we're going to say folders drop down list like this drop down list and it's going to be this component. So let's go ahead and also pass in the props right before we create that. So we're going to say workspace folders is equal to workspace folder data workspace ID is equal to params dot workspace ID. So depending on which workspace we are on, we are also going to fetch that. Let's go ahead and copy this and let's create this workspace folder, which is basically the um, folders dash and then dash list dot TSX and RAFCE. And you can just paste that in here. What this is going to do is it's going to act like a container that's going to hold all our drop down elements. So in here, we're going to do a couple things. The first thing we need to do, I'm just going to put some comments here and don't worry, all the comments are also in the GitHub repository. So, okay, we're seeing this error here. So I'm just going to go ahead and import it. So um, we don't have that error anymore. Okay, awesome. And um, what we're going to do in here, the first thing is first we'll set some states, right? And uh, we're going to also have uh, keep track of our local states for the folders because we uh, we also want to update it, um, you know, automatically. So we don't want to always refresh the entire thing. We want to also use our local app state that we created. So we're going to keep track of those local folders in here. We're going to set its default to the workspace folders, and then we're going to have a effect in here that's basically going to set the initial state okay based on the server data inside our app state okay and then we're going to also set our folders when the state changes and then we're going to have an add folder function right here to add a folder into our folder list and finally we're going to just return the components so let's go ahead and build out these states const state and dispatch is equal to use app state const folders and set folders like this equal to use state. So let's go up here and say use client just like this. Folders are just going to be workspace folders. So what we get from the props. So let's go ahead and just create the interface for that. So the interface is going to be called folders drop down list uh, props like this. And workspace folder is going to basically be of type folder and an array of that. And the workspace ID is a string, say workspace folders and the workspace ID, just like this. OK, and let's use this here. So react dot functional component folders, drop down list props. And one more thing we need to mention here is we need to set up 
real-time updates. So basically, when another user creates a folder, we also want to have a real-time update system set up so that it can um, create a folder for us in our local app state as well, right? So we're going to get to that uh, right after we build this out and see what it looks like. And then we'll get to these uh, real-time updates. So right in here, I'm just going to say work in progress for this one and work in progress for this one as well. So let's go ahead and create the use effect. If the workspace folders exist, so the dot length for this is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. So since we need the workspace folders, we'll pass that in here. You're going to dispatch a new type um, set folders. All right. So we want to say set underscore folders like this. And let's go ahead and create this inside our reducer. Go to your libs folder, go to provider, go to state provider, and you want to create a new type here. And with type set to set folders, payload a workspace ID because we need to know where we're passing, where we need to enter these folders and the folders, which is going to be an array or it can be the app folder type that we have up here, an array of the app folder type, just like this. And let's go ahead and create this reducer for it. So after this, we're going to say case set folders is going to return an object with everything in the state, but we want to have workspaces, which is going to be state dot workspaces dot map the workspace. If the workspace dot ID is equal to action dot payload, dot workspace ID, then we're going to do something. If not, we're just going to return the workspace just like this. In here, we're going to say return a new object with everything inside workspaces, but we want to set folders to be the action dot payload dot folders um, dot folders like this. And we oh, so I made a mistake here. So I'm going to change this to folders like this, but we want to sort this. So this callback function is going to give us a comma B new date, invoke it and pass an a dot the created at and dot get time and invoke it like this. So we're going to say new date a like this. So what is this saying? B dot created at. So this is showing some error here. So let me go ahead and fix this in a second. All right, guys. So our created at has a string or null. This is weird. Let me go into our schema and we need to kind of update the tables to have the default value set. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. Just give me one second. All right, guys. So for created at after this, after saying timestamp, we want to say default now we want to invoke this and we also want to say not null and invoke this too. So we did it for workspaces. Let's go ahead and do it for the folders too, for the files as well. Right after this, just like this. And you want to save that. Um, I think everything else is good to go. OK, let's go to the collaborators. OK, it already has it in here. And then what we want to do here is run NPM run generate and run NPM run dev. And the workspaces have a timestamp. OK, let's see if we can pull this. So we want to create another terminal here and just say NPM run pull and get ready to <laughs> change that right there. Go into our schema. We need to copy our subscriptions because we're going to have that TypeScript error. Update this to the new subscriptions. OK, awesome. Let's close this. And we have another TypeScript error in our folder. So yeah, we need to pass our folders in here. All right, guys, so go back into your file, into your folders drop down list. And after this type, you want to set the payload to be equal to an object here with the workspace ID. And finally, the folders, uh, we're going to set it to an error. Uh, sorry, an array, an empty array right now. We're going to just say workspace folders dot map. We're going to go into all of these. So why we're mapping over this and not just setting it is because we want to add an additional property to this. And we're going to return a new object in here. And this is going to be everything inside folder. But the files are going to be set to state dot workspaces dot uh, find. OK, so we're going to find the that specific workspace like this. Uh, where the workspace dot ID is equal to our current workspace ID. We want to check for the folders and we want to find 
those files from these folders. Okay, so, um, so we'll just say F like this, I guess, and then we'll say F dot ID is equal to folder dot ID. And then we want to get the files from this just like this. And if there's nothing in here, we want to make sure to set this to an empty array because it's going to be undefined and we can't do that. So now we went ahead and set our local states to update that. And in here, we also need the workspace ID like this. So let's pass that. We want to also update our local states because we, that's how we're managing the server data. We're going to say set folders, okay, to the state dot workspaces dot find. This returns us the workspace. So we're going to say workspace dot ID is equal to workspace ID. We need to get the folders from here. So let's just say folders like this. And if there's nothing in here, we want to set it to an empty array. Uh, the reason is because by default, we want to use the workspace folders. And then after that, we want to use the folders that we have in here. Also, let's provide state in here as a dependency because we're using state. And let's go ahead and return a React fragment and then say div like this class name flex. And we want to set this to sticky Z20 top zero background is a BG background W full height of 10 group title justify between item center uh, a padding right of four and text neutrals of eight. So this one is actually text neutrals neutrals eight. Go ahead and create a span. This span is going to have the class name text neutrals eight font bold and text is extra small. And what is this? So this is basically like a title. Okay, it's like a title that's going to look exactly like this. But when we scroll, we're going to stick this to the top of the page so that we can scroll past the folders. Okay, let's go to Shad CNUI and let's get the tooltip. Scroll here and just copy this tooltip and we're going to just paste it. Go into our globals folder and this component is going to be called tool tip component like this dot tsx and it's going to basically be our wrapper for our tooltip okay because i don't want to have too many things inside um our jsx so we're just going to say interface tooltip component props and let's use that in here react dot functional component and we're going to pass in the tooltip props and let's extract the children and the message return the tooltip provider Make sure it's coming from UI. Um, see, so I made a mistake here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and import it again from UI tooltip. So we have the tooltip in here. And inside this, we want to have the tooltip trigger. Inside our trigger, we're going to put all the children, then the tooltip content, which comes from UI tooltip again, which is going to be the message. And we can use this tooltip right here. So we're going to say, tooltip component from globals component like this plus icon from lucid react um, also have a size of 16 and it's going to have a class name of group dash hover slash title inline dash block hidden cursor dash pointer all right guys i want to touch on one of the errors that we were facing so far so basically you if you recollect in the um in the browser, it was showing this error, which uh, said something like, uh, you know, remaining connection slots are reserved for non application super user connection. Turns out that the reason why this is happening is because we have too many open connections since we're doing this migrate stuff right here and communicating with the database. Okay. So the way to solve this, the temporary solution, if you have this issue, guys, is basically to restart your database. And what you could do is you can just uh, click on this. So um, you can go to your database, go into settings, click on database right here and scroll to uh, sorry, go to general right here. And then you want to scroll to where it says restart your project. You can hit this one, but this is going to shut it down for a couple minutes. But I'm just uh, I just use the fast da database reboot. So go ahead and click on that. And that's hopefully going to spin up your project back and you're not going to have any issues again. Okay. But um, the more permanent solution, which I suggest you guys look into is creating this connection pooler in here instead of just uh, creating this regular connection client. So the way to do that is in drizzle, they actually have the pooler right here and you can just follow these instructions, guys. It's the same thing. You see, they create the DB here and you're exporting it. And uh, this pool is going to be the connection string. And if you go into your database, you can get that new connection pooling string 
uh, from here. So if you go into database, uh, you see you have a new uh, connection pooling custom configuration string here. OK, so this is a string you want to use when you want to uh, use this pooling configuration. OK, so um, that's about it. Um, I just wanted to point that out. But for now, just to you know keep the simplicity of this video, we're just going to restart it from here. OK, so go ahead and do this if you ever see that error on the screen. And um, that way it will restart your project and everything will work perfectly. Awesome. All right. And after this cursor pointer, we want to say hover like this dark. And uh, we want to say text dash white. OK, cool. And this is basically the plus icon that I was talking about. So let's go ahead and import this tooltip component that we just created. And let's go ahead and pass in some props here, which is the message is going to be create folder just like this. OK, so now, guys, when we hover over this folder right here, it's going to show this. But if we hover over this, then it's going to show this tooltip. OK, and when we click on that, we got to do something from there. So we'll get to that in a second. But uh, basically, this is what we want to get set up for now. And then we will allow the user to create the folders. OK, so after that, we're going to go ahead and create an on click in here. So we're going to say on click like this is equal to and add folder uh, handler, OK, just like this. And we're going to create this uh, folder handler. So let's go on top right here and let's say const add folder folder handler is equal to a function. And this is going to be an async function. OK, check if the folders dot length is greater than or equal to three. OK, we want to check if it's greater than or equal to three. And we also want to make sure that there is no subscription. OK, and this is actually going to come um, our basically our local provider that we created. OK, so we're going to say const uh, subscription is equal to use superbase user just like this. And this is going to retrieve the subscription for us. So if there is no subscription and the folders length is greater than or equal to three, then we're going to do something. What are we going to do here, guys? We're basically going to um, open uh, like a modal on the screen. OK, and this modal is we're going to get to this in a second. But basically, this modal is for the pricing. OK, but let's work on the pricing stuff towards the end. So we're just going to hide this for now. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say const new folder um, equal to an object. And this is going to be of type folder like this. And this object is going to have data set to null and then a folder ID folder ID like this. We're just going to set this to uh, UUID. OK, so we're going to create a UUID right here. And this UUID is basically V4. So I'm just going to import that real quick and invoke it. Awesome. And then we're going to say created at is set to a new date ISO string. Uh, and you want to invoke this like this. And the title is going to be untitled because it's a new folder. So, OK, guys, this is going to be called ID. Sorry about that. Not folder ID. And then here icon ID is going to be uh, a page. OK, and you can just open your emojis. If you are on MacBook, it's uh, the FN key. If you double click that or single click, it's going to show that and you can just click on a page or you can just copy this from the GitHub repository. OK, and then after that, we want to set in trash is uh, equal to null. And finally, the workspace ID. OK, and then we also um, actually, yeah, we also need one more thing, which is the banner URL. And this is going to be an empty string. OK, and after that, we're going to say dispatch. So we're going to dispatch an action. What is this action, guys? This is adding a folder to our local states. So um, I see here something is wrong. It's saying new folder, but its values never use case. Logo is missing. So the logo for the folder is actually not needed. So let me go ahead and look at this folder right here and in folders. OK, so there we made a small error here. We have an extra logo column, which we don't need because logos are only for our workspaces. Right. So let's go ahead and remove this logo from here. So from folders and we can remove it from the files too, just like this. And um, we want to go ahead and search for what else workspaces that can stay. And then let's remove this. And uh, we can say npm run generate like this and we can do npm run dev and we can refresh this page. OK, and that's going to go ahead and migrate our changes. All right. Awesome. So that was successfully migrated. So let's shut that down and uh, let's go back to our code. So basically we need to dispatch something to our uh, to our local state, which is the type 
called add folder, which we don't have right now. So we're going to do that in a second. And um, our payload that we're going to pass in here is what we're going to use inside our reducer to set that. So let's go ahead and go to our libs providers state provider. And you want to scroll up to the types here and take this up as a challenge and go ahead and try to create a type here with a payload with the folder in there. OK, just take it up as a challenge to create this. That way you're actually doing some work. All right, guys, so if you haven't already, this is what you have to do. Don't worry about it. If you didn't get it right, this is what you got to do. OK, so create an object here under the types and you want to say add folder and you want to have the payload set to the workspace ID because we need to know what workspace to add the folder to. And the folder here is basically going to be the folder itself. OK, so let's go down to our reducer right here. And also, guys, you can just reduce code by just using the set folders itself right here. Instead of doing this, you can basically set something to an array and put everything that's inside the folders by default. And then you can put in the new folders that come in from the payload. You can do that, too. But I want you guys to practice practice. OK, this is the only way to get better, which is to type more and to write redundant code. I know that sucks, but that's the only way to get better. OK, so go ahead and just type this with me and let's see if we can, um, you know, get this correct. OK, so um, hopefully you got it right. But if you didn't, this is what you got to do. So first you want to return everything inside state, but then you want to set the works, uh, the workspaces to be state dot workspaces dot map just like this. So workspaces.map. And this will give us access to the workspace. And then we want to basically return something here. So we're going to return uh, an object with everything inside the workspace. OK, but we're going to set the folders to everything that's in workspace dot folders like this. But the new um, thing is going to be passed in here, which is action dot payload dot folder like this. So the new folder that we pass into the payload is what we're going to add to this array. And at the end, we want to say sort. And uh, this gives us uh, we have to pass in a callback function and say a comma B. And it's the same thing, guys, literally the same thing that we did before, uh, which is the new date minus uh, the new created at and the old um, and the, the previous created at. OK, so we're just going to say new date a dot created at uh, dot get time minus the new date be created at that get time. OK, so it's just going to also kind of kind of, um, you know, uh, sort that out for us. OK, so let's go back in here and now we need to pass in the, this payload. So we're going to say payload is equal to um, this right here. But now we need to pass in the workspace ID. So we'll say workspace ID. But the folder is going to be an object with everything inside the new folder right here. So I'm just going to put that in here. But we want to set the files to be equal to an array, OK, because this is what our new folder structure requires. OK, and after we do this, we're going to say a way to create folder, which comes from our queries, which we're going to create in just a second. And we're going to pass in the new folder just like this. All right, guys. Awesome. So let's go ahead and create this. So head over to your queries, which is inside Superbase queries like this. And you want to go down here and just uh, maybe go up to where we say add right here. Yep. And we're going to say export const um, create. Yep. So let's just say create folder, which is equal to an async function just like this. And we'll give this async name right here. And this function is going to take in a folder. So we're going to say folder is of type folder from um, which is already imported. So that's good. And in here we're going to say const results or response. Yeah, is equal to await db dot insert into folders. OK, dot values and folder like this. OK, and of course you want to wrap this in a try catch. So let's bring this up in here and we want to uh, check for this. And if there's any error, right? If some error occurred here, we're going to do something. So right here, we're going to say um, return an object. So we're going to return just an object with data set to null and the error set to null right here. And if not, uh, what we're going to do, because we don't really need any data here, but we're just doing this for the error, uh, error handling right here. So we're going to do return, return right here to in the catch. And for error, we're going to set this to string um, error like this if some error occurred. And let's also console.log the error in here. Okay, awesome. 
And now let's go back to our code. And uh, what we need to do in here is let's go back in here, close this queries, and let's import this. Okay. And this gives us access to data. So we'll say const data equal to this one. And we also want to say error like this. Okay. And this new folder, this is wrong. So it's new folder. And we want to check, guys, if error exists. So if there was some error for some reason, we don't need to actually put a try catch in here because we're already handling the error there and just returning that. So we're going to check if there is an error error, then we're going to say toast. So let's go up here and make sure we import. So const toast equal use toast, not theme, sorry, use toast like this. And we want to go to the bottom here and we want to basically set this toast. Okay. So we're going to say toast invoke this and we're just going to pass in the title and say error. And then we can just say variant equal to destructive and we can give it some description and say could not create the folder just like this. OK, and if it was successful, then we're just going to uh, return this. So we're going to say else and we're going to return this toast, but we're going to say created folder. OK, so we'll say success, no variant right here and then created folder like this. Awesome. And um, this should be it. So, um, yep, I think this should work. Let's go ahead and we can probably give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, but we're not going to see our folders here yet because we haven't rendered out our folders, right? So, um, yeah, but let's see if this function even works first. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to add a folder. We're going to create this new folder. We need title icon ID just like this. Okay, cool. So if you go ahead and hit this right here, this created, you see this got up updated right here because we have used two folders, but let's see if this request was successful. So let's go into our database, go into tables, and then let's just give this a second to spin up and then click on folders. And there you go, guys, it successfully created our folders and linked everything that we needed in here. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead. Actually, we can keep it in here. No problem. And uh, now we need to actually render out these folders right here. OK. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and build this folder, these folders right here, which is basically a bunch of accordions put together. OK. And we need to also set the default path name and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to that in just a second. But before that, we need to go to um, ShadCNUI. And we need to install this accordion component. So let's go in here and search for accordion, which should be up top, just like this. And let's uh, scroll to this and copy this NPM command. And let's come here and let's quit this and paste it in here. Okay. And let that install. Awesome. Cool. Now that we're done with that, uh, we can go ahead and build our accordion. So we're going to say accordion like this from UI accordion. And this accordion is going to have the following properties. So uh, first thing we need is, um, let's say, uh, type. So type is equal to multiple. And um, we also need to pass in a couple other, which is the default value, because by default, if the user is on one of the pages, right, we want to get the folder ID from there and we want to show the folder. Um, we want to show we want to open that folder ID, right? So that's why we need this default value and this default value we can actually get from um, the folder ID that is open. Correct. So let me see here. All right. So we're just going to go up here and say folder ID from the use app state. And uh, we're going to go down here all the way to the bottom and we're going to set. Um, OK, so the default value right here, we're just going to set it to this array with folder ID in here or it's just going to be an empty string because this default value for some reason uh, needs to take this right here. OK, and um, that's about it. Enter and just give this a class name and um, the class name is going to be padding bottom of 20 like this. OK, we're going to do a couple of things. So first we're going to do folders dot filter. So we want to only render out folders that are not in the trash can. 
okay we want to show everything that is active so we want to say folder here where folder not folder dot in trash okay and then we want to say dot map and we want to get the folder here and then we for each of this we're just going to return a div for now this and let's just save that and this will need a key so let's provide folder dot id just like this okay we'll get back to this in just a second but um let me go ahead and spin up our server again so npm run dev and let's refresh this all right so now we're going to build a very complex component because this is going to have all right guys uh small problem here so what we did is we put this accordion inside this div go ahead and bring it right outside that um and if you ever saw this uh, create folder getting indented that's the reason why okay so that should do the job there so yeah inside this we're basically going to create um a new component and this component right here is basically going to be a drop down component, a little complex uh, component that does a bunch of stuff, but we're going to go ahead and build this, okay? So go ahead and open your sidebar and create a drop down, okay? Just say drop down.tsx like this and say RAFCE. Awesome, great job. And this drop down is going to have a couple things. So what this drop down is for is basically to show the um, the, uh, the drop down itself, like a folder or to show it like a file. Okay. So first let's go ahead and provide the interface and, um, the interface for this is drop down props with the title set to string, the ID set to string, the list type is going to either be a folder, um, a file or native. Okay. Actually, we're not even going to use this native. So we'll remove it for now. If we need it, we'll bring it back. Okay. Folder or file. And then we need the icon ID here and we need the children to be react out react node and disabled to be a Boolean and uh, the custom icon to be um, react out react node again. Okay. So uh, let's also go ahead and extract that from these, uh, from the props right here. So we're going to say react dot functional components and let's pass in the drop down props. And uh, finally, let's just extract all of this from here title id list type icon id children disabled custom icon and everything inside the props right here great job we're going to basically create a super base client right here and then uh, we also need a couple other things okay so let's first just kind of get an overview of what we need to do so first we want to have a folder title okay that is synced server data and local data so this has to be synced okay and then we're, we need to have the file title too because we're going to use the same component for everything and um, after that we need to also have a function to navigate the user to a different page okay like this and then we want to have um, a, a way to add a file so when they click on a drop down like at the end, like you see, we have this right here. If they click on it, we're going to be, we should be able to create a file just like that. Okay. And um, after that, we also want to have the ability to edit those um, files itself or, or the folder also. So that is made possible with a double click. So we're going to just say a double click handler. So if you double click this, for example, you'll be able to change it. Okay. And uh, we also want to have a blur so when the user clicks outside it we want to save um you know the the user's new updated title for the folder or the file and then we also want to have the and some a bunch of on changes okay so i'm just going to say uh, on changes right here and then also the emoji change and move to trash so when the user deletes this, we want to first add it to trash. We don't want to immediately delete it. OK, so um, let's go ahead and say move to trash. So we have the move to trash in here. And then uh, we're going to do a couple other things like getting some styling and so on and so forth. And then we're going to return the accordion item. OK, Phew, that was a lot of stuff, but um, I hope you guys are still with me, because if you are, you are truly going to learn a lot in this project. All right, guys. Awesome. So let's go up here first and just say const superbase is equal to create client component client like this. And then you want to say const state dispatch. Maybe we'll get the workspace ID. It comes from the use app state. And then after this, we want to say is editing. OK, and this is what we're going to do to basically allow the user to uh, edit the titles is editing like this. 
is going to be equal to use state, and this is going to be false by default. And then uh, finally, we need the router to to help uh, route the user. So use router, and um, then we need const path name. Okay, path name is going to be equal to use path name. Actually, I don't think we need this. Let's see if we do. But this has to be a client component, of course, because we have so many states in here. So we're going to say client use client up top. And we'll come to the path name in a second. Okay, I don't think we need that right away. So let's go in here and create the folder title syncing. So we're going to say const folder title. So before we build all this logic, we want to see what our components even look like, right? So first, let's go ahead and build this component. And as we go, we're going to build a logic for it. So first, we need the accordion item, which is which comes from UI accordion. And inside this, we're going to say value equal um, ID, which comes from our props. And then we have to say class name is equal to um, a some specific class name styles that is right here. So we're going to say list styles and we're going to create this in just a second. So this list styles right here is going to be const list styles. And you can uh, just put this in a use memo if you'd like use memo. And this is going to be equal to something here. Um, and in here we need to pass um, some other properties um, to basically help make this work. But we're going to import CLSX like this and we're going to set this to relative okay but this object is going to say the following so what it's going to say in here and don't worry we're going to have this error in here but we're going to fix this in just a second okay so border none is set to text md and border none here and but with margin left text negative 16 and padding y of one this is only if the following is a folder if it's not a folder then we want to do this. Okay, uh, how do we determine that is basically by saying is folder equal to list type um, equal to type of folder. Okay, that's it. You can just use this right here. Or you can just do it directly in here if you don't want to no problem. Okay, awesome guys, and you want to pass in the is folder right in here like this. Great job. Okay, basically, now we have the new list style. So for a folder, it's going to be something else. And for a, a file, it's going to be something else. And um, now let's go back to our accordion right here. And we want to also say on click. So when we click this, we want to do the following. This is going to be an arrow function. And this arrow function is going to do a couple things. So the first thing we want is to stop the propagation. OK, so we're going to say E dot stop propagation like this because it's going to go up the chain because we're also going to have child elements in here and we don't want that to send it up. So we're going to say E dot stop propagation and then we're going to create a new function called OK, navigate page ID and have the list type right in here. OK, just like this. Great job. So let's go ahead and build this function, navigate the user to a different page. So const navigate page is going to be equal to a function that's going to take in the accordion ID. OK, so we're just going to say accordion um, ID like this, which is going to be a string. And the type is going to be a string as well. OK, and in here, what we're going to do is we're going to check. So basically, let's also bring in this folder ID right here. OK, and we'll have the accordion ID right here. So no problem. So what we're going to say here is if type is equal to folder, then we're going to do something. And if not, we're going to just render another one here. And we're just going to say if it's equal to file, then we're going to do something else. OK, and in here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to say router dot push. And we're going to push the user to a string literal just like this. We're going to say dashboard. OK, and um, in here, we're just going to say dollar sign like this. And we're going to say the workspace ID that they actually have selected and slash um, dollar sign accordion ID right here. OK, because it's a folder. All right. And um, for the file, what we can do here is we can just say um, const file. Um, actually, we already have this folder in here. So here, if it's a, a fold of a file, we're basically going to say router dot push the workspace ID slash. We also need the folder ID. So we're going to say folder ID slash the accordion ID. OK, so that way we go to that file 
just like this. Great job. And then let's go back down to our code right here and then let's move on. Inside this, we're going to have an accordion trigger, which comes from UI accordion. And this is going to have ID equal to the list type. This is basically going to have a class name that is going to be set to the following. So it's going to have a class name with hover set to no underline, a padding to dark text dash muted dash foreground, and text is going to be small. Okay. And after that, we also want to have a disabled property. And this is going to be disabled if the list type is equal to file. Okay. And um, right after this, we're going to have a div inside here. We're going to say class name. And this is going to be another class name, guys. And this is going to be called group identifies. Okay. So let's go up here and let's create this group identifies right here, which is called const is equal to um, just a um, uh, CLSX like this. And again, you can use memo if you'd like for this too, no problem. Uh, I'm just going to put it in here and I'm just going to say the following. So dark text white, um, white space, no wrap, flex, justify between items center with full and relative. Okay. And the second parameter is going to be an object that's going to have um, group dash folder and we're going to set this to is folder if it is a folder then we're going to use this style if not then we're going to use another style which is group slash file and this is going to be set to if it is not a folder like this okay so now uh, now we have a bunch of uh, different options right here so we're going to pass that inside this div guys now we're going to create another div here and say class name equal to um uh, the following okay we're going to say flex uh, gap for items center, justify center, and then overflow hidden. Okay. And inside this, we're going to do some condition conditional rendering, which is going to say if the list type is equal to um, a, all right. So I just realized we're actually not going to use this custom icon, I think. So what we can do guys is we can go ahead and just remove this custom icon just like this. Okay. Um, are awesome. That should fix our problem. And um, in here, we're basically going to do some conditional rendering. Okay. So we're going to say if the list list type is equal, actually, we don't even need to do this because for all the list types, we, we need to show this emoji picker right here. Okay. We're going to say div. We're going to say div. And then we're going to give it a class name of relative like this. And inside this, we're going to use our new emoji picker from our global uh, emoji picker. Okay. Not the one from the package. And then we're going to say get value and we're going to pass a on change. So we're going to say on change emoji handler like this. And let's go ahead and build this out right here. But before that, we're just going to pass in the children too, which is icon ID, just like this. And let's go up here um, and create this on change. And this on change is actually pretty simple. So let's go to the on changes and say const is equal to a function here like this. And this is going to be an async function. And we're going to get the selected emoji, which is going to be a string. And in here, we're going to say const path. Um, actually, we already do have the path for the folder. All right, so in here, we're just going to say if the list type is equal to a folder, okay, then we're going to do the following. We're basically going to dispatch something in here, which is going to update our folder with the latest information, okay? So we'll just do this in a second. But right after this, we want to also uh, create the API request to save this right here, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. What I'm going to do is I'm first going to work on the reducer. So let's go into state provider. And I want you guys to take this up as a challenge again and try to build this on your own, okay? And this action is going to be called update folder, okay? All right, so hopefully you got it right, but this is what you got to do. Type update folder. And uh, you want to set the payload to folder of app folders type and the workspace ID. Okay, so let's go to the bottom here and you want to say case. Um, and this case is going to be update folder just like this. And this is basically going to return a new object with um, 
with everything that is inside state and uh, but we want to set the workspaces to be state dot workspaces dot map everything inside the workspace so we're going to get the workspace from here and we're going to um, basically check if the workspace dot id is equal to to the action dot payload dot workspace id okay if it is equal to then we're going to do something if not we're just going to return the workspace right here so if it is then we're going to basically set it to the following. So we're going to return a new object with everything inside workspace, but the folders are going to be set to workspace.folders.map like this, which gives us access to the folder. And we're going to say um, the following. If the folder.id is equal to the action dot payload dot folder ID. So right now what we need is uh, we're going to get the new folder, right? Okay, let's go up here. We also need the folder ID. Yep, that's right guys, sorry. In this action, we also need the folder ID, which is gonna be a string. So let's go back here to the bottom and we're gonna say action dot payload dot folder ID just like this. And if that is true, then we're gonna do something. If not, we're just going to go ahead and return the folder itself. So without any mutation. And in here, we're going to return a new folder, okay, which is going to look like this, but we're going to use the spread operator on the action.payload.folder like this. So this way you can reuse this for almost anything, for setting the emojis, for setting the titles. Uh, you don't have to have like a hundred different actions like update folder title, update folder emoji, and things like that. Okay, awesome, great stuff. So let's go back to our code and let's dispatch that action right here. So let's go in here and say dispatch like this. Um, dispatch, let's invoke this and let's pass in the type, which is going to be update a folder and the payload is going to be the following, which is first the workspace ID. And this also needs the folder ID. So we're just going to say folder um, ID, but actually this folder needs to be different. So we're just going to say the folder ID that comes in from here, right? So we need to say ID like this. So we'll say folder ID is going to be the ID. And um, so what is this issue? It's saying it's not assignable. Okay, so we want to make sure there is a folder, of course. So we're going to say if folder, um, if ID exists, only then we can do this. Oh, sorry, guys, this is actually folder ID just like this. Let me see, is this actually? Okay, that works. I thought that was the issue, my bad. So this workspace ID is undefined. So this is the one that we need. So uh, we're going to say if workspace ID has to exist. So we can just put that up top. So if no workspace ID, we're just going to return. So that should work. And then we also need the folder um, that we want to pass in here. So this is going to be an object with everything um, that is inside this folder, um, which we're uh, actually we don't need that. We're just going to set um, this like this and we're going to say emoji. And we're just going to set the icon ID to be equal to the selected emoji just like this. And uh, let's see what's the issue here. Um, it's saying it's not assignable to type app folders type. Okay, so we also need to set the folder to everything in here. But um, this I think is just an error, guys. So what we need to do here is that's okay, I know what the problem was. So I know what the problem is, you want to go back into your state provider. And right here, we said it has to be of type folder, which is an issue here, right? Because it can be anything in here. So we want to say partial like this. And then we want to pass in this app type right in here. And let's import partial like this. Okay. Now that's going to solve our problem because we want to partially update it or sometimes even fully update it. It's up to us. And finally, let's go ahead and create a query under this. So go into queries and we want to create, uh, we want to do an update folder right here. So uh, what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to create a export const update folder equal to async async and uh, this is a function like this and we want the folder which is going to also be partial folder like this and let's go ahead and import this from partial and um, in here we basically want to say const response 
equal to await. Actually, we don't even need a response. We're just going to say await. Or actually, actually, sorry, we're going to say try catch. And in here, we're going to say await db dot um, update uh, invoke this folders dot set. And we're going to just pass in all of these values. So we're going to say pass in the uh, we're going to pass in the folder itself. And um, after that, we also want to say where um, the folder ID. So in here we have the folder and we need the folder ID, which is going to be a string. So we want to say where equal to um, folders dot ID and folder ID just like this. OK, so only for this folder ID, we want to go ahead and update the folder to this one. OK, awesome. And now let's go ahead and return an object with data set to null and um, error like this set to null in here. And also, if there was an error, then we want to return this. So we want to say error, error, and let's also console.log the error for us to see what was wrong. So error like this. Awesome, guys. Great job. So let's go back and use this update folder action right in here. So after this dispatch, you want to go ahead and say await update folder invoke this and you need to pass in the newly updated folder. So first one is going to be, I think, a string. Uh, first one is the folder itself. So we're going to basically create an object here and we're going to say icon ID is going to be selected emoji and the folder ID is just going to be passed in like this. So this ID here is the folder ID like this. OK, awesome. And um, this OK, sorry, this ID has to be the second parameter, not part of that object. Awesome, guys. So we're going to also check this. So we're going to say const data and error like this. And um, we're going to set this to equal to this. If there an error exists, then we're going to use toast, which is which we're going to get in a second. And we're going to set the title to error and um, variant to. Uh, OK, actually, let's go ahead and do this. I'm not getting TypeScript right here. So we're going to say const toast equal to use toast like this and let's invoke this and let's go to the bottom cool and we want to say variant equal to destructive and then the description is going to be a bunch of stuff so could not update the emoji for this folder okay just like this and that's about it all right and um yep and we can also put else so something like this and we can just say else here so there's no error we're going to create a success success and we're going to say updated folder emoji so update updated emoji for the folder okay just like this awesome so there we go guys now we have this set up so let's move on to the next part which is um let me see what do we have left okay so we have this accordion trigger um, with the folder in here, emoji picker in here, sorry. And after this emoji picker, we need to do a couple of things. So after this emoji picker, guys, we're actually going to have an input component, okay? And this input component is going to allow us to do a couple of things, okay? So first thing, we're just going to use the regular input because um, the custom input from from the uh, Shatsian UI has too many styling stuff on it. So we're going to say type equal to text. We're going to say value equal to um, list type. If the list type is equal to folder, then we want to return the folder title, okay, which we're going to get to in a second, or title like this, or the file title just like this. Of course, we don't have this, but we're going to uh, we're going to create it in a second. And uh, let's go ahead and just create this class name too right here. And this class name is going to basically um, just be the following. So you can use CLX right here, but I'm, I'm just not going to use CLSX right now. But um, basically, we're going to say outline none overflow hidden. Uh, the width is going to be 140 pixels and text is going to be uh, neutrals. So this is going to say something like this neutral seven, just like this. Awesome. And then we're going to have this is editing. So if the user is editing this, then we want the background to be muted. OK, and then the cursor to um, have text 
and the cursor pointer if that's not the case, if they're not editing. So let's go ahead and first create the folder title and the file title, okay? So the folder title is, um, let's see, where do we have that? Right up here, okay? So we're gonna say const folder title is gonna be equal to, uh, actually it's gonna be a use memo hook. Let's make sure we import this. Awesome, we imported it, and this is going to be just like this. And in here, we're going to have state and list type, okay? So state and the list type right here. And what we are going to do here is we're gonna set this to string or undefined, just like this. And in here, we need to return this. So we're gonna say if list type is equal to folder, then we're going to say const state title equal to state.workspaces.find okay dot find we're going to find the workspace where um just like this like this where the workspace dot id is equal to the workspace id that we're on right now okay the workspace id and actually let's pass in the workspace id in here too and if that's the case then we're going to get the folders from that so we're going to say folders just like this and we are going to find the folder where folder dot id is equal to the ID that we have up top, okay? So we're going to also make sure that there's an ID in here if ever, this is never gonna change, but we're just gonna have this in here, okay? And then we're going to get the title from this. Awesome, guys. So this uh, now has that value. So we're gonna check if the title is equal to the state title. So if, this is the same, if it's the same title that we already had from the server, or if there's no state title, then we're just going to return this uh, title here, okay? Return title, or we're going to return the state title that we had just created right here, okay? So it's kind of like alternating between uh, those states, all right? Awesome. Well, title and this is actually not going to change because the server is going to pre-render with this data, so it's already going to have the title and the state, but okay, we'll just put it in here. It's not gonna cause any harm, okay? Um, then after that, let's go ahead and create the same thing for the file title. So equal to a use memo. And this is also going to have the same return type. So I'm going to say string or undefined, just like this. This is basically going to say if the list type is equal to file. So in this file ID, guys, what we're going to do is it's actually going to be a combination of the folder ID and the file ID. Okay, and uh, because of that, we actually need to extract it from here. We're gonna set it later, but uh, I'm just giving you guys a heads up. That's why we're doing this part right here, which is const file and folder ID, right? Just like this is going to be equal to the ID dot split. So we're gonna split this with the folder, okay? I'll show you what this is gonna look like in a second. Just, just bear with me, okay? And if you don't know what's going on, it's fine guys. Just Keep working, you're gonna understand eventually, okay? So we wanna say state title now is equal to, and I'm gonna say the following right here, which is um, this state.workspaces, right? Dot find the workspace where the workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID we're on. Then we wanna get the folders from there. We wanna check for the folder where the folder ID, sorry, this is ID like this, is equal to the file and folder ID at zero. And then we're gonna get the files from that. And then we're gonna find the file where the file ID is equal to the uh, file and folder ID at one. And then we're gonna return this title right here, okay? And once we get this, guys, we're going to do this quick check here, which is we're gonna check if the title is equal to the state title or there's no state title. And then we're gonna return this new, uh, the title that we have initially, or we're just gonna return the state title. Awesome, guys. Now we can pass in some dependencies in here, which is basically the state, the list type right in here. And uh, we also need the workspace. Actually, we don't even need this, but we're just gonna pass it, workspace ID, and um, what else do we need? We need the ID in here, and we'll also pass in the title, sure, okay? Awesome, great job. Now let's go to the bottom and let's continue and see what else do we need. So we also need the is editing. So the is editing is actually going to come from 
um, a state. Okay, so let's go up top and say const is editing right here. Okay, sorry guys, I made a spelling error here. So this is going to be 1D and this one up here is actually going to be 1D. All right, so I only made it right here. So now this editing is going to work and this file title is also probably incorrect somewhere. So file title is going to return this string, um, but here it's having some issues. Okay, it needs just a capital letter. Okay, sounds good. So, so far we have these, but what else do we need? Let's see. So we need to set the is editing as well. Um, we'll do that in just a second, but that's going to come from a click. So um, in this in this input, then we're just going to create a uh, read only, which is going to say equal to not is editing just like this. And then we're going to say on double click. This is going to be a handle double click that we're going to create. So we're going to say handle double click right here. And let's go up here and then let's just create this handle double click right here. So const equal to this, which is going to be a function. And what this is going to do, guys, is it's basically going to set the is editing to true. So we're going to set is editing to true right here. And then we also want to have an on blur function on our input. So I'm just going to go here and we're going to say on blur is equal to handle blur. OK, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say const handle blur equal to a function like this. OK, I'm going to go down here and just update this too. OK, and in this handle blur, what we're going to do is we're basically going to set it. OK, we're going to update it. So let's make this an async function because uh, we need to save the user's data now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set is editing first to false like this. And then we're going to say const uh, folder ID. So or we'll just say, uh, yeah. FID like this equal to ID dot splits. And this comes from the folder. OK, so um, this ID uh, comes from basically when we're passing in those custom IDs. Right. Um, and we'll get to that in a second. All right. And then right here, we want to say if the folder ID dot length is equal to one, then we want to basically check if the folder title does not exist. OK, if not, we're just going to return here or we're going to update the folder again. OK, so we're going to say update folder and this needs the updated folder, which is basically going to be uh, let me see. So this one and then the folder ID. So we're going to create this and we're going to say title is going to be just title. And finally, we need to pass in the folder ID, which is going to be the F ID right just like this okay so this is saying um, argument of type strings okay this is going to return us an array that's right so what we want to do here is we want to say at zero sorry about that guys and after this we want to check if it's if it is a file okay so if it's a file we're going to say if the folder id dot length which is basically this f id dot length if this is equal to two so even here, guys, this is going to be FID. Sorry. Sorry about this. FID dot length and this FID dot um, dot length is equal to two. And we also want to check if the FID at one exists, then we're going to check if there is no file title. If there is no file title, we're just going to return. And if not, we're going to say update title file. OK, but we'll come to this in a second. We haven't worked this yet. So I'm just going to say work in progress, update the file <laughs> just like this. OK, cool. Great stuff, guys. And after this, we also have to have an on change. And this on change is going to change the title only locally. OK, so let's go back into the input field right here. And we're going to have an on change handler, which is going to say list type is equal to folder, then we're going to do something like this, or we're going to do something like this. Okay. 
And um, this one is basically going to have the folder title change. And this one is going to be the file title change. OK, let's go ahead and create these right now. So where are where are the on changes right here? So after this emoji, we're going to do const folder title change equal to something in here and then const file title change is equal to um, a function um, just like this. OK, and what this is going to do in folder title title change is we're going to get E, which is a target, and we're just going to set this to any for now. And then we're just going to do const the FID equal to ID dot split at folder like this. And uh, we want to check if the full uh, if the FID dot length is equal to one. And if it is equal to one, then we want to dispatch something. OK, we're going to dispatch the type set to update folder. And this is going to have a payload. And the payload is going to have um, basically, uh, let's see, what is it going to have in here? It's going to basically just have the title. This is going to have the folder set to something. And then it's going to have the folder ID set to something. And then it's going to have the workspace ID set to something. OK, so um, let's fill these in. So the folder is basically going to be an, um, an object with a title like this. And this folder ID is uh, going to be the FID that we just created right here, FID like this at zero. And then the workspace ID um, is basically just going to be the workspace ID like this. So we don't need to do anything in here. So, OK, this needs to be pre present. So we're going to say if workspace ID does not exist, just return out of this. OK, great job. And after this, we're going to also create the file on change. All right. Now for the file on change, we're going to have E again. We'll just set this to any like this. And in here we want to say const like this FID is equal to ID dot splits folder just like this. And then here we want to check if the FID dot length is equal to two and FID at one exist. OK, we need to make sure there is some ID in there. And if so, then we're going to dispatch something to basically update the file. But we'll come to this in a second as well. So we'll just say workspace. Oh, sorry, <laughs> work in progress, update file change. OK, update file title. And um, let's go down here and um, let's check what else do we need right here. OK, this is good. So after this input, we have a div right here, right? So let's first of all change this to a closing tag. After this, we're going to check if the list type is equal to folder and is editing and and we want to return something right here. OK, so what is this part for? So this is basically the trash icons and the add a new folder icon. OK. So only if it is a folder, we're going to return this uh, trash component. If not, we go, we're not going to do that, right? So that's what we're going to do here. So the first thing we want to have in here, guys, is actually a div that uh, kind of um, wraps all of this. And we're going to have a class name set to height uh, dash full. We're going to say hidden by default. And then we're going to say group slash uh, dash hover slash file like this file and then we're going to say block and then rounded is going to be dash sm and then we're going to set this to absolute and then we need write zero write zero items center gap to justify center just like this okay and um, inside this, we're basically going to have all these things. So this is for a list type folder. OK, so basically the trash icon is going to be in here. But um, OK, so in here, if it's a folder, then we want to return this um, special component right here, which is a, uh, um, a add a file component. So we're going to just put that in here. So just give me one second. So let's remove this fragment and let's paste this. So now let's bring in our tooltip component 
and we're going to say add a file and the plus icon comes from lucid react and we're going to add a new file okay let's just mute this for now and um, then we're also going to have the trash icon so the delete icon is going to be there for everything right um, it's going to be there for everything right here so uh, what i'm going to do right here is after this i'm just going to paste this and say trash icon from lucid react delete folder and let's go ahead and create this um, this ad right here so let's turn this off and we'll do this in just a second okay great job now um, let me also see if yeah so what we're going to say here is basically for this trash is going to be hover dark text white dark text neutral seven and trans transition colors and the same thing for the other one too guys okay i hope that makes sense and um, let's move on now all right so i think this is pretty much what we need to sort of at least see some folders so let's go in here to where we are rendering yep so where we're rendering the folders and we need to just return this new drop down that we created okay so let's remove this and say drop down from dot slash drop down and we're going to do this and we're going to say key equal to folder dot id like this um, and then we need to pass in a couple others which is basically the title equal to folder dot title like this and then we also need to pass in the list type which is equal to folder for this one and then we need the id which is since this is a folder it's going to have a different type of id so we're just going to say folder dot folder id uh, dot id sorry like this and then here we're going to say icon id is equal to folder dot icon id like this okay so let's refresh this and see what happens. Awesome. So we see this already. It's some sort of hydration error. So let me see how I can fix this hydration error. All right, guys. So the um, the hydration error was happening because of the Shad CN UI accordion component. Okay. So inside the UI folder, go to your accordion. And I just had to make some quick changes inside this uh, component to make it work. Okay. So um, I also put some notes here, guys, and this will be inside the um, inside the GitHub repository. So you can get this if you'd like to, but I'll just show you what I did. So basically we changed this. We put the children uh, here and we said justify between items center right here. And then uh, basically we removed this flex from this. So um, what we did here was we said according primitive trigger ref is equal to ref. And the class name here is going to be CN with the following. So um, it's going to have these so flex items center. Let's put a space here too. Sorry about that. Um, and let me refresh this. OK, no issue there. So items center justify between the padding Y is going to be four font medium transition all hover underline and this thing right here. I think this is for the SVG icon that, you know, kind of uh, grows and shrinks like this. So um, go ahead and do that right here. You can copy this and we want to also pass in the class name and then all the other props and then uh, also the disabled right here. So if there's not if it's if uh, disabled is not true, right, then we want to show the chevron so if we set it to disabled we're not going to see this chevron so we just move this chevron outside this into this trigger okay and passed it like this and uh this, i think it this pretty much has the same thing the same animations so you should be fine okay so that was the issue guys um that took me a while to find but hopefully you guys got that and um, you don't see this error anymore if you do see any errors guys don't worry the discord is in the description Go ahead, click on the Discord, and just ask away. Everyone is going to come and help you. Okay? Awesome. So now, there is also this ugly thing here. I don't like this, and I want to change this. So um, how do we change this? So basically, there is this color setting. So um, the color on this is kind of incorrect. So here we're saying, if not is editing, then um, maybe... All right, guys, so the issue was because we were not using CLSX, and I totally forgot about that. Um, you're going to have some uh, discrepancies when you're trying to create it um, just by using these um, optional strings, okay? So go ahead and say CLSX and pass the first string in here, okay? And then create an object as a second parameter, 
right here. And then you simply want to say BG muted cursor text to is editing and BG transparent to cursor pointer just like this and is editing is not editing right here. OK, so um, what we're also going to do is we're going to shrink this right here. OK, so I see one TypeScript error here. OK, actually, I know why, because this could be an empty array, right? OK, awesome. So let's go into our um, into our app folder right here and into main into workspaces and inside here, create another folder called a uh, folder ID just like this. And um, in here, you want to basically create a page.tsx. OK, and I'm just going to return RAFCE and we're going to say folder page like this. And let's just return this. So now when we click on this, guys, here you go. You see it, it uh, switches to the folder page. And if you click here, it switches to the workspace. Now, if you double click this, now you can go ahead and update this title right in here. OK, so let's see if this works. Actually, um, we're going to make a change. OK, this is not changing. So I think there might be we're not actually setting the local state. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I guess so the reason why this is not changing in here, the folder is not changing is because we set the title to the title we are receiving. OK, it has to be E dot target dot value. So E dot target um, like this dot value like this. And it's probably going to be the same thing for the file, too. Um, do we even have that? Okay, we don't have that set up. Let's see. Hopefully this works. If not, I'm going to be sad. Awesome, guys. So let's refresh this. And there you go. It also updates on the server. How cool is this, right? Look at that. Great. And now you can click on this and you can also change this to, for example, a globe emoji and it immediately changes. And now when we refresh the page, you see it also saved on the server. And this is the reason why we had this um, this default state here and we swapped to the local state, because if you refresh, you see there's no loading. It immediately shows these folders and does not take any time to kind of load these folders, right? And now you see this right here, guys. This is also open by default because we're trying to access this specific folder name. OK, so that's why it's open by default or else it would be shrink. Uh, it will be shrunk like this. So if we go back to workspace and if we refresh this, you see it's not going to open here. Awesome. Great stuff, guys. Let's move on to building the files now. I'm really sorry. I was recording and for some reason my uh, screen recorder crashed and, and I wasn't. Turns out I wasn't recording. So I'm just going to um, hopefully touch on the topics that, um, you know, um, I went across already. And don't worry, guys, we're going to go across every single thing. OK, so I think we stopped here, which was uh, the issue is when you hover over this, this was not showing. OK, and the reason is because we were not using CLSX and I totally forgot. So what you want to do is you want to copy that first line. OK, the first line you have in there, uh, you want to copy that and you want to paste it as the first parameter in CLSX. And then you want to create an object here and you want to say BG muted cursor text um, to is editing. And this BG transparent and cursor pointer is if it is not editing and is editing. I don't know if I've already done that, but it's just a state here that has, um, you know, set is set to false by default. OK, so that's the first step right there. And after that, we have this read only set to is editing. So if it's not is editing, then um, this is going to be, um, you know, the value for this. And on double click, we're going to have a double click handler on blur, a hand, a blur handler. And then we're going to have an on change. So for the on change right here, if you click on this, um, I think we already solved that bug, which was happening because we were not setting the value. OK, it's supposed to be e dot target dot value uh, right in here. So if you go to the on change handler, which is right here, you see we need to set the title to e dot target dot value. OK, and the same thing is going to be done for the files as well. So let's go down here and uh, basically uh, for the double click handler. So I'm just going to show you what this is doing. It's just going to set it, set the editing to true. OK, and just follow, follow with me, guys. All right, just go ahead, pause the video and keep doing it with me. OK, and then the um, double click is going to uh, set the editing to true and the on blur is going to do the following. So first we're going to check if we are editing. OK, if we are not editing, then we're going to return. All right. So because we want to be checked into this before we actually fire this API request. So 
Then we're going to say const file ID equal to ID dot split at folder. So if I didn't explain this already, the reason is because for files, we're going to create a special type of ID. Okay. And this ID is going to have um, like the file and the folder combined into each other. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you in just a second. Just move past this uh, step right here. Okay. So we're going to say if the FID, so this is going to return an array here, an array of strings, we're going to check the length of it of the array. If it's one, then we want to check if we have a folder title. Okay. If we have, if we don't have a folder title, we're just going to return. Uh, but if we have one, um, then we're just going to uh, create this toast saying the folder title was changed. And then we're just being a little optimistic here. And then we're going to create this update folder, um, uh, action right here. Okay. And if I haven't shown you this, or for some reason I missed this, basically it's a function here. It's an async function and it takes in a folder, which is a partial type of the folder and the folder ID. And all we're doing guys is we're just making a DB dot update folders. And we're going to set the folder where the folder ID, right? Is equal to the folder ID that we pass in. Okay. Sounds good. Nice. And here we're just returning data with null and error with null. And if there is some sort of error, we're printing the error and we're just returning this error. Okay. So let's go back to the code now. And that's what we're doing here because the first ID is going to be that folder ID. Okay. So we're going to send that in here and then, um, yeah, basically we're going to update this in the database. Okay. Uh, in our tables. Then um, next here, this is for the files. So we're still yet to work on the files, but I already went ahead and created the files part, but don't worry about it. I'm going to show you what's what happened there. So in here, we're also going to have an on change. Okay. And um, I hope you guys made this work too, which is just the folder title change and the file title change. And if you look at this, the folder title change is going to say, if there's no workspace, we're going to return. And uh, basically we're Again, we're splitting that ID and we're checking the length. If it's one, then we're going to dispatch this uh, saying updated folder, um, updated folder title, just like this. Okay. And the folder title only changes um, when we do the on blur, basically. So that's why we're not sending the API request right here. And same thing will be done for the file title change as well. So let's scroll back down right here. Don't worry about all that crazy stuff. <laughs> I'll just show you what we did. Okay. And in here, guys, we created another component saying div like this. And we said tooltip component for delete folder. So if you go in here, you can delete the folder like this. So if you hit delete, it's going to go ahead and delete it. But we haven't built that yet. And um, after that, we said if the list type is of type folder and we are not editing, then we're going to return this uh, this component right here. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to uh, create a file. OK, so the on click here, if you go to the on click, it's an it's an add a new file async function that basically checks if we have the workspace ID. And if we don't, it's going to return. Then we're creating an object call file here. And this file is going to have the following properties. Okay. The folder ID set to ID, the data set to null created at set to the new date dot two ISO string in trash set to null title set to untitled because it's a new file icon ID set to this. And we're just going to do V four and workspace ID right here. Okay. So there was one error with the file and the problem was in our migration schemas in here, for some reason, we didn't have that file um, that we had that logo for the files. Okay. So go ahead and delete that files. It was something like this. It was like this logo and something. So just delete that logo from here. And um, actually not from here. You want to go to your schema which is inside your libs folder inside your Superbase schema and go ahead and remove that logo from the files table, which should be somewhere around here. All right, guys, remove that op uh, open your terminal and you want to type in NPM run generate and then do NPM um, run dev. And then you can just refresh the page. Okay. And that should actually fix that TypeScript error. And right after that, what we did is we went into Superbase and we also updated our Superbase types. So we went here, clicked on API. We scroll to the bottom. 
we clicked on generate and download types and then a file showed up okay open that file copy all the data in that file then go to your superbase types right in here under your superbase folder and replace everything above so you see this right here right above this all the way up top but right before our import statement so still this json right here okay delete it and just replace it with that new data okay and um, also to update your schema from this file you have to open this and do npm run pull okay that's going to get the latest information from uh, our database that's it all right that's all you need to do to solve those issues so let's go back to what we were editing right here so after we create this new file we're going to dispatch a new add file uh, action okay and we built this add file action but you can go ahead and take it up as a challenge but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, so let's go to our state provider, which is right here. And in our state provider, if you go up top, we have an add a file right here. Okay, so this is just an action that says type add file with the payload set to workspace ID string, the file, which is of type file and the folder ID, which is going to be of type string. Okay, so if we go to this action, all it does is basically first we say case add file and we say return an object so we're going to return an object by default and then we're going to say everything in state but the workspaces are going to be set to state dot workspaces dot map and then we're going to get that workspace and we're going to set that to if the workspace id was equal to the workspace id we sent okay if that's the case then we're going to do something if not we're just going to return the workspace itself okay and then in here where we're returning a new type of workspace, we're going to say everything that is currently in the workspace, but we want to set its folders to something else, which is a uh, workspace.folders.map. So we're creating a new folders, a new list of folders here, and we're returning that. Okay. And then we're going to check in here and say if folder ID is equal to what we passed in in the payload, right? Then we're going to do something. If not, we're just going to return the uh, folder itself. And in this new uh, folder that we're returning, we're going to put everything else that's in this folder. But we're just going to go back to this add file right here. And this is going to be set to files. OK, and um, that is going to be a new array. OK, of everything that was in this folder dot files, and then we're going to pass in the new file that we want to add and do the same sort, guys, the same sort that we did for setting the file um, for for everything else, setting the workspace, adding a folder, the same sort we're going to do in there. OK, so once you're done with that, that's how we do this part. Now, let's go back in here. And after this action, uh, after dispatching this action, we're going to go ahead and do a create file action right here so let's go into this create action uh, create file action and basically what it is is it's just an async function like this with a file set to this file type of file and then we're going to do a try catch and we're going to do a, uh, db dot insert files dot values and we're just going to pass in this file okay if there's an error we're going to send this and if no error we're just going to send the data to null an error to null as well okay we actually don't even need this but this is just to do some error checking for us so in here, we're going to check if there was an error. If there was an error, we're going to return a toast saying error destructive for the variant and description is going to be could not create a file. OK, else we're going to really uh, we're going to send another toast with a success message and the description set to this. OK, pretty simple, right? This is all you have to do to add a file. So now the file is going to be added to our you know, folders right there. And now when you come down here, let's see what we have here. Awesome. So hopefully I did go across this. If not, guys, don't worry. Everything is in the GitHub repository. Just go and copy paste it. OK, another problem that you might see right here is the color of the um, icons are actually weird. That was because I had it neutrals like this. So make sure you update this color to whatever name you have. OK, so neutrals slash neutrals dash seven. OK, if you remember the Figma video that we built uh, that we designed, it's the same thing. OK, but just a different color name right here. Awesome, guys. And right right after this trigger, you want to say accordion content. So just build an accordion content right here. And inside this, we're going to say, let me first explain what this is. 
This is basically the files for our folders. So let's go into this and let's take a look at what that looks like. So if we had um, files for our folders right here, I'm going to refresh this and you'll see we have a file right here, right? So let's open this and you see the file looks awesome, right? So basically this file is what we are trying to render inside this accordion content. Okay, so we're going to look across the workspaces state.workspaces we're going to find the workspace where the workspace id is equal to this one right which comes from uh, workspace id which comes from our app state and then we're going to get the folders we're going to find the folder that we're looking for which is the folder id equal to the id of this you know this component which is a folder id and then we're going to say get the files from there but filter them out we want to filter them out where the file is not equal to trash is not equal to in trash so if i if i uh, for some reason deleted this file it will be filtered out so this file will immediately disappear from here okay and uh, then we're going to map over this, okay? We're gonna map over that result and we're gonna create a custom field ID. So if you remember up here, right up here, we did const FID equal to ID dot split this folder. We did something like this, right? I hope you remember. So basically for the file, we're creating a special type of ID, okay? And this ID is required to set the default value for this uh, for this file okay so that way we can we can tell which one is clicked and things like that so you want to come in here and say custom file id equal to a string literal and first we're going to pass in this id and then the folder and then the file id itself okay i hope that makes sense and after that we're going to return a drop down and pass in its props which is the file id is a key title is file.title list type is going to be a file of course the id is going to be custom file id which is this one we created and the icon id is going to be the file.icon id and let's scroll up i think i also edited this on change emoji so basically when the on change is uh, fired so if we change something here if we change this emoji to a house for example it immediately changes and it gives me a success message so the way that happens is we are just checking for the error if there's no error we're going to just send um, this one right here a toast with success updated emoji for the folder and right here we're going to also check uh, send a toast if there was an error okay it's simple stuff guys if you don't know if you're lost i promise you just go to the github repository everything is in there just copy this section and i really really apologize if i missed something out guys please let me know in the comment section and i will definitely uh address you in the discord and help you guys out okay sounds good um awesome and let me see if i missed anything else um i think that's pretty much it um, for this hover styles, I think I already told you guys what to do, right? Let me see. Okay, so there was something in here, okay? What I did was I created a class here called hover style. So let's go up top. And the hover styles is basically a use memo, the same thing, CLSX. And it has um, this H full, hidden, rounded SM, absolute, right, zero, item center and justify center and now we're saying group hover file block okay and this is only true if the list type is a file and hover folder block is only true if it is a folder and that's why when you're hovering over it you couldn't see anything okay so that's all you had to do guys um, I hope that helped. I'm really, really sorry for what I did. And I will try my best to make sure my uh, my screen recorder doesn't crash on me again. Okay, uh, thanks for being patient. And now let's move on to the files. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the comment section. All right, so now we're just going to work on the folder title change and the file title change. Okay, so let's uh, move into that function. So we have the file title change right here. And what we're going to do, guys, it's very simple. Okay, we're only changing this locally, very similar to this folder. Okay, so let's get in here. So I have this work in progress flag here. That's why it was really helpful. So we're just going to remove this and we're going to um, do the following. So we're going to check the length and make sure it's two. And we want to make sure the FID uh, has an element at one. If so, we're just going to say dispatch like this. And we're going to create a new action in here. Okay. This action is called update file. 
And in here, we're also going to pass in the payload. And this payload is going to take in uh, our files, basically. So we're going to say file, which is going to be some object here with um, the title set to e dot target dot in here value like this. What we're going to do is we're also going to set the folder ID and the workspace ID and file ID is going to be FID. So FID like this at one. Okay. Cause zero, the first one is going to be the folder and the second element is going to be the file ID itself. Right? So this is what we have to do. So let's go ahead and go to our state provider and let's uh, create the update file action. Okay. So we have this right here, update folder. So I'm just going to duplicate this right below like this. And I'm going to change this to update file and the payload is going to be the following. So let me just copy this stuff, file folder ID workspace and file ID. So file folder, so file of type file folder ID, which is going to be of type string. Okay. Remove this workspace ID. So this is going to be a string two right here. Okay. So we need the file the folder ID, the workspace ID and the file ID to edit. Okay. And let's go ahead and copy this and we're going to um, do the following. So after this add file guys go uh, down right here is we're going to say case update file is going to return an empty object with everything in state, but we're going to set the workspaces to be equal to state dot workspaces dot find and we're going to get the workspace here and we're going to say where workspace is equal to the workspace we get from the payload right so if the workspace dot id is equal to action dot payload dot workspace id just like this so if this is true we're going to do something if not we're just going to return the workspace just like this okay so here we're going to return an object with everything in workspace. So we're going to do a dot map here and uh, then we're going to do this. All right. So um, we're going to return everything in workspace, but we're going to set the folders to be equal to um, the workspace dot folders like this dot map again, because we have to return a new uh, set of folders and we're going to get access to the folder here. And we're going to say if the folder dot ID is equal to action dot payload dot id uh, dot folder id like this and if that's true we're going to do something if not we're just going to return the folder just like this so in here we're going to return everything inside the folder but we want to set the files to be equal to something okay so this files is basically going to be um, folder dot files dot map and then we're going to say file where um, if file dot ID is equal to the action dot payload dot file ID, then we're going to do something. If not, we're going to do something else. You guys are already experts right now. <laughs> you already know what to do. So we're just going to return the file just like this. But if not, we're going to return a new object with everything that is in file. But we want to um, set action dot payload dot file like this. But here's one one problem I see. Uh, let's go back up to this action here. This file is set to um, a absolute file, but we want it to be a partial file because we can edit any part of it. Right. So do this. And now this file can be anything in here. OK, so let's go back down and make sure everything looks good. OK, let's go back here. And so this can be undefined. Of course, we need to make a quick check. So if no workspace ID, then return, right? But we also want to make sure there's no, there is a folder ID. So no folder ID. Then we also want to return here. And I think this should work. All right. Awesome. And what you want to do guys is you want to open your folders. You want to go into source app, main dashboard, workspace folder. And then in here, you want to also create a dynamic ID for uh, a dynamic route for this one. Okay. So just say file ID. So create a new folder in here and say file ID like this, and then create a page.tsx and just return this for now. Okay. This is so that we don't see a 404 not found or something like that. So let's close this and go back in here. And I think this is pretty much all we have to do to change the file locally. But we also need to um, do something right here. So let me just take a look. 
All right, so this is the handle blur. So what this is, guys, is basically when um, uh, when the user clicks out of a file, we want to go ahead and also save it, right? That's when we're actually saving. So in here, we want to say await update file like this, and we're going to say uh, we're going to pass in the new uh, file, which is going to be an object with the title equal to um, the file title, right? Because it's updated in the state. And the second parameter is going to be the ID, which is the FID at um, one, because it's the second one. Okay. So of course we don't have all of this. So let's go to our actions. So I'm just going to click this. So it's going to take me here. And then I'm going to say export const update file equal to an arrow function like this. And this is going to say async, which is going to take in the file, which is of type partial file like this. And this is also going to take in the file ID, which is a string like this. Um, try and catch like this. And in here, we're going to say const response equal await db dot update um, like this dot. Um, so we have to update the files. So I'm going to put that in here dot set. And this is basically all the properties, right? So we're just going to pass in this file that we get in from the uh, param right here, parameter right here. And then we're going to say, um, right here, set dot where equal the files dot ID is equal to the file ID that we passed in. Okay. Just like this. Awesome. So if this is done, we're just going to return. And if there's no error, of course, then only we're going to return this data set to null and error set to null like this. If not, then we're going to copy this paste it here, but here we're going to return this as an error like this. Okay, just say error. And you guys already know the drill. We're just going to say console.log error. So we know what the hell just happened in the server. And we're not clueless. Okay, awesome. Let's just close this file. It's going to take us back. Let's import this. And um, FID is saying, okay, so there's an error here. It's FID like this. Awesome. So now we have basically created the on submit, uh, the on blur for the input fields for our files too. Okay. So you see, we made a quick change there. Now, the reason, the reason why we are fetching only when the user opens this is because it's, um, we're trying to make it a little more optimized. Okay. Or else if we first, uh, you know, fetch all the folders and then fetch all the files, that's going to take a little longer than if we just fetched only the folders. We're only fetching the files when this URL changes. So what we're going to do for this, right? I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the previous um, section. I'm really sorry if I missed that. But basically, if you go into our into your app state, so go into libs providers, go into state provider. Let's shrink this again. And you want to scroll down. And basically this use effect, which we had a work in progress, we're going to remove this now. And this use effect is what allows us to fetch this like this. So when we refresh the page, it's going to fetch it. And also when we click this, right, it's going to fetch the files because this URL is going to change. So let me show you that in action. So you see, if I click this, it changed like that, right? So that's what we want. So immediately when it's clicked, it's already fetched. So what we're doing here is we're passing the folder ID and the workspace ID as a dependency. Okay. And these two, of course, come from the path name, which comes from the URL. And then we're saying if there's no folder ID or there's no workspace ID return, don't do anything. Or we're just going to create a function here and invoke it. And this is an async function that's going to simply get the files. Okay. It's going to do the same thing, guys. Take this up as a challenge. This is a server action, just like what we built right now. But don't worry, I'll show you what to do in just a second. So go ahead, pause this, and come back to this video after you're done. All right. If you couldn't do it, this is how you got to do it. Okay. So you're going to say get files. And what this looks like is basically the same thing, guys. It's just a function that takes in a folder ID because we need to get the files for a specific folder. And then we're going to check here if it is valid. If this folder ID is valid, um, then we're going to um, basically do this. But if not, we're going to return data set to null and error set to error. OK, and then we're going to use a try catch here to basically get those files for that folder. We're going to say const results equal to await db dot select dot from files dot order by files dot created at dot where 
equal to files.folderID and then um, where the, the folder ID that we pass in, okay? And we're gonna return that as a file of uh, an array of this file type or just an empty array. And we're gonna return this data if nothing happened, but if an error happened, you know the drill, right? We're just gonna do that. So let's close this and that's exactly what we did here. So we simply just renamed this to files error and we said, if the error exists, just console.log. We don't wanna do anything crazy on the screen, okay? We're just gonna print the message out um, but then if there's no data, also, we want to just return. Don't do anything crazy. And uh, for example, this one right here. See, there's nothing in here, so we don't want to do anything crazy, right? That's why we did that. And then we're going to dispatch something to the store. So if we have the data, okay, if data exists for this, then we're going to set it. That's why when you refresh this, you see... Um, let's open this folder and now let's refresh this. You see it populates. The reason is because we have some data here. So now we're going to set files like this payload with the workspace ID and the files are going to be set to the data with the folder ID. So if you want to know what this looks like, let's go to the state provider right here and let's scroll above right up top. And this action just takes a payload with the workspace ID, which is a string the files set to an array of a file and then the folder ID is a string again. So let's go back to the reducer now and the reducer is doing this. It's basically returning everything in the state but we're going to set the workspaces to a state.workspaces.map. So we're creating a new set of workspaces um, and if the workspace ID is the workspace ID that we um, that we are trying to edit which is this one then we're going to do something here. If not, we're just going to return the uh, workspace itself. And then we're going to return a new one, like I said, but we're going to pass in everything that's in the workspace. We don't want to touch anything there, but the folders is what we want to mess with. So we're going to say folders are going to be equal to a new set of folders. Okay. But if only if the folder ID is equal to the folder ID we want to mess with, then we're going to return something else. If not, just return the uh, the default folders, okay? And then we're going to set the folders to um, everything that's inside that folder, but the files are going to be set to the action.payload.files. That's it, guys. So let's go down here and just, that's literally what we did here. We got the data from this response uh, from our action, and we just set the data in this file. That's it, okay? Pretty simple. So that's how it's doing this automatic fetching right here. So let's go ahead and close this and go back to our handle blur, continue from here, okay? So now if I click on this here and I change this title, it's going to change it here, but if I replace this, it's already updated. That is why we actually just uh, mutated this only locally, but on blur is what we set to save this in the database, okay? So we can do the same thing here. We can just copy this toast and we can check for any errors, okay? So we can say const, this will return, um, this will return data and error like this. And we can check in here, guys. We can just say if an error exists like this, if error, then we'll return something. So we'll just return something here, else we'll just return this toast. So I'm just gonna copy one of the error toasts here, which is this one. Let's go back up and uh, yeah, right here. So if there's an error, say destructive, could not update the title for this file, just like this. So if I click on this and update this to new type of file and hit enter, Boom, there you go. It says success. So let's change that to file title change. Let's refresh that one more time. And we're going to say um, something like new change and click out. That's it, guys. Done. Awesome. How cool is that? And also, this is responsive. You see, it shows the message at the bottom. So you can swipe across it. Awesome. Cool, guys. Great job. So let's move on to the next part of this application now. All right, so now I went back into the folder dropdown component inside the sidebar, and I just wanted to show you guys what we did here. So we just commented this out because this is a work in progress, and this is for subscriptions, okay? Just so to show a subscription modal on the page, okay? Because the user can only create three, because now if I create one more, I'm able to create multiple. So let's go ahead and just build a bunch of these. And I wanted to just show you this cool fade-in effect that we created right here. 
Look at that. Looks awesome, right? Of course, there's nothing in here, but you see this cool fade effect. That's what we built, guys. That's literally what we were building um, right here. OK, so um, that's just what I wanted to show you. And now, of course, all of these are independent. So let's go ahead and try to delete these folders now. OK, pretty simple. So let's go back in here and let's scroll up to our delete uh, delete handler which is this move to trash. So how this feature works is when a user tries to delete a folder or a file, it actually does not completely uh, immediately delete it. OK, it sends it to trash and how it sends it to trash is just by setting the text in trash to some sort of a string like in trash, just like that. OK, so um, and we're going to sort of uh, change that uh, text to have something in it so that we can show on the screen. Okay, sounds good. Pretty simple, right? So let's go ahead and build this function out. Um, so let's remove this and remove our flag here and let's go up top and create our on um, to trash uh, thing right here. So move to trash. I'm going to say const move to trash is equal to a function and this function is also going to be an async function like this. And in here, guys, we're going to say const um, the user, actually, we do have the user, I think, right? We do have the user up top. Uh, okay, we can get it from const user equal use super base user like this. So now we have the user in here and I'll tell you why we need the user. The reason uh, why we need the user is when a user deletes the file, we want to save their name um, as like a metadata and show that on the screen on the message that said this user deleted this file so you can go and do whatever you want to do to them. I'm just kidding. Okay. Not that. All right. So let's just say const um, path ID. Okay. Equal to ID dot split um, at folder like this. Okay. And then also guys, I want to just give you a really quick tip here. You don't have to follow this method in specific because our relation, if you go to our database right in here, you can see that we actually have those files and folders all saved together. So if you go into a file, you will see the folder ID, right? Uh, let's see where the, okay, workspace ID and the folder ID. So you don't have to do it like this. There are so many ways to do it. I'm just giving you guys um, the quickest way that I'm doing right now. Okay. So we're going to get this path ID right here. And then we're going to say if the list type is equal to type of folder, then we need to do something, right? We need to uh, delete that folder. So we're going to dispatch this like this. And we're going to say type is update folder. So let's go. Where's our update folder update folder like this. And the payload is going to be equal to our object with the um, what do we need here? We need the folder itself and the folder itself is going to have the in trash property set to, you know, something like um, deleted. Let's just say let's just create a string literal and say deleted by this user dot um, email. Okay. Right here, user dot email like this. And of course we need this email to exist here. So we're going to say if the, um, if no user, then just return. Okay. If no user dot email, that would be fine. So we're going to say folder is going to be this. Let me go into our update folder action inside our inside. Where is that? It's our app state, which is in here inside library, inside the providers, state provider. And let's go ahead and look for our update folder. So we have it set to update like this. OK, hmm. so OK, we have our folders set to this. All right, well, we did set it to partial, so let me see. All right, guys, let me try to see what the issue is here, OK? All right, guys, there was no error. I don't know what the hell just happened, but basically um, we didn't have to do anything. OK, so after this, all you're going to say is folder ID is the path ID and the workspace ID is this. So this is how we can update that specific folder. All right. So let's go ahead and refresh this and run NPM. 
run dev like this and reboot the server. And um, yeah, this is how we can send it to trash, but only locally. So let's see if um, we can make this work and then uh, we will come back. So right here, if I come in here and delete this, boom, there you go, it's gone. But if I refresh it, of course, it's gonna come back. And the reason is because I haven't deleted it from the server, right, from, from our database. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna say await, up send, um, or actually we can just say update folder. We can use this one. And I think this is an async. Okay, cool. So it requires the folder itself. So the folder, the first one is going to be in trash and we're gonna set it to this message right here. Copy, paste, deleted by this user. And um, after this, our second parameter is uh, got to be the uh, the folder ID, right? So the folder ID right here is simply just going to be this right here, okay? So let's just say path ID at zero, just like this, okay? And of course we can get access to the stuff here. We can say data and error like this, and we can check if there is an error, then we wanna do something else, we wanna do something else, and go ahead and just copy and paste um, the other toast, okay? So I'm just gonna copy this toast right here, and I'm gonna come down here, and I'm just going to paste this right here. And for this, I'm just going to say if error exists, error could not uh, move the folder to, to trash like this. And um, same thing here, success, we're just gonna say moved folder to trash like this. So we just pushed it to trash. And um, let me see, what else do we need to do right here? Of course, guys, you can see it, it, we're being extremely optimistic here. So this is not the best way because we are first changing the folders and then we're updating the data. You might want to do this later if you don't want to be optimistic, but we're just going to be a little optimistic here, okay? Why not? And same thing for the file, guys. So we're going to go down here and we're going to basically, after this purple one, we're going to say, if the list type is equal to file, then we're going to do a couple of things here. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna copy this dispatch and we're just gonna paste it down here. But here we're gonna say update file and we're gonna have payload errors. So we're gonna say folder ID, actually we already have the folder ID. Let's set this to file and this, this file should be, so let's say folder ID, workspace ID and file ID is basically going to be the path ID, but not at zero at one, okay? So we're going to say path ID at one, okay? Yep, I don't know why it's showing the error for file. It should show it for payload, right? That's really weird. Anyway, and uh, same thing here, we're just going to update the file instead of the folder, and we're going to say in trash deleted by this person, and you can also put some more things in here like folder deleted by or file deleted by, no problem. And in here, we're going to update this ID at number one, not path at zero, and um, the error. Yeah, again, we're just gonna check the error. Let's make sure, okay, I have this query in here too. Awesome, cool. So now this should work, guys. So if I come in here and delete this folder and I refresh the page, actually, we're not gonna know until we delete everything. So I'm just gonna delete multiple moved folder to trash and I, and I refresh, all these folders are actually added to trash now. So if I come into my database and look into the folders table, and let's look for the folder here. Um, where is that? Yep. And if I look here, I see the in trash set to deleted by um, and my email is put in here. So this way I can show it on the screen for another user when I'm using real time, uh, you know, database uh, when I'm using the real time feature to show that this is what happened to this um, to this file. OK, so awesome. So far, so good. I'm so glad you're actually doing this because now we're going to learn so much from this, okay? So let's move on to the next part now. All right, so I want to just quickly test our file too. So if we add a file, boom, there you go. The file is added. It says successfully created a file. Let's refresh that and make sure that file is there. Awesome. And if I go ahead and delete this file, boom, the file is deleted, but it's only added to trash. And of course it's going to be added in the database because I just refreshed the page and I don't see that file anymore, okay? 
Awesome, great job. So now what we need to do is we're going to move on to um, the, the fun part, which is showing our um, our components for the file workspace and you know our folder as well. All right, awesome. Now we're able to change between our different workspaces here, but for some reason we cannot edit them, right? We can only create a new workspace, but we don't want this. We want to be able to also edit that. And that's what we uh, do from the settings option. So when the user clicks the settings tab, a settings uh, modal pops up, and then we can go ahead and edit all the settings of this workspace. So let's go ahead and do that now. So go to your native navigations component right here under your sidebar. And uh, right here we have the um, dashboard for our Cypress setting icon. Yep, right here. We just have to do a couple things right here, okay? We're gonna change this link. We're no longer gonna use a link here, uh, but we're just going to use a list element. So um, what we can do is we can just change this guys just to an li and delete this list element, okay? And of course we don't need href because we're not um, navigating, routing the user to a different page or anything, okay? So it's going to be the same exact styling, but we're gonna have this right here. So there's no cursor, so we can have cursor set to cursor pointer, like this cursor dash pointer. So now, you know, it kind of shows the cursor like that. Awesome. So what you wanna do now is you want to wrap this entire thing in a custom component that we're going to create called settings, okay? Um, just say settings like this and don't import it from lucid react because we clearly don't have this component yet and pass this in here And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the settings component. So go to your um, sidebar right here and um, After this in this component you want to create a component here called a folder here called settings um, like this and inside that a settings.tsx and then finally uh, we're going to go in here and say RAFCE and we're going to change this to settings like this okay and what is this going to do well this is basically our custom dialogue trigger that we created before okay we're just going to use that so first thing we need here is an interface so we're going to say interface settings props is an object here which is uh, with children set to react dot react node like this and we're going to copy this and paste it in here so react dot functional component sorry not this it's react dot functional component uh, like this and open this and get the children from here Okay, and then all you're going to do in here is you're going to return our custom dialog component, which is our custom dialog trigger like this from global custom components. And this is going to have a header set to the settings like this. And we want the content to be equal to another component. So for now, I'm just going to set this to uh, like a react fragment. And in here, it needs the children, so we're gonna pass our children components in here. And this is basically a new component here called settings-form.tsx. We're gonna say RAFCE, and we're gonna change this to settings form, okay? And what this is going to do is it's going to show the form on the screen. So let's go in here and import this component. So we're gonna say settings form. Oh, we said settings forms here. Okay, so let's change this. We just wanted to say form um, like this right here. And this has to be a component, of course, just like that. So let's go back to our setting form and we're gonna change the all instances of this to just form like this. And let's also import our settings like this from settings slash settings. All right, great job. Hopefully that solves our error. Okay, nice. So if we click on it, it shows our custom dialog trigger, and this is also responsive automatically. Okay, great job, guys. So let's go ahead and um, get this to work. So in the settings form, we're going to do a bunch of stuff, okay? Because we need to be able to edit the, the workspace title, the uh, user's information, such as only the avatar, and then uh, they can also set up their billing stuff. And there's a lot of things that we need to do in here. So let's go ahead and start. So first thing we need is 
first um, is the const state. Actually, let's get toast because we're going to use this a lot equal to use toast like this and invoke it. And this has to be a use client component because of this. And then we want to say const state workspace ID and dispatch. We need these three from the use app state. And in here, we're going to say const permission because we also want to be able to remove collaborators, add collaborators, change permissions and so many, so much, so much other stuff, right? So set permissions like this. So I like it like this equal to use state, import this set to private like this. Okay. By default. And we're going to say const. So this array is going to be collaborators, collaborators and set collaborators like this. This is going to be equal to a use state like this set to um, an empty array. But right now we want to say it's uh, yeah, an array of users or it's going to be an empty array just like this. Let me shrink this so you guys can see the screen. Sorry about that, guys. And then we're going to also get our user. So this comes from const user equal to use superbase user like this. And then we want to get the router because we want to reroute the user sometimes. So we're going to say const router equal to use router. Oh, sorry, guys use router that comes from use navig uh, from next navigation. And then we are going to put these on top. So all these um, hooks are going to be put up top. And then we're going to create a couple more states. So we also need a super base client. Oh, yep. We need the client because we need to get the image, the URL for the avatar. Okay. So that's why we need this. So I'm going to go up here and just say const super base equal to create client component clients, invoke it like this. And we're going to also get some alert messages. Okay. And we're going to create a state here for our alert message. And this alert message is basically when the user tries to change the permissions of the workspace from shared to private, we want to let the user know, Hey, are you sure you want to do this? Right? So let's go ahead and set this to uh, open alert message like this. And we're going to say set open like this alert message equal to use state invoke that and say false like this. And after that, we also need the workspace details, right? So we're going to say const uh, workspace details and set workspace details like this. Um, let me see if we can actually pass these workspace details in. Actually, we can't guys. Yeah. So just say this like this and say use state just like this. Okay. We need a timer ref. So we're going to say title timer ref. And what is this? I'm going to let you make a guess, but if you can't, it's basically a ref to keep track of a, um, of a timer, right? Like a set timeout that we can use to debounce this um, title change. So when the user actively changes the title, we're going to make API requests, but only after the timer expires. Okay. So say use ref here, and we're going to set this return type to something else. So we're going to say return type like this is going to be type of um, set timeout. Okay. Like this. And then after this, we want to say const uh, these are some states to basically uh, keep some loading states for our application, which is when we upload an image like the logo or the profile pic or, um, you know, some sort of um, something else. We need to have some sort of lo loading states, right? So we're going to say uploading profile pic and then set, I'm going to copy this, paste it here and say uploading profile pic equal to use state. And this is going to be set to false. And after this, finally, I'm going to say work in progress um, portal. So payment portal. Okay. Because a user can also change their payment portal, um, their billing options right from this settings page. Okay. So then uh, what we want to do is we want to create a bunch of functions here. So the first one is we want to be able to add collaborators, right? We want to be able to remove collab. We also want to be able to save our changes um, for the input field. So we're going to say um, like on change workspace title like this, I guess. 
all on changes right here, okay? And then we need to have some on click alerts. So on clicks right here, okay? We need to have clicks for a bunch of them. So um, we're gonna have that right there. And then we might need some, uh, some other helpers from the effects such as fetching details so we can show the avatar, right? Fetching um, um, avatar details from our Superbase storage. And then we also need to get the workspace details from here. Well, we also might need to get all the collaborators. So we can say get um, all the collaborators from here. And then we'll need to do, uh, we'll also need to create a uh, portal here for Stripe and stuff. So we're just going to say work in progress uh, payment um, portal. Okay. Payment portal redirect like this. Okay. And after this, I think this is pretty much it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to restart our server. So let me go ahead and say NPM run dev and refresh this. And um, let's give that one second. All right, guys. So in here, we're going to open this settings and we're going to do some stuff in here. Okay. So let's remove the settings form. Let's give this a class name. And this is going to be set to flex gap of four flex dash column. And in here, go ahead and create a paragraph tag. This is going to have flex item center gap two and margin top of six. Inside this, we want to have a briefcase logo, which comes from Lucid React and give it a size of 20. So this is kind of like the, to uh, the top section. It's kind of like uh, you can say headers. So we have briefcase here and we're just going to say workspace. And then we're going to use the separator. And after this, we want to create a div class name of flex flex dash call and gap set to two. And inside this, we're going to create a label HTML four is going to be set to the workspace name. And this is going to be name like this. And after this, let's also I think we need to Yeah, let's give it some styling. So we'll say class name is equal to text dash SM text dash muted dash foreground. After this label, go ahead and say input name is equal to workspace name like this. And then you want to say value is equal to the workspace details. So if this exists, it's going to be the workspace details dot title, or it's going to be an empty string. So we're going to set a type for the workspace details. So the workspace details here is going to be uh, a type of workspace placeholder equal to workspace name on change workspace name change. Let's copy this, go up top and let's go to our on changes in here. We're going to remove this and we're basically going to say const equal to this function here. So this is simply going to update the workspace name. That's literally it. E, which is basically of type react dot change event. This is of HTML input. So we're going to pass in the input element event right here. And in here, we're going to check if there is no workspace ID or there is no E dot target dot value going to return if there's nothing in there. We're going to dispatch an action here called type with update workspace. OK, and the payload here, guys, is going to be the following. So it's an object here with um, let's see what we have in here. So this is just going to be everything in the workspace itself. So everything is optional. So we're just going to say title is going to be E dot target dot value. OK, so something is wrong here. Let's go into our workspace because we how can you even update this without that? Right. State provider like this. And we're going to look for update workspace like this. And uh, we're saying payload action dot payload dot ID. OK, that's what it's called. I don't want it to reset that ID here. OK, let's make a quick change, guys. So let's go into our update workspace, which is only being it's only been done inside the settings form. Have I not used it anywhere else? I don't think I have. OK, so let's go into the state provider right in here. And this update workspace is going to take this and the payload right here is going to be the workspace like this, which is going to be this. And we need to pass in the workspace ID, which is going to be a string like this. And of course, we need to change this action here too. So payload dot uh, workspace ID, just like this. So this is going to be the workspace, which is going to be an object 
with the title set to e.target.value like this. And after this, we need to pass in the workspace ID. If the timer, title timer ref, right in here, okay? If this dot current, if this exists, we're gonna say clear timeout and we're going to pass in the title uh, ref dot current so we can clear the timer. The title ref is going to be uh, dot current is going to be equal to a new timeout. So set timeout and this is going to take an arrow function and we're going to pass in 500 milliseconds. And in this, we're going to say async await update workspace workspace with the title. We're going to create this in a second, guys. This is equal to e dot target dot value. And we also need the workspace um, ID. Copy this, go into your queries, which is inside the Superbase queries. And um, let's go ahead and do it right here. So let's go up to where we see something called update export const update workspace equal to an async function if so we need the workspace itself. So the workspace is going to be partial of workspace and the workspace ID just like this. Okay. So partial like this and the workspace ID, which is a string. There is no workspace ID. We're just going to return like this. Try catch await db dot update invoke it and say workspaces dot set the workspace like this dot where equal workspaces dot ID is equal to the workspace ID that was provided in here. And then we're going to return data null and error set to null. Copy this here and return it if there is an error here and just say console.log error. Change this to error. Um, I want to show you guys another way of updating. So in a server action, you can also revalidate the path. Okay. That is something that we haven't done. We are basically using client side. So I just want to show you some different ways of doing it. So you can say revalidate. So re validate path invoke it and you need to pass in something in here okay so you're going to pass in dashboard like this slash dollar sign workspace id so it's just going to revalidate that path and fetch new information if needed so we need to put this above this and in return this right here go back here and import updated workspace and after this input guys we want to create another label here so we're going to say label like this and we're going to call this the workspace logo html4 we're going to say workspace logo and we're going to give it a class name which is text sm text muted uh, foreground and inside this we're going to say workspace logo and after this create an input name equal workspace logo type equal file except equal image slash star placeholder is equal to workspace logo on change here that's going to be on change workspace logo and then we're going to have a disabled which is equal to uploading logo so let's go ahead and create i thought i already did that okay we only had profile pick here so const uploading logo okay this is going to be equal to use state like this, and this is going to be equal to false. So let's go back down here to this error, and this is going to be uploading logo just like this. Again, guys, we also have to make sure the user subscription is active before we can use this component. So we have to do that in here too. So I'm just going to set another work in progress to uh, do the subscription right in here. So say const on change workspace logo is equal to something in here, this async function, and this is going to be e dot react, sorry, e is going to be react dot change event. And we're going to say input uh, HTML input, sorry, HTML input element. And then inside this, we're going to say if there's no workspace ID, then we want to simply return everything. And then we're going to say const file equal e dot target dot um, files like this. And then we're going to say dot at zero. Okay. And then if there's no file, we're just going to return. And then we're going to create a UUID. So UUID equal V4, import it and invoke it. Set 
uploading logo to true because we're going to do that right now and then const data and error is equal to await superbase dot storage dot from invoke it and say workspace dash logos dot upload let's go back to what we had in our main um, settings right sorry when we had a dashboard set up we had some stuff in there so let me go ahead and just copy this so we don't make any error in here and let's paste that in here so we're going to pass in uuid like this and um, then we're just going to go ahead and you know send this okay and we're going to say upsert to true even though it's not going to be able to do it because this uuid is going to be uh, different every single time and I actually do have a reason why it's better to just create a new line. So Superbase themselves are actually saying that if you update something, even though you have this cache control and upsert set to true and all this stuff, basically, if an image is uploaded, it takes some time to uh, update everything in the database. In, in the storage bucket. So they, they are telling you to just create a new line and then, uh, you know, delete the image or something like that. So, so what I would suggest is you guys can do that if you want to. And to do that, you just have to say dot remove and then remove the image first. And then you can go ahead and upload this new image right here. And then after this, we're going to say if there is no error, then we're going to say dispatch type update the workspace to be payload workspace is equal to logo to data dot path and then the workspace ID right in here. And then we're going to update the workspace again to logo to have this path. And then we're going to send in the workspace ID and then we're going to set the uploading logo to false. So I'm just going to put another comment here and say work in progress uh, subscriptions right here. And I'm going to just comment this out. So after this div, create a react fragment and say label. And this label is going to have an HTML four equal to permissions. And you're going to say permissions just like this. And after this, just go ahead and have a select component. Okay. Which comes from UI, um, the UI select. And basically, guys, I'm just going to copy what we had in the other place. It's literally the same thing. There's nothing different. Okay. So go ahead and just copy this entire section, guys. Go back to our, um, to our components, remove the select from here and just paste it. Okay. We're going to have some errors, but we'll fix that in a second. Awesome. So we just went ahead and copy pasted that. So let's solve this, this first problem right here, which is this add collaborator. Okay. So this is going to be a function again, which is going to do, uh, which is just going to set our collaborators guys. So let's go up top and have an, add. I mean, this is basically the same as the other one. You can just copy it. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy it from that file and paste it right in here. And it's the same thing. Basically, we're going to check if there's no workspace ID going to return. And this is work in progress. We'll come to this in a second. Basically, we're going to check for um, the our subscription status. If it's active, they can only have, um, you know, less than two collaborators. Okay. And then we're going to await add a collaborators. So we're going to send this. Uh, this is basically our uh, query, which we had there too. just go ahead and import that. And then we're going to set our local collaborators to the collaborator. And then we're going to just do router dot refresh for our remove collaborator. We're going to create a function here. We're going to say remove, <laughs> remove colla collaborator equal to this function right here. And this is going to be async user of type user. We're going to check if there's no workspace ID and if there's no workspace ID, we're just going to return. And then we're going to check the length of the collaborators. If it's equal to one, then we're going to set the permissions to private. We're going to remove the collaborator, but that's done a little later. Okay. It's not done right away. And then we're going to do the following, which is we're just going to create another uh, API um, right here, the, an action, a server action. We're going to do that in just a second. Second, but we're going to set our collaborators to collaborators dot filter the collaborator where the ID is equal to the user dot ID just like this. So let's go ahead and create this action. So go to your queries right in here, export const remove collaborator equal to an async function, which is going to have users like this, and we can set it to user array because we can we might want to remove multiple as well so that's why we can just do this also i know there's another way in drizzle guys where you can just remove for many but uh, i'm just going to do this right now okay it just makes more sense to do it this way so we're going to take the workspace id which is a string okay 
And uh, same thing, guys. We're just going to copy this from here, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And the response the response is going to be equal to users for each of these dot for each async user. So first, we need to check if the user is in there. So we're going to do uh, db dot query dot collaborators dot find first where the user right. We're going to do this. It's a callback function, and we're going to say where the user ID is equal to the user ID we passed in. And um, the uh, workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID we passed in. Okay, if the user exists only, then are we going to do the following? Await db dot delete, and then we're going to say collaborators dot where invoke this, and we're going to pass in an and in here. We're going to say equal to collaborators dot workspace ID, and inside this we also need another one, which is the workspace ID we just received workspace ID like this and another equal to guys right here where the collaborators dot ID sorry user ID is equal to the user dot ID let's come in here and this is actually incorrect actually this is fine um, this is wrong actually so yeah right here before we do this we want to say remove collaborators import that and this has to be all our um, our users right here, right? So we're just gonna set um, set it to an array of the users for now and the workspace ID just like this. Awesome. So after this, we need to use the alert. So we're almost done, guys. We basically just have to show the alert uh, for this uh, for the workspace. So we're going to say alert variant is equal to destructive. Inside this, we want to have the alert description like this and you want to set this you know deleting your workspace is going to delete this or something let's create a button in here and we're going to set the type to submit we're going to set the size to sm and then we're going to set the variant to be destructive and then we have a bunch of class names margin top text dash sm bg destructive 40 border 2 border dash destructive after this we want to also have an on click and this is going to be async we're going to check if the workspace id exists we're going to delete a workspace and we're going to create this in a second i'm going to pass in the workspace id just like this okay turn a toast like this and this toast is going to have title successfully deleted your workspace and this is pretty much enough and then we can just say router dot replace back to slash dashboard because they deleted the workspace. So now we want to send them to the dashboard page and that will reroute them to their first workspace or it's going to allow them to create a new one. So let's copy this delete workspace and let's go ahead and just build this out really quick. And we're just going to say const delete workspace is equal to a function that checks if we have a workspace ID. If not, it's just going to return. And then we're going to do db dot delete workspaces where the equal to stuff in here where it's workspaces.id and is equal to the workspace ID we passed in. And in here, go ahead and just say delete workspace inside this button. And let's just see what this looks like. Click on the settings and there you go. So you can delete the workspace from here. Now, if I delete the workspace, I might actually lose all my data. So I'm not going to do that. Let's maybe try it on something else, right? Why not? So the private workspace right here. We're going to go ahead and say settings, delete workspace like this, successfully deleted, and we're routed back and it sent us back to the workspace. Okay, so it looks like it did not refresh this, and but then we have to do some sort of logic to check if we have our workspace, okay? So let me see what to do here, guys. Just give me one second. All right, so what we can do here is we can delete this workspace from here, okay? And we can dispatch that action, dispatch like this, and we want to say type is going to be delete workspace, and we have to provide a payload, which is going to be, I think, an object. Actually, no object. It just has to say um, workspace ID like this. Okay, so we want to make sure there's no, there is a workspace ID. So what we can do here is we can remove this and we can say if no workspace ID returns, so don't do anything. This should solve our problem. So if we come in here and click on, maybe we can create another workspace in here. Let's just say test private and we're just going to create it successfully created. And you can see the workspaces in here, test private workspace. And if I click on this 
and hit settings and hit delete workspace. Okay. Awesome. There we go. It's gone. So let's go ahead and fetch our uh, workspace details. I actually wish I could give it to you as a challenge, but I, I don't want you guys to get stuck. Okay. So I'm just going to say use effect. And guys, by the way, for some reason, if I give you challenges and you can't finish it, all the answers are going to be in the discord. Okay. Everyone is going to help each other out and I'm also going to be there. So I will literally help you out. Okay. I want you guys to genuinely take part and take action rather than just watching videos every single time. Okay. Start building and thinking. Okay. So let's go ahead and say const showing workspace equal to state dot workspace dot find like this, the workspace from here where the workspace dot ID is equal to the workspace ID. If this is true here, also we can pass in the workspace ID like this and the state because we need both of these dependencies right here. If there is a showing workspace, then we're going to set the workspace details to that showing workspace just like this. And now we have both our local states and the states that come from there. So if I click this, there you go. You have the test workspace, the name right in here. So let's go ahead and test this workspace name. So if I change this, you will. Uh, OK, actually, we can't change this. Something is wrong here. All right, guys. So the issue why this was not allowing you to change anything is because we said action not payload. But in reality, the payload has a workspace and the workspace ID. I think we recently just made this change. So just change it to this. OK, now if you click this and change it, there you go. It changes and it looks absolutely amazing. All right, so I wanted to touch on one of these issues, which is in here, if I make a change, it does not actually update the state in here. Why is this the problem? Well, if you look into our component, we are using the server side default data to kind of uh, not this default data, but we're just using these workspaces from the server directly from the server component directly. And that's why we're not syncing it with the local states. So we already did this before for our folders. So we're going to do something very uh, similar guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this right here. And we want to say state and also the default value. Okay. We need both in here and it's very simple. We're just going to say const find uh, maybe selected workspace equal to state dot workspaces dot find um, like this. And we're going to get the workspace and we're going to say where workspace dot ID equal to the default value just like this. OK, and um, sorry, default value dot ID guys. And then here we're going to say if you can find a workspace like this, if find the selected workspace, we're going to set the selected option to this uh, find selected workspace. So we're just syncing it up like this. Okay. Now, if you go to settings, let's hope this works and you change it. There you go, guys. In real time, it changes everywhere across the entire application. If you did this on your own, good job to you. All right, guys, now we're going to build a component for the editor. And this editor is going to be reused for our workspaces, our folders, and for the files as well. Okay, right now we're just rendering an empty, you know, you're just returning text, but now we're gonna create that component. And we're gonna make this happen with this package called Quill. And the reason why I picked Quill is because they use something called deltas. And deltas are, are basically, um, think about it this way, guys. So if two people are editing a document, but both of them make a change at a single location, um, one of them is going to win, right? And you cannot just take one person's text or data and append it to the back of <laughs> the other person's data. You cannot do that. So what deltas help uh, accomplish is basically it shares the positions, the operations, which is insert and also at which location with the attributes and all that kind of stuff. So all the complexity is already done for you. So this is why we uh, we picked Quill for this application. So go ahead and um, close your terminal, close your server like this, and just say npm i quill. Okay, so install this. And this is actually not a Re this is not React Quill. This is um, it's just vanilla JavaScript. We have to make it um, Quill like React friendly. Okay, so we're gonna do that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to shrink all of this, go into source components, and we're gonna create a folder here called Quill editor like this and inside that create another quill dash 
editor.tsx like this, okay? Inside here, we're gonna have all the logic for uh, the component and we're gonna reuse this component in all of our files, okay? So before we do this, let's just do RAFCE and we're just gonna return cool editor like this, okay? Now you want to go into your app folder right here main and then go into workspace and then in the page.tsx right now we're just returning this right we're just returning this right here we want to actually use this new quill editor that we created so first of all let's understand what's going to happen in these pages so in these pages we need to fetch the details for um, the id that we're on okay so if we're on a workspace we need to get the workspace details if we're on a folder we need to get the folder details and in the file in you know, the file details so that's what's going to happen in here and and then we're going to take that data and pass it into our quill editor and the quill editor is going to do whatever it has to do okay so that's what we're going to do here so um right here we have access to the params because this is a page right this is a page.tsx file so we get um we get access to these params right here so first we're going to get the workspace details here and then we're going to go ahead and uh render out our component so first let's just um imagine this exists here which is equal to a weight like this get workspace details and I've already gone ahead and created this and I want this to be a challenge for you okay so go ahead pause this video and try to build out this query this action inside your superbase um, query folder so if you go into libs superbase queries go ahead and build that function um, that action in there so pause the video do that and then come back to this video all right, guys, hopefully you got it right. If not, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Um, so in here, basically, we're going to create this action and it's called get workspace details. OK, so it's an async function that takes in the workspace ID. And first, we're just going to check if this workspace ID is valid. OK, so let's go ahead and do that here. And then if it's not valid, we're going to just return an object with data like this, with data set to an empty array so that nothing breaks. And um, we're gonna just send error like this, okay? If not, we're going to do await db.select.fromworkspaces.where the workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID we want, okay? And we're gonna limit that to one. And you can also use db.query here, guys. Uh, query dot, um, you know, the table name, and then you can do dot find one, or you can do that as well, okay? But uh, for now, we're just going to use this. And then if the data exists, right, we're just going to return this. All right, so return this. If not, we're just going to return the same thing that we returned here, okay? Straightforward, right? Nothing crazy. And then we're going to check if there is an error like this or if there's no data.length because we're returning an array. And then if, so, if this is actually um, the case, we're going to redirect the user to our dashboard page because our dashboard is going to do all the logic in here, okay? So that's why we're gonna do that. And then here, what we're gonna do is we're going to return a div just like this, give it a class name of relative, and in here, we're going to render our quill editor, okay? So let's import our quill editor from the new folder that we just created, just like that, and we can just import it like that, okay? Now our quill editor is going to take a couple props, and the first one is called dirt type because we're using the same component for everything so we're going to call this workspace and then it needs the file id and let me explain what this file id is guys so basically this file id is not the this file id this file id basically represents the id that we're on so you see that file id right so our workspace has a file id or basically an id the folder has an id and the file has an id so that's what this file id is we're going to use this id to basically, you know, fetch details and do all that kind of stuff, all right? Also to create rooms and things like that. We're gonna set this to params.workspaceID because that's the ID we're using, correct? And then here we wanna say dir details. So this is the directory details is going to be data at zero or we're just going to return uh, like an empty object right here. Awesome, create this interface, all right? So we're gonna say interface like this, quill editor props is an object with the dir details set to a file, okay, which comes from our super base types, or it's going to be um, a folder, again, from super base types, or it's going to be the workspace, okay, just like that. And then here we're going to say file ID is going to be a string. And finally, we have the dir type, which can be of only three types, which is the workspace, or it can be of type folder, or it can be of type file. 
Okay, awesome. And now let's go ahead and use this here. So we're going to say react.functional component, and you want to paste this in here and go ahead and extract these values like this. Okay, just like that. Awesome. Cool. Now that we have extracted those values, um, we're going to, there's a lot that's going to go on in this component. Okay, I'm going to try my best to keep it at the, uh, to bring perfect timing so that it all makes sense. But what we're going to do in here is basically render out our quill editor right and uh, we're also going to use socket.io to create real-time uh, connections and communications between different clients okay and i'm also going to show you new features in superbase like presence and um, some other real-time features in, the, in there too so you guys know how to work with uh, different type of technologies okay so first thing we need here is uh, two variables so we need to basically mount our quill editor here Okay, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to say const quill. So let's just create a variable to store that in here. And we're going to say set quill just like this. And this is equal to use state. And you guys know what to do when you're using use state. Go up top in here and you want to say use state in here. Okay, and um, the reason why we're doing this is simply because um, you know, we have a lot of states to manage, real-time data, we have to store a bunch of components. We could make it a server component, no problem. But I want to explain a, a problem that comes with uh, using this, um, you know, Next.js for this. So there's something called as router cache, guys. And what router cache is basically, on the server there's a cache, but also on the client side there's a cache, okay? And going in here and setting the component, which we we're going to do anyway, which is in here, if you go to the page.tsx, if you go up here and set this to, um, you know, force dynamic, it's actually not going to fix our problem. And the reason is because um, what's what's going to happen is this is only for the server side data to send new data. But on the client side, we're actually caching everything. And I did some research and Next.js 13 says that it's actually it not possible to opt out of this router cache. There is a 30 second um, opt out period and only after 30 seconds can we opt out of that. So that's the reason why we want to actually use a client component in there so that we can fetch new data every single time. OK, I hope that makes sense. All right. So this quill, quill editor, I'm just going to give it of type any right here and just set it to null. OK, and um, we're going to use this to store that quill editor and we're going to need a couple other things from our use app state. So let's go up top and say const state workspace ID folder ID like this. And we also need dispatch, which comes from use app state. OK, let's go ahead and invoke that like that. Awesome. And now let's first basically create that mounting to mount our quill editor. All right, so let's go here and let's create that area where we can mount the component. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a react fragment inside this right here. And then let's create another div. This div is going to have an ID set to container like this. And inside this div, guys, inside this is where we're going to put our quill editor. OK, so to access this element, we can use a ref. OK, and we're going to create this ref in just a second. It's called wrapper ref just like this. And we're going to go up here and we're going to create that. OK, but before that, let's just give it a class name too. And this is max width is set to 800 pixels just like this. OK, so this way our, our editor will be right in the center. So we're going to have some errors here. And that's because we don't have a client component. What is this? Oh, this is actually called use client, not use state. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So let's go ahead and build this wrapper ref. OK, so come up here and you want to say wrapper ref. And this is going to be a use callback hook right here. OK, so we're going to set this to something like this for now and then create an empty dependency array. OK. All right, guys. So for this to work for um, our wrapper ref to work, Quill actually needs the window object. OK, it needs to be present. And um, for that case, we need to make a quick like check. OK, so we're going to say type of like this window is not equal to undefined. All right. Only if it's not equal to undefined, then we're going to check something. So we're going to check for wrapper and this wrapper actually comes in from here. OK, we're going to check if there uh, if the wrapper is equal to null 
And if it's equal to null, we're just going to return out of this. Okay, we need the wrapper to exist. So that way we have access to that um, to that element where we can place it. Another thing here, guys, is if we just run it like this and append it, right? Append our quill editor to the uh, to the DOM. Every time you save, it's actually going to uh, append a new one. So we don't want that. We have to actually clear what's in there. So let's just say inner HTML equal to an empty string. So we're going to clear this and then we're going to create our editor here. So we're going to say editor equal to document dot create element like this. And we're going to put a div right in here. And then we're going to say wrapper dot append, right? Append invoke it and pass in the editor just like this. Okay, awesome. And after this, now we can go ahead and create quill. So we're going to say quill equal, and we need to dynamically import this. So we're going to say quill equal um, await import like this. And we're going to import quill like this. And we're going to say uh, default. Okay. And since this is a um, async function, let's make sure to mention async up top. And after this is done here, we're also going to set up cursors, but we're not going to do that right now. So I'm going to put a work in progress flag and I'm going to put in uh, cursors like this. OK, and you'll see um, you'll see in a bit what that looks like. But right after this, let's go ahead and register. Um, um, actually, we don't have to register anything in here because we already created this component. Right. So let's go ahead and say const Q equal new quill invoke it and pass in our editor. Right. And it also takes some options. So we're going to provide our, our theme and our theme is actually called snow and we have modules. And what is this module? So in this modules, guys, you can basically create custom components, custom modules like cursors, images, and you can create any component you can think of. And that's where we will be creating our cursors to. OK, so we're actually going to provide a toolbar because this module has uh, toolbars that you need to provide. And it's basically this object. guys. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. It's, it's nothing crazy. It's just an object with all the stuff that we want. We need bold, italic, underline, all these kind of things. OK, we need these options. So we're going to go in here and say toolbar options just like this. So now it's kind of uh, now it's wired in basically. OK, and right here, if we were creating our cursors, we would actually put that in here. So I'm going to say work in progress cursors. OK, we'll get back to this in just a second. So once this is done, then we're going to set quill to be Q. So now we have set quill to be Q. And now since we passed in this theme, guys, right here, we also need to import our theme. So you want to go to the top right here and you want to say import like this from quill slash dist slash quill um, dot snow dot css not scss sorry okay width is set yep 800 pixels now it should be set okay awesome so now you see that this is not centered since we imported this this looks great right here okay it looks awesome and the max width 800 pixels now it should be set okay awesome so now you see that this is not centered so we need to do a couple things which is so go ahead and create a div like this and encapsulate all the stuff in here. There you go. You see it actually did that because we moved, right? So that's the reason why it did that, okay? And now we want to provide some class names here. So we're going to say class name flex justify center items center flex call margin top of 2 and relative. All right, there we go. So we also gave it some spacing up top. Awesome. And now guys, you're going to realize that your editor looks different from mine. And the reason is because I have gone and spent some time to actually make it look a little prettier. Okay. And I have everything already set for you. So all you need to do is go into Cypress, uh, into the GitHub repository. You want to go into source, go into app, and then you're going to find globals.css in here. Okay. So go to the bottom where it says layers right here and copy everything from here, guys. Just copy it and paste it. It's just like, it's just a sugarcoat or application. It's nothing crazy. Okay. So I don't want to waste time doing that CSS stuff. So basically what we're doing is we're targeting the CSS classes that Quill uses and we're just kind of resetting it. That's literally it. Okay. So hopefully you can have a uh, something similar to this. And now when you hover over it, you see we have a blue color showing up and also that that ugly box is gone and it looks much better. Okay. Awesome. All right. So the next process is we need to get access to these details, right? The directory details. And we also need to sync it up with both the server side data that we're getting and also the client side data. 
okay? And I, I just explained the reason why we need to do that. So uh, what we're going to do, and if you forgot for some reason, it's because of the router cache. We need to kind of refresh it, okay? So you want to go up here and we're going to say const details equal to um, use memo. So first let's say, let's say use memo like this, and you want to pass in a callback function. Oops. Um, sorry guys. Yep. You want to pass in a callback function like this. And in here, we're going to basically do that logic. So let's just create a variable here called selected directory. And we're just going to look into the state right here, our local app state. We're going to find those, um, the directory details, and we're going to render that if it exists. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to render whatever we get from the server, which is these directory details. Okay. So, Let's go ahead and check if the directory type is equal to file in here. If so, we're going to do something. If not, we have to do something else. So I'm going to go in here and say folder. And here I want to say workspace just like this. OK, and actually you could put this in a different file if you want to, because I've seen I've seen a pattern of using this on and on. So you can just create a helper function uh, inside your libs folder like this and create a utility folder. And maybe you can put some stuff in there. OK, I'm going to leave that up to you to improve and optimize the application. But um, this is what we're going to do right now. We're just going to say selected directory is equal to state dot workspaces dot find. So we're going to search for that file. Right. So we're going to get the workspace and and we want to check whether workspace.id is equal to the workspace ID that we're on right now. Okay. And once we get that, then we need to get the folders because these are files, right? We need to get the folder that we're on and we need to find where um, the folder.id is equal to the folder ID that we're on as well. Okay. And finally, we want to get the files like this. And if that exists, we're going to say find like this, invoke it. And then we want to get access to this file and then say where file.id is equal to the file ID. And this file ID comes in from our props. Okay. That's how we can get access to that, to those directory details. And finally, we're going to do a selected directory equal to state dot workspaces dot find guys. I hope you are doing this with me because that's the best way for you to learn. Okay. So go ahead, take your computer. If you haven't already, just watch this whole video again and do it with me. That's the best way for you to learn. Okay. So we're going to say, um, workspace and we want to find where the workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID that we're on. And if so, we're going to get the folders dot find like this, find where the folder like this is the folder dot ID is equal to the file ID that we're on. Okay. Is equal to file ID just like this. So now we're going to get access to uh, that directory detail. Okay. And then finally for the workspace, we're just going to say selected directory equal to state dot workspaces dot find uh, where the workspace ID. So workspace dot ID equal to the um, file ID again. Awesome guys. And now we need to check. So if anything is in the selected directory, we're going, we're going to return our selected directory. If not, we're, we have to return a new object. Okay. And the reason is because some properties are not available for um, the folders and the files. So uh, for the workspace, for example, so uh, we're going to return um, the following. So we're going to say title is going to be directory details dot title. And then here also guys, we need to pass in some dependencies. So we'll, we'll just pass in the state uh, we'll pass in the workspace ID and I, I think we also need the folder ID, right? Yep. Awesome. And in here, we're going to pass in this, we're going to say icon ID is going to be directory details dot icon ID. And then we need the created at is going to be directory details dot created at, and then we need data, which is directory details dot data. And then we need in trash. Okay. This is also going to help us get, you know, show the error on the screen if the file was deleted. So we're going to say in trash is going to be directory details dot in trash like this. Awesome. And then finally, we also need the banner URL directory details dot banner URL. That should work. Awesome. And let's just return this as workspace um, or a folder or a file. So we don't have any errors there. Awesome. Also, I just wanted to point out if you wonder why there's four four hundred percent of the folders are completed, but uh, we only have three two folders, right? The reason is because um, we have actually gone ahead and pushed some to trash. So that's why you can't see it here. And um, that's why it's showing this 400%. Okay. So, um, so now that we have this details, we have 
what we are on. So the page that we are on, that's what we have. So let's go down here. So the first thing we're going to do is the in trash stuff. So we're going to show up top if the if this workspace or the folder is in the trash. OK, so let's go in here um, for the workspace. It doesn't really matter, but we're just going to put it in here so that it can be used for the files and folders. OK, so create a div and say relative like this. And in here we're going to see we're going to say details dot in trash. So if this element, if this um, directory is in the trash, then we need to return something. So I'm just going to say um, article like this. And this article is going to have the following class names. OK, so we're going to say padding Y of two BG of this hex code, which is EB5757 flex from medium devices. We want it to be flex row. Flex column, justify center, item center, gap four, and flex uh, flex wrap. Okay, and then the next one is basically going to be a div in here. So let's go ahead and create a div and give it the following class names. Okay, so this one is flex flex column from uh, from medium devices flex row gap two justify center and items center. Okay, then let's go ahead and create a span inside this. And we're going to give it the following class name, which is text white like this. And we're going to say this um, directory type. Okay, we know folder file or workspace from here, right? So this is in the trash. Okay, okay. And let's create a button right here. Okay, UI button just like this. And inside this button, we're going to do a couple things. So let's first set the size equal to small. We want the variant to be equal to um, outline like this. And then we're going to give it some custom class names. Okay, this is going to have background transparent. We need border, border, white, text, white, hover, BG white, hover, text. Actually, let's set it to this one. And let's put that in there. So that should work. And inside this button, you want to say restore. So this is the restore button so that you can bring it out of the trash. Okay. And we of course have to pa pass in a click handler. So let's say on click equal to, uh, we'll say restore file handler. Okay. We'll go ahead and create this in just a second, but let's go ahead and build the other button too, which is basically the same thing. So let's go ahead and copy the same stuff from here, paste it in here, right? Just like this. So in here, we're basically going to say, um, instead of restore, it's going to be delete. Okay. So this is going to permanently delete it. So you can just change this to permanently delete if you want. So I'm going to say delete file. Okay. So let's go ahead and build out these functions. They're actually pretty, pretty simple. Nothing crazy here. Um, it's just a simple API request. Okay. So let's go ahead and uncomment these restore file handler. So let's just scroll to the top after all this stuff. Okay. And we're going to say const uh, restore file handler is going to be an async function. And um, we're going to do this. So we're going to say if the directory type is equal to type of file. Okay. Then we're going to make sure we have the folder ID. So we're going to say folder ID exist. If not, we want to return. Okay. And then we're going to dispatch a new action. And this uh, actually is the same action. And this one is basically called update file. Okay, we're going to update a specific file. And what it needs is a payload, which is set to an object. And let's go ahead and import all these values just like this. Okay, so the file is basically going to be an object within trash set to an empty string because we're bringing it back out of the trash. Okay. And the file ID, um, this file ID, I think it can, yep, it can be this workspace ID. Um, what's wrong here? Okay, so we need the workspace ID too. So we'll just check and make sure the workspace ID exists. So if it doesn't exist, get out of here again. Okay. So folder ID is going to be the folder ID and workspace ID. Awesome guys. And now we want to say awaits update file like this, and you want to invoke it. So first, um, is the file itself. So this is going to say in trash set to an empty string and it also needs the file ID, right? Yep. So we can say file ID just like this. Awesome guys. Great job. And now we want to check if it's a folder. So directory, uh, type equal to folder like this. If there's no file ID, actually, if there's no folder ID like this, so we can just say if there's no workspace ID, 
we want to return, okay? And then we're going to dispatch an action with type like this set to update folder. And we need to pass in the, the payload like this, which is inside this. So payload is going to be an object set to the folder. We need folder ID and workspace ID. So the folder is going to be in trash set to a string. And the folder ID here is going to be the file ID, guys. All right. And the workspace ID, we can just pass that in here. Okay, we need to make sure our file ID exists. So let's just say if there's no file ID, okay, just for this TypeScript error, I think that should actually solve this problem. Um, let me see, something seems to be wrong here. So this is actually folder ID set to the file ID. All right, there we go, guys. So I don't think we actually have to check this. And the reason's because our file ID is set to a string. Okay, cool. And then we'll just say update folder like this. And this has to have in trash set to an empty string. And the final thing is the file ID just like this. Awesome, great, uh, guys, great job. So now this should actually work but um, we cannot test it on the workspace. I actually want all this data here. So we will test it in the, on the folder in just a second, okay? So let's go back up here and let's just see what this element looks like. So, okay, we have the delete file too. So let's go ahead and set the delete file. Where is that? Right in here, okay. So we'll say const delete file handler is equal to this right here. And this is going to be an async function and what we're going to do in here is we're going to basically copy all of this and we're going to check directory, same thing, but this is going to be delete file like this and um, our payload, we're going to get to that in a second. And this one is going to be delete folder. Okay. And these don't exist obviously. So I want you to take this up as a challenge. I hope you know what you're supposed to do now, but if not, no problem. I'm going to show it to you in a second. Go ahead, pause this video create these two actions and then come back to this video. All right, so let's go in here and where we are saying add file, we're gonna create another object, give this a type and we're gonna say delete file just like this, okay? And this is going to need a payload. And what we need for this is basically the workspace ID, which is gonna be a string. We need, of course, we need the folder ID, right? Which is gonna be a string. And um, we also need the file that we want to delete. So file ID, which is going to be a string as well. Okay. And now that we have this, let's also go ahead and build it out for the folder. So hopefully you got this one right too. If not, no problem. This is what you want to say. Delete folder like this. And the next property is going to be the payload. Payload is going to be an object. Payload needs to have the workspace ID. So workspace ID, let me shrink this so you guys can see clearly. And this is going to be a string. And then we also need the folder that we want to delete. Awesome, hopefully you got this right. Okay, if not, no problem, don't worry about it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and delete the file. So right after this, we're gonna say uh, case, we're gonna set this to delete file we're going to return something in here. So for delete file guys, basically we're going to return everything that's in state, but we're gonna set the workspace. We're basically creating a new state, okay? That's basically what's happening here. So state.workspaces.map, we're gonna get the workspace. Actually, let's do this. We wanna first see if the workspace.id, if the workspace from here, so we wanna save this, workspaces, if the if the workspace ID is equal to action.payload.workspaceID, then we're going to do something. Um, if not, we'll just return the old workspace, the other workspace, okay? So in here, we're going to return a new object with everything inside the workspace, but we're going to set the folders to be something else, which is going to be workspace.folders.map. And now we're going to check in here. So we're gonna get the folder and we're gonna check if the folder.id is equal to action.payload.folderid, okay? If so, we'll return that. If not, we'll just return um, something else, okay? So we'll say return the folder itself. If it is, we're going to return a new folder, okay, for that folder, but we're going to set the files to be something else because we're deleting a file, right? So the file is going to be folder.files.filter, 
and we're going to filter for the file where the file.id not equal to because we're filtering not equal to action.payload.fileid. Awesome. Hopefully you got this right because if you did, great job. Okay. It's really good. I'm really proud of you. Where is this? Yep. We have update folder. We can do it right here. All right. Now we're going to work on the delete folder. Okay. So what we're going to do in here is we're simply going to return a new state, um, state like this. So everything in state, but we're going to set the workspaces like this to be state dot workspaces dot map. So we're going to uh, map over this and get access to the workspace. And we're going to say where workspace dot ID is equal to um, the action dot payload dot workspace ID. So let's wrap this in a if block just like this. And and in the end, we'll just put this curly bracket. OK, awesome. So if this is the case, then we'll do something. If not, we're just going to return um, the workspace like this. OK, so so we're going to say if workspace dot ID is equal to action dot payload dot workspace ID like this. And then if so, uh, we're going to do something. If not, we're just going to return the workspace itself. OK, so if so, we're going to say return a new object with everything inside the workspace, but we're going to set its folders to be something else. And we're since we're deleting a folder, we just have to say uh, workspace dot folders like this dot filter for the folder like this. Um, where the folder dot ID is not equal to action dot payload dot folder ID. So we're basically returning a new set of folders for this and we're just filtering it out with that. OK, awesome, guys. Um, great. And now what we're going to do is we're going to head back into that. So let's close this. Let's come in here. And now for delete file, we need to pass a payload. And this payload is going to throw a bunch of errors. So let's go ahead and do that. So this just needs, let's see. So it needs the file ID, which can be the file ID that we need to delete, the folder ID and the workspace ID. Awesome. And then we can, um, we need to create a new action here. So let's change this to delete file. Okay, so this is causing some issues. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to go down here and say uh, delete file handler just like this. Okay. And now it's not going to cause any more issues. So here we're going to change this to delete file. And since we don't have this, let's go into our schemas. I'm sorry, let's go into our queries like this. And where we have our delete file, we can go ahead and delete it. Get file. Okay, let's just do it in here. So export const delete file equal to an async function like this. And this async function is going to need the file ID that we need to delete, right? So we're going to set this to a string like this. And inside this, we're going to check if there's no file ID. Of course, you can do the validate stuff. We're just going to skip over that real quick. And we're just going to say, if there's no file ID, just return and db dot delete files dot where equal files equal to the file ID we just passed in. OK, simple. And let's also do it for the folder. Might as well. We're already at it. So export const delete folder equal async. OK, and this is going to be the folder ID and set to a string. OK, and in here we're just going to say if there is um, no folder. So I'm going to copy this like this. OK, if there's no folder ID like this, we're just going to delete. And I think do we already have delete workspace? Let me see. Delete delete workspace is already done for us. So we're good to go. I'm just going to check the folder. All right. So I think this is good. So let's go back in here and let's import that. So delete file from the query like this. And this only needs the file ID to delete. Awesome. And same thing here. So this one is going to change to folder ID. So let's check this. It needs the folder ID, which is supposed to be our file and the workspace ID. And we can come in here and say delete folder just like this. Awesome. And this only needs our file ID, which is basically the folder. OK, awesome. Great stuff, guys. So let's see if um, yeah, we would have to also render this for the other components. So let's go back in here, go into your files right in here. So go into source app, go into main. Oh, sorry, go into your workspace into folder. Click on page. 
and you're going to do the same thing in here. So go ahead, take this up as a challenge and build this entire component for the folder. OK, and do the same thing for the file. If you don't know how to do it, it's OK, guys. Pause the video, give it a shot and then come back and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. All right, guys. Awesome. So this is what you have to do for the folder. OK, you want to go ahead and say um, this force dynamic up top. You want to import React, uh, import our Quill editor and we created a new query. I'm going to show that to you in a second, but I want you to take it up as a challenge. We already did the get workspace details so it's exactly the same there's literally nothing different other than the name and the string that's being passed in okay so go ahead and take that up as a challenge if you still lost it's all in here okay copy and paste and then we are also getting redirect so we're just going to get the data if there's if there's an error or there's no data we're going to send them to the dashboard page and um, if everything looks good we're going to go ahead and render out this component okay all right, and now to test, guys, to make sure that everything is working. Once you're done creating this component for the folder, um, just go ahead and click on this. Okay, I clicked on this and it's rendering. And if I go to workspace, it's rendering. Awesome. Great job. So now let's move on to the file. So creating the same component, but under the file um, param uh, under the file folder, just like this. All right, guys, hopefully you got it right. This is exactly what you need to do. It's the same thing. There's literally nothing different. OK, so you want to do this, this. And also, before we jump into it, there might be an error uh, when you click on the file when if you did test before. OK, and I'll show you why we made that error and we will fix that in just a second. OK, so uh, we're going to say file like this and we created another get files details, which, which is exactly the same. OK, nothing different. Just change the file ID. And you can copy paste it. Um, you can see it on the screen now or you can copy paste it from there. OK, nothing different in here. So we're going to check if there's an error or there's no data. If that's true, we'll just send them to the dashboard page. And in here, also make sure you're changing the directory type to file and folder for the other one. OK, or else it's not going to work. So make sure you do that. It's super, super important. So now let me show you the error. I actually fixed the error, right? which is if I click on the file, it renders it out um, correctly. Let me refresh this real quick. Um, let me go back to this, click on this. If I click on the folder and um, if I click on a file, it's rendering out everything perfectly. OK, so I'm having no problems here, but you would probably realize some error and the error is actually happening in our drop down component. So let's go into source the shrink everything source components sidebar. You want to go into dropdown.tsx. So in here, guys, where we're navigating, you can click this, okay? And in here where we're navigating, we're basically um, setting this right here. So before this, it was set to accordion ID. And if you remember, we actually created a custom ID, file ID. And that ID had this weird text in it and something else in it. And that basically allowed us to set default values. OK, so now if I refresh this page, you will see this file is automatically clicked and is loaded accordingly. Right. That's why we needed those values. This this custom file ID right here. So when you clicked on it before, it was pushing that ID to the URL, which is invalid. So that would throw some UUID errors for you. That's the error that you were uh, you, you were facing if you did. OK, if you don't have this error, awesome. But all you have to do, guys, is you have to say accordion ID dot split folder and you want to take the first elements because the zero element is the folder ID and this one is the file ID. OK, awesome. Great job. So let's go back to our file. I'm just going to close this here. And now if you click through everything, it's all going to work perfectly fine with no error. So you see it's rendering that if I click this, it's rendering my my folder and now it's rendering my workspace and I can go back and forth with no uh, no issues. Great job, guys. So now let's move on to creating um, all the other elements inside our editor. Go ahead and scroll to the bottom here and we want to test this in trash, um, you know, to make sure it's working. So if I clicked on the folder and I deleted it, there you go. It shows up on top and it says success moved folder to trash. And if I refresh this page like this, you will notice that it is actually going to show in here. Let's go ahead and restore this file 
and boom, there you go. It came back. The folder came back along with the file. Okay. And here's a challenge for you. We actually didn't incorporate this, but I want you to take this up as a challenge right now. If I delete a folder, the file is not being deleted. And of course the file needs to be deleted. Am I right? So all you have to do, I'm going to give you the answer, but I want you to try. Okay. If you don't know the answer, I will be in the discord and I will give you the answer, but you need to try. So go down here and what you need to do is inside the providers in our state provider. Okay. Let's just say for the file. Okay. We're basically going and removing and just adding this, um, the new title, the new in trash property with a string. Okay. Saying in the trash or something like that. Right. So, what you would need to do is create a new action called um, add to trash or move to trash action. And in that action, you need to first move the folder to the trash. So go ahead and move the folder to, tr to the trash. And then you need to also move all the files that are inside that folder into the trash. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's the, that's the right way to do it. Okay. And when you bring it back, when you bring it back, it's all going to work. It's all just going to pop back in because what you're going to do is you're going to set a restore folder action. And that restore folder action is going to first bring the folder back and then search for the files and bring each of those files back. I can't wait to see you guys do this. This is a great challenge for you to do. I will give you the answer, but I want you to try. There you go. It's working perfectly. And if I clicked on the file, for example, let's just try this out. So I'm going to hit delete. Boom. There you go. This file is in the trash. I'm going to go ahead and copy this link so I don't lose it because we, had, we haven't built our trash functionality yet. And if I click on the folder, it's still going to exist. But if I go back to this file, there you go. And I can restore it done. So after this div guys, so after you put the delete button, create a span and we're going to give this a class name of text small and text white. And in here, we're going to basically put our details dot in trash. So if I delete this file, for example, it says deleted by web prodigies. It just says my name in there. So everyone knows that, oh, this person deleted it so they, they can go and absolutely blast them. And now you can restore this file back. Awesome. So after this article, Right here, we have this div hit enter and create another div. So you want to say flex flex column flex column reverse SM flex row because uh, on mobile we want it to be reversed. Okay. And then from the small devices justify between justify center by default and from small devices item center from small devices padding two and padding eight right in here. And what we're building here guys is basically the breadcrumbs for our application. So we like to show the user where they are actually located because right now I don't know where I'm at, right? It just shows this file. So inside this div, we're going to create another div like this and we're going to create a variable up top. Okay. Called breadcrumbs. So we're going to say const breadcrumbs equal to use memo invoke this and we want to pass this empty dependency and we need the state. Basically, we are going to look into our local state and search for the details that we need. And we're going to append it into a string and show it right up top in here. First thing we need to do is we're actually going to use path name guys. We're going to import path name up here. So let's go up top and we're going to say const path name equal to use path name and invoke it. And then if not, we're just going to return. But we also want to make sure there is state and workspaces set and our we want to make sure we have our workspace ID. Okay. We might also need the folder, but let's, let's just see right now. I don't think we do. What we're going to do is create um, a bunch of segments here. So equal to path name dot split like this, and we're going to split it by the backslash. And then we're going to filter for some values. Okay. This is another way to filter. We did Boolean before. So we're going to say value where the value is not equal to the dashboard. Okay. Like this. And we also want to make sure the value is true. So we're going to say value like this. Awesome. Then we need to say workspace details equal to state dot workspaces. You see, we're using this so often guys. So it would be great if you put it somewhere else, but I'm just going to do this because practice makes perfect. And it, I really suggest you type it out. It's going to make you work so much quicker workspace dot ID is equal to workspace ID just like this. So now we have the workspace in here and then we're going to create the breadcrumb. So we're going to say workspace breadcrumb. We're going to check if there's anything in workspace details. If there is, we'll do something. If not, we'll do something in here. 
So we're going to create a string literal and say dollar sign workspace details dot, um, dot icon ID like this and put a space here. And then we need the workspace details dot title. If not, we're just going to uh, return an empty string. So we're going to segments dot length equal to one. That means we know we're on a workspace. So we're just going to return the workspace breadcrumbs just like this. If not, we're going to again find for folder segment equal to segments at one. And then we're going to say const folder details equal to workspace details folders dot find because it can only be in the same directory. So we're going to get the folder where the folder dot ID is equal to the folder, the folder segments. And now that we have this, we're going to create our folder bread crumb. And this is equal to it's the same thing, guys, the same thing that we did up here, but we're going to put a backslash before the icon ID and we're going to check the segments in here, too. So I'm going to just copy and paste this here and check it if it's equal to two. If it's equal to two, then I'm going to return a new type of string, which is first the workspace then our folders. So go ahead and build this out for the files. It's a challenge. Go ahead and take that up as a challenge and build it up for the files. If not, pause the video. And then if you can, you can come back and I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, hopefully you got it right. If not, it is actually insanely simple. It's the same exact thing. Okay, you're going to check for the file segment, create a file just like this. And um, then you're going to check for the breadcrumbs by just saying if the details exist, then you want to, you know, create a custom string with a backslash here icon and the title. And you're going to return a new string with everything combined. And in here, you'll also need to pass in the path name and you'll also need to pass in the workspace ID. If you click on untitled, it'll take some time to load, but then you'll see that. So if I switch now, boom, awesome. And by the way, everything is actually synced. You see that? So if we say untitled, it's going to update in every single place in the application. And it also shows the folder title change. Awesome. If you click on the file, it shows that too. And you can change this new file name like this and click out and it shows success file name has changed. Okay, so after these breadcrumbs, guys, we're going to build the collaborators icon. So we're going to show a bunch of collaborators here. If they're working on the project, we're going to go right below this breadcrumb. And we're going to say div class name equal to flex items center and gap four. this is going to have another div. And this is going to have class name like this. And this class name is going to be flex items center justify center height is going to be 10. And in here, we're going to basically loop over our collaborators, but we don't have it built. So let's go up top and let's just say const collaborators and set equal to use state just like this you can set this to an array of objects. And we need the string uh, ID, which is going to be a string, the email, which is going to be a string. And finally, we need the avatar URL, which is going to be a string as well. So now let's go back down all the way to where we were creating that. And inside this, we want to create a tooltip. And this tooltip is going to allow us to hover over the um, collaborator and get some information. So let's create a tooltip like this from UI tooltip. Guys, don't import it from Radix. Okay. And then we need the trigger, which is tooltip trigger like this. Inside the trigger, we are going to put the avatar. Inside this, we need the avatar image. And then this needs to be the avatar fallback, just like this. Awesome. Right here, we want to go into the avatar and we're going to give it the following class names. So we're going to say negative margin left of three BG background border two flex item center justify center border white H eight and width eight and then rounded full inside this guys. We have this avatar image, right? We're going to just give this a class name of rounded full as well. And inside here. So inside this fallback, maybe like CP or I don't know, something like Cypress or something like this. So right here, we need to say as child, right after this, we're going to say tooltip content, some username, for example. So if you hover over it, it just shows a username. So now let's go ahead and loop over all our collaborators. And let's um, use this component to show them. And we want to return this component. And this needs a key prop, which will be our collaborator dot now we will see none because we don't have any collaborators on this file. Um, let's just create some mock data. So I'm going to go up top here and I'm going to say you can use chat GPT if you'd like. I'm just going to copy all strings and I'm just going to put something in here. What we're going to do here is we're going to change this email. Let's just say if it was something like this at gmail.com. We're going to go down here 
And this is actually going to be the collaborator.email.substring. We're going to do zero, two, and then we're going to do two uppercase. And this is basically going to extract their name and put it in here instead of just showing something like Cypress or something like that. And the source for this avatar in here, this is going to be the collaborator.avatar URL. If that exists, uh, collaborator.avatar URL, or we can just return an empty string. And right here, after this, we're going to create a badge. And this badge is used to display whether the document is saving or has already been saved. So let's just go up top and we're going to create this, uh, this state here. So const saving and set saving equal to use state and just pass in false uh, for now. Let's go to the bottom and where did we create that? Okay, so right here. So after this div, okay, go ahead and say saving. If saving is true, go to your Shatsian UI and let's actually install this component. So let's search for a badge. Go ahead, copy this, paste it and hit enter. And what we're going to do here in the meantime is just say badge like this. So if it's true, we're going to return this badge. If not, we're going to return another badge. So in this one, we're going to give it a variant and we're going to say secondary and the same thing uh, for this too. And this is going to have the following class name background to be orange 600. And then top is going to be four text to white right of four and we'll say Z of 50. And then in this badge, we can say saving like this. Let's go down here real quick. And what is this error? We didn't run NPM run dev. That's the issue. And the same thing for this, you want to copy this. We're just going to change the color, hit enter, just paste and save. And this color is going to be emerald 600 like this and top four. And now we're just going to say saved in here. So there you go, saved. And if you expand it, it's going to be there right on the on the top right hand side. So we're going to have a banner for all our workspaces, our folders and our files as well. After this, you, you basically have this badge, right? You have a badge here below that one, two, three divs. After the third div, you're going to go ahead and say details dot banner URL. If this exists, then you're going to do something. So right now, let's just create a react fragment and we'll get to this in a second. Okay. I'm going to mute it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say div class name, and we're going to set this to relative. The width is going to be full and the height is actually going to be about 200 pixels. And in here, guys, just render an image from next image. And we're going to get this in a second. So this is going to be fill class name set to width of full from um, medium devices. Height is going to be 48. Then we also want the height to be 20. We want object set to cover. Also, let's give it an alt tag, guys. So we'll say alt is equal to banner image or something like this. Okay. So the source again, go into your GitHub repository that I have right here. It's also in the description and you want to go to your source, go to Cypress, go into the public folder and you want to copy the banner image and the banner image is just this thing right here. So go ahead and download that image and go into your public folder. And we're just going to paste this in here for now. It's just a test. Okay. Let's go up top. Okay, right up here, we're going to say const super base equal to use, I'm sorry, create client component client and invoke this like this. I'm going to click this so it takes me here. So we're going to say super base dot storage dot from file banners, but I just want to make sure. So let me go in here to our storage file banners. Awesome. So let's go back to our application file dash banners like this. And then we're going to get the public URL for it, which is from details dot banner URL. Then we're going to say data dot public URL, just like this. For now, we're just going to, you know, comment this out and we're going to put a string here, banner image dot PNG. There you go, guys. So now it has our banner image and it looks kind of ugly. <laughs> and that's because we said object. So it's object cover. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Look at that. Looks wonderful. And that only depends on if you have the banner image. So let's go in here, uncomment this, bring it in here, copy this image, and we're just going to paste it in here like this. And let's remove this banner image from here. Okay. Just like this. Awesome. So only if this exists, will it, will it show the banner image? Um, okay. What's going on here? All right, guys. So here was my stupid mistake. What I did was I actually wrapped this image in this when, when in reality we have to wrap everything, this whole thing in it. 
Okay, that's why the height of 200 pixels was stuck right there. And that's why it was causing that weird issue. Okay, awesome. Sorry about that, guys. So what we're going to have in here, we're going to have the title, the ability to upload a banner, the ability to remove it and all that kind of stuff. So inside this div, you want to create another div and you want to give it the following class names with full. So the reason why we see this like this is because of flex column. All right, perfect. That goes back to its original position. And yep. Yeah, so you want to say with full self center, the max width is going to be 800 pixels, flex, flex column, padding X of seven. And from large devices, we want the margin Y to be eight. And inside this, create another div and set the class name equal to text dash 80 pixel. This is the icon image, guys. Emoji picker, because we want to be able to also update this emoji picker and we want to create a div here and say class and this is going to have a width of 100 pixels cursor pointer transition colors height 100 pixels flex items center justify center hover bg dash muted rounded dash XL. So again, we have maxed out our connection slots. This is going to be annoying. <laughs> also, guys, I did try another method, which is what I originally had, which was using the separate migrate file. This is the command. Okay, we're using bun to run that file. And I did create the migration typescript and I moved the uh, file outside it. But I'm just seeing a really weird error, guys. I tried really hard and I wasn't sure what the hell was going on. But um, I just wanted to point out that there is another way that I did it before, but it's just not working. But hopefully you guys can find the answer and let me know. Okay, so just go ahead and put it inside the discord channel where we can all help each other. But yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. So if you were wondering why I didn't do that, that's the reason why. And in here, you just want to pass in the details dot icon ID. So when you click this again, you can go ahead and change the icon for your file. So we're going to say get value in here and this is going to basically have a function it's going to be called icon on change like this and let's copy this go up top and you're just going to paste it in here equal to an async function and this function is going to get the icon which is a string and we basically want to check if uh, to make sure the file id exists okay if not we need to return and after this guys you want to say if the directory type is equal to the workspace. And then I'm just going to duplicate this and change this to folder and change this to file in here. I'm going to await update workspace and we're going to set the icon ID to be equal to the icon that we just got in. And this also needs the workspace. Yeah, we can just say file ID like this in here. We also have to dispatch an action, right? So we're going to call it type of update workspace, we need to pass in the payload, which is going to be an object which needs the workspace and the workspace ID. So this workspace ID is going to be um, set to workspace ID file ID. And this workspace is going to be an object with icon ID set to icon just like this. We did this for the workspace. So let's go in here. If we change this to a workspace like this, there you go. Changed everywhere, right? And if you refresh it, it's also updated for everything. So let's change this back to home. Looks great. Go ahead and do the same thing for the folder and the file. Okay. Take it up as a challenge, pause the video and come back to it. And I'll show you how to go from there. Hopefully you got it right. If not, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it for the folder. We need this workspace ID or it's not going to work. Okay. So we want to check if there's no workspace ID and if not, we're going to return. And then we're simply going to dispatch the update folder action and set the payload to the following, which is folder icon ID set to icon workspace ID set to workspace ID. You can just remove this, just return only this. And the folder ID is the file ID. And then same thing here. We're just going to update the folder pass in this new data and the file ID itself. And same thing here. But for this one, we need the workspace ID and the folder ID because we're looking for a file. And yeah, that's it. You just want to dispatch this one, pass in the necessary values in here into this payload. OK, and then await update file, pass in the new file and the file ID. All right, guys, so after this emoji picker, so now we're going to basically work on um, the banner upload button. So that way we can upload a banner or remove the banner. So after this div, just hit enter and create another div. And we're just going to say class set to flex banner upload. Let's go ahead and create this component like this. And this is going to take in some props. I'm just going to pass it in right now. So we're going to pass in the details and then we're going to say ID equal to file 
ID and then the directory type is equal to the directory type and then we also want to pass in some custom class names that we can use in there. So this is going to be equal to margin top of two text dash SM text dash muted dash foreground padding of two hover text dash card dash foreground then we need transition all and finally rounded set to MD. So this is going to be details dot banner URL if it exists update banner or if not uh, we're going to set it to add banner okay I know this doesn't make sense right now but just bear with me I'm going to show you what it looks like all right let's go ahead copy this name go into our components create another folder and you want to call this banner dash upload and then inside that create a banner dot sorry dash upload dash form dot tsx and then we also want to create another one called banner dash upload dash uh, dot tsx okay we'll just also use rafce okay so since we have done this already i'm gonna just copy this so you don't waste any time and um it's the same thing guys okay we've built so much so far so you should definitely be able to understand what's happening right now but basically we're just using children we're creating class name string directory type which can only be of these these three of course id is going to be string and the details are going to be one of these also use react.functional component banner upload props and let's go ahead and extra uh, go ahead and extract these values from here we're just going to return our custom dialogue component that we created custom dialogue trigger and this is going to pull the children right in here in here we're going to set the header to be equal to upload banner and then the content is what we're going to pass in. We're just, we're, we'll just pass in a React fragment for now because we don't have the form created. Class name, and let's also pass in our class names from our parameters. So let's go ahead and say banner upload form. Copy this and go into your banner upload form, RAFC, and paste that. And let's import this from here. And let's go to our quill editor and let's also import this from here. Awesome. So you see it's showing that button right here. And if I click it, it's going to show my form on the screen. So let's go back now. Where's that component? The banner upload form. And this is going to take a couple props. It just needs the details, which comes from here, the directory type, which comes from here, and the ID. We're just passing it down. This is going to have the following interface. So interface banner upload um, form props going to have details and these details can be of any of these types. The directory type is going to be workspace file and folder and the ID is going to be a string. Also use this props in here. We're going to extract the details, the directory type, and we also need the ID just like this. Okay. So use client const superbase create client component client because we need to upload it upload the image to that bucket right so that's why we need super base in here and then we also need our state workspace id folder id and then dispatch and this is equal to use app state and now we're going to use use form again we already did this um so um, we'll go ahead and do this here again so we're going to say use form um, from react hook forms. We're going to invoke it like this. You can go to your files in here, this, this file right here where we created uh, some types and you can say export const upload banner form schema equal to Z dot object invoke it like this. So we're simply going to say banner is going to be a Z dot string invoke it. And then we're going to say dot describe and we're going to pass in banner image and let's go ahead and copy this and we need to import it right in here so let's get it from those types like that and i'm going to pass it in here so let's import z dot infer type of and then we need to pass in this right here so let's go in here and now we want to say register we want handle submit and then we want reset and the form state because we need is submitting from here is submitting and we're going to change that to is uploading and then we also need errors from here so this is going to be mode on change and then here we're going to have default values which is going to be set to an object and it needs to have banner set to an empty string go down here remove this and we're going to return a form with on submit set to a function handle submit so invoke this handle submit and pass an on submit handler like this copy this 
we're going to say const this is equal to a function and it's going to be an async function let's also give this a class name and this is going to have flex flex dash call and gap dash two so let's import our label from ui label let's just say banner image and let's pass in the following class name text dash sm text dash muted dash foreground and say html for banner image and after this guys you want to use an input which comes from our ui input and this is going to have the id equal to banner image and type is going to be file and it's going to only accept images so image slash star we also need the disabled prop set to the is uploading and here we're also going to spread the register and you also you need to invoke it my bad banner so because that's the name of this element and then you want to provide the text here so we're because it's required so banner image is required and very simple guys we're just going to say small here say class name set to text dash red dash 600 errors dot banner dot message dot to string and then after this we need the button to submit we're going to basically say disabled is going to be equal to is uploading and we need to set the type to be equal to submit let's also import this button from ui button and this has got to be submit not submit hey and then in here we want to say not is uploading is basically going to be something or something in here right so we're going to say upload banner or this is going to be our loader component that we created but now if you hit add banner it's just a very simple form that just allows you to create a banner so let's go into this in here this is going to give us the values so we're going to say z dot infer to import submit handler which comes from uh, react hook forms and this has to take in z dot infer type of then we need to pass in our new schema and now we can go ahead and build out the logic for this part so let's get the file out const file equal to values dot banner um, if this exists dot at zero if there is no file there's no id we're going to say return and if not then we're going to use a try catch say let file path equal to null and then we're going to say const upload banner equal to a async function and here we're going to say const data and error equal to await superbase dot storage dot from file dash banners we're going to upload first uh, we need to provide this id and then we're going to say the file banner dash dollar sign id so we have one id for everything and we can set the upsert to true and then we're going to say file like this let's pass in some properties we're going to say cache control and we're going to set this to five actually upsert to true one thing i just want to point out guys even if we did upload and update this image okay the issue is superbase themselves have said that it does take time to update everything in the database and um, because of that we end up getting the cached value okay so here's my suggestion and i want to give this up to you as a challenge it's very simple instead of updating the image you want to delete the image that exists in there and you want to provide a new id if you remember what v4 is we used v4 so you want to create that id dynamically and you want to use a new string so that you don't get the cached banner i hope that makes sense if not i'll i'll help you just reach out to me after this we want to check and make sure there's no error here if the error exists throw new error um, you can use a toast and you can show that okay if not i'm going to set file path equal to data dot path after this we're going to do the logic here so if the directory type is equal to file then we're going to do something if not if it's equal to a folder to a work space just like this so else if here for the file is if there is no workspace id or there is no folder id then we just want to return if not we're going to await upload banner invoke it and then that's going to go ahead and upload the banner to that don't forget we also have to dispatch an action let's give it a type update file so payload is going to be an object with the file set to banner url is going to be file path then we also need a couple things here right we need the file id which is going to be id the folder id and the workspace id and then we want to say await update file 
and we want to pass in the banner URL is going to be the file path. Oh, and we also need the ID guys. And the same thing for the workspace. Here's a challenge. Go ahead and do it. Same thing for workspace and the folder, the exact same thing. Okay. You're just going to pass a different action and do different if conditions and go ahead, pause the video and come back to this. If you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Awesome. Hopefully you got it right. If not, no problem. This is exactly what you need to do. What we're doing for the folder here is we're checking to make sure these two exist. And then we're just again, invoking that function and we're dispatching this action to save it locally. And then we're just updating the folder in the database. Same thing for the workspace. Check if there's workspace ID, upload the banner, dispatch the action and update it in the database. So now I'm going to hit update to test the error checking. Awesome. And it's saying banner image is required. Let's go ahead and add a banner. Just going to put this and hit upload. And I think the state was not uploaded. Okay. I think I know what might have happened. So our file banners probably don't have any policies. There we go. So let's just go ahead and just create that. So go in here. It's okay. We're just learning guys. It's fine. You can do the policies and all that stuff later. It's super repetitive stuff and you can use chat GPT allow all access for now. We're just going to do it like this. Let me see what I have for. Yeah, this is okay. Let me wait, let me check something. All right. So let me go to this. What do we have for workspace logos? Bucket ID. Okay, this is fine. So it says something like this and we have authenticated. What about the avatars? Okay, so let's go in here. New hit this select everything. Uh, bucket ID avatars text. We can set this to file banners. So I'm just going to put this down here. Set this like this and just remove like that and just say allow all access. Guys, you have to do the policies because if you don't do that, everyone can change everyone's banner and everyone can access every workspace and all that kind of stuff. All right. That's okay. I have everything in detail in the, um, in the discord. I'll help you guys set all that up. Even if you don't know how to, uh, but I'll give you a quick overview at the end of the video, how to do it. Let's hit review and just hit save policy. So I think we're good to go. <laughs> Let's go ahead and refresh this Add a banner again, upload, let it take a minute. There we go, guys. Awesome stuff. So if I refresh, okay, it's not loading. What the hell just happened? Did it upload in the database? Let's take a look. Okay. We have the banner URL. It says banner and it has an ID in here. Go look at the file banners. Okay. I have it in here. Okay. We have a bunch of folders. Of course, all of these are deleted. That's why they're in here. And we also have the, okay, here you go. You see this, our state does not have our workspace banner URL because it's first showing the data and then it's not there later. So, all right, guys, I think the issue is right here. The banner URL has to come in from here, right? Something that we're missing. So banner URL is going to be workspaces dot banner URL like this. Okay. And you need to provide this for, um, the, okay. So yeah. So just to give you more context, it's happening in the private workspaces, uh, the select cause we missed that. And for the get collaborating workspaces, get shared workspaces just like this. And now you're going to see it. All right. So it's just a very stupid mistake. We missed that. And that's the reason why we don't see it guys. So let's go back to um, our components. And after this banner upload, we're going to have a remove banner upload right here. Okay. Details dot banner URL. If this exists, I'm just going to return a button button like this, return this. And we're just going to say, remove banner like that. Okay. We just need to change the styling. I think. Yep. So let's first set the variant to be ghost and then we'll give it some class name gap dash two hover BG background flex items center justify center margin of two text dash small and text dash muted dash foreground width is going to be 36 pixels or I'm sorry, 36, not pixels. And then padding of two and then rounded is going to be medium. This we're actually going to use a span in here. Let's put it inside this and give this a class name of white space, no wrap and font is going to be normal. So yeah, we have an ad banner now because we don't have a banner, but if we go back to the test, 
we have the remove banner right here. So I can literally click on this button and it's going to remove it. But of course, we haven't set that up right now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So inside this, we have to pass in an on click, which is going to be equal to delete banner. Let's copy this. Let's go up top and we want to say const equal to async function. So before this, we also need a state to show that we're loading something. So we can just say const deleting banner and set deleting banner equal to use state invoke this and say false. And let's go to our banner all the way at the bottom. I want you to take this up as a challenge. Okay, try to write this logic for how we're going to delete it for a file, a folder and a workspace. Pause the video. Go give it a shot. If you don't know, come right back and I'm going to give you the answer and show you exactly how to do it. Awesome. Hopefully you got it right. If not, this is exactly how to do it. So first we're going to set the deleting banner to true. Then we're going to check the directory type if it's a file or a folder or a workspace. And we're going to do a bunch of stuff. The first thing we need to make sure these are available before we send the API request So do that here. Dispatch an action to update the file locally. So we change the file banner URL to an empty string. And then we want to pass in these. And then here we want to say superbase.storage dot from file banners dot remove this banner, but with an ID. Okay. Remove actually takes an array. So don't forget to pass in an array. If you had this as an issue, um, this is a solution. And await update the file with the new banner URL and a new file. Same thing for the folder. There's literally nothing different. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing and the exact same thing for the workspace as well. We're gonna check. If it's a workspace, we're going to dispatch this action, reset our banner URL, um, change the workspace ID. I'm sorry, pass in the workspace ID as a fi file ID, and then await superbase.storage.from file banners remove this file, and then update the workspace with the new banner ID. Finally, set deleting banner to false. So let's go back down all the way to this button here where we say remove banner, and we're going to set the disabled. A prop to deleting banner. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. We delete it. It's gone. If you refresh it, it's not going to be there anymore. Let's go ahead and upload a new banner. There you see the error just kind of prevented us from making that mistake by uploading without it. So if we go ahead and hit upload banner, um, let's see it upload in real time. Boom. There you go. Banner is right there. Remove. Boom, it's gone. It's really fun to do that. Okay, I can do that all night after this span, guys. So now uh, what we're going to do um, after this is we're going to just put like an icon here. So I'm going to use the X circle icon from Lucid React and I'm going to set its size to 16. Let's go ahead and invoke that. Awesome. So it, it kind of just looks like this. Okay. And you can, of course, put this above if you'd like. I think that looks better, right? Yeah, that looks much better. Cool. And the next thing, guys, we also need to show the title of the page because now it's just showing you know, the page itself. So we need to show if it's a title and we also might want to know if it is the folder or a file on this page as well. So go down to this div after this part, after this one, you want to create a span like this and give it the following class names. Okay. We're going to say text dash muted dash foreground text dash three XL font dash bold. We're going to say height of nine. Okay. And this is going to be the details dot title. Awesome. And now you can refresh that. There you go. You see it right there. Looks great. And, um, after the title, after this span right here, create another span. And this one is going to be the directory type. So we're going to say class name text dash muted dash foreground text dash SM. And inside this, you're basically going to say directory type dot to uppercase. Okay. And just invoke that. And now you can see it just says workspace. So it gives us more information. So if I go to a folder, it's going to tell me, you know, entitled and I don't have a banner, whatever. It's going to give me the add banner option. And it's also going to tell me it's a folder. Folder. And again, if I go into the file, it's going to do the same exact thing. It's going to show me it's a file. So I'm going to go back to my workspace homepage and um, we're going to start building this. So now I think we're pretty much done, guys. We have all the design set up. We just need to put in some logic now to kind of get everything uh, you know, up and going. So let's move on to that part.
Also, guys, I want to quickly point out something. So if you did get this error, then this is going to make sense. If not, no problem. You probably you may not get this error. OK, but if you did, um, you would have an error in this quill. It won't be able to import it. What you need for that is you need to import the types. OK, so you'll get an error. Hover over that and it will tell you to import the types. I don't know if you remember we did it for one of the other uh, libraries as well. It's the same thing. OK, so go ahead, copy that command and you would need to go in here and do NPM. I and you have to paste that or whatever it will give it to you okay it will literally give you the whole command to type so just wanted to point that error out if you had it um that's the way to solve it okay all right guys to make real-time uh, communication between our clients we need to use some sort of socket right because it's very uh, inefficient to always access the database you know we, we need to have some way to broadcast changes to all the clients um, in our application so to make that happen we are going to use socket.io package okay so so go ahead, close your terminal like this and say socket um, dot IO NPM I socket dot IO just like this and go ahead and hit enter. OK, so that's going to install that package. And we also need NPM I socket dot IO dash client uh, just like this. So go ahead and install these two packages. And these are the packages that we're going to use to make real time data uh, for these text on changes. Great. So our first step is basically to create this socket. OK, and um, we know that we're going to need the socket in this component. But in the future, we might need this socket in other components as well. So when you need to share something, you can probably create a provider, right? That's what we did for the other parts of our application. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. So go into your providers and create a socket dash uh, provider dot TSX like this. And you actually you don't need to do RAFCE. And we're going to um, just do the following. So first set this to a use client component because it's a provider first create a type called socket context type and this is going to be equal to an object and we're going to set this to socket which can be any and or null and then we also might need the is connected so I'm going to put that in here and this is going to be a boolean just like this and now let's create our context guys so socket context equal to create context which comes from react not vm OK, and we got to pass in our so socket context type right in here like this. And let's go ahead and uh, extract these in here. So socket is going to be and we're just setting default values. OK, um, and then is connected is also going to be false like this. So export const use socket equal to a function. And this function is going to return use context from React. We're going to pass in our socket context. Awesome. So now we can use this anywhere in our application and we get access to those variables states. Sorry, not variables. And then let's say export const socket provider. And this is the provider that we are going to wrap our components in and pass children down into. OK, so we're going to say uh, children and this is going to be an object children set to react dot react node and inside here. OK, we're just going to say const socket and set socket is equal to use state like this and set this to null. And after this, we also need the is connected, right? Is connected set connected like this is equal to use state. And we're going to set this to false. Awesome. It's actually very simple. Nothing crazy here. We're just setting these states based on an API uh, request. OK, so right now, um, since we're using socket.io, we cannot use the API folder. OK, so what you're going to do is um, you're going to create a path. That path is going to come from the pages directory. So let's go into your root folder, shrink everything. So into your source, go ahead and create a folder here. So create a folder and we're going to call this pages inside that you want to create um, your API, um, which is a folder again, not a file. So API folder inside that we will just create socket folder and inside that create a file called IO dot TypeScript. This is the way to set up um, socket dot IO on a Next.js application that's using the app router inside this IO file. We're basically going to uh, create the connection, listen to changes and all that kind of stuff. First thing we're going to do is export const config is equal to an object and it has to have API like this. And this is an object. Again, we have to set the body parser um, to false. 
we also need to create our IO handler. So I'm just going to say const IO handler equal to an arrow function. And this is going to get the request and the response. And the types for this is next API request. And this one can be um, next API response. Um, but we're, we're going to need the server IO response. OK, so we can go ahead and create this um, server IO response in just a second. So um, let's go to our types, which I I think is inside libs types right in here and we're going to create it right in here so we're going to say export type api response server io it's equal to the next api response and we're going to extend this uh, and we're going to say socket is going to be socket like this which comes from this one okay socket from net and um, we're also going to need a couple things here. So I'm just going to import this. So first, let's rename this too. So we want it to be net server. And then we'll also sorry, not this one, the socket, right? The socket's going to be like this. Let's rename the server. So we're also going to need a couple other imports. I'm just going to go up here and I'm also going to import the server, but this one as net server like this. OK, because we're going to need it in here. And this is going to extend uh, with something else. So server is going to be the net server that we just created, but we want to expand that as well, extend that as well. And we're going to say IO is going to be socket IO server. So this comes from socket IO. So I'm just going to say import um, server again, but this is going to be as socket IO server from socket IO. OK, not the client, the socket IO. And now we can go down here and we can say this is going to be equal to socket IO server. If we go back to our file, we just need to import that. So let's say next API response server IO, just like this. And what we're going to do in here is if there's no re uh, response dot socket dot server dot IO, only then we're going to do the following. OK, so first let's create the path. So we're going to say path equal to slash API slash socket slash IO. And then we need to say const HTTP server equal to net. So this is going to be of type net server. Uh, and this net server actually comes from HTTP. So let me find that we actually have to create it. So OK, it's called server from net server. So I'll get server from HTTP like this. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to actually rename this to net server. And now I can use this net server in here and I can set this equal to response dot socket dot server as any. OK. And um, I also want to just quickly check something, guys. So let's go back to our types files right here. And I want to make sure that this net server is not from HTTP. So we have server from net. OK, this looks good. I think this should. Anyways, let's just see. Let's just see what happens. OK, if it doesn't work, then I'll, I'll figure it out. OK, and in here we want to basically say const IO equal to new server IO, uh, which we're going to import. So server IO again is going to come from socket IO. So we're going to say import a uh, server as server IO from socket IO like this and come in here and we're going to invoke the server IO uh, right down here and we need to pass in the HTTP server and some an object with the path. OK, so the path in here. So slash add trailing slash and this is going to be set to false. And after this, so after this part, you want to say IO dot on. So this is where we're putting all our listeners and the connections and things like that. OK, so this one first one is going to be the connection. OK, so we need to do this for connection and pass in a callback function. And this gives us um, the socket in here. So we're going to say socket dot on again. So th this is where we're going to listen to a bunch of uh, different things. So first one we're going to have is create room and we'll pass in this again. And we're going to get the file ID when we send it from our client. And what we're going to do is we're going to say s dot join and we're going to say file ID uh, when they create the room and we're just going to join the user in there. S dot on. We're going to say send changes. So this is the next one. Um, and when we get this, we're going to do the following. So for this one, guys, we're actually going to get the deltas, which means the uh, the data and then the file ID. And then we can go ahead and say S dot two the file ID. So this um, this file ID, OK, because we already created the room for it. So S dot two file ID dot emit and we need to pass in receive changes. OK, so we're going to receive this one, this event on the server, but then we're going to send another event back to the client so that they can listen to it and then also get access to the deltas 
and the file ID. And then finally, we need one more. So s dot on this is send cursor, we're going to get to this, one. I'm just going to create it right now, because we're already at it. So cursor dash move, okay, and this comes from quills, a uh, selection uh, on change, but uh, you don't have to worry about it right now, because it's not the most important thing. So we're just going to put range file ID, uh, and the cursor ID. And same thing here, we're going to say s dot to file ID dot emit and we're going to emit receive cursor move and we need to pass in the data so that they can access it in there so that is the range the file id and the cursor id this range guys is basically a part of deltas okay it's just the updated different format for deltas so after this right here we're going to say res dot socket dot server dot io equal to io like this and at after this we're going to say res dot end awesome and of course we need to export our io handler so export default io handler this is what we need to do now we can head back into our socket provider which is in here socket provider and now we can just continue with what we were doing after this, we need to say use effect. So we're going to create a use effect here, set this to an empty dependency for now. And uh, what this is going to have is const socket instance equal to new. Um, and we're going to import client IO. So this is basically IO, but it comes from the different package. Go down here and say import IO as client IO from socket IO client. Go down here and we're going to say client IO as any and uh, we're going to go ahead and imp, um, invoke this to and we need to say process dot environment dot next so i'm just going to go to my environment file and copy this because i don't want any issues here we need this uh, url okay so if you haven't put this in here it's basically localhost which is the you know this one right now and it'll be updated when we're deploying that's that's it okay so close this come in here and next public site url and we're just going to put this um, right here and then we're going to uh, pass in some other options so for this one we're going to say that the path is going to be slash api slash socket slash io okay and then add trailing slash is going to be false okay just like this i I hope this is add trailing slash. Yep. Yeah, okay. This is correct. And after this, so we have this bracket here. So after this, we're going to say socket instance, because we created the socket instance here and we're going to get the connection. Okay. So we're going to say on connect, then we're going to pass in a callback function like this. So on connect, we're going to say set is connected true uh, to true. Okay, just like this. What about the disconnect? So let's go ahead and do that too. So socket instance dot on a disconnect, we're going to basically pass in a callback function in here. And this one is going to just set is connected to false. Okay, very simple. So if you ever need this, you can just use it from here. Okay, you don't have to do anything crazy and create new socket instances in every application. And then we're just going to do a quick cleanup in here too. So we'll just say socket instance dot disconnect. Okay, and you want to go ahead and invoke that. Awesome. And now let's make sure to return our socket provider. So let's say socket context dot provider and in here pass in our children. We need to also pass in the value and the value is just going to be an object with the socket and is connected just like this. Awesome. Great job. Now we can use the socket in our application. OK, so let's go back to Quill. So shrink this source. Um, components quill editor quill like this and now we can use this here so let's go all the way to the top hooks and we're just going to say const socket equal use socket and just import it and now you also need to go to your app folder so go to app main or you can just go into this layout actually yeah you don't need to go into main sorry about that and in here we're going to wrap our entire component in that in that socket provider so go in here and just say socket provider and pass in the children just like this and also the toaster. So I'm going to go here and just pass in the toaster like this. Now quit this and go back to our component. OK, cool. So now I just want to point out something that's happening here. So basically this right here, these details is going to swap between what we have locally and what we have from the server, correct? But initially, it's going to set the data to what we have from the server. Now, if we made a change to our um, to our server because of the router cache, it's still going to have the same data because the directory in the, the directory that we have locally. So we have saved some data in our state, right? That state is still going to be the old data. So I want you to think now, what are we supposed to do to update this data so that it can 
use the new local state. It's very simple. We need to simply create an on change handler for our quill editor. And that on change handler is basically going to um, update our local state. And it's also going to send all the events to the other clients and things like that so that they can receive everything. So we're going to separate the logic first and we're going to first do it uh, for updating the thing. Okay, so we're going to refetch the data on every cache. So we're just going to refresh it on every um, change. I'm sorry, on every time we load this component, we're going to refresh the data with a new API request. And the reason is because if some user made a change if some some other user made a change we need to update the data that we have so we need to make that api request in here that's what we need to do and a quick note here the reason why we cannot use so eventually we'll be building our, our use real-time hook okay to set up all the workspaces the folders uh, the folders the, the files and things like that okay so the reason why we're not going to use that is because if another user made a change and we're using socket.io to broadcast those changes, we're going to end up broadcasting changes and we're also going to end up receiving changes from the database. It's going to kind of conflict in a way, right? So that's why we're not doing that exactly. And um, here, uh, that's why we're going to basically use a use effect hook to make this happen. I just want to give you guys a quick overview so you actually know what you're writing and um, that way it makes more sense. Okay. So I like to put my use effects hook, use, I like to put my use effect hooks all the way at the bottom. So it's just easier to read. So go ahead and say use effect, invoke this, pass in a callback function, actually an empty dependency for now. And um, what we're going to say in here is let selected, selected directory. And you see the pattern we're using this stuff again so you definitely want to put it somewhere else but uh, I want to quickly look at something guys to make sure that I did the socket provider correctly um, let me go in here real quick and our socket provider is inside our providers socket provider okay so there we go I realized we made an error here I was wondering because we never set the socket how are we gonna get it so after this guys right here we need to set the socket to our socket instance okay and let me make sure okay yeah, the dependency is empty all right perfect now we can just go back sorry about that I just wanted to make sure so I'm glad we actually caught that right there so let's go back to our component so we're going to do selected directory and we're going to first check if directory type is equal to type of file okay go ahead and do everything with me guys just do it with me right now all right and um, we're also going to create actually let's create a fetch information um, function like this that's going to do this for us so that way it's just easier and let's put it like this okay and this if all right awesome and this is going to be an async function and we can put all this in here so this is where we're fetching the information so we're going to say const um, data and error and let's actually rename this to file um, yeah we can just say selected directory error something like this is equal to await get file details and we need to pass in the file id and we need to make sure that file id actually exists before we get the file details so i'm going to say file id file id so i'm going to say if there's no file id just return and file id we need this in here okay turn and then here we need to check if there is any error or the selected directory um, or we can just say if there's no selected directory then we want to actually push the user to the to the dashboard page so let's go all the way up top and let's use that hook so it's called um, router so router equal use router from next navigation and let's go back down here and let's uh, basically say router so return router dot replace okay we don't want the user to come back to this page slash dashboard because it turns out there's no file that exists like this so we need to send them back also we need to check if there's no selected new no selected directory at zero then we need to do router dot replace and send them back to slash dashboard slash um, this is going to be a dynamic string actually so slash dollar sign we're going to say workspace id okay so since we need the workspace id in here let's pass in the workspace id in here and inside this we want to make sure that the workspace id exists okay so we can do it right after this right here so if if no workspace id then just return okay because something's happening weird in here so that's what we want to do and we're going to go ahead and send that and finally we can just return here and after this so after this if statement that we have right here go ahead and check if there's no workspace id um or uh, quill is equal to null so if we don't have quill in here then we you know it's not going to make any sense so we're just going to return like this okay and if there is nothing in our selected directory as well so selected directory at zero dot data 
like this. So we don't have any data, then we also want to return. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, that, that way we're not, we don't want to route the user back. We want to still keep them on the page, but we don't want to do anything. Right. And, but if there is some data, we need to set the contents of quill. So we're going to say contents, um, JSON dot parse, and let's pass in our selected directory at zero dot data, just like this, or we're just going to pass an empty string. So we don't get any error here. Okay. Awesome. Cool. And after this right down here, we're going to dispatch an action and this action is called update. Sorry. The type is basically update and we're doing files right now, right? Yep. So file with the payload set to the file, it needs full of uh, file ID and it needs a couple other thing workspace ID. So the file is basically going to be an object with the data set to um, the selected directory. So let's just do this. Why, why not? Yeah, let's just do this. So we're just going to say selected directory at zero. Okay. This is basically all of this. So um, it's just going to pass in that data. So that should be fine. Okay. And then let's look at the file ID is going to be the file ID that we need. The folder ID is going to be this folder ID, but it cannot be null. So let's go ahead and say folder ID. If you remember, we already attached the folder ID to this file. So we can just use it right here. So we can say selected directory at zero dot folder ID like that. And this is saying string or null is not assignable. Okay, so it's because of this. So if I remove this, okay, for some reason, our data type is set to null here. Um, okay, so the way to fix this is to go all the way back into your schema file inside libs, we have our super base schema, let's go into files, which is right here. And we have the folder ID right here, which is a UUID dot references, this has to be not null, it cannot be null, how can it be null, right. And then let's copy this. And we want to do the same for the workspace ID, just like this, not null. And let's go up top here. Same thing for our folders, we have the workspace ID, let's put not null there. So go ahead and just do npm run generate. Okay, and then do npm run dev, we already need this, I'm just going to refresh this and say dev and let's refresh that. So hopefully you can migrate those new changes that we have. Okay, looking good so far. Okay, we're having some socket IO issues. Oops, we made an error in our client component. Let's go back to our provider socket provider and say client like this. Okay, all right, boom, there we go. Nice. Everything is updated. Um, I also want to go to our database and make sure so I'm just going to refresh this. Go to table editor, we need to go to file. Actually, we don't even have to do that. What we could do is we could just do npm run pull if you'd like. So npm run pull and we need to update that. So don't forget to so go into our schema, go to subscriptions right here, copy your subscriptions, go to your migrations schema, and you're going to have that error here. So I'm going to go to that error. And I'm just going to re like replace our subscriptions with the new stuff. All right. Awesome. And then let me check in here. Super base types. Of course, guys, you can go ahead and download the types as well. So that way you have updated types. So actually, let's do it right here. Why not? API scroll down, click on generate download types, and then it's going to open a file. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that file up, copy everything in here, close this file, go into your types and replace everything that's till this JSON right here. Okay, close this. And um, that should fix that error. So we can go back in here. And now you can see all right, boom, there you go. That's fixed. All right, guys, so the error you were facing here is because of some values that could be undefined and all that kind of stuff. So what I did was we I just realized we don't even need this details here, right? So I'm going to remove it. So go ahead and remove the details from this component. And inside your banner upload form the, the details were also in here. So I went ahead and removed that and removed it from our uh, props as well. Okay, so we're not going to have any errors anymore. So let's go back here, close this and that should fix it. So remove that. Boom, there we go. All right, all good. <laughs> all good to go. Okay. So let's go back to what we were doing, which was right up top. Hi guys, so I'm also going to change this just to the data because I don't want um, anything else to change because everything else is real time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the data 
to be equal to this one dot data. Okay, I don't want to res reset every single thing because our payload is going to need some other data, right? So let's just do this here and this should be good. You can also pass in the whole thing if you want to, but I just want to make sure we're changing the things only, only changing the things that we need to, right? Awesome. So after this, we have the workspace ID, we have the folder ID, which is the folder ID from that from that uh, selected directory. And let me go down here real quick. So after this, um, after this green bracket right here, we're going to now do it for the folder. So if directory type is equal to type of folder, then we're going to do something in here. Okay. So um, what we're going to say is const data, and then we'll say selected directory and then error and then we're going to set this equal to await get folder details and we need to pass in the file id just like this okay and um let's just update that awesome cool and then after that we want to check if there's an error or there is nothing in selected directory okay if so then we don't want to replace i mean we don't want to return we want to actually return the router dot replace um right here and we want to set this to the dashboard like this so dashboard just like that okay awesome and then after that if nothing is in the selected directory at zero because this is the an array here it's the same thing guys okay you can just copy paste and change the api request as well i'm just i just want to type so you guys can also learn um and see what's happening so if there's nothing in here we're going to send them back to the dash board slash dollar sign and you want to say workspace id just like this awesome Okay, and it's literally the same thing. So I'm going to copy that um, the rest of the things and I'm just going to paste it in here. You can go ahead and copy and paste to no problem. Okay, copy it from here, paste it in here. And our action is the only thing that's going to change. So we're going to dispatch a new action in here with the type set to um, update folder. Okay, and the payload is going to be something else. So the payload is going to have the folder. And then what else? The folder ID, right? So we'll get the folder ID and the workspace ID like this. So the folder ID is going to be the file ID. So the file ID from the uh, from the, our props. The folder itself is going to have data set to our selected directory um, at zero dot data like this. Okay. And then the workspace ID is basically going to be, you can just pass in workspace ID and you can do a check here. Or since we already attached it to the folder itself, we can just say selected directory at zero dot workspace ID like this. Okay, awesome. And then after this dispatch right here, we're going to do it for the workspace as well. So take it up as a challenge and build the um, the workspace condition. So we did folder, we did file, go ahead and do it for the workspace. Pause the video and come back. Awesome. Well, hopefully you got it right, but this is what you have to do if you made any mistake or whatever. So um, you want to check in here, right, to make sure there's no error. So I'm going to put that in here because I actually didn't do that. So we'll say if there is an error, okay, like this, um, we're just going to return here. We're not going to do anything crazy here. So if there's an error or there's no selected directory, we're going to return because this is the only thing we need to do here because there's no workspace, okay? And um, or you can actually you can just send them to the dashboard page. This is fine. Yeah. If there's an error, send them to the dashboard page and the dashboard will tell what to do from there, whether to create a new workspace or to send them to one that exists. OK. And then if there's no uh, selected directory, quill is equal to null return. If there's no data, you want to return and then we want to set the quill to that to that data. And then we also want to dispatch a new action here called update workspace. We're going to set the workspace to be equal to the whole directory. And you can change this to also say data is going to be workspace. Um, sorry, selected directory at zero dot data like this. OK, just like this. So this looks good. And um, that should work exactly as expected. And of course, you have to fetch this function. So go down here and fetch the function just like this. Okay, awesome. And some things need to be passed into this dependency array, the quill, the workspace ID, file ID, and let's also pass in the directory type because we're going to need this. And I think that's that's all you need. Yep, that's all you need for now. Okay, cool. And let's move on to the next part. 
All right, next we need to create rooms for um, our application. So whenever this page renders, this component renders, we need to create a room. So it's actually really simple. So I'm just going to say use effect like this. And um, this one is going to need our socket, quill, and the file ID. Okay, we need these things in here. And in here, you just want to say if the if the socket is equal to null, right? socket equal to null um, or quill equal to null or um, even the file ID does not exist so you can just say not file ID you can do the same thing for everything that's fine um, then we're just going to return okay if not we're going to do socket dot emit okay and we're going to emit the create room event right here and pass in our file ID awesome so refresh this and boom, that works. Great. And also, let's make sure. So we would have had an error if it's not working, okay? If the emit's not working, we'd have had an error. But it looks like it already created it. But if you want to test it out, you can just say uh, is connected, which comes from our socket right here, right? Socket provider. So is connected. And you can go to the bottom here. And you can just, let's render this out. Is connected. Uh, what does it look like? So if is connected... We'll just return a div like this. If not, we'll return something else. Um, or you can just, yep, yeah, or you can just say string connected or not connected. Let's refresh. Not connected, connected. Boom. So our socket.io is working. So we're good to go. Okay, awesome. Now let's move on to the next one. All right, so this use effect is to send the quill changes okay to all clients so we're going to broadcast something in here so this is where we're going to use our socket .io, our socket client okay so we're going to say use effect like this and um, we'll come back to the dependencies in a second because i don't know what we need and if the quill is equal to null so we're just going to do a quick null check to make sure everything is good um, in here so i'm removing this and i'm just going to say return if quill is equal to null or we also need the socket so socket is equal to null or the there's no file id or there's no directory type um actually we're always going to have directory type so we don't even need to check this um, and we're going to say if there's no user okay so we need a user here and we're going to get the user from our superbase um, user if there's no user or there's no uh, cursors and this is something that's work in progress so we'll get to this in a second okay so let's go up top right here and let's say const users user equal to um use superbase user awesome so now we have our user so let's go to the bottom where's our use effect right in here there's no user so pass in those dependencies so right now we need all of this so i'm going to say quill socket file id um what else do we need the user we need um details as well because oh yeah we might we might use the details in here right of course so we're going to say details and i think that's all we need actually and we'll come back to the cursors um in the second okay so if this is the case just go ahead and return that's what we're doing right here we're just returning and after that um, we want to say const selection uh change handler okay and this one is going to be for the cursor so let's go in here and we're going to create a work in progress flag cursors update okay like this okay and then we need to create the quill handler so const const quill handler and this quill handler is basically a function as well and this one is for the changes to address all the changes okay so we can do this I'm just going to actually we can just keep that there. No problem. So what our quill handler is going to get is the cursor, the cursor. I sorry, not the cursor. It's going to get the delta, which is going to be any for now and the old delta, which is also going to be any and the source. OK, source any. But this these two things we're not using. I just wanted to show you that you can also get the old delta in here if you want to do something with it. OK. The source is something that we will use though okay so um this you can also set this to an underscore but i just wanted to show you that this is what this does okay so if the source is not equal to the user then we want to return 
So what we're doing here is if the user did not create this change, we don't want to do anything. Okay. But if they did, then we're going to save this in the database because that's an active user change. So to save something, if you guys remember, we did debouncing somewhere, right? So we're going to go up top and we're going to create our save timer ref. Okay. So just say const save timer ref equal to use ref. And this is going to have a return type set to type of set timeout. Go all the way back to the bottom. And in here, we're basically going to use this to save. Okay. So we're going to check here if the save timer ref dot current exists. If it does, clear the timeout. Okay. Save timer ref dot current. So go ahead and clear it. And then we're going to say set saving, um, which is we just created that. So set saving to true. Okay. So now when we're making a change, um, first we're going to do this and then we're going to set saving to true just like this. Okay. So then after this, you want to say const contents equal to quill dot get contents. So let's get everything from here. So quill dot get contents like this. And then we want to also get the length of our, uh, of the quill. So we're just going to say quill dot uh, quill length is equal to quill dot get um, L E N G T H. So get length like this. Sorry, not this. Yep. Uh, we need to get the length. And then we're going to say save timer ref dot current is going to be equal to set timeout. Invoke this, pass in um, this. And we're going to actually set this to about 850 uh, milliseconds like this. And in here, we're going to say const update state. This needs to be an async function also because we're going to save, right? So we're going to say update state equal to um, a function, a callback function, just a function like this, sorry. This is going to have a dispatch. So we're going to invoke dispatch and we're going to say type is going to be update. Okay, so depending on update folder, file or whatever, you would have to pass it in here. So what we're going to do is uh, let me just think real quick. Let me see what's the best way. Okay. So instead of just creating this here, I'm just going to do it inside this function itself. Okay. So we're going to say if contents and quill length, quill length is not equal to one. And we also want to make sure our file ID exists. Then we're going to do the following. So um, we actually don't even have to check, but um, Okay, it's fine. We'll just check in here. Okay, we're going to say if the directory type is equal to workspace, then we need to do something. If not, we'll do folder and file like this. Okay, so for folder first, we're going to dispatch something. So we're being optimistic here. And we're going to say update though. Sorry for workspace update workspace payload is going to be set to an object with the following stuff in here. So we're going to have the workspace, which is going to be an object with with the data. So so let me just think, what are we going to pass in here? Um, so yeah, we have to set this data to json.stringify and we have to pass in the contents just like this. And the workspace ID here um, needs to be the file ID. So just like this. So workspace ID is going to be the file ID like this. So once we've done this, now we can go ahead and say update workspace and we need to pass in the um, updated data. So data is going to be set to json.stringify.contents contents like this. And this is also going to need the file ID. Same thing for this guys, go ahead, take it up as a challenge. It's super easy and go ahead and do it for the folder and the file. Okay. All right, guys. Awesome. Hopefully you got it right. If not, I'm just going to show you exactly how to do it. Okay. So for the folder, we need this workspace ID. So I'm just going to pass it in here and make sure you also update the dependency array like this with the workspace ID. And then we're going to return if it doesn't exist. If it does, we're going to dispatch this pass in the workspace ID, the folder and the folder ID, which is the file ID. And then we're just going to update the folder in the database with data set to this value right here, right here. We're going to say workspace ID does not exist or folder ID does not exist. Go ahead and just dispatch this action. Um, I mean, return. And then if not dispatch this action and pass in these values. And then finally, we're going to await um, and update the file uh, in the database. Okay. Awesome guys. And after all of this right here, we need to go ahead and set our saving to false like this. Okay. Set saving to false. Don't forget about this. And after this part where we have this, we created our set timeout. We want to say socket dot emit 
and we need to pass in send dash changes and pass in the delta that we get. So delta and the file ID like this. Okay, let's make sure this is inside this function. Um, okay, I think it is. And after this, we also need to listen to the cool changes. Okay, so quill actually gives us um, some events we can listen to. The first one is text change in here, and we're going to pass in our quill handler. So this is the quill change handler, basically. And then finally, we have another work in progress flag here, which is for the cursors. And this is going to use the select Selection handler. Okay. And then let's go ahead and return. Uh, so let's do some cleanup here. And we're just going to say quill dot off. Um, and this is text dash change and pass in our quill handler just like this. And also another work in progress cursors like this. And we need to remove this um, in here. Okay, I just want to keep it there. And then finally, we can also check if our save timer ref exists. Um, we'll check if this does well. It's a clear timeout um, right here. So let's say save timer ref dot current and just clear that timer if it doesn't um, exist in there. Great job, guys. So now we are having all the data uh, kind of synced up. And if we make a change, it's going to go to all data. But you see here it says so if I make a change here, right, you see it keeps saying saving because it sent the data just like this. You see that. But if I stop, boom, it saved the data. OK, so that's all I wanted to show. Awesome. Great job, guys. So um, let's move on to the next section now. All right, guys, I think you guys already noticed this happening. But basically, if you make a change here, header test like this, you will notice if this is a workspace, there is going to be a weird refresh. The reason is because of the revalidate path for a workspace. If you're on a workspace, every time we are updating the workspace, we're revalidating it. OK, and because of that, it is refreshing the page. Go ahead and remove that. And the reason why we can remove it confidently is because here we're no longer pulling in data every single time because we're also switching to local data. So there's no need for us to revalidate the path. And now if you go ahead and do it, you're not going to see that flicker on the page. And now let's quickly test um, our states here, too. So we have this untitled here. If I change this, guys, everything should change in real time. All right, guys, so I was trying to test this and I realized something thing in here inside our settings page, we haven't actually completed it. I just checked the work in progress tags here and I realized we need to get the collaborators. Okay, this is the settings form page, create a use effect and we need the workspace ID. Check if there's no workspace ID and if not, we're just going to return and then we're going to say fetch collaborators like this equal to an async function and we're going to say const response equal to await get collaborators and we need to pass in the workspace ID. So we don't have this. So let's go into our queries, which is inside Superbase queries. And we're just going to say um, export const get collaborators is equal to an async function in here. We need the workspace ID, which is going to be of type string. So workspace ID string just like this. And in here, we're going to first um, just say const response equal to await db dot select from the collaborators table where equal to collaborators dot id i'm sorry collaborators dot workspace id is equal to the workspace id we just passed in if response dot length exists if not we're going to return an empty array um, if everything looks good we're going to say const user information is equal to promise this is going to be a promise and this is going to be a user or undefined go ahead and set this equal to so remove this put this and then say equal to response dot map async like this and this is going to be user for each of this user we're going to check if they exist exists equal await db dot query dot uh, users dot find first where this is going to be a callback function like this this is going to give us the user and also equal to user.id and the user.userid and in here we're going to return exists like this uh, let me see what seems to be the issue in here oh sorry guys this has to be an array below this return we're going to say const resolved users equal to await promise dot all pass in the user information and then let's return resolved users dot filter boolean as user array. Let's go back to our settings forms and let's 
get this data right in here. And now we can do something with this. After this, we want to check if the response dot length is true. This is not a function. Sorry, it's not a method to so set the permissions to shared because this means there are some people in here and then set collaborators to our response that we get from there. And again, let's just turn this back on so we can fetch our collaborators. So after this, um, scroll to the bottom guys, where you have this select here, and this is not default value. This is value here. So now it's going to sync up. And now if, let's go ahead and refresh this. And I'm just going to go into a shared workspace. I think this person also has access to that. And if I click on settings, there you go. Now I can see it's set to shared. When you change it to private, basically, we need to remove all these users, right? We can't we can't have them in there. Let's go back to our code. So after this alert here, guys, we're going to use an alert dialog to basically let the user know you're going to change a share to a private workspace. So I'm just going to go to Shad CN and I'm going to install this alert dialog, which is right here. So now we can also import all these dialog things. So I'm just copying this right here. And I'm just going to paste it right here. So we have the alert dialog. It's going to be set to a state and this state is called open alert message, which we already have set. And in here we need to have the alert uh, dialog content and we need to have the alert dialog header inside this. We can have the alert title. So are you sure we can just put are you sure in here say alert description and in here I'm just going to copy paste this stuff. Okay. So paste this in here, changing a shared workspace to private will remove all collaborators permanently because you're changing it, right? So put the alert footer in here and then this is going to have an alert dialog cancel So the on click. It's going to just have a callback function. And this one is just going to set open alert message to false. And inside this, we're just going to say cancel after this one. You want to have an, a dialog action. So this is the one where they really want to delete. Okay. We're going to have an on click and we're going to set this to on click alert uh, confirm say continue and let's go ahead and build out this function so right up here const on click confirm and set this to a function and this function is going to be async function and what it's going to do is if there is no workspace id then we're going to return if not, we want to check if collaborators dot length is greater than zero. So we want to make sure we even have some collaborators, right? And then we're going to say remove collaborators, invoke this and pass in all our collaborators. And then we also need our workspace ID because we can only remove it for a workspace ID. And then let's set the permissions to private and then set open alert message to false. Let's go to our on select change. OK, so right here, we're actually changing the value directly. That's not what we're supposed to do. We need to pass in a function and we're going to call this function um, on permissions change. And let's go up and create this function to const. This is equal to a function just like this. And in here is where we're going to do that stuff. OK, so we're going to check if value is equal to private then we're going to do something. And this value comes in from that on change handler, guys. OK, we're going to set the open alert state to true so we can show them at dialogue. And if not, then we're just going to set um, the permissions right here to the value. So if it's private, we want to do this. And then in here, we're going to do that logic. Click on the settings and it's showing the shared workspaces. If I change this to private, it shows this. I can't click out because it's an alert message. If I cancel, we're good to go. But if I hit private and then hit continue, it goes ahead and it removes everyone from there. So now if I refresh this again and click here, now it's a private workspace. This part is a challenge for you, but don't worry about it. I will give you a good example of how you can set real time sharing to kind of refresh, um, you know, or change some states in our users and the other users too. So avatar details, it looks like here we had one more and I already did this. I showed you how to do it with the help of Superbase storage. So go ahead and give this a shot. It's the exact example. Um, that we did inside banner, right? How we pulled the banner for our workspace. All right, so let's try to share this test workspace with this user, okay? Since it's not real time setup, it's not going to update, we have to refresh. So let's go ahead and change this to shared and let's add this user in here and now it should work, okay? So if we add Joe, okay, so that is not updating. We need to take a look at what's happening, guys. So um, let's look more into this, okay? 
Okay, so I tested this real quick and we need to still make a couple more updates. So right in here, this needs to change to private. And then when we add a collaborator, guys, this was actually collaborators initially, but that's not how it's supposed to be because we're going to end up adding all the collaborators to the list. So we want to just say the profile. We don't actually need this router.refresh, I think. Let's, let's see. Okay, let's just refresh this. Let's open this, change this to shared. Let's add Joe in here. So we say Joe, cool, he's added, boom, it's done. Let me refresh this page again, open settings, and now we see Joe in here. Okay, so if I refresh this, I should see the test and collaboration, okay, right there. So now I have access to this too. If I remove this, if I remove Joe from here, now you see there, there you go. Okay, I don't have access to that workspace anymore. So we already have our um, socket emits here to send the changes, but we have to also receive the changes, right? So that's why if you type something in here, it's going to save, but it's not going to emit it to all our clients. So let's go ahead and say use effect. Let's go ahead and provide these, okay? Because we're going to need this. Uh, which is a socket quill and file id quill is equal to null or socket is equal to null we're going to return and then we're going to say const socket handler is equal to a function this is deltas which we're going to get from our socket so we're going to say delta and this is going to be any and then id which is going to be string and inside this we're going to check if the id is equal to our file id um, then quill dot update contents to the deltas that were passed in. And then we just need to say socket dot on receive changes. And I'm gonna pass this in here, okay? And let's just quickly just return um, a cleanup right here. So we're gonna say socket dot off receive changes. And we wanna pass in the socket handler like this. Now let's see if this works. So let's refresh this, refresh this data as well. And now if we make a change, okay, so it does not seem to be sending the changes, which is upsetting, but um, I'm going to go ahead and debug and then I'll let you guys know. All right guys, so I just did a quick test and turns out that the issue is we put the receive handler inside the socket. So just bring it right outside it, okay? And now if you make a change, there you go. It updates on all, um, all your clients. And if you go into another workspace, let, let's say we go into this folder, okay? Just to make sure that it emits it to the right folder ID, if you make a change in here, it's not going to show up in here, okay? If you go back to the workspace, all the data is, um, you know, it is synced. And if you go into a different page and go back into the workspace, it has the new data. This is why we have to set up that new fetch request, okay? So if you guys remember, I spoke about the modules right here, right? The modules option, which um, allows us to create our own custom modules that we can put in here, right? That's what we're going to do here. We're going to use these modules to basically create cursors. And these cursors allow the user to see what someone else is selecting, where their cursor is, and you know something like Google Docs, for example. So go ahead, open your terminal, quit the terminal like this, and write npm i quill dash cursors like this, and go ahead and hit enter. So right here, we need to say const quill cursors. We need to import this, so we're gonna say await import quill dash cursors like this and uh, we're going to just say dot default and here now we need to register actually right before this right after this we need to register that new module so we're going to say quill dot register and we have to register this new module which is slash sorry which is modules like this slash cursors okay and then go ahead and pass in your quill cursors that we just created right in here awesome and now in here you can say cursors like this is going to be equal to transform on text change and set it to true first thing we need to do is actually create these cursors for each of our users so when we're doing this we need to actually um get um, you know, custom avatars for our user. And we also need to use a real time presence from Superbase to actually show the cursors for each of these users. Okay. And also to show the states of the users right up here. Okay. To show who's collaborating on the document right now, it's just showing one user. So we need to actually show who's collaborating on it. Go to the bottom where we have all our use effects right in here and create another one like this. 
and set this to an empty dependency for now. And then we're going to say if file ID does not exist or quill is equal to null, then we're going to just return like this, return out of this. If not, we're going to create a room. Okay, so we're going to say const room equal to superbase dot channel dot um, actually sorry invoke this and pass in our file ID. So since we need these two things, let's go ahead and say file ID. And uh, we also we might need the quill, right? We're going to need quill in here. And you can also pass in super base because we're going to need that as well. Right below this, we're going to say const subscription, okay, subscription. And this is equal to room dot on invoke it and you want to say presence. And after this, you want to pass in um, event of sync and this takes in a callback function and this basically gives us access to all the all the stuff okay so after this we need to say const new state equal to uh, room dot presence state like this and then we want to say const new collaborators collaborators is equal to object dot values because this returns a very different type of state. Okay, you can console and see what it looks like, but it returns a bunch of stuff. So we're going to say this one dot flat because we only want the values and only the users. And we'll just return this as any because there's nothing in here. Yeah, so we'll just return it as any no problem. And then in here, we need to set our collaborators to the new collaborators just like this. So right now, if we go up to our collaborators, we have one default collaborator right in here. So let's go ahead and remove this default collaborator. And, and let's go to go back to the code. And after setting our new collaborators, we want to check for our user. So I think we are already importing user from um, let me see. Okay, from Superbase. So that's good. Um, let's go back down to the set collaborators. Yep, right here. So if the user exists, all cursors, which is going to be of any is equal to an array. And then we're going to say new collaborators dot for each. Okay, for each of these, we want to basically get the collaborator like this. And for this one, we're going to extract a couple of things from this collaborator. So we're going to get ID. Uh, sorry, we're going to just give types for this, right? ID is going to be string. Email is going to be string. And avatar like this is going to be string as well. Okay. Okay. So I have to put this in. I don't know why I didn't do that. So we're going to do this and then we're going to set that to a function. Okay. So in this function, we're going to say if the collaborator dot ID is not equal to the user dot ID, then we're going to say const user cursor equal to quill dot get module. And we're going to get the cursors like this. And then we're going to say user cursor dot create cursor. So we're going to create a cursor for this user. And we're going to pass in the following stuff. So collaborator dot um, ID. Okay. And because so if you go and look up the documentation, this first requires a, an ID for the, uh, um, the cursor, and then it also needs like some other information. So we're just going to say dot email dot split. This is basically the, um, the name that's going to show up for the cursor if you hover over it. Okay, so we're going to split it at the at symbol. And then we're going to take zero like this. Okay. And then finally, it needs a color. So I'm just going to do something random here. I'm going to say hashtag math dot random dot random. And then this dot to string invoke that. And we're going to pass in 16 in here. And then dot slice. So slice like this. And we're going to get two to eight. So this is just going to create a, a custom string for us guys. Okay. So what seems to be the issue here? String has no signatures. Okay. So we made a small mistake here, put a comma and then hit enter. And after this here, all cursors dot push our new cursor, which is a user's cursor. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're only pushing in our users, uh, not our users uh, cursor, all the other users cursors. Okay. After this guys right here, you want to say set local cursors, which we're going to create in a second cursors like this to all cursors. So let's go up and let's create the state, which is const. So local cursors is equal to use state 
like this. We're going to set this to um, just an empty array and we'll set this to any. OK, there is a type called cursor, but I found that it's just doesn't work right. Something is wrong with it. So that's why I just, you know, never worked with. That. I just said whatever. Subscribe to this room and you want to this basically gives us a function. So we need to get the status here and we need to check if the status is not equal to subscribed. OK or there's no user. So we need these two things. If this is the case, we want to return. If not, we're going to do room dot track and we're going to pass in an object with the ID set to user dot ID with the email set to user dot email dot split. And we're going to split it at the at symbol and we're going to take the first element. And then finally, the avatar URL is going to be user dot avatar URL. And we're not going to have this. I'll tell you why we're not going to have this, because this user is going to be uh, something else. OK, so just give me one second. I'm going to show you guys what you need to do. OK, avatar URL. So what you could do here is you could make an API request to get the user information and then you can pass it in here. OK. So for that, you will need an async function here or another option you could do is you could reset the users, right? The user that we have and you could kind of create um, like a different a combination of two different user data. So this user data and you can pull the URL from somewhere else. OK, so I'm just going to do it in here, actually. So what we're going to do is um, let me see if we have find user that's the that's what we need right so we already have the user id here all i'm going to do is change this to an async function say const response find user okay i don't know if we have this but we should have it somewhere but let me check what we're doing in here oh we just did it right in here okay so let's go ahead and create that okay really really quick so go into libs super base queries and just create something here called export const find user just like this and this is going to be an async function. I'm just going to shrink this so you guys can see more async function. And this is going to need the user ID, which is going to be a string. And this is just going to it will just do it right here. OK, const response equal to await db dot query dot um, users like this dot find first like this. And we need to say where or we can just say user. And then we get equal to here. Here we're going to say equal to the user dot ID is equal to user ID that we passed in. And then we're just going to return response like this. And then we need to say find this user invoke this um, invoke this function and we need to pass in our user um, ID in here. So user dot ID just like this. And then we need to make sure the user exists here too. So we're going to say if no response, we want to return. OK, because we need all this data. And then in here, we want to do this like this. So we'll check if the response dot avatar URL exists. And if it does, then we'll do something. OK, we'll do something here. If not, we'll do something here. So the first thing we want to do is superbase dot storage dot from like this. We want to go into avatars. I think that's what it's called. We can just look in here real quick. Avatars like this dot get public URL. I'm just going to save that. And we're going to say response dot avatar URL dot data dot public URL. So we can kind of sync it up after this. We also want to. Uh, yeah, if nothing exists, we can just return an empty string. That's fine because we have a fallback, right? If you remember, we have that fallback there. So that should work correctly. And now we also need to get this user so um, actually, we don't need to get. The, yeah, we already did it in here. So we already got the user. OK, let me just check to make sure everything looks good. And then here you just want to return um, just a cleanup. So we're just going to return a function, say super base dot remove channel, but not all channel remove channel. And we want to pass in our room. OK, so um, we also need to provide user in here Okay, because we need this user to actually create this. And now if you go in here and refresh this, let's see what happens. Boom. There you go. It shows two people join. If you leave this immediately, it will go ahead and disconnect. So if I join, it will go ahead and add the user. If I leave, it's going to go ahead and remove the user. So if you hover over their name, you can also see the username here, but we didn't we didn't actually put that. So let's go ahead and uh, add that. 
this tooltip content right here. And you want to change that to collaborator.email. If you hover over this person, you can see who that is. And you can also see the other users too. Now we have our users set up. Um, let's continue to work on our cursors because we already also created the cursors that we needed. We have the selection change handler. So I want to quickly just tell you what this does and then we'll jump into it. Okay. So this the selection change from Quill basically fires when they click on on this um, on the canvas, you can say, or the editor, and if they select anything. So when a selection happens, it returns a range from start to finish, and we need to send that range or where they selected to the um, you know um, to all our clients. So that's what the selection handler is. Okay, we have the on change handler. Now we need the selection handler. So this gives us the cursor like this cursor ID, which is a string. So we're going to go in here and we're going to return something. Okay, this is going to be an arrow function like this, and this is going to have the range in here, which is going to be any for now, and the old range, which is going to be any, and of course the source. Okay. S O U R C E, which is um, any again. So this source we need to check to make sure it is from the it is not it is from the user. So we're going to say source equal to user, and we need to make sure the cursor ID exists, not user ID. Cursor ID exists, and if both of these are um, true, then we want to emit that. So socket dot emit the send cursor move. Um, event and then we want to pass in the range the file ID and the cursor ID just like this so if we go to the bottom here uh, we have this quill dot on so we want to say quill dot on and now um, for the selection change event it's called selection change okay like this we need to pass in our selection change handler and we want to pass in the user dot ID because this is what the cursor ID basically is okay so now we can remove this and uh, finally, we also need to uh, quit. We need to, you know, turn this um, off so we can remove that and we can just say selection, selection change handler. Awesome. We also need to listen to the changes. OK, right now we are only emitting the change, but we have to also listen to the change. And we can do that by simply creating another use effect in here with an empty dependency for now. And then we're going to just do the same check, guys, the same type of check here. We're going to check if Quill exists, if not, you know, and uh, we also want to check if the cursors um, have some length. And then we want to say const socket handler equal to um, just function like this. And this will give us the range, OK, which is any and the room ID, which is going to be a string and the cursor ID, which is a string as well. OK, just like this. And inside this, we're going to do a couple things. So first, we want to make sure the room ID is is equal to the file ID. If so, we're just going to say const cursor to move is equal to local cursors dot find. Just say C, which is going to be of type any. We're going to say C dot cursors. And if this exists, we're going to get at zero and dot ID equal to cursor cursor ID like this. OK, so we're just searching for um, that cursor like this. And then after this, so after this part right here, we're going to say if cursor to move. So if this exists, quick heads up in the next video, we will be building the best application on YouTube. Yep, that's right, because the next application is going to be built by you. We are going to be using the comment section to determine what features to have in the next project. So go ahead and comment below what feature do you want to have on your project and we will make it happen. So don't forget to subscribe to get notified when that awesome video comes out. And please drop a like on this video to support your boy so that I can provide more free value just like this. Then we're going to say cursor to move dot move cursor. OK, and we're going to move it. Uh, move the cursor ID, so that specific one, to this range. So we want to say receive cursor move. This is the action, we, uh, this is the event we're listening for. And we have to pass in a socket handler like this. And then here we want to return just a callback function to do a quick um, um, cleanup. Okay, so socket dot off, invoke this, pass in that cursor move, and then pass in our socket handler just like this. Awesome. And we're going to need some dependencies, of course. So first, let's pass in the quill 
socket, the file ID, and you're going to need the local cursors. Okay, don't pass in anything else. It's just going to create unnecessary stuff here. All right, so let's go back to this test workspace. So now if you see, you can add their cursor is actually going to update. So Prodigy's testing, the cursor is actually updating. And if I hover over this, you see it's showing um, Joe as well. So Joe is right here. And if Joe makes a change in here and he says, hey, I'm making a change, you see it's also showing Joe's cursor. OK, and this is my cursor, so I can also edit as well. How awesome is that? It looks super cool, right? So before we move forward, let's also just quickly build out our mobile sidebar. So after this, go ahead and return a new component called mobile sidebar like this. We don't have this yet, but we'll get to this in a second. OK, and you want to go ahead and say sidebar like this because we're going to return the same thing. But the params, um, I mean, the params are going to be set to the same params here. And we need to provide a new class name to give it some better styling. So width is going to be screen inline is going to be a uh, block. And then from SM, it's going to be hidden. OK, we're going to hide it from small devices. And this can just be a closing tag. And since we don't have this, go into to your components and in um, in your sidebar, you can create this component if you want. It actually makes sense to put it in there. So let's say mobile dash sidebar like this dot TSX and say RAFCE and just paste this in here. Now what we're going to do for this component is first, let's go ahead and provide the interface and it's just going to have children. So I'm just going to copy paste this and it's just the children and this is react dot react node. And uh, we're going to have two navigations. OK, so I'm just going to create a const, just a variable here. So const called navigations. And I'm going to set it to these, OK, which is the title sidebar ID sidebar. And this is going to be something like this. And then the title is going to be pages for this ID pages and custom icon is pages. So let's go ahead and import this. This is also in the GitHub repository if you haven't already, but it's basically the icons that we built in here. OK, so let's go ahead and import this. So menu comes from uh, from Lucid React and this side press page icon is what we have from our icons. OK, all we're going to do is just map over this and then we're going to create our state. So quickly, let's say selected nav and set selected nav. And this is going to be a use client component like this. And this is basically just going to hold the state of what has been clicked, what is clicked at the moment. OK, so we're going to set it to an empty string. And this is going to be actually pretty quick. So we're just going to return a react fragment first. And we're going to say selected nav, OK, is equal to sidebar. So if it's equal to sidebar, then we want to return something. So we're going to return the uh, fragment like this. OK, and inside this, we're just going to pass in the children. OK, so only then we're going to pass in the children. If not, we're going to return something else. So here you want to say react dot functional component and pass in the new props that we just created mobile sidebar props like this. Let's get the children from here, too. So it's children and this this will no longer throw this error. OK, cool. And after this, so after this, you want to say nav inside this pass in some class names. OK, so we're going to say BG dash black divided by 10 like this backdrop dash blur and LG. So large from small devices hidden fixed. And then it's going to be Z of 50 bottom zero, right zero, left zero. So create this unordered list. And this unordered list is going to have flex justify between item center and P4. And inside this, we're going to say native navigations dot map for each of them. We're going to get the item and we're going to return something. So what we're going to return is just an, a list element like this. And let's give it uh, the following class name. So flex, we have to say items center, then flex dash call justify center. OK, just like this. And let's also give this a key. Um, which is going to be the item dot ID. And inside this, we're going to basically render the sorry, not like this It's the item dot custom icon. OK, so render that icon and we're going to say small in here and then we're going to give it the following class names. This is basically the, the, the title or like the name for that uh, for that element. OK, this is going to be right at the bottom, guys. It's kind of like a navigation you'd see on applications. All right. So import CLSX like this. OK, first, we're just going to do this. And then for this one, we're going to say text dash muted dash foreground is going to be if selected nav 
is e is not equal to the item dot id. Okay, then we're going to return this um, this text muted foreground. Okay, and inside this tag, you want to render the item dot title. Perfect. So it's not not too complex, right? That's that's pretty much about it for the mobile sa sidebar. And let's refresh this and um, let's see how this goes. All right. So we have this here. And also, I went ahead and just put some um, default data, guys, so you can see how the new um, the new nav that I created here, not nav, sorry, the toolbar options, you can see how it sticks to the top and it has this cool glass morphism effect, which we also learned in the Figma video. So if you want to learn how to create beautiful designs like that, I'll put the link in the description. Go ahead, click on it, watch it, and um, hopefully you learn some new stuff. So there you go. You see, we have that sidebar at the bottom. So if we go into our mobile sidebar, we need to actually be able to click on this element. So here we're going to say on click is going to be equal to we have to set the new state, right? So set this to set selected nav is going to be item dot ID. If I click on this, let's see. So right now we have this boom. There we go. It shows up. And because of the styling we have on our navigation, our users um, data has been hidden here. And that way, when we go into settings, we'll be able to change the user's data right here. Okay, we don't want that component to show up at the bottom here. Just going to take up too much space. And also on mobile devices, it's actually zoomed in by 150. So this is probably what it would maybe 150 or 125. I think 150. So this is what it will look like on real mobile devices. Okay, you can shrink this if you'd like to. Um, I think something is wrong here. Uh, let me see item center. Um, something is wrong with the flex box, but yeah, it's just it's just something with a flex box. Let me see what. Okay, yeah, there we go. So flex like this, and that should solve that problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. All right, there you go, centered now. So if I click here, pages, click here, sidebar, it um shows everything. So I can navigate from here. Now, if you click on your sidebar um, folders drop down, okay, the folders drop down list, you'll see um. A, a TypeScript error here and it's asking for logo. So it turns out in our migration schema, we still have that, okay, for the folder. So I thought we already removed everything. Why is it there? I'm not sure. So let's go into folders and files and search for logo. Okay, removed from here. Okay, there we go. So let's remove logo for that and let's quit this and yeah, npm run generate and then npm run dev just like this and let's refresh this. And that should actually update that in the database. And you can go ahead and do npm run pull here once this is done. Okay, it's oh, it's migrating a lot. That's that's probably why we're having that issue, guys. It's because every time we use a database, it's creating like you know 10, 15 entry points. So that's uh, there's something wrong there. So go ahead and do pull here. I'm going to quit this and do npm run dev one more time. And uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, and because we did pull, we have to go ahead and update that subscription. So I'm going to copy the subscription here, go into schema file, search for the error, which is around here and just replace this. Okay, now that should fix our issue. Let's refresh the browser. Now we're going to work on the real time um, setup for um, our application. So basically, between different clients, if someone adds a folder, we need that to show up. So how do we do that? It's actually very simple. It's just very repetitive. But um, we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so go into your libs folder right here and create a folder called hooks. Okay, um, hooks like this. And inside this, you want to create a file called um, use superbase real time. Okay, dot TSX just like this. Okay, and in here, we're ba it's basically like um, a hook that we're going to create to attach to our folders component so that it will keep track of all the folders and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so go on top, go on top and just say const use um, super base or we can just say RAFCE for now. Yep, this is okay. We can just do this and then we'll update it in a second. Okay, so this return is not going to be div. It's going to be null. Let's save that. And um, what we want to do here is we want to say const super base equal to uh, create client component client like this. And we can also say const um, dispatch because we need these things from here because we're going to set the state, right? State and workspace ID 
and then we're going to set this to selected workspace and this is going to be equal to use app state invoke this let me hide this so you guys can see more and then we also need the router so router equal to use router okay and everything is going to happen inside this magical use effect okay this use effect is going to do all of the real-time setup for us um, and we're going to do this right now so in here we're going to first create a channel so we're going to say const channel equal to super base dot channel invoke this and say db dot changes okay just like this and since we need super base go ahead and pass in super base in here so the first thing before we do this i want to show you something because um, this is important so go into your super base go into um let's see where is that i think it's under yep so go into database go into real time or where is this it's replication go into replication click on two tables here and we need to turn it on for uh, we need to turn on the real time setup for our folders and our um, our other stuff that we want okay so we need files folders and workspaces is kind of like a challenge for you so i'm going to set that up to you okay uh, we can you guys can make it work it's the exact same thing okay so go ahead and take that as a challenge and make it work also the answers are in the discord if you need everything we're going to help you guys out so don't worry about anything um you can also turn on sure you can turn on collaborators if you need um these things you don't really need them that's fine okay and now go back in here so now it's set up so real time is set up um, so you can actually listen for changes. So now you can say on and in here we want to listen for Postgres changes. OK, and we want to pass in an object here, which is going to have event set to star. OK, so for all events, we want um, the schema to be sorry, the schema, which is right in here. Why is this not showing my schema? schema is going to be okay it's not showing that's weird so schema is going to be public and the table is going to be files okay because we're going to first work on the files so on this we need to do something so this needs a callback function okay like this and this callback function will be invoked every time there is a change done on this table okay so first create a channel and this on is all you need to create another um another listener OK, so on the publics, uh, public folders, on public workspaces, so on and so forth. OK, what we're going to do in here is this is going to give us access to the payload. So first, let's make this async because we might need some stuff. So we're going to say payload and this payload is going to have um, the following. So we're going to say if the payload dot event type is equal to. So we have a couple here, right? So we need the insert first. Then we're going to um, just maybe console log. You can we can say, hey, received real time events. People do this in real projects, um, so you can do it in here to print that into the console. You want to create a new payload, okay? So folder ID is going to be. I'm sorry, we're we're just basically destructuring this from. And here we're just going to destructure the following property. So we're going to get the folder underscore ID, which is the folder ID, okay? And then we need the workspace underscore ID, which is the workspace ID, like this. And then finally we need ID, which is going to be the file ID. And then this is equal to the payload. Dot new. So this new property gives you the new data that changed. OK, and then in there after that, we're going to check if there is nothing in state. So since we need state, we need to go in here and say state like this. OK, if there is nothing in state, um, actually, we are not. No, that's not what we're checking here, guys. We're we're basically going to check if um, we have that file. What we're going to do is we're going to say if not state dot workspaces dot find you see we're doing this again right it's a great place to put it somewhere else but i'm just going to type it so that you can actually learn but i'm just going to copy this actually and paste it here i'll just read it so it's easier okay and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to id okay cool so we want to check if this is true 
if this is true, which is if workspaces dot find um, the workspace ID equal to the workspace ID, the folders dot find where the folder ID is the same thing and the files dot find where, where the file ID is the same thing that just changed. If there is nothing, so we ha we don't have that, then we're going to add this file. OK, we're going to add it. So we only need to add because um, that's what we're doing right here. Right. We're inserting. So we're, we're looking at adding addition. So in here, we're going to create a new file, which is equal, which is of type file, which comes from super base types. And this is going to be equal to an object. And we're just populating it with the data, guys. It's the same thing. We're already done this before, which is ID is going to be payload.new.id. Uh, workspace ID is the same thing. Just get it from this, okay? Payload.new. Get it from there. Create it at and all this kind of stuff, okay? Pass in all this data. And finally, you also need the banner URL is going to be payload dot uh, new dot sorry dot new dot banner URL just like this, okay? So get all of these values. I think the banner URL is going to be this. Yep, this is what it might be. Cool. And then you want to dispatch an object here called type um, of type add file. OK, and you want to pass in the payload, which is going to be an object which needs the file, something like this. So let's just bring those in. So we need the file, um, the file, which is going to be the new file. So we're going to say new file like this, the folder ID and the workspace ID. OK, it'll go ahead and add it for us. Nice. And after this, we want to say else if okay the type payload dot event type is equal to delete then we want to do a couple things so we want to say let workspace id is going to be an empty string let folder id is going to be equal to an empty string and then we're going to say const file exists so we're going to check if this file exists because we need to delete it right and I'm sure you guys already know how to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste so you can save you some time. OK, so what we're doing in here is we're basically saying state dot workspaces dot sum. So if this meets once, we want to get out of this dot sum workspaces, workspace folders dot sum um, folders dot of file dot sum. We're going to get this here and um, then we're going to get the file ID equal to payload dot old ID. OK, because the old one that changed the workspace ID is equal to this workspace ID. And um, if this is true, so if this is true, we're just going to return true. So we know that the file exists. OK, and then we're going to do file exists like this um, and workspace ID, of course. And then we also want to make sure the folder ID exists. OK, if this is true. So basically we set it in here, right? So if this is true, only then can we say router dot replace, okay, dashboard slash dollar sign workspace ID. So we're just going to route them because the user deleted this file. So why do we have to keep them on the same page, right? We have to remove them from this page. And then we're going to say dispatch like this, and we're going to put the type in here, okay, which is going to be called delete um, here. Sorry, guys, this is delete file. And this needs a payload, which is set to an object like this. So I'm going to bring in these. I think there's one more. Oh, that's it. OK. And the file ID is going to be the um, the folder ID. OK. Or we can just say payload dot old dot ID. OK. And then um, after that, we want to pass in the folder ID like this. Um, workspace ID. All right, so this is old dot ID. Okay, for some reason that ID jumped out. So now we're going to delete that file. And finally, we need to also do it for the updates, right? So else if payload dot event type equal to update, then we need to put in something in here. So const folder underscore ID. We're going to basically um, destructure these values. Folder ID, and then we need the workspace. Um, ID too. So I'm just going to copy and paste. You guys know the drill, right? So let's copy paste that. And this is payload.new. So that's how we get access to those variables. And then we're going to again search for it. Okay. It's the same thing, the exact same thing. So I'm just going to copy paste. I mean, not exactly the same thing, but I'll show you. I'll show you what is different. Okay. Just give me a second. 
All right, so it's pretty much the same, but what we need to do here is we need to find that workspace, the folder, and the files, okay? We're looping over them, and we're checking if the file ID is equal to the new ID that updated, okay? And if so, that means we have the file, right? We're going to dispatch an action here called update file. We're going to pass in the payload. We're gonna pass in the workspace ID. We're going to pass in this, this, and this. Um, and the file that we want to update is just going to be um, the title, the icon if it changed, and the in trash if it changed. So if the user deleted it, some other user, a collaborator deleted it, it's going to update for us as well. Done. That's it for the files, guys. So we can actually go ahead and test this before we move on to make sure that everything's working. And then we can do the folders. Uh, and I'm actually going to leave the folders as a challenge for you. It's the exact same thing, but if not, the answer is um, inside the GitHub repository, and it's also in the Discord if you need help, okay? So let me go ahead and um, test this out real quick. All right, and I forgot one more thing. We actually have to use this uh, Superbase real time. So the best place to actually put this, in my opinion, would be inside the um, the works bit uh, inside the drop down folders so let's go to that list which is folder drop down list right here okay and let's go up top and i think i already have that set real time updates right here so let's import this and just invoke it like this okay so now it's going to do its thing so we have to go ahead and refresh okay we see some errors um what is the error let's see Okay, so use router has some issue. Let's go and check what the router is. Oh, it's okay. We imported it from next router. It has to come from um, the other, the new package, which is next navigation. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh, refresh. All right, perfect. It works great now. And let's go back to the test workspace here. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and try this, guys. So if we hit something here, it should show. Well, it's not showing. So let me refresh this. Um, and make sure all our real-time data has been set. And if I add one here, it's not adding. Okay, something is wrong. Let me go ahead and test it out real quick, okay? Ah, right here. So for our super base right here, we need to actually subscribe to these changes, right? That's the only way this can work. And also, let's return a, um, a cleanup. So we're going to say channel dot um, unsubscribe. Okay, so unsubscribe to these changes now. Awesome. And also, guys, we might need um, something else in here. Let me see selected workspace because we need that workspace ID. So let's pass that in here so that can update accordingly. Okay, and let's uh, go ahead and test it out one more time. And let's see what happens. All right, guys, so I checked here, we needed to change this DB from DB dot to DB dash changes. Okay. And at the bottom, you want to subscribe to this because that's the only way to listen to these changes. And then we're going to return a uh, just a cleanup function, okay, to do channel unsubscribe and make sure you have the selected workspace in here as well. So I looked at the database, guys, and the main reason. So this even if you change this, it doesn't matter. You're still going to see the error because for some reason my files were turned off. I even remember turning it on but the real time database was turned off uh, for files. Okay. Go to database, replication, click on six tables, change it to whatever you want to be real time. So we turned on folders, files, and um, the workspaces too when you do the challenge. And now if we go ahead and test it, you can see I tested it quite some time, but um, let's just go back to this development page. And if I add something in here, if I hit add file, it shows up for the other user too. How cool is that? And this user can also go ahead and delete this if they want to. So um, here's the other cool thing. Since this is real time, if the user deleted this, it's going to move it to trash and it's going to show for both of them if they were on that file. So right now they're not on that file, so they couldn't see it, right? But if I copy this link and paste it here, this user can actually see this trashed file. Both of them can also restore it and it will show up right here as well. Great job, guys. If you have come so far, I'm super proud of you. OK, so the next challenge, I'm not going to give you the answer um, in the in the GitHub repository. OK, the answer is in the discord if you need it. But I want you to genuinely try. You're going to set this up for the folders now. OK, so the folders right here, when I delete a folder, I want it to act like a real time um, database, the same way we did it for files. OK, the exact same thing. 
take it up as a challenge. I'm going to put the link in the description, click on it, join, and just ask me and everybody in there, we're all going to help each other. Okay, so inside our delete file handler inside Quill, so go to your Quill editor components and head over to your delete handler. So once we delete the file, we actually need to route, okay? We need to route back to uh, the dashboard page or, or the workspace page. So since this is a file, um, I'm assuming the workspace, of course, is going to exist. So we're going to do um, router.replace and we're going to set it to a dynamic string, say dashboard slash dollar sign workspace ID like this. OK, copy this and for the folders, paste it in here. But now you're going to uh, actually it's fine for the folder, too. You can just route them to that. So let me just do a quick little test to see if this works. So if I go in here and if I delete this, it shows up here. And if I delete it right here, um, also, you might need to reroute this user. We we'll, hmm, let's see. OK, so if I delete it. OK, so I think that was handled by our real time update. OK, so right after this alert right here inside your settings form components, you want to hit enter. You want to create a paragraph and give class name of flex item set to center gap of two and margin top of six. And inside this, we want to say user. It's a lucid react component. It's just an icon. And we're going to say size equal to 20. OK, that's weird. So I'm going to go up top and I'm going to import user. OK, it's because hmm, this is interesting. What's going on here? OK, so there's a clash here. So let's just say user icon. This has to say as and this is going to change to user icon and say profile. OK, and then after that, we're going to use a separator component and then say div class name, set this to flex items center. And then inside this, we need the avatar. And inside this, we need the avatar image, the avatar fallback. And this avatar image component is going to have the following. So the source is user dot avatar URL, which is actually not in here. So you would have to do that API request. All right, guys, I'm just going to skip over this because it's just unnecessary things. You know how to do this. We did it inside our quill editor. OK, but for now, I'm just going to um, set it to something like this, just source empty source. And uh, we're going to have the uh, fallback right here. And we're going to set this to the Cypress profile icon. Before this, go ahead and create another div and set the class name to flex flex dash call m left of six. So we're going to say small with a class name of text dash muted dash foreground cursor not allowed because we cannot change the email. Um, and we're going to say user dot if user exists then user dot email like this or we're just going to return an empty uh, string. Let's use the label component HTML for equal to uh, profile picture class name of text dash SM text dash muted dash foreground profile picture in here input name is going to be profile picture just copy this so if we made any errors it's going to work and then type equal file except is going to be equal to image slash star the placeholder to workspace or sorry profile picture OK, like this. And the on change is going to be a change which we're going to create. So on change profile picture disabled is going to be set to uploading profile pic. Now, this is a challenge. I want you to go ahead and give it a shot. OK, it's the same thing, guys. We've been doing this like 400 times. Literally, we learned how to upload a, a banner. We learned how to upload a logo. So all you have to do here is get the user information. OK, like we did in Quill Editor, get the user. And once you get the user information, create this on change. And after that, you're going to upload that using Superbase. If you don't know, answers in the Discord and answers also inside this. OK, I'll put it inside the GitHub repository. After this div, we're going to say log out button div class name flex items. And in here, we're just going to pass in the log out, OK, which comes from Lucid React. Go ahead and create a P tag class name of flex items center gap to margin top of six. So I'm going to import this component from Lucid React called credit card and then size 20 and billings uh, billing and plan. And after this, use a separator component like this and say P 
class name text dash muted dash foreground. What's wrong here? I think that's just some weird TypeScript error. Let me, huh, weird. I think it's coming from, maybe this is causing it to fail. So I'll just hide that. All right, that's probably causing it to fail. So I'm just going to hide that, okay? And then after that, I'm going to say this. So from use Superbase user, I think we also have subscription in here. Yeah, there we go. We're just going to say if the subscription status is active, we're going to say pro, if not free, and then just say plan right here, okay? So inside your components, go to global components and just create something here and call it subscription-modal.tsx. And then say refce subscription modal like this okay and this is basically a dialogue guys and it has a dialogue and some states that we're going to use uh everywhere so um before we jump into this we also need our provider so let's go down here and go into libs providers and let's say subscription modal provider dot tsx and first we're going to create a type called subscription modal context type okay like this and this is going to be equal to an object with open set to boolean and set open be equal to it's a dispatch from react set action so set state action from react and we'll pass in a boolean and then we're going to say const subscription context is equal to create context from react the subscription model type that we have right here Let's go ahead and say open false and then our set open is just going to be an empty function. And then after this, say export const use subscription modal is going to be equal to this function. And in here, we're simply going to return the use context for this, which is a subscription model um, modal context like that. OK, go down here and say export const subscription modal provider extract the children from here. So I'm just going to say children is set to react dot react node. First thing we need in here, guys, is um, the open and the close like this. OK, it's a state. So open and set open equal you state. And I'm just going to set false as the default value. We just need to go ahead and return that component. So just say return super base modal context dot provider like this. And we need to pass in the value or this is going to scream open and set open inside this component. We're going to render out the children like this. Okay. We also need the products and the products are going to be passed into our subscription modal, which we're going to get in just a second. OK, so let's go in here and say subscription modal. Um, let's see. Yep. Like this and create this component. And that's about it. So. We're going to use this open and set open to kind of show this modal. So let's go back into the modal and this is going to take a couple things. So it needs the products to display, right? It needs some products to display. So we're going to create that. And then uh, we're also going to create, you know, the option for them to subscribe and also, uh, you know, see the products and things like that. All right, so go ahead and say const open inside your subscription model. This is equal to use subscription modal like this. And we also need the set open, okay, so that we can change the state. And we're going to return a dialog, and this comes from UI dialog. And we're going to set open here equal to open from this state. We want to say on open change equal to set open just like this. And inside this dialog, guys, we're going to return dialog content going to render already on a paid plan. This subscription comes from const subscription equal to use super base. I'm just going to kind of remove this and say subscription if it exists subscription dot status equal to active then if this is true we're going to render something if not we're going to do something oh sorry it's active guys not action <laughs> here we're going to return the dialogue content if not we're going to return all the products and things like that so let's have the dialogue header and this is going to have upgrade pro plan oh this has to be inside title sorry about that guys so dialogue title and now we can put this in here okay so inside this component right here, bring in our subscription modal. So bring this down. Awesome. So now we have that in here. OK, and the products that I was talking about, we're actually going to get the active products from this link right in here, and then we're going to pass it down. OK, but um, since we, we don't have that, 
uh, since we don't have it right now, it's okay. We don't need to show that. Okay. We basically need this modal to show up when the user tries to access a feature that requires a subscription. We basically need to use some logic there to prevent the user from adding a folder uh, if they don't have a pro plan. So let's go to, into the sidebar, shrink this, go into components, and then folders drop down right in here. And right here, guys, we have, I think we already have it. Yep. Yeah, right here. So we need to check if the length of the folder is greater than or equal to three and there's no subscription. So if this is the case, then we're going to go ahead and open that modal on the screen. Set open to true. Okay, this is going to come from that uh, modal of uh, the provider that we just created and then we're just going to return. So we're going to stop from here. So let's go up top and let's import that. So const open and set open use subscription modal like this. And that gives us access to these two things. Now it should work. There we go. Awesome. So after this, you want to have the description. So we're going to say dialog description from UI dialog like this. And this is going to have to access it. You need to upgrade to a pro plan. And after this description, we need to get access to the products. Okay. And these products we're going to pass down eventually. For now, we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to return um, like a want like a single product. Okay. So what we're going to do here is just say div and then give it the following class names, flex, justify center items center. And then we just going to create a react dot fragment. And the reason why we're doing this here is when we loop across, we need to provide a key. And inside this react fragment, we're going to use uh, the bold tag here like this, and let's give it a class name and say text dash three XL. And this is going to basically have the pricing and things like that. Okay. Text dash muted foreground like this. Oh, sorry. Text foreground guys, not muted. And after that, inside this, we're going to create a helper function. And that helper function is going to basically, basically convert our pricing into some sort of a format. Okay. So you want to go into your utils or whatever. We have a utils here, right? And you can just say export const format price like this is equal to a function that takes in the price. And um, this price is going to be of a special type. Okay. This price comes from the types that we created initially. So uh, from the super base types, if you remember const price string equal to new intl like this dot number format and invoke this and the first one's actually the type so we're going to say en dot dash us like this and pass in the object for uh, the options okay and here we're going to say style is going to be currency and then the currency is going to be price dot currency or undefined and then finally the minimum fraction digits is going to be zero format this to price dot unit. So question mark unit amount or zero. Um, we're also just going to say like this and let's return the price string. So that way we can use this. So let's go in here now into our subscription modal. So we're going to say format the price. Let's import that as well. 12.99 like this dollar sign. We'll come back to this. All right. I just wanted to build that out. Then we can say small. We can also put a slash like this and say a uh, month because this is going to be the interval. Create a button like this. Make sure you import it from UI buttons and say disabled is equal to is loading const is loading and set is loading equal to use state like this and false. Okay. Now let's go to the bottom here. Just say is loading. If it's true, then we're going to return something else. We're going to return something. So if this is the case, return the loader that we created or just return a string and call it upgrade with this one. Now that we have this set up, um, we can go ahead and just test this out. Awesome. There you go. And it shows upgrade to this pro plan and you can of course click the button and then it does something. Okay. But um, one thing, I don't want this to be centered. All right. That is so much better. So basically if there was no elements, this one, if there was nothing in here, we want to just return a string. So hide that. And if I go ahead and just hit the plus, all right, it just says no products available. So now you want to go back into your settings form component and we're basically going to check for the subscription here. And we also want to render some buttons where they can um, change their subscription status and things like that. So let's go ahead and use a link which comes from next link just like this. And um, this is going to have an href 
and this href we're just going to set to like this okay and we're going to say target equal underscore blank okay and after that we want some class names so we're going to say text dash muted dash foreground then we need flex flex row items center so we're going to say view plans and we're going to say external link icon or external link from lucid react you can see we have the view plan so the user clicks this button it takes them to the main page and then you can just show that here let's also give this a size of 16 and then after this subscription i'm oh, sorry after this link we want to say subscription dot status okay and if it's equal to active we're going to return a div and inside this div we're going to return a button and this button is going to say manage subscription and uh, we're going to provide the following props for this button the type is going to be button the size is going to be small variant secondary disabled is going to be loading portal and the class name is going to be text small and on click is redirect customer portal so when the user clicks on manage subscriptions we're going to send them to this portal and the portal takes a while to spin up guys and we're going to use stripe to make all this work for now let's hide this because we haven't come to the sub the payment section yet right so we want to do that and here instead of this we're going to return a div uh, same thing another button here but it says start plan this start plan is going to have type button size small variant secondary and this class name is going to be set to this also i'm going to just say work in progress right here so we can capture that when we make a quick search to make sure we've done everything and this on click is basically going to set that um that state remember that we just created right the provider it's going to set that to true so it's going to show the plan on the screen so let's go all the way up top right here we're going to say const open and set open equal to use subscription modal there you go so you go here there's no plan so if you click start plan it's going to show this and then you can go ahead and upgrade um, to a plan okay that's what we wanted to do here so great job so far let's go ahead and um, check where else do we need this? And guys, you can use this everywhere you want, okay? You can literally set restrictions. Like right now, we have a restriction for the folder. You can set restrictions for other things as well, okay? So one thing I'm going to do right now for you is to show how we can prevent the user from uploading a custom logo right here, the workspace logo. So I'm just going to look for uh, workspace logo like this right here. And this input needs to be disabled, okay? Say uploading logo or the subscription dot status is not equal to active so if it's not equal to active it's going to show this message here so let me show you it's i mean it's going to basically set it to you know you cannot update it because you don't have that uh, option and what is the error here let me see i did this one more time sorry guys active like this after that we have to put the subscription stuff in here right so let's say subscription dot status this is not equal to active we want to return the followings a small tag with the following class name which is text dash muted dash foreground inside this we're going to just say uh, to customize your workspace you need to upgrade to a pro plan first and there you go it just shows the message to the user so they can know oh i need to upgrade to this and here's a challenge do the same thing for the dashboard setup page so in here if you go to your dashboard setup, which is right in here, go ahead and do the same thing in this dashboard setup for that component, okay? Let's go back in here. We can remove this flag now because we're done with that. I think now is a good time to go ahead and set up payments for our application. So we're gonna do a bunch of stuff, so just be with me. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of code. So before you get started, make sure you have a Stripe account. So go ahead, log in, create a Stripe account, and then come back once you're done, okay? I went ahead and logged into the Stripe account and make sure you have your test mode set to this. Okay. It should be on and you should see this test data right here. Okay. So I already went ahead and did all this stuff and that's why I have all this, but don't worry. Uh, you know, we're going to do it from scratch right now. So that way it's easier for you to follow. What you need is you need the Stripe publishable key. You need the Stripe secret key and a webhook key. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that set up. Go to the search bar here and look up API keys. Okay, it's like this. I don't know why the hell they have this kind of dashboard. It's really bad. But um, yeah, basically you want to go into developers and get this API keys from here. You're going to see this 
publishable key right here. Okay, go ahead and copy that. So click on that key, copy it and paste it in here. And then the next thing is the secret key. So go ahead and reveal the secret key and then copy the secret key here too and paste it in here. And then we need to go ahead and get the webhook secret. So to get the webhook we have to get it from here. But before that, I want to just let you know, this is how we do it in the local environment because we're testing. But in production, we're just going to add the endpoints and then change that. But for local tests, you want to go ahead and click on this test in local environment. And it's going to spin this up for you. Okay, it's going to show this for you. And you need to go and download the CLI and log in. So this is something that you need to do. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't done this, it's actually pretty simple. Open this right here guys open this download CLI and it's going to show you exactly how to do it so if you have homebrew you can go ahead and do brew install stripe CLI and stuff like this or you know if you're a Mac OS you can also run these commands but this this is the easiest way okay make sure you have homebrew installed and then you can just do brew install and get this in here okay and then after you have done downloading the CLI okay please keep in mind you need the CLI you need it because that's the only way we can run this webhook locally. To get that key, you will need to log into Stripe and then you'll have to do Stripe listen forward to a webhook that we haven't created yet, which we need to create. OK, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up because if you're wondering where the hell do I get this webhook key from, we will be getting it from here. OK, but before that, we need to set up Stripe on our end to generate those keys for us and also keep the endpoint ready and things like that. OK. Awesome. So let's jump straight right into it. So first thing we're going to do is head into your libs folder and you want to create a folder called Stripe. And inside this Stripe, you're going to create three files. OK, admin tasks dot typescript index dot typescript. Finally, the Stripe client dot typescript. Open your terminal and just type in npm i Stripe. First, let's go to our index dot typescript file. We want to import Stripe from Stripe and then we want to export const Stripe equal to new Stripe and we need to pass in our Stripe secret key. OK, so let me make sure I copy this. I don't want to make any errors in this spelling. So secret key copy this guys, please don't make any mistakes here um, like I did in the past because this is going to be a pain to actually debug. OK. So make sure you copy and paste the strings. No harm. OK, even if it's wrong, but there's the same thing. It's fine. So we're going to just do this in here like this. Put this and then we're going to put an empty string and then we're going to pass in an object with some properties. So API version 2023 where is that 2023 1016. So whatever it gives you. OK, um, I actually had it at 08, but we're just going to do this app info. This is basically the setup. So we're going to say name web prodigies Cypress. And then we want to have the version set to 0 0.1.0. Uh, and the next thing we need is another package to make this work. So it's called npm i at stripe slash stripe dash js. Go ahead and hit enter. Now we can go into our uh, into our stripe client file, which is right here. And we can we can import these packages that we need, which is load stripe and stripe from here, which comes from at stripe JS that we're going to say stripe promise. Promise is going to be a type of promise which has stripe or null. OK, and then we're going to export const get stripe equal to a function like this. And uh, in here, we're going to say if no stripe promise, this is not promised, this is promise. So if no stripe promise like this, then we're going to return. Uh, then we're going to do stripe promise is equal to load stripe, invoke it, and we have to pass in our publishable key. OK, so I'm going to copy and paste it in here because I don't want any errors. So let me go into my .env file. I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it in here. OK. Awesome. And after this, make sure to inside here, inside the function, make sure to return the Stripe promise. And then next thing is go into your admin tasks. And what we're going to do in here, guys, is we're basically going to uh, set up the tasks that our admin would create, such as creating prices, creating uh, products. So let's go up top right here. We want to say export const. We're going to say upsert product record. 
it's equal to async, which is a function. And this is going to get the product, which is Stripe, comes from Stripe itself. Okay, so Stripe dot product like this. And in here, we want to say const product data is of type product. Okay, this product comes from our super base types. To set this equal to an object with ID, which is going to be product dot ID. Okay, it's going to have active product dot active. Oops, this is not common. This is dot. We need the name, which is going to be product dot name description, which is going to be product dot description. Um, no, like this. Okay. And then we want to say image, which is going to be product dot images. Um, if this exists at zero, if not, no. And then we're going to say metadata, which is going to be product dot metadata. And after this part, we're going to do a try catch. And in this try catch, we're going to say await db dot insert into the products. Okay, products from migration schema. Okay, insert into this dot values. And then we're going to say product data this this new thing that we just created right here. So insert the product data, and then on conflict. So if there's a conflict, we want to update it. Okay, and we're going to pass in this object and we're going to say target is the product dot ID. Okay. And then we need to set something. So set product data like this. Uh, it, okay. It's products dot. So this products, uh, if there's an error, we want to throw the new error just like this. So we're just going to do this here. And then we're going to console dot log product inserted. Okay. Or updated product.id just like this. Okay. The next one we're going to need is the price. This one is going to be called upsert price record, which is going to be equal to async function. And this is going to get the price. And if you're wondering where are we going to call this guys, this is basically, um, this will come from our web hook. Okay. So our web hook is going to fire when we, when we create a product inside Stripe and then Stripe and the database are going to be synced. So this price is actually going to come from Stripe dot price like this. And inside here, we want to create the price data. Okay. So to save you time, I'm just going to go, go ahead and copy this. Do it with me guys. Okay. Do it with me. Um, I'm just going to say price data equal to this. So this type here is price and this comes from our super base types. Okay. So we have to have the ID, which is price ID product ID, which is type of price dot product string. Okay. If it's equal to string, then we're going to return that product. If not, we're just going to return null. Okay. Active is going to be set to price dot active currency price dot currency description price dot nickname. Okay. And if not null, and then type is price dot type unit amount is price dot unit amount. Make sure you use these underscores because this price that comes in here from is from the web hook. Okay. So it's going to be slightly different unit amount is price at unit amount null interval is price dot reoccurring interval and then null and then interval count is price dot reoccurring interval count if not null trial period days is price dot reoccurring trial period days if not null and the metadata is going to be price dot metadata and in here we're going to say await db dot insert like this uh, into prices so I'm going to bring that from migration schema we want the values to be the price data that we just created and on conflict do update. Okay. We're going to update it if there's some error. All right, let's do this. And we're going to set the target to be the prices dot ID. And um, we also need what to set. So set price data. If there was an error here, we're just going to throw a new error saying, you know, could not insert or update the price and you can just put the uh, the error like this so we can just say error okay after this you can just put a confirm confirmation message saying the price was inserted successfully great and now the next one is to create or retrieve a customer okay so let's say export const create or retrieve customer like this equal to another function 
and this is going to be an async function right here and this is going to take in the following so it's going to get the email um so this is going to be an object sorry the email we're also going to get uuid like this uuid and of course we need to set this so email and email is going to be string and uu ID is going to be string as well. In here, we're going to say try catch and we're going to say const response equal to await db.query dot uh, customers dot find first. So we're going to find if the user already exists as a customer. We're going to say where and this is going to be a callback function. So let's just say this. This will give us the customer and an object here called equal equal C dot ID and the UUID that was passed in. Okay. Then we're going to check if there's no response, okay? Then we're going to throw new error. Then we're going to return response.stripe customer ID. And after this in here, we're going to say const customer uh, data is going to be an object with metadata set to an object with a superbase UUID. So I'm just going to copy this UUID like this. And I'm going to say it's going to be a string email is optional which is going to be a string as well and this is going to be equal to an object with metadata set to an object with superbase uuid equal to the uuid that was passed in if email exists then customer um where do we create that customer data so this one customer data dot email is going to be equal to email and then we're going to create another try catch in here and we're going to say const customer equal to await stripe dot customer customers. So let's go ahead and import this stripe and this stripe actually comes from our index file. Let's just go up here and let's import it. So we got to say um, like this. OK, import stripe from index. So this is going to be customers dot create and we're going to create the customer data. Okay, create this customer data and we're going to say um, after this, we're going to say await db dot insert into customers from migration schema values like this ID is going to be UUID and the stripe customer ID is going to be the customer dot ID. And then we're going to say console dot log a new customer created right here. Let's just say new customer created and we're just going to put this message in here with their specific UUID and we're going to return the customer dot ID. If some error happened, we can just say stripe error and then we can just throw this error. Finally, we have to copy billing details to customer. That's the final one. So let's let's say export const. This is equal to a function. So copy billing details to customer and this is going to be an async function and it's going to give us um, UUID which is going to be a string and the payment, uh, the payment method. OK, so payment method, which is going to be stripe dot payment method. OK, just like this. And then const customer equal to payment method dot customer as string like this. And then we're going to say const name photo and the oh, sorry phone. And the address is equal to payment method dot billing details no name or no phone or oops or there's no address return if not we're going to do await stripe dot customers dot update um the customer like this and we're going to say name comma phone comma address and then we're going to do a quick try catch like this and in here, we're going to say await db dot update invoke this and we're going to say uh, users. Where is that? Yep. Users dot set. OK, and we're going to set the billing address to be everything inside address and the payment method is going to be everything inside payment method payment method at. So this this thing like this. Let me write that one more time. So payment method at. So this is an object payment method type. OK, so payment method dot type. After this, we're going to say dot where equal to import this from drizzle ORM and you want to say users dot ID equal to UUID. And then we can throw an error here. 
like this saying could not copy the customer's billing details. And then let's go down here. And now we want to say export cons manage subscription status change, which is equal to a function. And this is an async function. And this is going to give us the following um, parameters, which is subscription ID, which is a string customer ID, which is a string and the create action in here too. We're going to say try catch and we're going to say cons customer data equal to await db dot query dot customers dot find first invoke this and we want to say where and this is going to give us the customer and an object uh, like this let's destructure it it's called equal and we're going to say equal c dot stripe customer id and customer id that we got in and then we're going to say if there is no customer data we're just going to throw a new error cannot find the customer okay and after this, we're going to say const ID. So const ID like this is um, let's rename this to UUID is equal to customer data. We're just destructuring it. And then we're going to say const subscription, not subscriptions, subscription is equal to await stripe dot subscriptions from here dot um, retrieve invoke this and pass in our subscription ID from the parameter and an option object here, which is going to have expand, oops, sorry, expand set to an array here with, um, with default payment method as the first prop. Okay. The first value. And then this is going to be a little big here. It's basically the subscription type. So we're going to create a subscription, right? So we're going to say subscription data equal to um, so this is going to be of type subscription from super base types ID set to subscription dot ID um, user ID is going to be UUID like this metadata is going to be subscription dot metadata status is going to be subscription dot status. This is going to have an error here and we need to actually do TypeScript ignore. So um, there's something wrong with this here. So just do this, just do this right here. And you want to say the price ID is going to be the subscriptions dot items dot data at zero dot price ID, sorry, dot ID like this. And then we also need the quantity. The quantity is going to be subscriptions dot quantity. Okay, so something is wrong here. Um, I think this is actually just a TypeScript problem. So um, yeah, you can just go ahead and just say subscription dot quantity guys, this will work, but just do, hmm, yeah, just, just do at uh, TypeScript ignore. Okay. I think it's going to work um, in here. We also need to say cancel at period end is going to be subscription dot cancel at period end like this. And then we have our cancel at, which is going to be subscription dot cancel at, um, cancel at like this. And what is this problem here? Okay. So it looks like this could be null. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if this exists. Okay. So this two day time is actually a custom function that we're going to create. And that's going to come from another folder uh, call utils, another file called utils. Okay. So go to your utils right here, export const to date time equal to a function with the seconds, which is going to be a number. And this is going to say var t equal new date. And we want to pass in, um, some date in here. So I'm just going to copy the string. Okay. You can just paste it. So just look one nine seven zero. Uh, zero one and we're going to say zero one t zero zero here and then 30 dot zero zero z okay and then we're going to say t dot set seconds to be seconds the thing that we get in like this and then return the t okay so now we can come in here so i'm going to say two day time from utils like that let's go to the bottom where is that right here 
Okay, cool. So that's the helper that we needed. So we just created that, which is going to take in the subscription dot cancel at time. And it's going to return something to date time. Let's go in here, guys. Sorry about this. We made a quick mistake here. And we're going to set dot two ISO string and invoke that like this or no, like this. So I'm seeing another error here. The first error is at address. So what's wrong here? Oh, you cannot pass in this. Okay, so we'll remove that. And for this error, Actually, let's not just remove it like that. Let's actually take this because I want to see the message. It's going to be very hard to debug these things. And we're going to say dollar and just say error like this so we can at least see it. Okay, so I'm seeing something in here, which is address is not assignable to type address param undefined. Address is not assignable to do, 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 do. String or null is not assignable to string or undefined. Just give me one second. I'm going to fix this, okay? So, guys, I'm sure if you look here, this address type is of type stripe address or null. And here it's saying that string and null can is not assignable to type string or undefined. So this seems to be some sort of a TypeScript thing that is not under our control because clearly we're checking here, right? So I'm just going to say TypeScript ignore, okay, for now. I'm confident that that's going to work. Um, that does not make any sense, but whatever, okay. <laughs> so cancel at, let's continue. So right here we did this cancel at null, and then we have to also do canceled at null. So canceled at is going to be um, the following. It's the same thing, okay. Subscriptions.canceled at to date time, or subscription.canceled at dot to a ISO string and you want to put null in here and then current period starts to date time the subscription dot so I think we have a current period start okay this one and dot to ISO string just invoke this just like this the current period current period end date which is to date time invoke this subscription dot current period end date dot to ISO string and invoke it just like this. Just a couple more properties ended at. So ended at which is going to be a subscription dot ended at if that exists, then we're going to do to date time, invoke it and say subscription dot ended at like this dot to ISO string and invoke that. So instead of sending an empty string, we have to send a null. And then the trial start, two more values. So only the, the second last one. The trial start is going to be subscription dot trial underscore start like this. If this exists, then we're going to say to date time subscription dot the trial start like this dot to ISO string. And you want to invoke that if not you want to return null. Finally, the trial end is going to be subscription dot trial end. If this exists, we're going to say to date time, invoke that and pass in subscription dot trial end. If not, we're just going to return something else, which is uh, null. Okay. And oh, we need to say to ISO string and invoke that as well. After um, this right here, hit enter and you want to say await db dot insert into subscriptions uh, subscriptions from the migration schema dot values you want to pass in your uh, new subscription so subscription data and you want to also set the conflict update okay so on conflict update the target is going to be set to subscriptions dot id set is going to be set to our new subscription data so we'll just set that so subscription data and then you can just console log a message saying, hey, this is successful, inserted it for this user. And then we want to see if create action and subscription dot default payment method. Oh, also the UUID. Then we're going to await copy the billing details. OK, we're going to copy this billing detail. So we're going to say copy billing details from to, uh, to customer UUID and then subscriptions um, subscription dot default payment method as stripe dot payment method um, just like this. So, so go into your utils file. We're going to create a function here called export const get URL 
equal to something like this. And we're going to say let URL equal to process um, dot env dot um, next public site URL. Or we're going to return this um, next public planet scale or uh, yeah, maybe planet scale URL. OK, and then um, if not, we're just going to set our local host. So in here, oops, go right here and just return our local host uh, 3000 just like this. And then you want to make sure you include the HTTPS. So you're going to say URL equal to URL dot includes HTTP. OK, and if so, URL, if not HTTP s slash slash dollar sign url just like this and then url is equal to url dot character at you want to set url dot length to uh, minus one and then this is going to be equal to a backslash if this exists um then we're going to say um url if not we're going to return a new string and say dollar sign url like this and put a backslash at the end okay Awesome. And then we want to return the URL. It's just a helper that we're going to need. And then we're going to need the post data URL. It's just a custom post data to kind of create this request and response. So we're going to say const post data equal to async. Inside this, you want to say URL and the data. And this is going to have the following types string and the data is going to be an object, the price set to type of price from yeah, super base types. And after this, just say console.log posting the URL so we know what's happening. And then we're going to say const res, which is a type response equal to await fetch URL, not data. Actually, we have to pass in an object with the method. So this method is going to be post method right here. And then we're going to have the headers set to new headers like this invoke it and say content type application slash json the credentials is going to be set to same origin and then the body is going to be set to json dot stringify data if not res dot okay console dot log like you know error in the post data or something like that and then going to throw okay and say res dot status text finally return our res dot json Great job. That was a lot of code. Um, there is we're almost done, guys. We're almost done. So you want to go into your API folder. This is basically our checkout sessions, our portal links and all that kind of stuff. And our web hook is also going to be in here. Create a folder and say create checkout dash session inside that create a route dot type script. And in here, we're going to basically export an async function called post. And in here, we're going to have the request like this. And in here, we're going to say const price. Uh, we're getting this from the request.json, by the way. So we're just we're just destructuring. And this is equal to await request.json. Try catch const superbase equal to create route handler client. Import cookies from next slash headers. And now pass in the cookies also want to check get the user so we're going to say const data user equal to await superbase dot auth dot get user invoke this const customer equal await create or retrieve customer okay and we're going to pass in the email which is going to be user dot email and the uuid which is going to be user dot id we'll just pass in these empty strings right here okay and then you want to say const session equal await stripe this stripe actually comes in from our libs folder guys so stripe lib stripe okay that folder dot checkout dot sessions dot create so we're creating a session here and uh, we're going to set the payment method types to be card like this. This is going to this might give us a TypeScript error. If not, we're good. OK, cool. And then we want to set billing address collections to be required customer like this. All right, guys, this is spelled customer. And then we need the line items, which is going to be an array with an object like this. And this object is going to have price which is price.id and the quantity, okay? And then after this mode is going to be subscription, allow promotion codes, you can allow this too, no problem. Subscription 
data is going to be an object with trial from plan trial okay so yeah I, I don't know it's not there on the types so just do trial from plan is going to be true and then uh, we also have to pass in the metadata so we'll say metadata is going to be just metadata like this okay um, all right so there you go it's showing us that typescript error so i'm just going to do typescript ignore after this we need to say success url is going to be get url pass in slash dashboard cancel url is going to be the same Awesome. You can do more advanced stuff like sending them back to the exact URL and all that kind of stuff. No problem. But I'm going to return the next response, import this from next server .json, and we're going to set the session ID. It's going to be sessions. So I'm going to, where's the set? Did I say sessions here? Okay. I did say session here. Okay. So session .id, guys, just like this error here. So this is going to be any, and I'm just going to return this um, internal error with a status of 500. The status is important, okay? Now we have created our checkout session, so let's go ahead and create the other stuff. So I'm gonna say create-portal-link, a route.typescript inside this as well. So I'm just gonna say route.typescript. So we're gonna export async, just invoke it like this. And then we're gonna say try catch, and inside this we're gonna say con super base equal to create route handler client and pass in cookies, import cookies from next slash headers. And after this, we wanna say const data and user equal to await super base dot auth dot get user check if there's no user if there's no user we want to throw a new error and then we want to say const customer equal to await create or retrieve the customer with the email set to user dot email or we're going to just return a string like this and then it also needs the uuid which is going to be user dot id or an empty string like this okay if there is no customer throw a new error and we're going to say could not find this customer and then after this we're going to say const we're going to destructure url from await stripe and this stripe guys comes from the libs folder okay dot billing portal dot sessions dot create and then we're going to say customer return url is going to be that same dashboard thing that we created. Okay. So I'm going to just going to pass that in here, import this from our libs and let me go back and actually make sure I didn't import the wrong get URL. Yeah, there you go. I knew it. I made that mistake. So let me go in here and import this from libs utils. And now let's go back to our portal and we need to also send a return. So, uh, next response like this dot json invoke this and pass in url and after this finally in the end we're also going to just print some error the same thing as we did the last time guys print some error if an error occurred and then return the next response with the internal error and don't forget to put this 500 the status 500 in here i think there's one final one the webhook that we need to create and this one's going to be relatively simple not too bad let's shrink this and inside the api folder create w e b h o o k and inside that route dot typescript first say const relevant event so this is basically from a stripe guy so just copy paste this okay you can go to the github and just copy paste just put that in there we're going to say export async function post we're going to say request is going to be next request from next server and in here we're going to say const body equal await request dot text and then we're going to create a signature so headers actually comes from from the next headers guys sorry about that and we're going to get the stripe signature so get stripe signature and next we need to fetch the stripe webhook secret we're going to say const webhook secret is equal to process.environment.stripe webhook secret. Okay, so this one process uh, webhook secret live. Make sure you copy and paste this stuff. If not, we're going to say stripe webhook secret, so the one we have right in there. So when we're live, we're just going to change that webhook secret as well. And then we're going to say let event, which is of type stripe.event. And this stripe comes in from stripe itself. So stripe.event. And then we're going to say try catch so let me just use this snippet here yep try catch if there's no signature 
or there's no webhook secret, then just go ahead and return. If not, we're going to set the event equal to stripe. This stripe comes from libstripe again. So libstripe dot webhooks dot construct event, not async, this one no. body. And then we're going to pass in the signature and then we're going to pass in the webhook secret. Oh, no webhook secret. Cool, guys. And then later we can just show another error, but this error message is 400. And now we're going to check which specific event was requested or received. And then we're going to invoke all those admin functions that we created. So after this try, if relevant events dot has invoke this and say event dot type, then we're going to do try catch. And in here, we're going to do switch invoke this and say event dot type case product created and product updated. So you can copy it from top and paste. Okay. So for these two events, we're going to await absurd product record and say event dot data dot object as stripe dot product. And then we're just going to break out of this. And then after that, we have the price created and updated. We're going to do await absurd price record passing the event dot data and dot object as stripe dot price. And then for case customer dot subscription dot created, updated and deleted. For these three types, we're going to do const subscription equal event dot data dot object as stripe dot subscription await manage subscription status change. And we're going to pass in the subscription dot ID the subscription dot customer as string event dot type equal to the customer subscription created. And then finally, let's just go ahead and break. So case checkout session completed on checkout session is equal to event dot data dot object as stripe dot checkout session. And then we want to say if checkout session, oops, not this one. If checkout session, so if this um, this one dot mode is equal to subscription, okay, then we're going to say const subscription ID equal to this checkout session dot subscription. And then we're going to say await manage subscription status. And we're just going to pass in the same data, but here it's going to be true. So subscription ID as string checkout session dot customer as string and then true. Let's just go ahead and break and then default. We need to throw a new error because it's some weird um, event and we're going to say unhandled relevant event or something. Okay. When the error happens, print console.log the error and we're going to say we're going to return new next response webhook error and we're going to say webhook handler failed and set the status here to 400. Don't forget about this guys. We're going to return next response dot json and we're going to pass in received as true another object after this and this object is going to have the status of 200 like this oh okay sorry guys we have to say default here i don't know why that disappeared i accidentally might have deleted so default throw new error unhandled relevant error so now i'm just going to go ahead and log in here so i'm going to say stripe login like this all right guys so go ahead and just do that so click on this link and paste this if it gives it to you. Okay. So I just did that off screen, click that and th just hit allow. That's it. And then it's going to show this, this message in here. Now you can see it says logged in as dev dot local. So now we need to listen to this webhook. Don't forget you need to run the webhook at all times on local environment, because if you don't do this, then your database is not going to be in sync. So copy this open another terminal, put stripe to listen forward, but not localhost um, 4242. It's going to be 3000 slash API slash webhook. And then go ahead and hit enter. Perfect. So it spit out this webhook secret. So now copy this webhook and go into your environment file and paste that uh, link that you just got this one right here. Don't put any spaces or anything like that just paste just that webhook secret. It just says here too, right? And it's also saying listening for events. So copy this. If everything worked out perfectly, this should do the job. So we'll create another terminal, copy that and just hit enter. Now go back to the other one. Okay, so it says some error happened. Let me go ahead and take a look at it. What we did is we didn't even run npm run dev. So that was the issue, okay? So go ahead and run npm run dev. And then now when you set that trigger, paste this in here and you hit enter 
and then you go ahead and look at the API responses, you will see 200 everywhere. So this means our webhook is running. So go ahead and hit done here. And now we need a product. So go up here and look for product catalog. But uh, we had some sort of error. Let's see, what's the issue here? So it says product. Okay, we created this price here and we passed in the price. This did not even invoke. It didn't throw any error. So let's go ahead and um, archive this product. Apparently you cannot delete a product, which is, which is crazy to me, but okay, let's just go ahead and delete this and let's add a new product in here. So it's saying, make sure that it says test data up here. Okay. So we're going to say um, pro plans, standard pricing. We're going to just set it to 1299. Sorry, not 12,000. That would be insane. 1299. It's going to be reoccurring. Okay. And we're going to set it to monthly and save this product like this product inserted price also has been inserted. Undefined values are not a love. Okay. There seems to be some error here, but it's not actually blocking the application itself. Let's refresh. Okay. Product was created and active is set to true right here like this. So this pro plan is active. And our prices is, should also have it because we did not see any error, right? There we go. So I'm not sure where this error is actually coming from, but hey, our price is created and the product is created. If now that we have our product set, anytime you, you want to update your products for somebody else, right? A client, they can just head over to their Stripe account and they can just update the product here and everything is going to update accordingly. Now we can go back to our application and we can start to show some data in there. So right here, go into your main folder and you want to go into your workspace layout.js. Okay. Sorry. Um, not this workspace actually, wherever we put the subscription modal. So yeah, right here. So we're going to say products and this is going to be equal to the products that we're going to find in just a second. So we need to create an action for this. So go into your libs folder, go into Superbase queries, and in here just say export const get active products with price. And this is going to be equal to async. We're going to have a try catch in here, which is going to say const res equal to await db dot query dot products dot find many where pass in a callback like this. I mean a function and we're going to get the product. So I'm just going to say pro or something like this and equal where the product dot active is true. So only those products, that's the only thing that we want. And now you're going to notice that our width is not going to work in here. And the reason is because we haven't set relationships in our data. So you need to do one to many and many to one relationships to, in order to use these um, with queries and things like this. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can set that up. It's actually very easy. You can do it for the rest. If you want to, it's just a lot of work. We just want to focus on the core of the application, go into your schema. Okay. Super base schemas, scroll all the way to the bottom. And we want to say export const products relations is equal to relations, which comes from drizzle ORM passing the relations first for the products products from migration schema. This is going to have a many relationship. We're going to return an object and this object is going to have prices prices set to that many for the prices. And then we want to set the price relation equal to relations and you want to pass in the prices and we're going to get one product is one products like this and we're going to pass in an object and we have to pass in those fields an array of the prices dot product id it references something so we're going to say reference products dot id if you want the relations for everything will definitely help you in the discord but i just want to show you how to use these queries properly with drizzle. Okay. We also have to push um, our changes NPM run generate NPM run dev NPM run pull. We need to update our schema. So I'm just going to go ahead and update that subscriptions. Okay. So something is wrong here, guys. Let me see what's the issue. All right, guys. So I found the error and the error was because we were 
since we're using the schemas from our migration schema, we have to paste the relations in there. Now, when you go into your queries, you will also get the type intelligence. And also we were, we were actually editing this find user in the beginning, but that's, that doesn't really matter. But now if you say width and you say prices, you will see all the, the type intelligence. So that means the relationships uh, have been set up return. If this is true, um, and we're going to return the data set to response and the error set to null. If there's an error, we're just going to print that error and we're going to return this right here data with an empty array, uh, the error itself. Now let's go into our layout component right here. We're going to fetch for those products. Okay. So we're going to say const data products error equal to await get active products with price. This is supposed to be an async function just like this and error here. Um, data, what seems to be the problem uh, if there's Yeah, so here we want to return data at an empty array and error um, set to null. If error, we just want to throw a new error like this. Okay. And now inside this uh, modal, we're going to pass in the products and let's go into this modal because now it does not have access to these products. So in here, we're going to say products and here we're also going to say products and this products are going to be product with price and it's going to be an array. And now in this subscription mo modal, we're going to pass uh, pass down these products like this, which is equal to products like this. And now let's go back into our modal interface subscription modal props is going to have products set to product with price. I also made an error here, but that's okay. Set to an array react.fc like this. And we want to pass in uh, subscription modal props like this. And let's go ahead and extract the products. Okay. So now that we have the products, now we can loop over um, that product and we can return this new div in here or no product wrap this whole div right here. So you can just remove it for now and you're going to say products dot length. So if this is true, then you're going to do something. If not, you're going to do something else. And in this products dot length in here, we're going to check products dot map. So for each of them like this, and for this, we're going to return a div. This div is basically what we're going to replace with what we just cut. And now we're showing this here, but this react fragment is going to have the prices in here. Okay. So let's remove this. Uh, and first let's also pass in the key. So key equal to product dot ID. Let's remove this react fragment and we need to say product dot prices dot map invoke it and get the price. And we're just going to paste this react fragment in here. This right here is going to be that function that we created format price, invoke it, pass in the price and put a backslash after this with a space. This is going to be the interval. So price dot interval. So let's go up here in our layout component. All right, guys, I took a look at it and it, it was basically because we had maxed out our connection slots and that's why we couldn't. So that's why the data wasn't coming back. So everything is correct. Okay. So you don't have to worry about anything. Basically, it's if you go here and you click, see, we don't have any prices, but if we click, it's showing the uh, the number and the month as well. So finally, we need to have an on click in here. So I'm going to say on click is equal to, and this is basically going to create those portals that we just built out. So let's say on click continue like this. And this is a callback function. So I'm going to go up top here and I'm going to create this function up here. Const this function equal to an arrow function. And this is going to be an async function inside this function. We're going to get the price, which is set to price from super base types. We're going to use a try catch and we're going to check. Uh, we're going to set is loading to true guys. If there is no user, which we need to get. So we're going to go in here and we're going to say const user equal to uh, use super base user. And this is we're extracting the values from here. So user like this. So if there is no user, uh, we're just going to use a toast. Okay. So we can const toast equal use toast like this. So if there's no user, oh, we don't need this again. We can just show this message and then we can also set the is loading to false and we can return out of this real quick. If the subscription exists and we're going to say, Hey, you were already subscribed to the plan. So you don't need to do that and set the is loading to false. Well, if all of this is good, 
then we're going to create our session. Okay, so session ID equal to await post data, invoke this and pass in the URL. And this URL is going to be slash API slash create dash checkout dash session like this. Okay, and it needs another um, property, which is the data, which is going to be the price. When we click here, we're going to pass in that specific price into this uh, on click handler. So let's go back up and here where we say data that price after this hit enter console.log getting checkout for Stripe and then const Stripe equal await get Stripe, which is from our Stripe client. And then we're going to say Stripe dot redirect to checkout and we're going to pass in that session ID. If there was some error that took place, we'll just go ahead and show another toast here. And then finally set is loading to false. So after everything, we also want to set it to false. Great. So if I click here now, OK, this user clearly is on a free plan, right? And we can tell from this, if you click this right folders, it's going to show this modal. And now if I hit upgrade, it's going to load something and oops, something went wrong. So let's go ahead and see what went wrong. OK, so right here, when I post the data right here, I basically said, um, check out sessions. OK, so remove this to session. And the reason is because our route is set up like that. Create checkout session right there. Let's see if this solves the problem. And then we can go to this folder here and then hit upgrade. OK, and now it takes us to the checkout page, guys. How awesome is this? OK, so here it's basically just checking if the user is real and it's sending them an actual email confirmation to a mobile number right here. OK, so um, you can check out as guest, which is better. Go ahead and enter some credit card information right here. Um, just put in 424242. All right, so I just went ahead and put in some fake information right here. So you want to say 424242. And um, this can be any number that is valid, the date, and this should just be 4242. It's fine. It can be anything, okay? And here I just put in some weird address, um, some North University from Illinois or something. And go ahead and hit subscribe. So let's see if everything looks good. And if everything does, it's going to send us back to the dashboard. Awesome. So check out confirmation. And uh, there we go, guys. Great stuff. And now it says, we are on a pro plan and now you can go ahead and create as many folders as you like. One, two, three, four, five. Amazing stuff, right? Go ahead and go to your settings page. So settings, settings, form dot TSX. Now, when we're adding a works, uh, when we're adding collaborators, we can actually limit the number of collaborators right in here. OK, so I'm just going to uncomment this and I'll delete this subscription stuff and we're going to check if it's not equal to active and the collaborators dot length is greater than and equal to two. So this means the user is on a free plan. And now let's go ahead and build that functionality to basically manage the portal. So let's go ahead and turn this off and turn this uh, um, off as well. And let's remove this work in progress. Let's scroll up top. And we can create that function const equal to this, something like this. The loading portal is just going to be a state. So just create a state to first set the loading uh, for the portal to true. In here, we're going to say const. We're going to destructure the URL and the error from await post data. Make this an async function. Come down here and import this post data. And in here, you want to pass in the URL that we need. So slash API slash create dash portal dash link. So go back into this function, guys, and where you have data in here, just put a question, question mark, okay, because it's optional. And then we're going to set window dot location, location dot assigned like this. And we want to pass in that URL that we just received. If there was an error, we're just going to console log some error and finally set the loading portal to false. Now, if we click on settings, go to the bottom and you see this manage plan, uh, manage subscription. If you click it, it's disabled. And Awesome, guys. There you go. It takes you to the cancellation page where the user can go ahead and cancel their plan or they can update, you know, update everything, their payment information, all that kind of stuff. So everything is already set up for you. How awesome is this? All right, guys. So what you want to do is head over into your folders. Let's quickly just shrink this right here. And we're going to go into source, into components, create a folder called trash. And inside that, you want to say trash dash 
uh, restore, I guess, dot TSX. Okay. And then we want to create another one called trash dot TSX. And let's just do R A F C E trash. So this is basically the same custom dialogue uh, trigger component. So quickly, let's create the interface. Let's create the trash props. And this is going to be equal to children, which is going to be react dot react node like this. And in here, we're going to say react dot functional component. And let's go ahead and pass the trash props in here. Okay, trash props like this. And let's um, let's destructure the children from the props. And uh, then all we need to do is return our new component here. Okay, which is going to be the custom dialog trigger. And inside this, we're going to say header is equal to trash like such. And then the content is going to be equal to uh, yeah, content's going to be equal to our trash restore component, which we're just going to import in just a second. So trash restore component just like this. Okay, children is missing. So go ahead and pass in the children in here like this. And let's copy this trash restore, go into our trash restore and say RAFCE and just paste that in right there. And let's import this. Okay, let's first create some state. So we're going to say const um, state dispatch. Okay, because we need to bring back stuff and the workspace ID, maybe folder ID, we might need these things. And let's make that equal to use app state like this. And then we also going to need the folders and set folders equal to use state like this. And then this is going to be of type app folder type, and it's going to be an array of this or it's going to be an empty array. And in here, we're going to pass in this empty array. And then we'll also need the files. So we're going to say files and set files just like this equal to use state invoke this and pass in file um, of an array or an empty array. And in here, let's go ahead and pass in this empty array. So we're going to have a use effect. And this use effect is going to fetch this data from our from our local state. Okay, so what it's going to do is we'll just have a um, we'll have state in here for now. And we're going to basically say const state folders equal to and we're going to find the workspaces where the workspace ID is equal to the workspace ID we're on. And then we need the folders and we're going to filter for where the folders are only in the trash. Okay. And then we're also going to return this as or we're just going to return an array like this. OK, and then we're going to say set folders to be equal to state folders just like this. Great job. And then you want to say let state files, which is of type file from Superbase type and it's an array and it's equal to an empty array for now. OK, and then uh, we can just say state dot workspaces dot find the workspace where the workspace dot ID is equal to workspace ID like this, then get the folders from that. And then we want to check folders dot uh, for each. Okay, actually, we don't need to do this because we want to get everything in here, right? So yeah, we can't we don't even need this folder ID in that case. I thought that's why we needed it. Um, so in here, what we're going to do is instead of this, we're going to just do folder dot um, files dot for each. If the file is in the trash, then we're going to say state files dot push and we're going to pass in the file. And at the bottom, finally, uh, we want to also set the state files, uh, sorry, set files like this to our state files that we just have right in here. We're going to remove this and return a section if folders dot length then we're going to return something. So we're just going to return a react fragment. And inside the react fragment, we're going to say h3. Sorry, h3 like this and give it the following. Actually, no, no need for anything in here. We'll just say folders like this and let's create a link. Give it an href equal to slash dashboard slash dollar sign folder dot dot workspace ID, which is actually going to be looped across. So just remove this whole thing, uh, remove this whole link that we just created, remove it and just say folders dot map like this loop over this and say folder. And now you want to return that link. OK, and in this link, you're just going to say um, href equal to folder. It's this folder dot workspace ID and also pass in the key and the key is going to be equal to folder dot 
ID like this, okay? And inside this, guys, oh, let's see if we imported it from next link. All right, there we go. And in here, article aside like this, and inside this, you're going to have a file icon that comes from Lucid React, and you're also going to have the folder title. So folder.title. And for this, we're going to give it some class names too, of course. So we're going to say hover bg muted. And then we're going to say rounded md p 2 flex items center justify dash between and for this aside let's give it flex items center and a gap of two we're going to create another loop like this and we're going to say files dot length and and then return a react fragment and just create an h3 and say files like this and then we're going to loop over our files okay so let's say files dot map let's get the file here and we're going to say the same thing, guys, exactly the same thing. Nothing different in here. I'm just going to copy and paste. We're just going to also provide the key prop, which is file.id like this. And the same exact thing. The only thing that's different is this icon changes to a file icon. OK, so just copy and paste it down here. And now at the bottom, if there is nothing, if no files dot length and no folders dot length, then we're going to return a div with a class name set to text dash muted dash foreground absolute top dash 50 percent left dash 50 percent and then transform and we have to do translate so negative translate negative x negative half and then negative translate negative x uh, negative y and inside this we're just going to say no items in trash all right guys and now go into your native navigations which is inside your sidebar we're going to change this link to an li so i'm just going to remove this one go ahead and open the trash like this import your trash component and move this list element into this component what seems to be the issue okay so the trash component that i imported again came from lucid react but we need to get trash of uh, from you know our main our main component okay cool and let's pass this list item into this component and now we sort of have that wrapped around that okay so if we click on it there you go it says no items in trash just like what we'd expect if i go ahead and delete this folder go in here okay so it's not showing um, let me see maybe we made some error somewhere let's go into trash restore okay so i made an error right here it's actually workspace dot id is equal to the workspace id and we need that workspace id in here okay it's a dependency and i think everything else should work if i delete this go into trash boom there you go i see all my folders that were ever deleted in the past and we can of course bring them back so if i click on this it takes me to those specific links and uh, you can definitely bring them back okay so what what happened here not sure Okay, so this has to be dot workspace ID, but slash dollar sign folder dot folder ID folder dot ID like this. Okay, we made a small error here. And what about this one? Let me see workspace folder and the file dot ID. This should be yeah, this should be correct. All right. Now let's go back to our test workspace right here. And if we go into the trash, we see a bunch of stuff right in here. Right. Awesome. And if we click on development, it's going to take us to that specific folder. OK, so something is wrong. All right, guys, it was because I had to refresh the page and that was just causing some problems. But as you can see right now, I can just go ahead and refresh everything and everything comes right back. OK, so if you click on trash again, that folder is gone and you can also see the files. Uh, let me go ahead and try to delete delete this folder. So you see folders in the trash. And there you go. You see the folders right here. And um, you can bring this back by clicking on it or you can click on this too. It's going to work perfectly fine. And now you can restore it just like that. So this is going to be folder icon like this from Lucid React. And hopefully that looks slightly better. And now if you go into the trash there, it shows the folder icon. OK, you can click on files as well. And you can also restore the file 
So restore this file, boom, there you go. Shows up right there and you can change this, something like restored file. Let's. So don't forget to you know look into the Discord and get all the help you need. You don't have to struggle alone, okay? We're gonna help you. You have to do the challenges, okay? So if you go to the start of the file in the layout page, right here i'm going to put all the challenges that you're supposed to accomplish okay and whoever gets it first put it in the discord and let us know you know how you got it and uh just let us know who you are and we love to get to speak to you hopefully we can build applications together all right guys so the first thing we want to change is actually this so and go back to your utils file this was actually set to planet scale so go ahead and change this to railway i was just reading too much on planet scale and I ended up writing that. So yeah, just change it to railway here. And the reason why we're using railway and not Vercel is because docket.io will not work on Vercel. Vercel is serverless. And that's why we need to use railway to deploy our application. Go ahead and open railway and go ahead and log in right here with your GitHub. Click on this icon right here which is new project and deploy it from GitHub repository. Okay, so make sure you're logged in with GitHub and I'm going to go into GitHub, just going to hit new repository like this. And I'm just going to call this web prodigies dash Cypress and just hit create repository. And it's going to give me some instructions. Copy this first line here and paste it in here and hit enter. Copy the main branch, the second line, paste this one and hit enter. Finally, the push command and just just go ahead and push that. So we'll do git add git commit and I'm going to say init and then I'm just going to say git push. OK, there we go. So now it went ahead and pushed everything and you should see zero changes in here. So if we come to GitHub and refresh this, you should now see your new repository push to GitHub. So go back to Railway and refresh the page. So you want to click on deploy from GitHub app then click on configure and then just go ahead and do this setup. All right. Awesome. Now it'll just redirect you back to this page. Click on get uh, deploy with GitHub. And now you can see your new repository. Click on the new one that we just created. Add some variables. So just click on this and click on this raw editor so this will show up and now let's go into our env file so right here let's select everything and just paste it in here okay i see that we already are using a next public site url so let me see where else are we using this okay so we're okay we're using it in socket provider and we're also using it in the email redirect to link which is good and we also have it in the utils so you know what i'm thinking we don't even need this. We can just update our next public site URL or we can just use a local host, right? So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So let me see if I use this anywhere else. Okay, so this is the only place. So I'll remove that and I will look for the public site URL. If there is nothing, I will just use local host up uh, just like this. And then let's go ahead and hit update variables. All right, guys, I quickly wanted to just update. I had to use a different account. So if you have a new GitHub account, Railway might actually block you from making deployments. So yeah, that's why I had to use a different account. After you put the variables, go to deployment and you see I've created two deployments here. All right, so I would actually suggest you do npm run build. Let's just take a look at this and see what it pushes out. That way we can just catch some errors before we push, okay? Um, because I think there is a build error. So let's just take a look at what comes out. I see one error here, which is missing key prop. So you can hold command and click on that. And that's going to take you to where you have to put that key. And in here where we said react.fragment, go ahead and just put key equal price.id. Git add git commit. Use key prop and then git push just like this. That's going to go ahead and push to our main uh, branch. All right, guys, so I saw a bunch of errors in the console. I just want to show you and I did find some answers on this thread right here. So basically, I got this error saying dynamic server usage page couldn't be rendered statically because it used cookies based on, you know, this um, thread here. It looks like a lot of people have found this error and the solution was to add force dynamic in app.js. Um, layout.tsx. I actually don't think this is the most ideal thing to do um, because that's not what we want here because everything is going to be become dynamic and nothing is going to be cached. So I feel maybe this is causing an issue, but hey, this solved the problem. And um, if you guys have more information on this, like, see, there's a lot in here. 
um, you guys can go ahead and read this thread too. I'll go ahead and put this in um, the read file, the readme file, if you guys want to take a look at it um, so that you guys can actually read more on this issue. If you did see this in the console, which is the sheet primitive uh, component showing a uh, class name is does not exist on those props. Uh, you have to go ahead and just remove it from here. I don't know why this is even in here. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. OK, run NPM run build. All right, cool. That fixed our problem. Git add git commit and then git push just like this. All right. Awesome, guys. There we go. Our application has been deployed. So the next thing we need to do is also update those uh, environment variables that we had. Right. So what you can do now is if you click on this active link, it's going to show uh, some stuff in here. Just go ahead and click on add a domain and that's going to spin up a domain name for us. And there we go. So right now it's actually not going to be live, I think. So if you open this, yeah, it, there's nothing actually live, but that's OK. So what you want to do, click this link right here that just got spun up. And I mean, it's basically all set. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this link, all right? Copy it from the URL uh, and then shrink this. So just close this right here. And then you want to go to variables and you want to change your public site URL. OK, just like this. So edit this right here and you can change it right in here or you can also go in. Oops, sorry, guys. Cancel the redeploy. You can also go to the raw editor and you can change it right in here. So you have public site URL. Go ahead and change that to um, the new link, but without this backslash. OK, remove that backslash like that. And you have HTTPS, Web Prodigy, Cypress, Production of Railway app. Awesome. And go ahead and hit update variables. OK, so um, this is going to schedule another deployment. So let's go ahead and take a look at that once it's done. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and click on that. And it's going to take us to our application. And let's just quickly try to log in. And there we go. Our entire application is deployed. So let's go ahead and try to access Web Prodigies right here. Try to access a folder. OK, awesome. And there you go. Everything is up to date. And let's click on this. Great. Also, real time presence uh, with Superbase is also working. And if we go ahead and create a file, there we go. It creates the file successfully. And if we refresh the page, we should see three files right there just to make sure our sockets are OK. There we go. Our sockets are also working so we can say digital uh, word form. I don't know something information. There you go. You can see everything works. You can also hover over that. Great. You can see the name. And if you maybe highlight something, let's see what happens here. Awesome. It also shows the other user and you can also find their details here. And you can go ahead and send back and forth. Let's just make sure. Yep. Awesome, guys. And it's also saving. Great. It's saving and it has presence. So everything looks great so far, um, even from here, too. There you go, guys. All right. Great job. I really apologize, guys, since we're running out of time. I'm not able to show you how to set up row level policies and things like that for all the tables, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what this row level policy is and maybe how it works. Right. So what a row level policy is, is basically it is sort of like setting security permissions for each and every row inside a table. You can set row level policies for updating, selecting, deleting and all this kind of different operations. OK, and when a user tries to make that specific operation based on the row level policy you have set, it will return or it will prevent the user from seeing that data. You can then use that logic and just write something, write some code to basically check if there is an error or check if the data has been returned. And if not, you can reroute the user to a different page. So this is how you would set up a new row level policy. So right here, we don't have anything for collaboration. So uh, I'm just going to show you what to do. You want to go in here and hit new policy and you can see there are two different options, which is get started quickly from a template or do full customization. So the template is actually more than enough for you to just get set up. You can see here enable update access for users based on their based on their email ID. So you can check for a very specific email ID and then you can do the following actions. You can also check for the authenticated ID. So right here, delete access for users based on their user ID. So you can check auth ID equal to user underscore ID. So this means only the user is able 
to uh, delete it, I think. Yeah, you see here, allows users to delete row where uh, which the user ID column matches the auth ID. And then you want to go ahead and hit use template, and then you can select maybe a target role. So I'm just going to put authenticated. You can select for what operation for select, insert or delete. And then all you have to do is in here, you just have to return a Boolean expression. And once that is done, you just go ahead and hit review. And this will show you what it's going to look like. Don't worry if you don't know what this is. It's okay. You don't need to know all this kind of stuff. Just go ahead and hit save policy. Then that will add your policy right here. Another awesome way to create role level security is to go into chat GPT and then just ask it right so you can copy things from here so you see right here we already have some uh, row level policies created for us which is the users so users can update their own data and everyone can view the user data right so you can maybe check um, you know how these are done and you can copy this and you can paste it into the chat GPT. Another really cool feature in Superbase is if you go into docs, you can use Superbase AI to actually look up and give you information. So all you have to do is click on ask Superbase AI, and then you can just ask it something. For example, how to use in next JS 13. And then it's going to give you the exact instructions on how to use it. Just keep in mind, this might be a little outdated. So you might have to just look at the uh, Superbase uh, documentation. I think, yeah, create client is actually a little outdated because um, clearly from our application, we use the most up to date stuff. You can also go into um, your Superbase database. So let's go in here to dashboard, go into SQL editor, and you can also use Superbase AI to build you the queries and the row level policies right in here. So you can just tell it, give me a row level policy, whatever, and then you can go ahead and hit enter and it will do it for you. Again, if you ever get stuck or you need help with something, the entire community and myself, we're all in the Discord. It's in the description. Just reach out to us and we're all going to help each other uh, get the answers to whatever problem you're facing. All right, prodigies, I am super proud of you if you have come to the end of this video. And don't forget to subscribe because the next video, we are going to be building the best application on YouTube because you are going to pick what you want to see in the next application. All you have to do is go to the comment section and put in a request for what feature you want to see and we will make it happen. Do drop a like to support your boy because I work super hard on this just to give you guys free value and I'm looking forward to giving you more exactly like this. All right, prodigies, see you in the next video.